spot ETFs, excluding Grayscale despite the withdrawals over the last two days. While well, ARKB trails behind BlackRock's and Fidelity's funds, which command respective assets under management of $14.1 billion and $7.6 billion. With almost 329,000 Bitcoin on its books as of 3rd April 2024, GBTC tops the group in terms of total Bitcoin holdings, even though it has lost an astounding 291,000 Bitcoin since becoming an ETF. Well, since the start of the month, the price of Bitcoin has been declining. It dropped almost 9% from its peak of $71,500 last week and momentarily dropped below $65,000 on April 3 due to a rise in ETF outflows. So that's all in this segment. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code for more such updates. Hello and welcome to 3 Auto TV. This is Shikha Singh. In a revolutionary moment for the world of digital communication, the Solana blockchain has successfully sent the first email that underlines the ongoing process of evolution and reverberating the importance of decentralization in effective communication. A new age of safe and decentralized communication on the Solana network has begun with the ability for users to send and receive emails with ease using only their wallet address thanks to the creative SoulMate protocol. But what exactly is SoulMate? Solana, renowned for its high-performance blockchain infrastructure, is a leading decentralized platform behind innovative applications like SoulMail. SoulMail is a communication protocol built on Solana's robust blockchain architecture, which simplifies email communication by using wallet addresses as a unique identifier. This eliminates intermediaries and ensures direct peer-to-peer -peer communication. It offers unprecedented security and privacy for user communications with every email sent to it protected by encryption providing end-to-end -end protection against unauthorized access or tampering. The platform's lightning-fast transaction speed and low fees makes it an ideal platform for implementing such applications. SoulMail is designed to protect sensitive information and maintain the integrity of the communication network. Its integration with the Solana blockchain ensures immutability and transparency with every email sent permanently recorded on the blockchain. This not only improves accountability but also provides a decentralized solution for email storage and retrieval. SolMail's simplicity and efficiency makes it accessible to a wide range of users from individual enthusiasts to companies seeking secure communication solutions. Users can send and receive emails seamlessly with a simple wallet address allowing them to have greater control over the data. The integration with Solana ecosystem opens up possibilities for future decentralization communication developments including multimedia support, decentralized file sharing and integration with other Solana-based applications. The the success of the first email launch on Solana via SoulMail is a testament to the blockchain community's collaborative spirit paving the way for a decentralized and democratized communication network. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3 TV or log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Do you find peace and tranquility in the Middle East structure of a historical significance? Here is a one such structure that will definitely make you feel elated. Of course, in the virtual world. Porcelain Tavo of Nanjing, one of the seven wonders of the Middle Age, is a 15th century Asian tiered structure or pagoda in China which was once admired by people all over the world. The tower was destroyed and demolished by the Taipings during the course of the Taiping Rebellion in the 19th century. In the year 2010, it was reconstructed and the modern replica and the surrounding park were opened to the public. You can explore this historical site and visualize periphery, how it flourished in those good old days 
through the metaverse. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Porcelain Tavo Heritage Park is a cultural symbol and historical landmark in Nanjing, China. In 2023, China's Ministry of Culture and Tourism launched a metaverse initiative to build a digital replica of the Heritage Park. Well, the project selected as one of the first batch of 42 immersive smart tourism experience spaces to be developed will soon be a reality. All the visitors can explore the virtual museum along with the Metaverse Experience Chamber, VR Interaction, Digital Companions and the restoration of the Cultural Heritage Site. All you need to do is step into the installation and create a digital avatar. Yes, it's that simple. All the visitors can scan a QR code on their mobile phones and explore the venue in person. Your avatar will appear on the screen within the virtual world of the Porcelain Tower site. Well, this interactive experience is divided into eight stages, each corresponding to eight key attractions in the Porcelain Tower Heritage Park. Not only that, you can also engage in fun mini games and interactive scenarios in the virtual space and enhance your understanding of these cultural relics. So get ready to explore history in an exciting manner in the metaverse. That's all in the story. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Hello and welcome to 3.0 TV. I'm your host Shubham Joshi. Ethereum, the largest blockchain network by transaction volume, has posted a significant growth in the first quarter of 2024, seeing positive trends across most income statement measures. Coin98 analytics data shows that Ethereum's earnings in Q1 2024 tripled on a quarter-over-quarter -quarter basis to $369 million, representing a 210% year-over-year growth from $119 million in Q1 2023. Ethereum's Q1 2024 revenue and fees grew by 85% and 79% respectively over the previous quarter. Ethereum also generated $1.2 billion in revenue from transaction fees in Q1 2024, a 155% increase from Q1 2023. Well, in Q1 2024, total Ethereum income reached $1 billion, up 186% from $385 million in the same period the previous year. Well, Ethereum's glory in the first quarter of 2024 coincided with the cryptocurrency's close to all-time high values in the month of March, which caused a sharp increase in network transaction costs. Some users claim to have paid over $100 in transaction fees during peak periods when Ethereum's price spiked over $3,000 in late February. Ethereum demonstrated a notable increase in network utilization in Q1 2024 despite the fact that users of the network were subject to enormous fees. The first quarter of 2024 saw an increase in Ethereum transactions overall with a quarter-over-quarter -quarter surge of 8.4% reaching over 107 million transactions. With a 14% increase in market value from the previous quarter, Tether USDT continued to be the largest Ethereum-based or ERC-20 stablecoin by market capitalization in Q1 2024. Its biggest rival, USDC, increased ERC-20 market value by 23% quarter over quarter. Well, that's all in today's special segment. This is me, Shobham Joshi, signing off. For more such interesting updates and market analysis, keep watching 3 TV or log on to our website or scan the QR code. Thank you. What's up gamers? Is it just me or you all feel like CJ from GTA? Ah oh, shit, here we go again. I was so not prepared for this week after a long weekend. Anyways, let's get to the point. So all my gaming junkies would agree to this that GTA 6 is the most anticipated game set to be released between January and April 2025 for Xbox Series and PlayStation 5. But what if I tell you that Web3 has its own version of GTA? 
gamers, fasten your seat belts, ready yourself because Wilder World is ready to set the stage on fire. Web3 game Wilder World has been given a listing on the Epic Game Store ahead of its as of yet unscheduled launch. The publisher of Wilder World is referring to Wilder World as the ultimate game. The game also offers the free roam a virtual world that begins in Miami, a metaverse city to explore, race, socialize and much more according to a press release. Every object in the world including furniture tools, land and avatars will be traded into digital assets on the Wilder World market. The game's team said that in order to address the flaws in classic AAA games like Grand Theft Auto and Cyberpunk, the game will combine leading game genres into a single immersive experience. The team plans to create a single and all-encompassing game called Wilder World that combines the racing, mining and first-person shooter genres. A proprietary blockchain will be used to build a Wilder World. In order to maintain low fees, the team is working with Polygon and Celestia to build a custom, scalable blockchain as well as working with a meta gravity to power virtual worlds and thousands of players according to the news announcement. It also said by the game's developers that a proprietary cloud gaming system will eventually power the game. The game website states in a blog post that we are actively developing our own cloud gaming service that provides increased reliability and hardware guarantees as well as optimization for metaverse and web3 gaming with the use of Nvidia GPUs. However, the post notes that this is an early venture and goes on to say that a launch Wilder World will be available on Nvidia's streaming gaming service GeForce Now. The team's roadmap indicates that limited functionality will be launched to players over the next 12 to 18 months with the racing portion of the game available during what they're calling Act 1 and the combat portion available as Act 3. Well, we will definitely review when the game gets launched. Until then, keep watching Freelotto TV. Do like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, do log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Hello and welcome to 3Dotto TV. The firm behind the eponymous cryptocurrency exchange Binance Holdings has appointed seven executives and independent members to its board of directors. The website of Binance states that Gabriel Abed, a former Barbados ambassador to the United Arab Emirates, is now the chair of the company's board of directors. Roger Wang, Rocky Zin Wang, CEO of Bayview Acquisition Corporation, are not Ventura. Managing partner of Kojo and Company and Binance CEO Richard Teng were among the other members. One of the biggest changes in Binance management since Teng became CEO in November 2023 and left his role as head of regional market is probably the creation of the board. Chang Ping Zhao, the former CEO of Binance, stepped down from his position at about the same time as part of a settlement deal with US authorities. Binance agreed to pay $4.3 billion in penalties as part of the agreement with the U.S. Justice Department, Treasury Department and Commodity Futures Trading Commission. CZ entered a guilty plea to one felony count regarding his fellow to keep the cryptocurrency exchange anti-money laundering program up to date. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission may still take enforcement action against Binance after Zhao is anticipated to be sentenced on April 30th. Under Zhao's leadership, Binance, which was established in China in 2017, became one of the biggest cryptocurrency exchanges globally, with the majority of its staff and operations remaining decentralized. The company operates in France and its European business and the United Arab Emirates for its Middle East and North Africa activities. In accordance with the terms of its agreement with US authorities, Binance had to establish an independent board of directors as well as audit and compliance committees. In December 2023, Teng declared his intention to submit a report to the board. Well, that's all for today. This is me, Roshni Shingle, signing off. For more such updates, watch 3 TV or log on to our website www.3worldtv.io or scan the QR code. Thank you.
and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchu Sharma. The FTX bankruptcy estate has set a goal to begin repaying customers by the end of 2024, according to notes from a meeting of FTX Digital's joint official liquidators in the Bahamas. Because of the hopelessly commingled nature of FTX's accounting, FTX's bankruptcy is comprised of two distinct processes that are proceeding concurrently. The official liquidation process of FTX Digital, FTX's subsidiary based in the Bahamas and the Chapter 11 bankruptcy being decided in a Delaware court in the United States. Nonetheless, the parties involved in the state have decided to cooperate so that creditors can make claims to either organization and that none of them will be underpaid. In order to do this, the notes from the conference on March 15th said that the joint official liquidators and the Chapter 11 debtors have a shared goal to make the first interim distribution by the end of 2024 to creditors with admitted claims and satisfactory KYC documentation. On March 1st, the claims site for FTX became live, enabling creditors to make claims. The conference stated that the deadline for creditors to select one of the two bankruptcy processes and file a claim is presently set for May 15th, but the date is now expected to be extended to at least June 2024 based on recent developments. The Bahamian claims, like the Chapter 11 claims, will be valued as of November 11th, 2022, the original date of the bankruptcy claim. That's all in the story for now. This is me, Uchi Sharma, signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information stories, log on to our website www.3worsting.io or scan the QR code. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. OpenSea, a platform for trading non fungible tokens, has expanded its support for the ERC 721C token standard, which enables creators to establish and enforce royalties. The announcement states that OpenSea developers may now impose revenues with a single click. ERC 721C, developed in May of last year by the blockchain gaming startup Limit Break, standardizes token transfer requirements, including royalties, across all channels, therefore, resolving the issue of NFT wash trading. Prior to its creation, users could transfer NFTs through self custody wallets or even other NFT marketplaces that disregarded creators' royalties obligations, so avoiding creative royalty commissions on secondary markets like OPC and Block. In the long run, this allowed for the incentivization of zero-fee royalty optional trading with airdrops, effectively turning tokens intended to be non-fungible into proxies for fungible tokens, Limit Break explained in a Medium post, adding that traders were incentivized to farm tokens by wash trading, NFTs among their own wallets, which is bad for the NFT industry. According to OpenSea developers, the Ethereum network's March 13 Denkun patch was the sole thing that made ERC 721C compatible. Creators can continue to manually offer their digital artwork on other markets following the implementation of their ERC 721C contracts on OpenSea, but OpenSea will also match the lowest royalties that the artist has set for other platforms. Additionally, the compatibility works with OpenSea's C port 1.6, which configures NFTs to sell only in specific scenarios such as modifying metadata based on amount of sales. Usually between 2.5% and 10% per sale, NFT royalties are mostly determined by the product's inventor. Since their launch, the top 10 NFT collections have brought in approximately $345 million in royalties. That's all the story for now. This is Amiruchi Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information stories, log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. Hello and welcome to 3.0TV, I'm your host Shubham Joshi. The world of finance is buzzing with anticipation. Something old will soon change into a new. Yes, we are talking about real world assets. Some of you must be familiar with real world assets like property, stocks or even art. But there's a twist, a digital makeover. Real world assets is an aspect of the cryptocurrency markets which utilizes blockchain technology to transfer physical 
or intangible assets into digital tokens. This movement, propelled by a major asset manager, highlights the tokens to watch out for. First on the list is Ondo Token. Earlier when investment management giant, BlackRock created a fund called the BlackRock USD Institutional Digital Liquidity Fund, Ondo Finance jumped as high as 20% on increasing use cases of the tokenization. Ondo Finance, the DeFi pioneer, connects different stakeholders in the space including investors of all stripes and DAOs. Well now next on the list let's talk about MakerDAO. MakerDAO, the leading Ethereum based lending network, eliminates intermediaries by offering collateralized loans. Yes that's right, the cutting edge platform has established itself as an integral component in the DeFi industry contributing to high level activity levels within the cryptocurrency world. Well, MakerDAO price witnessed a remarkable surge growing over 56% in the past month and adding 11% just last week. Next on the list is TokenFi. Multi-chain coin TokenFi, the latest addition to the Floki ecosystem, garnered tremendous interest since its introduction on Uniswap and PancakeSwap. It is also available on Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. The TokenFi allows users to create a token or tokenize real-world assets on an all-in-one platform. Yes, it aims to expedite the process of crypto and asset tokenization. TokenFi price increased 15% in the past 24 hours and is up to 54% over the past week. Now let's move on to Goldfinch token. Goldfinch is pioneering a global credit protocol as it offers stablecoin yields derived from real-world economic activities. Goldfinch led by the Ethereum-based token GFI aims at making DeFi lending more accessible. It makes loans supported by both digital and tangible assets possible. Well, Goldfinch protocol registered an impressive price increase of 162% in the past 30 days. Last on the list is Propy token. Propy is a blockchain protocol pertaining to the real estate sector. It streamlines the process of buying and selling properties, making it quicker, simpler and more secure by leveraging Web3 technologies. Well, the token registered a remarkable surge of 51% in the past 24 hours and more than 250% in the past one month, highlighting it as a significant real estate focused token. Well, that's all in today's special segment. This is me, Shobham Joshi, signing off. For more such interesting updates and market analysis, keep watching 3.0TV or log on to our website or scan the QR code. Thank you. Hello and welcome to 3 Daughter TV. This is Shikha Singh. Synthetic stablecoin startup Athena Labs is gearing up to airdrop 750 million to its governance tokens on April 2nd. Athena Labs said in a statement that 750 million ENA tokens will be distributed using the decentralized finance protocol to holders of shards or digital units indicating users' participation with the platform. 5% of the 15 billion ENA token supply are the tokens that were airdropped. The tokens will go to users who hold the USDE, the protocol synthetic dollar pegged to the US currency. The ENA token will be made accessible to centralized cryptocurrency exchanges and airdrop to qualified users on April 2nd, according to a statement from Athena Labs. Each user's drop size is based on how many shards they had accumulated as of April 1st. According to the announcement, in order to get the free tokens, users have to maintain their USDE staked or otherwise stored on the Athena network. Athena Labs' airdrop follows the Athena Shard campaign, a six-week event that tasks crypto enthusiasts with collecting shards by performing activities on the Athena protocol. According to Athena Labs, during the event, the supply of USD reached a value of $1.3 billion, making it the fastest asset denominated in USD to surpass a $1 billion supply. The token's rollout also comes after investors injected $20.5 million into Athena Labs during the past year in two funding rounds. These rounds included participation from Galaxy Digital, OKX, Dragonfly, Finance Labs and Bybit, among other investors setting the token maker's valuation at $300 million, CoinGecko reported. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3 TV or log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code to know more.
Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. This is Shikha Singh. Angle, the DeFi protocol, has unveiled its new US dollar backed stablecoin, which aims to pass on yield from its real world asset backing and revenue from DeFi lending. Interestingly, the Angle's USDA is backed by US Treasury bills and tokenized versions of T bills, and token holders who stake the USDA on the Angle protocol can automatically earn rewards derived from the token's reserve assets yield and revenue from the protocol's lending platform. This way, the target yield for USDA stakers is at least 5%. The development came as yield bearing stablecoins have mushroomed recently, with new offerings seeking to lure funds from market dominating stablecoins. USDT and USDT did not pass the yield earned on their backing assets to holders. Latest entrants such as Mountain USD and Athena's USD amassed $300 million and $1.3 billion in deposits, while asset management giant BlackRock also entered the market recently with its tokenized fund represented by dollar pegged BU Ideal token aimed for large institutional clients. With its new offering, Angle also aims to establish a blockchain based foreign currency hub with seamless con conversion between euro and dollar without fees and slippage. Angle already offers a euro pegged EURA token with $22 million supply. It received $5 million in venture capital funding led by Andreessen Horowitz in 2021 to develop its stablecoin focused. DeFi platform. The Forex markets represents trillions of dollars of daily volume. However, today it's difficult to find a DeFi protocol offering on chain currencies trading at true Forex rate, said Pablo, CEO of Angle Labs, a development organization behind the protocol. To boost liquidity for USDA, users will also be able to convert Circle's USDC stablecoin to USDA and back without incurring fees or slippage. USDA will start a beta testing phase in the next few days, pending approval by the Angle Protocol's governance with plans for a broader rollout in April. The offering will not be available to US-based investors, the protocol said. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3 TV or log on to our website, www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. The NEAR Foundation, the non-profit behind the Layer 1 NEAR protocol, announced that the protocol now supports chain signature, offering users multi-chain access from their NEAR account. Egan Layer, a new launch partner of NEAR, contributes to the security of the chain signature network according to a press release. An Ethereum-based restaking project is called Egan Layer. Since day one, the NEAR ecosystem has focused on simplifying access to Web3 for developers and mainstream users, said Ilya Polosuki, co-founder of NEO. Chain Signature is the next step in that journey, making it significantly easier to transact on any blockchain while also defragmenting liquidity across the ecosystem. According to the news release, developers may now create decentralized finance applications that leverage resources from the chains without bridging these resources. The product is the most recent development in NEO's chain abstraction program, which attempts to improve the cryptocurrency user experience by reducing the obstacles present in the multi-chain setting. NEO's native token has been rising over the past few months, up roughly sevenfold since the start of October, including a doubling in a one week earlier this month. As of March 27, 2024, NEO is trading at $7.8. Well, that's all for today. This is me, Roshni Shingre, signing off. For more such updates, watch 3 TV or log on to our website www.3worldstv.io or scan the QR code. Thank you. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchu Sharma. Over the course of last day, Pudgy Penguins took center stage, rising by about 10% to rank as the second largest NFT collection. Pudgy Penguins has experienced a surge in sales during the last 24 hours, reaching $1.8 million. With $1.4 million earned in the same period, PAYC is lagging behind. Pudgy Penguins surpassed the well known Board APR Club and Mutant APR Club with a $454 million market capitalization, lagging behind only CryptoPunks. 
Over the past day, Fuji Penguins has experienced notable increase in value, pushing its floor price to 14.35 ETH, that is $51,000. It has $454 million in market capitalization or 127,542 Ether, which puts it in second place in the NFT list by value. Over the previous day, BAYC's floor price decreased by 2% to $43,666 or 12.33 ETH. It has a $436 million market capitalization. The floor price of Mutant Ape Yacht Club is $7,524.4 or 2.11 ETH, which is a meager 0.3% 24-hour drop. The market value of MAYC is $146 million. The floor price of the leading NFT crypto punk is currently 45.99 ETH or around $162,866, showing steadiness over the previous seven days. Its market capitalization remains constant at around $1.6 billion. The NFT sector is witnessing renewed interest as the crypto market is riding bullish waves. That's all in the story for now. This is Miru Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information and stories, log on to our website www.3wastv.io or scan the QR code. Saudi Arabia, known for its religious values and culture, is the largest country in the Arabian Peninsula. The history of Saudi Arabia dates back to the year 1727, when Imam Muhammad bin Saud, a forefather of the Saudi royal family, became ruler of the Diraya. In the year 1745, Diraya was named the capital laying the foundations for what would later become a unified Saudi Arabia. With the advancement in technology, you can now witness some remarkable moments in Saudi Arabia's history by stepping on a virtual time machine. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur and you are watching our special show Metaverse Magic where we get you latest updates from the Metaverse space. Saudis are celebrating the 297th anniversary of the founding of Saudi Arabia. And now, the Saudi government's Cultural Universe Metaverse Initiative will take you through the long history of Saudi Arabia dating back to 1727. All you have to do is step into the Metaverse time machine and embark on an exciting journey to the enchanting sands, bustling streets and majestic landscapes of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Well, it's like a time-travelling fan zone or a treasure hunt with history as the reward. Interestingly, the platform was crafted by Drop Group's AI system, Drop Digital, which utilizes Oracle's hyperledger blockchain technology. You can access the platform through various platforms including websites, mobile devices and virtual reality headsets. You can also explore virtual representations of major historical events accompanied by detailed audio explanations in Arabic. Beyond historical narratives, the cultural universe showcases Saudi music, art, history, cuisine and craftsmanship supplemented by engaging mini-games. And now let's explore Dubai's futuristic judicial system. As part of the 2024 UAE Innovates activities, the Dubai Judicial Initiative plans to revolutionize legal proceedings and judicial training. Well, DJI seeks to transform not only the delivery of legal services, but also the entire judicial experience by using virtual reality, augmented reality and artificial intelligence. Among the innovative projects unveiled by DJI are the integration of AI-driven models into the Public Prosecution Investigation Office and the Litigation Hall, the introduction of a window of the future to showcase advanced judgment and decision-making processes and the establishment of a virtual crime scene theatre. Well, these initiatives are poised to streamline judicial procedures while offering 
judiciary members and legal professionals a more immersive and interactive learning environment. Well, with the growing interest in the virtual worlds, it has become important to keep user data safe. And Meta wants to make sure its headsets can't be hacked. In order to make sure that it's actually you who's wearing your mixed reality headset, the tech giant is seeking to patent a way to provide user authentication for a near eye display. Interestingly, when a user wants to access certain restricted data such as calls, messages, access to social media accounts or mobile payments via a Meta headset, they would need to pass a biometric authentication process. Well, Meta system can choose from a long list of biological information to authenticate a user including iris and retina scans, facial recognition, finger or palm scanning. Now, another reason here that Meta may want to boost its identity protection is the emergence of Apple Vision Pro as a competitor. And now, let's listen in to our special guest to know his views on the importance of ensuring user privacy and keeping user data safe in the Metaverse. So, I think uh, it's a good move that, you know, the authentications are done through biometric information. That's a good start from, from, from Meta's meta side. I mean, that's a good start from Metaverse uh, security as, aspect. But at the same time, they should also realize that biometric information uh, has to be secured in such a way it can never be breached or, uh, 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 breached or, uh, or hacked because that's a very crucial individual uh, information which cannot be replaced. So that's one thing. And I think, Vishaka, I think we should also look at it in the next six to one year point. There's a huge, huge market in terms of security of metaverse going to happen. I mean, it's not only going to be meta, meta is only going to leave, but there will be huge, huge companies are going to come up with security uh, enhancements in the metaverse sector. Moving on, with the introduction of two exciting LEGO Fortnite games, LEGO Raft Survival and LEGO Orbi, Fortnite continues to innovate within its gaming universe. In LEGO Raft Survival, you may immerse yourself in a thrilling LEGO pirate-themed universe where survival abilities are tested on a small river raft. On the other hand, LEGO Orbi Fun offers a different challenge. As you traverse through more than 300 levels, each with its own unique LEGO theme, you'll encounter platforms to leap across, moving hills to navigate and various obstacles to overcome. And now an interesting update for you all. Stablecoin Ishwar Circle has partnered with Overdare in order to revolutionize the gaming industry. Overdare, drawing inspiration from the popular gaming platform Roblox, leverages Unreal Engine 5 to provide players with AI-powered creation tools, empowering them to become game designers within the metaverse. Well, this innovative approach allows players to craft their own unique gaming experiences, fostering creativity and engagement. Well, that's all in this episode of Metaverse Magic. Keep watching 3.2 TV for more such updates. And do log on to our website www.3versetv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3 Auto TV. This is Shikha Singh. It seems the rush is among leading banks in the United States to corner as many clients as possible. They are not letting go any opportunity. It doesn't matter whether the product they offer is based on virtual digital assets. Two Wall Street giants, Bank of America's Merrill Lynch and Wells Fargo, are adding spot Bitcoin ETFs to their brokerage platforms. 
Bloomberg reported, citing people familiar with the matter. Ever since the launch of 10 ETFs in January, industry participants have been wondering when major US brokerages would start offering their funds to their clients, which could potentially bring much more buying power to the market for Bitcoin ETFs. The Bloomberg story follows a Coindesk scoop Wednesday that Morgan Stanley, another titan in the space, is in the midst of deciding whether to give clients the option to invest in the funds. In January, Coindesk reported first that UBS and Citigroup were letting some customers buy Bitcoin ETFs. Merrill Lynch and Wells Fargo have been offering the Bitcoin ETFs to clients who specifically asked to get exposure to it, Bloomberg reported. Spot Bitcoin ETFs are experiencing neck break trading activity. The segment witnessed tremendous demand since they began trading on January 11th. On Wednesday alone, a record $7.7 million worth of all the funds traded. Moreover, the volume growth achieved without the participation of high-caliber players. Nonetheless, the entry of Merrill Lynch and Wells Fargo, perhaps Morgan Stanley, could bring a new wave of demand. Bitwise Chief Investment Officer Matt Hogan said earlier on Thursday. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3.0TV or log on to our website www.3verstv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. According to Riot Platform's most recent annual report, the Bitcoin miner may see financial difficulties as a result of a persistent chip scarcity, the continued need to increase hash rate and the growing pro-climate movement in the US. Riot is one of the many Bitcoin mining companies getting ready for the impending halving event. In its annual 10K filing, which was filed on February 23rd, the company expressly identified over 13 major risks to its future profitability in Bitcoin mining. The filing also included a section on risk factor disclosures. Wright cited the continuing global chip crisis as one of the risk factors as only a small number of manufacturers are able to produce the highly specialized ASIC chips that Riot needs. Riot agreed to pay $291 million to purchase 66,560 miners from manufacturer MicroBT in December. According to Jason Lair, CEO of the business, it was the largest order of hash rate in its history. Riot stated in its most recent annual report that until the chip scarcity issue is remedied, it anticipates continuing to pay higher than usual prices to acquire and deploy the mining equipment. Riot pointed out that even if they had access to ASIC miners, they may still run into design flaws. The company said that in attempting to modify its miners to run into immersion cooled conditions, it has previously encountered software and firmware problems and that it may run into similar problems going forward. Riot adds that a risk associated with a more competitive industry exists, meaning that in order to preserve its market share, the company must keep raising its hash rate in tandem with the worldwide hash rate. Meanwhile, Riot also noted that Bitcoin faces significant scaling obstacles that could hinder its ability to become a widely accepted means of payment. An increasingly pro-climate change agenda in the Texas and United States governments could present challenges for the firm too, it said. Riot said it may lose a competitive advantage should it be subject to stricter regulations than its peers in other regions. Meanwhile, Riot boosted its Bitcoin production by 19% in 2023, mining a total of 6,626 BTC worth $341.4 million at current prices. The firm's average cost to mine Bitcoin for 2023 also decreased 33% to $7,539 in 2023. That's all the story for now. This is me, Ruchi Sharma, signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3.tv. And for more information and stories, log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. With 
three Dodo TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with three Dodo TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. Readout OTV delivers the news that matters. आज की इस फास्ट पेस्ट ग्लोबली इंटरकनेक्टेड दुनिया में हर कोई दिन रात पैसे कमाने के लिए भाग रहा है ताकि वो अपने सपने साकार कर सके लेकिन अक्सर हम पैसे कमाने के चक्कर में अपना स्वास्थ्य खो देते हैं और फिर स्वास्थ्य को ठीक करने के लिए पैसे गवाते हैं दुनिया के ज्यादातर लोग इसी चक्रव्यूह में फंसे हुए हैं लेकिन अब इस चक्रव्यूह को तोड़ने में मददगार होगी ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी नमस्कार स्वागत है आप सभी का थ्री डॉटो टीवी में और आज के ब्लॉक ऑन द रॉक्स के खास एपिसोड में हम देखेंगे की कैसे ब्लॉक टेक्नोलॉजी के उपयोग से स्वास्थ्य और पर्यावरण से जुड़ी रियल लाइफ प्रॉब्लम को सोल्व किया जा सके स्वास्थ्य का गणित बिल्कुल सरल है अच्छा खाना खाने से और पोल्यूशन फ्री वातावरण में रहने से आपका स्वास्थ्य तंदुरुस्त रहेगा लेकिन फिर भी हम इतनी सरल बात को रोजिंदा जिंदगी में फॉलो नहीं करते हैं ज्यादातर लोग इस गलतफहमी में जीते हैं कि वो फ्रेश वेजिटेबल फ्रूट्स और उच्च गुणवत्ता वाले गेहूँ और चावल का उपयोग करके पौष्टिक खुराक लेते हैं जिससे उनका स्वास्थ्य तंदुरुस्त बनेगा लेकिन वो भूल जाते हैं कि सब्जी फल गेहूं चावल जीरा और मसालों की फसल को उगाने में खतरनाक जंतुनाशक रसायन यानी पेस्टिसाइड्स और रसायन खाद का उपयोग करके जिनके रेगुलर सेवन से हमें कैंसर जैसी खतरनाक बीमारी की झपेट में आ सकते हैं अब ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी द्वारा ऑर्गेनिक फार्मर्स का एक डेटा तैयार किया गया है जो फार्म से लेकर फोक तक आपके खाने को ट्रैक करेगी फॉर एग्जाम्पल आपकी प्लेट में आए टमाटर किस ऑर्गेनिक फार्म में पैदा हुए फिर उसे किस मंडी में बेचा गया कहां उसे स्टोर किया गया और फाइनली किस रिटेलर द्वारा आपके पास पहुंचा? इसका पूरा रिकॉर्ड या कहे कि टमाटर की पूरी जन्म कुंडली ब्लॉक चेन पर स्टोर की जाएगी ताकि आप निश्चिंत होकर ऑर्गेनिक फार्म के फ्रेश प्रोड्यूस ऐसी बनी डिश ऐसी स्वास्थ्य और स्वाद दोनों का आनंद ले सके इसका जीता जागता एग्जाम्पल है यूके का मल्टी पार्टनर रिसर्च और डेवलपमेंट प्रोजेक्ट सेक्वल जिसका फुल फॉर्म है सिक्योर क्वालिटी अशोर लॉजिस्टिक फॉर डिजिटल फूड इकोसिस्टम जिसके जरिए आपकी प्लेट में आए हुए हर एक निवाला कहाँ उपज हुआ कहाँ स्टोर हुआ और कहाँ खरीदा गया सब कुछ एक पैकिंग सिस्टम के साथ ब्लॉकचेन पर स्टोर होगा जिससे भेल सेल यानी कि अडल्ट्रेशन का कोई खतरा नहीं रहेगा स्वच्छ और पौष्टिक खाने के बाद अब आगे बढ़ते हुए हम बात करेंगे पर्यावरण पर ब्लॉक ने कैसे अपना इम्पैक्ट छोड़ा है बियॉन्ड इमेजिनेशन टेक्नोलॉजीज ने ब्लॉकचेन बेस्ड बिट भूमि को डिजाइन किया है ताकि पर्यावरण की सस्टेनेबिलिटी पर ध्यान रखा जा सके बिट भूमि एक ब्लॉकचेन चेन पावर प्लेटफॉर्म है जो हर एक इनिशिएटिव को डिजिटल मॉनिटरिंग रिपोर्टिंग और वेरिफिकेशन के लिए बनाया गया है विशेष रूप से शहरी और ग्रामीण क्षेत्रों में खुले जगहों को फॉरेस्ट्रेशन यानी वनीकरण करने पर ध्यान दिया गया है आने वाले हफ्तों में ये प्लेटफॉर्म अपने एक्सक्लूसिव क्रिप्टो करेंसी भूमि डॉलर के लॉन्च का प्लान बना रही है एक प्रेस रिलीज के अनुसार ये डिजिटल एसेट सिर्फ क्राउड फंडिंग का साधन नहीं होगा बल्कि एक ब्लॉकचेन कम्युनिटी को भी बढ़ावा देगा जो तकनीकी हालों के माध्यम से असली दुनिया के समस्याओं का सामना करती है बिट भूमि ब्लॉक चेन और एनएफटी टेक्नोलॉजी की शक्ति का इस्तेमाल डोनेशन कैंपेन्स की ट्रांसपेरेंसी और ट्रेसिबिलिटी को बढ़ाने के लिए काम करती है विशेष रूप से इंसानी गतिविधियों के पर्यावरण पर दुष्प्रभाव को कम करने पर ध्यान दिया गया है आशा करते हैं कि आने वाले समय में अनाज का हर एक दाना और पृथ्वी का हर एक पेड़ पौधा ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी की निगरानी में आ जाएगा तब ना सिर्फ हमारी पृथ्वी ज्यादा ग्रीन भी होगी बल्कि हमारी जीवन शैली ज्यादा सेहतमंद भी बनेगी आज के खास सेगमेंट में बस इतना ही अगले हफ्ते हम ब्लॉक चेन जुड़ी नई अपडेट के साथ फिर मिलेंगे तब तक के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉटो टीवी हमारे चैनल को लाइक शेयर और सब्सक्राइब करना ना भूले अधिक जानकारी के लिए हमारी वेबसाइट www.3worldtv.io पर लॉग ऑन करें या फिर स्कैन करें क्यू कोड थैंक यू
iconic music and the scene instantly teleports us right into the middle of galactic saga of George Lucas Star Wars series filled with larger than life characters like Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, R2D2, Jedi, and of course the villain of the story and apparently Luke's father Darth Vader and his band of deadly stormtroopers. Now it seems Darth Vader's laser gun wielding lethal stormtroopers are entering the Vetri galaxy. Apparently, the Stormtrooper character from Star Wars A New Hope will be added to Mixed Mob's card-based strategy and racing game Racer 1 as an NFT collection and playable character the Solana-based gaming company announced on Thursday. However, this license agreement has a few intriguing details. The famous Stormtrooper from the original 1977 blockbuster science fiction movie is the licensed character, although no one from Disney, Lucasfilms or their representatives mediated this agreement. Rather, the agreement is with Andrew Ainsworth, the original Star Wars prop manufacturer and Shepperton Design Studios. The well-known white-armoured soldier from the first movie was created by Ainsworth. When he began manufacturing and marketing imitation helmets based on his own design decades later, Lucasfilm brought out its lawyers and began a protracted legal battle. All in all, Ainsworth managed to obtain restricted rights for the design's commercialization. A mixed mob representative confirmed that the game studio cannot use Star Wars branding and that the deal in this case is limited to armor design from A New Hope. Nevertheless, it is a noteworthy addition to a well-known pop culture franchise that will be featured in an NFT game that seeks to offer a taste of remix culture. The game's developer Mixmob has announced that it intends to incorporate additional licensed characters and content and a mobile version of the game will launch in quarter 2 of 2024. This year, Mixmob plans to reveal three more license integrations. Sale details for the Stormtroopers NFTs have not been revealed. According to the team, owners of Micmob's Gen O Mask and Gen O Mixbots NFTs will be given priority access to the mint. Micmob's Solana based governance token, MXM, is up nearly 15% on March 1, 2024, to a price of above $0.1 per data from CoinGecko. The token, which debuted on February 1st with an airdrop to reward early players and NFT owners, set an all time high price of $0.1136 last week. That's all the story for now. This is Miruchi Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information and stories, log on to our website www.3watstv.io or scan the QR code. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. On Friday, a US federal court judge signed off on crypto exchange Binance's $4.3 billion plea deal with the US Department of Justice. Well, this is one of the biggest penalty in the history of financial market. A company has paid to free itself from the regulatory clutches. The move shows a growing regulatory oversight of virtual digital assets or VDAs and sets a precedence to be followed. During his intense hearing Friday, Judge Richard Jones of the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Washington approved the top-line fine itself, though he did not yet sign off on any monitor for the exchange. 
Earlier last November, the Department of Justice announced a settlement alleging Binance of violating sanctions and anti-money laundering laws over a year's long period. Under the terms of the settlement, the exchange would pay $4.3 billion, appoint an independent compliance monitor and have its CEO at the time, founder Changping Zhao, step down. Well, CZ pleaded guilty to separate charges and is currently scheduled to be sentenced in late April. In a statement, a Binance spokesperson said the exchange was accepting responsibility through the plea deal, adding that the exchange had improved its Know Your Customer and anti-money laundering compliance in recent years. We are gratified by the recognition we have received from regulators regarding our cooperation and significantly enhanced compliance, the statement said. We look forward in the coming months to continuing to build on our efforts to set the industry standard for compliance, security and transparency. In a sentencing memo ahead of the hearing, prosecutors wrote that the agreement reflects the nature and circumstances of Binance's alleged conduct. Critically, the agreed-upon sentence will promote specific and general deterrence. As part of its plea agreement, Binance has agreed to take substantial measures to ensure its ongoing compliance with U.S. law. And the significant sentence agreed to here demonstrates to other financial institutions that may seek to break the law under the guise of innovation that uh, there will be serious consequences for their criminal actions, the memo said. That's all in the story. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Hello and welcome to 3 Auto TV. I'm your host Shubham Joshi. Tokens pertaining to artificial intelligence gained ground last week with Fetch AI surging 35% in a day while Singularity NAT gained 30%. Interestingly, crypto market analyst Miles Dorsher said that as the worldwide AI NVIDIA conference for developers and engineers draw near on March 18, coins related to artificial intelligence are booming as well. He further expects the rally to continue. Render a GPU marketplace which lets users contribute computational power to 3D rendering projects and earn tokens in exchange rallied 31% as well. Late this month, tokens tied to the artificial intelligence saw a sharp increase as NVIDIA exceeded fourth quarter results projections. Head of Data and Analytics at FRNT Financial Strahinja Savage explained that while most of these tokens with AI themes don't really have a direct link to the adoption being driven by OpenAI or Google's Gemini, it's crucial to consider how effective exposure to artificial intelligence is through them. Well, Gemini is Google's family of AI models similar to OpenAI's ChatGPT. Well, that's all in today's special segment. This is me, Shubham Joshi, signing off. For more such interesting updates and market analysis, keep watching Pirato TV or log on to our website or scan the QR code. Thank you. Hello and welcome to 3 Daughter TV. This is Shikha Singh. Synthetic stablecoin startup Athena Labs is gearing up to airdrop 750 million to its governance tokens on April 2nd. Athena Labs said in a statement that 750 million ENA tokens will be distributed using the decentralized finance protocol to holders of shards or digital units indicating users' participation with the platform. 5% of the 15 billion ENA token supply are the tokens that were airdropped. The tokens will go to users who hold the USDE, the protocol synthetic dollar pegged to the US currency. The ENA token will be made accessible to centralized cryptocurrency exchanges and airdrop to qualified users on April 2nd, according to a statement from Athena Labs. Each user's drop size is based on how many shards they had accumulated as of April 1st. According to the announcement, in order to get the free tokens, users have to maintain their USDE staked or otherwise stored on the Athena network. Athena Labs' airdrop follows the Athena Shard campaign, a six-week event that tasks crypto enthusiasts with collecting shards by performing 
activities on the Athena protocol. According to Athena Labs, during the event, the supply of USD reached a value of $1.3 billion, making it the fastest asset denominated in USD to surpass a $1 billion supply. The token's rollout also comes after investors injected $20.5 million into Athena Labs during the past year in two funding rounds. These rounds included participation from Galaxy Digital, OKX, Dragonfly, Finance Labs and Bybit, among other investors, setting the token maker's valuation at $300 million, CoinGecko reported. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3 TV or log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code to know more. मैजिक ईडन पर बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स ने की जबरदस्त कमाई पजी पेंगुइन की लेटेस्ट पार्टनरशिप बढ़ाएगी पॉपुलैरिटी एनएफटी स्पेस में वैन की एंट्री हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स में आए सर्च से लेकर एनएफटी स्पेस में वैन की एंट्री तक कई मजेदार एनएफटी अपडेट मैं रुचि शर्मा आपके लिए लेकर आई हूँ तो हो जाइए एनएफटी वर्स के इस खास एपिसोड के लिए तैयार इसमें आपकी फेवरेट एनएफटी प्रोजेक्ट्स की डिटेल्स तो होंगी ही साथ ही हम एक स्पेशल गेस्ट से भी करेंगे मुलाकात लेकिन सबसे पहले जानते हैं पिछले हफ्ते कैसा रहा एनएफटी मार्केट का हाल एनएफटी सेल्स पिछले हफ्ते 35 परसेंट ऊपर रही दो महीने के इंतजार के बाद बिटकॉइन ऑर्डर ने फिर से बाजी मारते हुए पहली पोजिशन हासिल की पिछले हफ्ते की कुल 412 मिलियन डॉलर्स की एनएफटी सेल्स में से बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स ने 154 मिलियन डॉलर्स की सेल्स बटोरी जो कि पिछले हफ्ते के मुकाबले 103 परसेंट का जबरदस्त उछाल है तो वहीं बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स के आंकड़े के बेहद करीब थी इथेरियम एनएफटी जिसने 10 परसेंट की बढ़त के साथ 153 मिलियन डॉलर की एन सेल्स दर्ज की तो वही तीसरे चौथे और पांचवे पायदान पर रही सोलाना बी और माइथोस चेन ने पिछले हफ्ते के मुकाबले ग्रोथ दर्ज की बिटकॉइन की प्राइस में जबरदस्त उछाल देखा जा रहा है जो अपने ऑल टाइम हाई के बेहद करीब है तो इसका फायदा बिटकॉइन एनएफटी को भी मिल रहा है बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल दमदार वापसी के संकेत दे रही है क्योंकि फरवरी की शुरुआत में 5 टू 6 मिलियन डॉलर्स ट्रेडिंग वॉल्यूम दर्ज कर रही बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल अब अक्रॉस मेजर मार्केट प्लेसेस फिफ्टीन मिलियन डॉलर से नाइनटीन मिलियन डॉलर से ज्यादा ट्रेडिंग वॉल्यूम दर्ज कर रही है जून डेटा के मुताबिक क्रॉस चेन मार्केटप्लेस मैजिक ईडन पर एक बार फिर बिटकॉइन ऑर्डर्स ने टॉप स्पॉट हासिल किया है मैजिक ईडन पर बिटकॉइन एनएफटीज ने फरवरी के महीने 100 मिलियन डॉलर से ज्यादा की ट्रेडिंग वॉल्यूम दर्ज की इसके साथ ही मैजिक ईडन पर बिटकॉइन एनएफटीज की बाइंग एंड सेलिंग पर खर्च की गई टू मिलियन डॉलर की फीस ने भी मैजिक ईडन पर रिकॉर्ड सेट किया एन एफ में फोर्टी फाइव बायर्स और नाइन्टी से ज्यादा सेलर्स शामिल थे इस पर और ज्यादा जानकारी के लिए रुक करते हैं हमारे स्पेशल गेस्ट मिस्टर जॉन इग्लेस्टन का वेलकम टू थ्री ऑडो टीवी बिटकॉइन के प्राइस सर्च का कितना इम्पैक्ट होगा बिटकॉइन ऑर्डर्स पर और ये इम्पैक्ट कब तक रहेगा It makes sense that ordinals are performing well because Bitcoin is leading the way in the market. But there's there's a little more to it than that. Because ordinals are created by inscribing individual satoshis. Thank you so much humse baat cheet karne ke liye aur apna keemti samay hame dene ke liye. Pudgy Penguins ka marathon success abhi bhi jaari hai. Pudgy Toys, Pudgy World, Pudgy Games ke baad ab kya hai Pudgy Penguins ka naya plan? Chaliye batate hain aapko. ब्लू चिप एन एफ टी कलेक्शन पजी पेंग ने अनस्टॉपेबल डोमेन के साथ पार्टनरशिप करके डॉट पजी डोमेन नेम्स इंट्रोड्यूस किए हैं हाल ही में हुए इस कोलेबोरेशन की बदौलत अनस्टॉपेबल डोमेन के अब कस्टमर्स टॉप लेवल डोमेन नेम्स जो डॉट पजी से एड होंगे उन्हें खरीद सकते हैं और उन्हें पजी पेंग एन एफ टीज के साथ एसोसिएट कर सकते हैं ऐसे में डोमेन होल्डर्स के लिए न्यूमरस पॉसिबिलिटीज खुल जाएंगी जैसे कि वेब थ्री मैसेजेस को सेंड और रिसीव करना डोमेन एड्रेसेस के बीच क्रिप्टो पेमेंट्स करना और न्यू डोमेन्स के जरिए एक्सक्लूसिव यूटिलिटी बैजेस कलेक्ट करना अनस्टॉपेबल डोमेन्स ने पजी एम्बेसडर प्रोग्राम और पजी स्टोरी टेलिंग कैंपेन भी लॉन्च किया है ताकि कम्युनिटी को और बेहतर तरीके ऐसी एंगेज किया जा सके 
एम्बेसडर प्रोग्राम में पजी के प्रोमिनेंट कम्युनिटी मेंबर्स में से एम्बेसडर सिलेक्ट किए जाएंगे जो डॉट पजी डोमेन नेम्स के इस्तेमाल को प्रमोट करेंगे और स्पेशल पजी एम्बेसडर बैजेस रिसीव करेंगे तो दूसरी तरफ स्टोरी टेलिंग कैंपेन यूजर्स को सोशल मीडिया पर पजी रिलेटेड कॉन्टेंट को क्रिएट और शेयर करने के लिए इंकरेज करेगी हर महीने अनस्टॉपेबल डोमेन्स चूज करेंगे कम्युनिटी स्टोरी टेलर्स जिन्हें वेबसाइट पर शोकेस किया जाएगा साथ ही विनर्स को फ्री ऑफ चार्ज मल्टीपल डॉट पजी डोमेन्स दिए जाएंगे देर आए दुरुस्त आए देर से ही सही लेकिन आखिरकार मैजिक ईडन और युगा लैब्स ने क्रिएटर रॉयल्टीज के लिए एक बड़ा कदम उठाया है एन एफ टी स्टूडियो युगा लैब्स ने अनाउंस किया है कि वो अब उन मार्केट प्लेसेस को सपोर्ट नहीं करेगा जो क्रिएटर रॉयल्टीज को ऑनर नहीं करती ये फैसला मैजिक ईडन का इथेरियम पर आने के बाद लिया गया है युगा और मैजिक ईडन साथ मिलकर क्रिएटर रॉयल्टीज को लागू करने के लिए एक बड़ा कदम उठा रहे हैं युगा लैब्स ने हाल ही में एक्स पर पोस्ट किया की कि हमारी रॉयल्टी फिल्टर वाली कलेक्शन अब सिर्फ उन्ही मार्केट प्लेसेस पर ट्रेड करेगी जो क्रिएटर रॉयल्टीज देते होंगे ये फैसला ब्लॉक के मेजोरिटी एन ट्रेडिंग वॉल्यूम को कैप्चर करने के करीब एक साल बाद लिया गया है इसके बाद ओपन सी ने भी ब्लॉक के साथ कम्पीट करने के लिए अपनी रॉयल्टी फीस घटा दी थी कम रॉयल्टी स्ट्रक्चर साथ ही गिरती ट्रेडिंग वॉल्यूम्स की वजह से युगा लैब्स के रेवेन्यूज पिछले साल बहुत ज्यादा गिर गए थे फिर नवम्बर में मैजिक ईडन ने अनाउंस किया की कि उसने युगा लैब्स के साथ पार्टनर किया है ताकि वो साथ मिलकर इथीरियम एन के लिए एक ऐसी मार्केट प्लेस लॉन्च कर सके जो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट के तहत क्रिएटर रॉयल्टीज दे वैलेट का बिटकॉइन ईटीएफ अप्रूव हुआ तो जैसे पैसों की बारिश होने लगी पैसों की ये बरसात रुके नहीं बल्कि और बढ़े इसलिए वैनेक ने एन को भी कैश करने का फुल प्लान बना लिया है स्पॉट बिटकॉइन ईटीएफ के सक्सेस के बाद वैनेक ने अब एन मार्केट में कदम रखने का प्लान बना लिया है वैनेक लेकर आ रहा है अपनी पहली सेल्फ कस्टोडियल मार्केट प्लेस और इसे नाम दिया गया है सेगमेंट सेगमेंट यूरोप और एशिया में क्रिप्टो एंथुजियास को टारगेट करेगी रेगुलेटरी कंसर्न्स की वजह से यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स रेजिडेंट्स के लिए ये अवेलेबल नहीं होगी सेगमेंट को नोवा डॉट टेक और डेलीगेट डॉट एक्स वाई जी के साथ पार्टनरशिप में क्रिएट किया गया है सेगमेंट कोई आम एन एफ नहीं होगी ये कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव डिजिटल एसेट प्लेटफॉर्म होगा जिसका एम होगा एसेट के एक्सचेंज और स्टोरेज को सिक्योर और एक्सेसिबल बनाना ये लॉक एंड की मॉडल पर काम करेगी जैसा कि हाई सिक्योरिटी वॉल्ट में होता है जिसमें डिजिटल एसेट को शेयर किया जा सकता है बिना सिक्योरिटी रिस्क ब्रीचेस के वेल दैट्स ऑल इन दिस एपिसोड ऑफ एन वर्स वक्त आ गया है आपसे विदा लेने का लेकिन एन की दुनिया से ऐसी और मजेदार खबरें मैं रुचि शर्मा आपके लिए हर हफ्ते लाती रहूंगी टिल देन डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू थ्री डॉट टीवी और इसी तरह की इंटरेस्टिंग अपडेट्स के लिए लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू पर या फिर क्यू कोड को स्कैन करें Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with Three Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. Three Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with Three Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. Three Auto TV delivers the news that matters. हेलो एंड वेलकम टू थ्री डॉटो टीवी मैं होश शुभम जोशी 
Reuters reports that the Financial Sector Conduct Authority, also known as FSCA of South Africa, has authorized 59 licensing applications from Bitcoin platforms. Well, they will be subject to current legal regulations. Out of these 355 applications, the FSCA is now reviewing 262 applications from cryptocurrency exchanges, according to Reuters, which cited FSCA Divisional Executive Felicity Maboso. Well, on March 12, the 59 approvals were given. According to data from Bloomberg, the crypto business is applied by November 30, 2023 and will be subject to Financial Advisory and Intermediary Services Act. Well, this measure will enable regulators to pursue enforcement proceedings and offer further consuming safeguards, where it gives the Financial Surveillance Department of the South African Reserve Bank permission to supervise. Well, this is the first nation in Africa to grant licenses for cryptocurrency exchanges, is supposedly South Africa. When it originally started the regulatory process in 2021, it had the thought of developing a different regulatory framework just for cryptocurrency. Well, in the year 2022, such plans remained in the place and that year the regulation was supposed to be completed. Well, later that year, the SARB said that the legislation pertaining to cryptocurrencies will be released in 2023 and would classify them as financial assets as opposed to the money. Well, ultimately, the FSCA deemed it to be a financial product. Well, 20 applications were apparently received before of the November deadline, according to the reports from FSCA Commissioner in the month of July. Well, crypto exchanges operating without licenses beyond the deadline would be susceptible to enforcement proceedings, including the penalties and the shutdown. Well, the FSCA said in December that it had received 128 applications, with 72 of those to be reviewed between the month and the March 14. The South African National Treasury said in February that it will introduce a policy adjustment to include stable coins in its definition of cryptocurrency assets in its annual budget review. Well, that's all into a special segment. This is me, Shobham Joshi, signing off. For more such interesting updates and market analysis, keep watching 3Auto.tv or log on to our website or scan the QR code. Thank you. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. sparks a new adventure. Well, this fascinating world is called Open. Ernest Klein, the visionary behind Ready Player One, is back with his latest creation, Open. So prepare yourself for a gaming revolution. Hello and welcome to 3 Dollar TV. I am Vashaka Thakur. And you are watching our special show, Metaverse Magic, where we get you the latest updates from the Metaverse space. A multi-genre, multi-IP and multi-mode battle royale experience designed for PC and current generation platforms is coming your way. Ernest Klein, the visionary behind Ready Player One, along with his co-founders at Readyverse Studios, Shara Senderoff, Dan Farah and Aaron McDonald, has introduced the electrifying world of Open. The Open, launched in collaboration with Walker Labs, will be the hero experience in the Readyverse. Well, Readyverse is a next-gen immersive and interoperable platform for discovering Metaverse games and experiences. And Walker Labs is a seasoned team of senior game developers that hail from Epic Games, DICE, Microsoft, 
PlayStation, Ubisoft, Electronic Arts and more. Interesting, isn't it? But do you know what exactly sets Open apart from other gaming experiences? Well, it's the commitment to openness and accessibility. With the focus on content interoperability and digital content ownership, Open aims to create a virtual space where players can shape their own destinies. And now let's explore the fascinating Ottoman Empire event by Sandbox. The Sandbox has recently launched its exclusive whitelist meant for magnificent century avatars paying homage to the illustrious heritage of Ottoman Empire. Well, this limited collection featuring 1500 avatars including the iconic Sultan Suleiman promises to transport players to an era of grandeur. From embarking on quests to participating in VIP events, Magnificent Century avatars offer players a chance to earn rewards, including a share of the game's substantial $35,000 or 50,000 sand prize pool. While talking about the additional perks, top avatar owners stand a chance to receive exclusive rewards, including a trip to Istanbul. So, you may try your luck. And now let's listen in to our special guest for his views on the metaverse sector. So future as far as this year of the metaverse is concerned, I see uh, one very, very meaningful uh, and uh, reasonable solutions uh, that's going to come in. Number two, I see a larger integration of blockchain, uh, wherein the Web3 economics uh, plays a big role, both with respect to scaling up the metaverse operations or uh, bringing in uh, you know, rewards and things like that. Uh, third but not the least uh, is the integration of uh, artificial intelligence in uh, metaverse solutions. Uh, days are not far when uh, you would be actually interacting with an avatar, um, the holographic image of the founder of the company, the chairman, uh, even for that matter celebrities, uh, where you would ask questions to them and uh, get answers. So lots and lots of opportunities both with respect to B2B and B2C. Moving on. A recent medical breakthrough showcases the innovative use of Apple Vision Pro in healthcare as a surgical team at Cromwell Hospital in London successfully utilized the headset during spinal operation. Well, the mixed reality headset worn by a scrub nurse played a crucial role in assisting surgeons during two microsurgical spine procedures. The introduction of Apple Vision Pro headset to Cromwell Hospital was facilitated by EXEX, a tech platform provider for hospitals. Well, EXEX is a US-based company which has previously developed the same software for Microsoft's HoloLens headset. Well, the successful implementation of Apple Vision Pro headset in spinal surgery procedures underscores the transformative role of technology in advancing healthcare practices. And now, let's explore the allure of Qatar on Roblox, which has left millions eager to explore its wonders in person. Qatar Adventure, a virtual heaven on Roblox, welcomed over 7 million players from 32 countries across four continents during its seven-week run from December 15, 2023 to February 8, 2024. Developed by Qatar's international media offices Q Life and Century Games, this immersive experience showcased the nation's cultural richness and achievements following the success of FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022. The adventure featured iconic Qatari landmarks like the Golden Lucelle Stadium, attracting 3.7 million visits online. A survey among players revealed overwhelming satisfaction, with some 86% expressing the desire to visit Qatar in person. Accessible through live topia on Roblox, Qatar Adventure showcased the allure of Qatar, leaving millions eager to explore its wonders in person. And let's not forget about the financial side of the metaverse. Han ETF is making waves with the launch of first ETF dedicated to the metaverse. With a focus on companies shaping the future of virtual experiences, this ETF offers investors a unique opportunity to capitalize on growing trends of virtualization. From gaming to entertainment to finance, the Metaverse is undergoing a rapid transformation. Well, that's all in this episode of Metaverse Magic. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3verstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off.
Creed Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with Creed Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. Creed Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Taking a leaf out of the United States successful launch of spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds, financial institutions based in Hong Kong seem to be in a hurry to tap into the growing demand for cryptocurrency investment products. While Hong Kong opened applications for Bitcoin spot ETFs in December last year, no related products have hit the market yet, leaving Asian investors at risk of lagging behind their American counterparts. Well, in an attempt to bridge this gap, Hong Kong-based institutions are actively preparing to launch spot ETFs for Ethereum. The goal is to gain an edge over the United States, solidifying Hong Kong's position in the global crypto market as per reports from local media outlets. The cumulative net inflow of Bitcoin spot ETFs in the United States surpassed $2.24 billion last week, propelling the price of Bitcoin to reach new all-time highs. According to CoinGlass data, the total assets under management of Bitcoin ETFs currently amount to $55.34 billion. While the top three performers in this space are GBTC, IBIT and FBTC, managing $27.73 billion, $12.97 billion and $8.35 billion respectively. Amidst the surge in Bitcoin-related investment products, market attention has turned to the development of Hong Kong's Bitcoin spot ETF offerings. Experts say that as global crypto investors anticipate the launch of Ethereum spot ETFs, Hong Kong is actively discussing and preparing for such products. Earlier reports indicated that 10 financial institutions in Hong Kong have expressed their intentions to apply for Bitcoin spot ETF launches. Harvest Fund, for instance, submitted relevant applications to the Securities and Futures Commission in Mid-Chan, signaling the growing interest in crypto-related investment products in the region. Well, that's all in this special update. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. What's up gamers? You know, South Korea is that one country with rapidly expanding gaming industry surpassing 20 trillion Korean won, approximately $15 billion in market size, making it the fourth largest gaming market globally. South Korea's strict regulations on blockchain games, particularly Web3 games, offer limited growth opportunities for the gaming industry. However, major Korean AAA game studios like Nexon, Netmarble, Comptuous and WeMate are actively recognizing the potential of the blockchain gaming market. Nexon is leading the way by developing a blockchain-based gaming platform and looks to encash market opportunity. Nexon's famous Web2 game, MapleStory, is entering the Web3 space through a partnership with Avalanche Blockchain. MapleStory will launch a blockchain-based multiplayer online role-playing game named MapleStory N. This new dimension to the MapleStory universe will feature novel gameplay elements and reward mechanisms. MapleStory N, set to launch on PC by 2024, will utilize Avalanche's subnet technology to create customized blockchains, enabling a wider range of decentralized applications and services. MapleStory, by the way, is known for pioneering the free-to-play MMORPG module, achieving over $3 billion in global revenue by 2020. MapleStory Universe switched from Polygon to Avalanche due to Ava Labs support in server and infrastructure development. This is not the first time when a game switched from Polygon blockchain to the Avalanche blockchain. Long ago, Mirai Labs, the creator of Pegaxi, migrated from Polygon to Avalanche and integrated Social5 with esports economics into blockchain gaming. This move was aimed to enhance the gaming experience for guild members, supporters and casual gamers by allowing buying and selling key-like assets 
Mirai Labs had launched a Mirai chain on the Avalanche subnet, adopting a blockchain platform known for its scalability, security, and decentralization. This migration included the entire suite of Mirai Labs offerings, including the free to play racing game Pegaxi, Petopia with SocialPy, esports integration, the native token PGX, Mirai ID, the Mirai app, and the Mirai Pay. Now, you might want to know why are gaming studios shifting from the Polygon blockchain to the Avalanche blockchain? See, both Polygon and Avalanche emerged as the fastest growing networks with, uh, you know, uh, various use cases that benefit crypto developers and decentralized platforms. Each blockchain offers distinct uh, benefits and supports multiple tokens and coins. So, Eva Labs, a, a software provider for the Avalanche network, launched Avalanche Arcade, a collaborative program designed to ease the transition of traditional gaming studios into Web3. Avalanche has also rolled out a string of gaming partnerships throughout 2022 and 2023. Avalanche Arcade is legit, the deal here. It is a dedicated platform for gamers. Avalanche Arcade is an initiative which has been launched with Japanese media giants Gree and Gumi, aiming to help companies navigate Web3 gaming challenges such as onboarding to blockchain technology, marketing and tokenomics. The program links Web2 publishers with leading studios, guilds and groups building Web3 and an Eva Labs team that has built over 100 games and helped build 10 plus gaming subnets. Publishers with millions of active monthly users are embracing Web3 Gaming on Avalanche. In contrast, Polygon's influence on the Web3 Gaming industry is a bit uh, restricted. Still, Polygon stands as the toughest contender uh, when it comes to choosing a blockchain for games. Both these protocols, Avalanche and Polygon, use a variation of proof-of-stake consensus mechanism. In addition, uh, Avalanche uses a snowball mechanism which has received a lot of positive feedback for achieving speed without compromising decentralization. Polygon uses the proof-of-stake consensus mechanism. Polygon users can participate directly by becoming a network validators or indirectly by becoming a delegator. So Avalanche's gas fees is higher compared to Polygon's gas fees. But what sets Avalanche apart from all the other blockchains is being the fastest smart contract and its ever-booming market capitalization which is considerably higher than that of Polygon. AVAX has a market capitalization of $20 billion, whereas Polygon has a market capitalization of $15 billion. Avalanche, on the other hand, has a reliable security protocol that preserves decentralization and scalability. On the other hand, Polygon still relies on the Ethereum blockchain, which can potentially create a network disruptions or network congestion and still has scalability issues. Avalanche supports many crypto projects and Web3.0 platforms. Avalanche supports over 200 crypto projects with a total value locked in uh, that peaked at $10 billion. On the other hand, Polygon Network support many crypto platforms such as QuickSwap, SushiSwap, Curve, and it's very limited. Avalanche's TVL compared to Polygon's TVL is also higher. Avalanche's TVL stands at $1.3 billion, whereas Polygon's TVL may have plated around $1 billion. Avalanche is the fastest smart contract platform in the blockchain industry, offering fast, low-cost, and eco-friendly deployment options for any smart contract-enabled application. Polygon is also the first structure platform uh, for Ethereum scaling and infrastructure development based on its modular flexible Polygon SDK framework, which supports building various applications. Not only these blockchains, but there are n number of blockchains that are on the rise. In fact, the overall blockchain gaming industry is on the rise. The industry is up by 54% since Jan 2024 compared to the overall market in 2023. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3.0TV or log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io or scan the QR code to know more. The Pony, a true icon of its time that never failed to turn heads. Introduced in 1975, this classic beauty stole the hearts of drivers everywhere with its sleek design and undeniable charm. The automotive landscape in South Korea was forever changed when Hyundai unveiled the Pony, a compact car that captured the hearts of drivers everywhere. It wasn't just a car, it was a symbol of innovation, style and forward-thinking design. But wait, 
What's this? It seems that the beloved pony has undergone quite a transformation. In the bustling world of Metaverse, the pony has evolved into a sleek and stylish marvel of modern engineering. Hello and welcome to Sweet Auto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur and you are watching our special show, Metaverse Magic. In the history of automotive industry, there are few names that evoke as much nostalgia and admiration as the Hyundai Pony. But as the years passed and technology advanced, it was time for the Pony to undergo a transformation. In order to pay tribute to Pony, a car that embodies Hyundai Motor Company's heritage, Hyundai Motor Group has launched a virtual heritage world, timeless in Seoul, on the South Korea-based Metaverse platform, Zepeto. Interestingly, the virtual world features Hyundai's Pony along with the automaker's award-winning electric vehicle, Ionic 5. Well, Hyundai aims to connect with Gen Z and plans to invite and interact with them in timeless Seoul. Users can take part in exciting games, complete quests to earn coins and then upgrade their pony to Pony Garage and embark on a historical journey. Well, do you know what makes heritage cars special? It's their beauty, elegance and memories. And Nissan, the Japanese industrial corporation, the maker of cars, is making an effort to engage all automotive enthusiasts to interact with its iconic heritage vehicles. Yes, Nissan Motor has announced the launch of the Nissan Heritage Cars and Safe Drive Studio, an innovative metaverse platform that aims to teach visitors about road safety, while also providing a unique opportunity to interact with historic heritage automobiles. Well, this concept is being developed in partnership with Premier Institutions and Traffic Safety Future Creation Lab. Well, the studio celebrates Nissan's 90th anniversary, which began in December. It also includes three legendary Nissan automobiles from the past, each set in a beautifully designed virtual environment that matches its age. These settings serve not only as backdrop for photos and videos, but also as interactive locations where visitors may participate in many games and activities that teach important traffic safety principles. And now an exciting update for you all. Decentraland is gearing up for a Metaverse motor show. Yes, after much anticipation, the Decentraland DAO, Vega City and Voxel Architects are finally set to gear up towards the Metaverse motor show with a co-created racing extravaganza Metaverse Track Days from March 14 to 17. Upon entering Decentraland, races will have the unmissable opportunity to dive into three exhilarating days filled with high-speed racing culminating in a spectacular final celebration, the Great Final Party. Well, there will be exclusive rewards for all the races including wearable NFTs. And now let's listen in to what our special guest has to say about potential of Metaverse in the automotive industry. Metaverse has been uh, a part of the transformation journey for many of the automotive brands, whether it's to do with um, uh, launching the new cars in the metaverse, um, you know, in the form of events, uh, in the form of uh, bringing some artists and do uh, different types of sort of, you know, uh, music concerts and things like that. Perhaps um, in my uh, experience, I've seen more than five to seven of these launches happening just in the last 12 months uh, with Hyundai uh, being at the center of the attraction. Uh, in 2025 and forward, I see um, a lot of digital experiences coming together. Uh, auto sector companies are looking at ways by which people can take faster decisions to buy cars because of the kind of the numbers that we're seeing with the new launches. So expect uh, lots and lots of metaverse experiences, lots and lots of immersive experiences coming our way. Moving on, we recently celebrated International Women's Day and the virtual world is going to make your post-International Women's Day celebrations even more special. On International Women's Day, International Slumber Party, a non-profit group, launched the ISP Metaverse Mansion. Well, ISP's 3D Metaverse platform provides transformative experiences that empower, nurture and connect young women from over 100 nations worldwide. Well, this free platform delivers important talks, live events and workshops on topics ranging from job, business and mental health to personal development and relationships. So attendees will get access to a broad network of mentors, peers and prospective colleagues which will help them improve personally and professionally. 
But that's all in this episode of Metaverse Magic. Keep watching 3.TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3Doto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3Doto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. CoinShares, a European digital asset investment company, made a big move in its effort to consolidate its position as a leading investment company by offering spot Bitcoin prices and exchange-traded funds. CoinShares acquired the sponsor rights to Valkyrie's physically backed Bitcoin ETF, the Valkyrie Bitcoin Fund, as well as the company's investment advisory business, Valkyrie Investment Incorporation. After three years, Valkyrie's financial performance will determine the acquisition price. CoinShares will now manage the Valkyrie Bitcoin and Ether Strategy ETF, the Valkyrie Bitcoin Miners ETF and the Valkyrie Bitcoin Futures Leverage Strategy ETF, among other ETFs from Valkyrie as per the agreement. According to Jean Mahi Mognetti, the CEO of CoinShares, the US is a critical market for global asset managers. Mognetti wrote, the Valkyrie acquisition is yet another step in our growth strategy with a special focus this time in the US. This acquisition brings an additional $530 million AUM to CoinShares, which makes it a top-line contributor from day one. More importantly, it broadens our product offerings, strengthens our innovation capacity and increases by a factor of 15 our total addressable market. After the acquisition, CoinShares will begin rebranding Valkyrie and its products within its own ecosystem. Since November 2023, CoinShares has held a purchase option over Valkyrie. The acquisition is part of CoinShares' strategy to expand its asset management platform in the United States. Meanwhile, according to Dune data, Bitwise Bitcoin ETFs were the latest ETF to surpass $2 billion in Bitcoin holdings on March 11th, the fifth fund to surpass the milestone. Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust ETF is still the largest with $29 billion worth of Bitcoin under management. ETFs are projected to absorb 8.98% of the BTC supply on a yearly basis if the growth of the past two weeks continues. This could lead to a sell-side liquidity crisis by September if the institutional inflows were to continue, according to Ki Yong Yu, founder and CEO of on-chain analytics platform CryptoQuant. Last week, spot ETFs saw net flows exceeding 30,000 BTC. Known entities like exchanges and miners hold around 3 million BTC, including 1.5 million BTC by US entities. At this rate, we'll see a sell-side liquidity crisis within six months, he said. That's all the story for now. This is Muruji Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information and stories, log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. नमस्कार थ्री डॉटो टीवी में आप सभी का स्वागत है आज के इस खास एपिसोड में हम बात करेंगे कैसे ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी ने भारत में अपनी खास जगह बना ली है बिटकॉइन के सर्वकालीन उच्च स्तर पर पहुंचने की खबर तो आप सभी जानते ही होंगे पर क्या आप जानते हैं बिटकॉइन को जन्म देने वाली ब्लॉक किस तरह दिन ब दिन कामयाबी की नई ऊँचाइयों को छू रही है 
तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं भारत के 50 प्रतिशत से भी ज्यादा राज्यों ने अपनी रोजाना जिंदगी में ई गवर्नेंस के जरिए ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी को अपना लिया है हर किसी की आम जरूरत होती है रोटी कपड़ा और मकान और इन जरूरतों को पूरा करने में ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी मददगार साबित हो रही है बिल्कुल जहां एक तरफ ब्लॉकचेन द्वारा ग्रास रूट लेवल पर देश के किसानों को ग्रेन डिस्ट्रीब्यूट किए जा रहे हैं तो वहीं दूसरी तरफ कपड़ा उद्योग यानी कि टेक्सटाइल इंडस्ट्री में वर्कर्स को उपयुक्त मुआवजा मिले इसके लिए ब्लॉक टेक्नोलॉजी के ट्रांसपेरेंसी और ट्रेसिबिलिटी फीचर्स का फायदा उठाया जा रहा है इतना ही नहीं अब लैंड रिकॉर्ड्स में धोखाधड़ी और फर्जी दस्तावेजों पर रोक लगाने के लिए ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी का इस्तेमाल किया जा रहा है क्योंकि ब्लॉकचेन पर स्टोर किया हुआ डेटा टैंपर प्रूफ और सुरक्षित रहता है एग्रीकल्चर टेक्सटाइल इंडस्ट्री लैंड रजिस्ट्रेशन के अलावा एजुकेशन और हेल्थ सेक्टर में भी ब्लॉक टेक्नोलॉजी क्रांति ला रही है अलग अलग मिनिस्ट्रीज और डिपार्टमेंट्स को डिजिटल सॉल्यूशन प्रोवाइड करने वाला भारत सरकार का डिपार्टमेंट एनआईसी यानी नेशनल इन्फॉर्मेटिक सेंटर अब ब्लॉकचेन को और भी नए तरीकों से उपयोग में लाना चाहता है जी हाँ एनआईसी इंडिया ने बताया है कि वह अभी पांच ब्लॉकचेन्स पर लगभग आठ मिलियन सरकारी दस्तावेज होस्ट कर रही है एन ने अपने ब्लॉक चेन को हाईलाइट करने के लिए एक नई वेबसाइट भी लॉन्च की है वाह ये तो वाकई बहुत ही इम्प्रेसिव है और इस डेटा के हिसाब से ये डॉक्यूमेंट्स शिक्षा संपत्ति न्यायिक और ड्रग लॉजिस्टिक्स जैसे क्षेत्रों को कवर करते हैं आपने बिल्कुल सही कहा और ये भी जान लेना जरूरी है कि भारत में प्रोडक्ट्स का विकास मुख्य रूप से तीन ब्लॉकचेन प्लेटफॉर्म्स पर आधारित है हाइपरलेजो फैब्रिक हाइपरलेजो सोटुत और इथेरियम देश वर्तमान में पांच ब्लॉकचेन प्रोडक्ट्स का उपयोग कर रहा है और ये डॉक्यूमेंट्स छह मुख्य विभागों से उत्पन्न होते हैं और तीन सरकारी विभागों से यानी केंद्रीय माध्यमिक शिक्षा बोर्ड उपभोक्ता मामले मंत्रालय और न्याय मंत्रालय वह ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी का उपयोग करने वाले विभागों ने संपत्ति के स्वामित्व जन्म और मृत्यु प्रमाण पत्र और दवाओं और शिक्षा प्रमाण पत्रों के लिए वेरिफिकेशन सर्विसेज लागू की हैं। इसके अलावा भारत ब्लड बैंक्स, गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज टैक्स ट्रैकिंग और एक सार्वजनिक वितरण प्रणाली के लिए प्रूफ ऑफ कॉन्सेप्ट ब्लॉक का विकास कर रहा है भारत का ब्लॉकचेन में इंटरेस्ट नया नहीं है 2023 में हिंदुस्तान पेट्रोलियम भारत की सबसे बड़ी ऑयल और गैस कंपनीज में से एक ने अपने परचेज ऑर्डर सिस्टम में ब्लॉकचेन बेस्ड डिजिटल क्रेडेंशियलिंग टेक्नोलॉजी को इंटीग्रेट करने के लिए ब्लॉकचेन सॉफ्टवेयर फॉर्म जपल लैब्स के साथ कोलाबोरेशन किया था फैसिनेटिंग और ये तो सिर्फ शुरुआत है भारत का लक्ष्य है की ब्लॉक को हर एक लेवल पर हर एक क्षेत्र में अपना कर गवर्नमेंट बॉडीज की कार्य को और भी ज्यादा ट्रस्टेड ट्रांसपेरेंट और ट्रेसेबल बनाया जा सके जी हाँ अंत में केवल इतना ही कहना चाहेंगे कि विकसित भारत के सपने को साकार करने के लिए जहाँ भी डिजिटल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन और डिजिटल सॉल्यूशंस की आवश्यकता पड़ेगी वहाँ ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी एक वरदान के रूप में हमेशा हमारा साथ देगी इस खास स्टोरी में फिलहाल इतना ही आप देखते रहिए थ्री डॉट टीवी और ज्यादा जानकारी और स्टोरीज के लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट थ्री सी डॉट आई पर अपने क्यू कोड को स्कैन करें Hello and welcome to Three Dot TV. I am here to bring you a groundbreaking development straight from the land of abundance opportunity in Web3, the oasis of Mina region, Dubai. Dubai police has inked a game-changing partnership with Cardano, one of the leading blockchain platforms in the world, to spearhead blockchain technology for law enforcement. That's right. The Dubai's police force is stepping into the future by harnessing the power of blockchain technology. But what exactly does this mean for law enforcement? Well, it means a more secure and efficient way to share crucial information from criminal investigations. Imagine being able to securely share bullet scans and other sensitive data with law enforcement agencies worldwide, all with a click of a button. This partnership is not just about technology; it's about making the world a safer place 
By leveraging blockchain technology, Dubai police are taking a giant leap forward in their efforts to combat crime and ensure justice is served effectively and efficiently. So what's next? With Dubai's ambitious goals to become a hub of crypto and blockchain technology, this partnership with Cardano is just the beginning. This may open up a Pandora's box in the near future. One thing for sure, Dubai police and Cardano are paving the way for safer, more secure future. That's all for today. This is me, Roshni Shingre, signing off. For more such updates, watch 3.tv or log on to our website www.3.tv.io or scan the QR code. Thank you. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. A very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. A day after successfully raising $800 million through a convertible debt issue, Michael Saylor's Bitcoin development company MicroStrategy approached regulators seeking approval for raising another $500 million. The company intends to use the proceeds to purchase more Bitcoin, according to a press release. MicroStrategy purchased 12,000 Bitcoins worth $812.7 million from the proceeds of a recently concluded fundraising round originally planned at $600 million and later increased to $800 million. Following that buy, MicroStrategy stack stood at 205,000 Bitcoins now worth just shy of $15 billion. Assuming Bitcoin remains around its current $73,000 level, the company would be able to purchase somewhere in the area of 6,800 additional tokens with proceeds from this latest offering. MicroStrategy shares lost some sheen in after-hour trading, having accumulated a 10.8% rise during the session, reaching an all-time high of $1,766. The stock's now up 158% year-to-date alongside Bitcoin's rise to a record high above $73,000. Remember, Saylor is optimistic about Bitcoin's potential. In a recent media interaction, MicroStrategy Executive Chairman said crypto will be a much more valuable asset than gold in the future. Bitcoin is certainly at least digital gold. It's going to eat gold. Saylor said, it's got all of the great attributes of gold and it's got none of the defects of gold. That's all the story for now. This is Mirchi Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information and stories, log on to our website www.3wastv.io or scan the QR code. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. CryptoPunk hashtag 3100 ने बटोरी सेकंड हाईएस्ट सेल। नोड मॉन्कीज ने पहली बार की 1 मिलियन डॉलर से ज्यादा की कमाई। बैटमैन अपनी 85th एनिवर्सरी पर लॉन्च करेगा लेटेस्ट एनएफटी कलेक्शन। हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू। बैटमैन की लेटेस्ट कलेक्शन से लेकर रिकॉर्ड तोड़ एनएफटी कलेक्शन तक। कई मजदार एनएफटी अपडेट्स मैं रुचि शर्मा आपके लेकर आई हूं। 
तो हो जाइए एन वर्स के इस खास एपिसोड के लिए तैयार इसमें आपकी फेवरेट एन प्रोजेक्ट्स की डिटेल्स तो होगी ही साथ ही हम एक स्पेशल गेस्ट से भी करेंगे मुलाकात लेकिन सबसे पहले जानते हैं पिछले हफ्ते कैसा रहा एन मार्केट का हाल एन सेल्स पिछले सात दिनों में करीब ट्वेल्व बढ़कर फोर मिलियन डॉलर रही पिछले हफ्ते की तरह इस हफ्ते भी बिटकॉइन एनएफटीज ने टॉप पोजीशन हासिल की करीब 14 परसेंट उछाल के साथ बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स ने 166 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स बटोरी तो वहीं इथेरियम एनएफटीज भी ज्यादा दूर नहीं थी 165 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स के साथ इथेरियम ने बिटकॉइन एनएफटीज को कड़ी टक कर दी पिछले हफ्ते के मुकाबले इथेरियम एन में करीब ट्वेल्व का उछाल देखा गया तो वही तीसरे चौथे और पांचवे पायदान पर रही सोलाना बी और माइथोस चेन क्रिप्टो मार्केट इन दिनों उफान पर है और इसका अच्छा खासा असर एन मार्केट पर भी देखा जा रहा है हाल ही में क्रिप्टो पंक एन ने अब तक की सेकंड हाईएस्ट सेल दर्ज की ये क्रिप्टो पंक हैश टैग जिसे एलियन पंक के नाम से भी जाना जाता है 4500 फाइव यानी कि 16 मिलियन डॉलर्स में बिकी आपको जानकर हैरानी होगी की यही एन तीन साल पहले सेवन मिलियन डॉलर में बिकी थी यानी तीन सालों में इसकी वैल्यू करीब एट मिलियन डॉलर बढ़ गई है ये तो बात हुई दूसरी सबसे महंगी क्रिप्टो पंक एन की तो फिर सबसे महंगी क्रिप्टो पंक एन कौन सी है वो है क्रिप्टो पंक हैश टैग ये भी एक एलियन पंक है जिसने 23.7 मिलियन डॉलर्स की सेल्स दर्ज की थी इस क्रिप्टो पंक की खासियत है कि इसने एक हेड बैंड पहना हुआ है वैसे आपको बता दें कि क्रिप्टो पंक हैश को अब तक तीन अलग अलग कलेक्टर्स ओन कर चुके हैं आप जानकर दंग रह जाएंगे कि सात साल पहले यही क्रिप्टो पंक महज 2,133 डॉलर्स में बिका था खैर इस हालिया 16 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स ने इसे 24 आवर्स की सेल में सबसे आगे खड़ा कर दिया है ऐसे में क्रिप्टो पंक ने नोड मॉन्कीज और अन कैटेगराइज ऑर्डिनल्स की पॉपुलैरिटी को मात देते हुए नंबर वन की पोजिशन अपने नाम की है बिटकॉइन और बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स दोनों की किस्मत खुल गई है क्योंकि दोनों अपने ऑल टाइम हाई पर हैं। बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स पर कैसे हो रही है पैसों की बरसात चलिए जानते हैं बिटकॉइन दिन ब दिन एक नए ऑल टाइम हाई को छू रहा है ऐसे में बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स की सेल्स में भी जबरदस्त उछाल देखा जा रहा है बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स पर खास पॉपुलर कलेक्शन नोट मॉन्कीज ने पहली बार वन मिलियन डॉलर की सेल्स के साथ बिटकॉइन एन में अपना नाम सबसे ऊपर लिख दिया है क्रिप्टो स्लैम के डेटा के मुताबिक बिटकॉइन एनएफटी प्रोजेक्ट में नोड मॉन्कीज पिछले सात दिनों में टॉप सेलिंग इंडिविजुअल ऑर्डिनल्स या एनएफटी प्रोजेक्ट है जिसकी सेकेंडरी मार्केट सेल्स इसी दौरान 45 मिलियन डॉलर्स के करीब थी पिछले 24 घंटों में नोड मॉन्की से ऊपर सिर्फ एक इथेरियम एनएफटी प्रोजेक्ट था क्रिप्टो पंक्स जो 16 मिलियन डॉलर्स में बिका था एलिन हुडी नोड मॉन्कीज मैजिक एडन पर 4 मार्च को 17 बिटकॉइन या कहें 1.08 मिलियन डॉलर्स में बिका ये अब तक की नोड मॉन्कीज की सबसे बड़ी सेल है और ऑर्डिनल्स की अब तक की सेकेंड हाइस्ट सेल जैसे जैसे बिटकॉइन का प्राइस बढ़ रहा है बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल सेल्स में सर्ज आ रहा है साथ ही नोड मॉन्कीज का प्राइस भी आसमान छू रहा है इस पर और ज्यादा जानकारी के लिए रुक करते हैं हमारी स्पेशल गेस्ट मिस नजदा बेस्टर का वेलकम टू थ्री डॉलर टीवी नजदा बिटकॉइन के प्राइस सर्च का कितना इम्पैक्ट होगा बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स पर और ये इम्पैक्ट कब तक रहेगा नाउ डिस्पाइट द ब्रॉडर एन एफ मार्केट डाउन टर्न Bitcoin ordinals are gaining interest, uh, very possibly due to the direct relationship with Bitcoin's price increase. Uh, the appeal of Bitcoin ordinals, I think, lies in their novelty. They are a novel asset class, and the direct embedding of digital artifacts onto the Bitcoin blockchain, differentiating them, differentiating them from all other NFTs. Bitcoin's come a long way uh, since its birth. There's also a lineup of new innovations in the BTC NFT space like BRC20 tokens, Bitcoin stamps, atomical, uh, atomicals etc. And I think we can really expect to see more innovation coming in uh, this year and beyond. Thank you so much humse baat cheet karne ke liye aur apna keemti samay hame dene ke liye. Aapka favorite superhero kaun sa hai? Well, mera favorite superhero to super stylish hai. Latest technology aur gadgets use karta hai. रात में उसकी पावर्स और ज्यादा स्ट्रॉन्ग हो जाती है एनी गेसेस यस यू गेस्ट इट राइट इट्स बैटमैन जी हाँ लौट रहा है बैटमैन द डार्क नाइट बड़े पर्दे पर नहीं बल्कि इथेरियम पर अपनी एटी फिफ्थ एनिवर्सरी का शानदार जश्न बैटमैन मनाएगा अपनी लेटेस्ट एनएफटी कलेक्शन के साथ 2022 बैट काउल बैटमैन थीम्ड एनएफटी सीरीज का डेब्यू हुआ था और अब द लेगेसी काउल्स कलेक्शन लॉन्च होगी 
ये एन कलेक्शन डीसी कॉमिक्स और वार्नर ब्रदर्स डिस्कवरी ग्रुप के साथ कोलैबोरेशन में बनाई गई है इसमें 11,544 डिजिटल कलेक्टेबल्स होंगे मार्च 29 को रिलीज हो रही ये कलेक्शन कैंडी डिजिटल पर 49.99 डॉलर्स पर अवेलेबल होगी बैटमैन द लेगेसी काउल पर बेस्ड इन थ्री कलेक्टेबल्स और आर्ट को क्रिएट किया है डीसी आर्टिस्ट पैब्लो एम कॉलर और राइटर डैन एबलेट ने अगर आपको म्यूजिक और एन दोनों से बेहद प्यार है तो अगली खबर आपके लिए ही है कुचेला म्यूजिक फेस्टिवल के बारे में तो आप जानते ही होंगे सोचिए अगर आपको इसके वीआईपी पासेस मिल जाए तो अरे मैं मजाक नहीं कर रही ये पॉसिबल है कैसे चलिए बताते हैं आपको कुचेला म्यूजिक फेस्टिवल ने अनाउंस किया है कुचेला की लॉन्च जो थ्री एन एफ टी कलेक्शन की सीरीज है और इसे एन एफ टी मार्केट प्लेस ओपन सी के साथ पार्टनरशिप में प्रोड्यूस किया गया है अवलांश ब्लॉक चेन आरोप बेस्ड ये कलेक्शन फेस्टिवल के एक्सक्लूसिव वी आई पी एरिया के लिए एक्सेस की तरह काम करेगी साथ ही इसके जरिए लिमिटेड एडिशन होल्डर्स ओनली मर्चेंडाइज भी अवेलेबल होंगे पांच मार्च को लॉन्च हुआ इसका पहला कीप सेक था दी आई पी पास प्लस ओइस लाउंज कीप सेक जो फेस्टिवल के वीकेंड के लिए अवेलेबल होगा ये पास होल्डर्स ओनली ओएस लाउंज के लिए एक्सेस अनलॉक करेगा ओएस लाउंज एक पीसफुल स्पेस ऑफर करता है जिसमें कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री ड्रिंक्स की रेंज तो होगी ही साथ ही मेंबर्स के लिए एक शेडेड लाउंज भी अवेलेबल है 1499 डॉलर्स ईच पर प्राइस ये 1000 टोकन्स अप्रैल फर्स्ट तक परचेज के लिए ओपन सी के डेडिकेटेड कलेक्शन पेज पर अवेलेबल होंगे सेकेंड ड्रॉप में कैनवस वेलकम बॉक्स की होगा जो मार्च 25 को लॉन्च होगा और यूनिक मर्चेंडाइज डिजिटल कंटेंट और रोज गार्डन वीआईपी एरिया एक्सेस ऑफर करेगा कुछ चेला का फाइनल ड्रॉप यानी आर्टिस्ट कोलैबोरेशन कीप से एक लॉन्च होगा मिड अप्रैल में और इसकी आर्टिस्ट आइडेंटिटी और होल्डर्स बेनिफिट मार्च एंड के करीब अनाउंस किए जाएंगे वेल दैट्स ऑल इन दिस एपिसोड ऑफ एन एफ टी वर्स वक्त आ गया है आपसे विदा लेने का लेकिन एन एफ टी की दुनिया से ऐसी ही मजेदार खबरें मैं रुचि शर्मा आपके लिए हर हफ्ते लाती रहूंगी टिल देन डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू थ्री डॉट टीवी और इसी तरह की इंटरेस्टिंग अपडेट्स के लिए लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट थ्री वो सी वी डॉट आई ओ पर या फिर क्यू आर कोड को स्कैन करें Hello and welcome to 3 Dot TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. The Hong Kong Monetary Authority started a regulatory sandbox to give potential stablecoin issuers an environment for developing and testing certain operations without penalties. Well, the sandbox provides regulatory leeway and aligns with Hong Kong's plan to regulate fiat-backed stablecoins, which are cryptocurrencies spec to the value of sovereign currencies like the US or Hong Kong dollar. The regulator said on Tuesday. Applicants should have genuine interest in developing a stablecoin issuance business in Hong Kong with a reasonable business plan and their proposed operations under the sandbox arrangement will be conducted within limited scope and in a risk controllable manner the HKMA notice said in December the jurisdiction's regulator started seeing public views on its regulatory proposals for stablecoins including requiring issuers to be licensed in order to operate in Hong Kong The HKMA wishes to leverage the sandbox arrangement to communicate supervisory expectations to parties interested in issuing fiat reference stable coins in Hong Kong as well as to obtain feedback from participants on the proposed regulatory requirements the notice said That's all in this update keep watching feed.tv TV for more such stories and do log on to our website www.tvstv.io or scan the QR code This is me Vishakha Thakur signing off नमस्कार मैं हूं रुचि शर्मा
भारतीय यात्रियों का सबसे पुराना हम सफर इंडियन रेलवे जो राज्यों को जोड़ती है परिवारों को मिलाती है लोगों के बीच दूरियां मिटाती है सफर सुहाना बनाती है अपने सुखद अनुभव से भारतीयों को लुभाती है दशकों पुरानी ये रेलगाड़ी सुविधा अब वक्त के साथ बदल रही है या यूँ कहे की बदलते वक्त और तकनीक के साथ कंधे ऐसी कंधा मिलाकर विकास के मार्ग आरोप अग्रसर है याद है आपको वो वक्त जब टिकट खिड़की पर लगी लंबी कतार में घंटों खड़े होने के बाद टिकट खरीदी जाती थी फिर वक्त बदला और वेब टू के जमाने में ये टिकट्स ऑनलाइन खरीदी जाने लगी लेकिन अब वेब थ्री के जमाने में ये टिकट्स ब्लॉकचेन पर बतौर एन भी बुक होने लगी हैं। यकीन नहीं होता ना कि किस रफ्तार से इंडिया डिजिटल हो रहा है आई आर सी टी सी की इस लेटेस्ट पहल के जरिए रेलवे न सिर्फ ब्लॉकचेन के साथ अपना ट्रैक जोड़ रहा है बल्कि इसकी शुरुआत भी बड़े ही आध्यात्मिक तरीके से हुई है 11 जनवरी को अयोध्या में हुई रामलला की प्राण प्रतिष्ठा के मौके पर आई आर सी टी सी ने एक नई ट्रेन की शुरुआत की जिसे नाम दिया गया है आस्था आई आर सी टी सी ने दो सौ आस्था ट्रेन शुरू की है जो भारत की छियासठ लोकेशन से श्रद्धालुओं को अयोध्या तक का सफर तय करा रही है रामलला के दर्शन के प्रार्थी लाखों करोड़ों श्रद्धालुओं की मनोकामना पूरी कर रही है ये ट्रेन इस ट्रेन से जुड़ी खास बात ये है कि इस ट्रेन की टिकट्स असल में एन टिकट होगी जो न सिर्फ ब्लॉकचेन पर दर्ज होगी बल्कि श्रद्धालुओं के लिए रामलला के दर्शन की एक सुंदर यादगार की तरह काम करेगी जो हमेशा उन्हें याद दिलाएगी की रामलला के दर्शन का अनुभव कितना अद्भुत था यही वजह है की आस्था ट्रेन में सफर करने के बाद कई श्रद्धालुओं ने फेसबुक व्हाट्सएप ट्विटर और लिंक जैसे सोशल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म्स पर अपनी एन टिकट की फोटो के साथ साथ अपना शानदार अनुभव शेयर किया इस बेहतरीन सफर के अलावा यात्री आईआरसीटीसी आस्था ट्रेन वेब एप्लीकेशन के जरिए एक्सक्लूसिव डिजिटल कंटेंट एक्सेस कर रहे हैं जो उन्हें सुविधा अनुसार कई भाषाओं में पहुँचाया जा रहा है आई की इस ऐप में कई भाषाओं में ऑडियो फीचर भी उपलब्ध है जो यात्रा और अन्य सुविधाओं के बारे में जरूरी जानकारी देता है इतना ही नहीं आई की तरफ से मुहैया कराई गई बुकलेट गाइड की मदद से यात्री अयोध्या में मौजूद और भी कई धार्मिक धरोहरों के बारे में जान सकते हैं इससे उनके आध्यात्मिक सफर का अनुभव और बेहतर होगा इसके साथ ही हर पैसेंजर कोच में एक कोच लीडर भी मौजूद होगा जो श्रद्धालुओं के इस धार्मिक सफर को और सुखद बनाएगा वाकई आई की ये पहल सराहनीय है जो आस्था और तकनीक का एक ऐसा अनूठा संगम लेकर आई है जिसका उल्लेख डिजिटल इंडिया के इतिहास में सुनहरे शब्दों से लिखा जाएगा इस खास स्टोरी में फिलहाल इतना ही ऐसी ही दिलचस्प स्टोरीज के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉलो टीवी और ज्यादा अपडेट्स के लिए लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू पर या फिर क्यू कोड को स्कैन करें Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. This is Shikhar Singh. The meme coin market has been experiencing a strong uptrend, outperforming the altcoin market. Broader market optimism has prompted analysts to predict a massive price increases in meme coin projects ranging from 5 to 100x in 2024. Given the biggest growth opportunity right ahead, uh, investors are holding meme coins in large sum this year. While the surge of meme coins is causing speculations of repeat of the 2021 season, the scenarios this time around seems quite different that may keep upward trend rally perfectly intact. Let's consider some meme coins performance and the factor propelling their upsurge. 
at the top of the list is Shiba Inu. So Shiba Inu, a top canine team meme coin, has experienced a significant price increase of over 200% in February and remains a popular investment option. It has also become the first top meme coin to adopt an advanced FHE technique for advanced uh, enhanced security and launched the Shib name service in March. Fully homomorphic encryption is a new cryptographic technique that enables developers to perform computations on encrypted data, revolutionizing the relationship between data processing and privacy. Another meme coin leading the rally is Bonk. The first meme coin on the Solana network has also gained popularity and utility as a meme coin to return liquidity to the Solana DEX ecosystem. In February, Bonk's price rose more than 150%, indicating continuous growth. Despite a 40% decrease from its all-time high, its track record suggests it could increase by up to a 5x before the end of 2024. Another Solana-based meme coin, WEN, has also gained attention and benefited 1 million wallets. WEN's goal is to permanently spread awareness and its value has increased by over 300% in February. The coin's success has raised expectations for its raise in 2024. Dog Whiff Hat, another meme coin on the Solana network, has seen a 500% increase in traction and set a new all-time high in 2024 about $1.5. Developed to track transactions and on-chain data for Solana and Solana-related tokens, Whiff gained popularity after being listed on Binance. Whiff also shot up late Jan 2024 as asset management firm Franklin Templeton also praised the Solana network in a tweet. Smog, another meme coin based on the Solana blockchain launched uh, in February, has also quickly gained popularity and is now available on Ethereum for better accessibility and affordability. Smog's viral airdrops on social media platforms are its main attraction, with 30% of the token supply allocated for airdrops and 50% for marketing, making it a valuable meme coin. Smog coin exploded 391% this week to attain $265 million market capitalization. Cat-themed coins including Taylor Swift's Cat, Banana Cat and Pop Cat have seen significant gains with Taylor Swift's Cat token increasing 25-fold in the past 7 days. The cat-themed meme category with a market capitalization of $55 billion surpasses liquid staking layer 2s and gaming tokens. Doge, the original meme coin, dominates with a market capitalization exceeding $20 billion. The sector has also experienced a 84% surge in the past week with notable performers like Sheeb, Pepe, Bonk, Dog Whiff Hat, Floki and Popcat contributing billions of dollars to their market caps. Other significant gainers include Miro and Mock. Solana, a blockchain platform known for its low transaction costs, has become a popular platform for trading meme coins featuring caricatures of public figures like Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Ethereum's popularity is also reaching its highest level and its price also soared past $4,000 level. And with its latest 10 can upgrade scheduled on March 13th, all eyes are on Ethereum, leading to a surge in demand for Ethereum-based meme coins like Pepe and Dog with Hat, causing investors to double their portfolios. The Ethereum network's revenue reached a two-year high this week due to speculative frenzy with the meme coins. The main its revenue from a network fees reached $193 million, the highest since May 2022 and a 78% increase from last week. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3.tv or log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Hello and a very warm welcome, I am Ruchi Sharma. The newly launched Spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds in the United States are overwhelmed by growing investor appetite. The investor frenzy witnessed a tsunami of volume for the alternative product. On March 5th, as price of Bitcoin price hit a new all-time high, trading volume of Spot BTC ETFs hit a milestone of $10 billion. These are banana numbers for ETFs under two months old, Bloomberg ETF analyst Eric Balchunas said in a March 5th ex-post reporting the figures. 
BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin ETF saw the most volume at $3.7 billion, while the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust and the Fidelity Wise Origin Bitcoin Fund respectively tallied $2.8 billion and $2 billion as per Otaviani's figures. Bitcoin saw significant price swings over the US trading day, hitting a new all-time high of $69,200, momentarily then falling 12% to a low of $60,860. Bitcoin has partially recovered to $63,350 at the time of writing. IBIT and FBTC both fell around 8.6% on the day with other spot Bitcoin ETFs recording similar price drops according to Google Finance. Investors have piled into the funds at a historic clip since their January 11th launch with total assets in the 10 US spot Bitcoin funds on the market swelling to nearly $50 billion. What interests investors? The funds allow buying virtual digital assets through their brokerage accounts without having to go to a crypto exchange or to funds that track Bitcoin's price through futures contracts. Meanwhile, an interesting trend has emerged in recent times. Only about 4% of the more than 3,000 listed US ETFs have more than $10 billion in assets according to Bloomberg Intelligence. BlackRock has achieved the feat at a breakneck speed. Nine of the Bitcoin funds were new to the market in January, while Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust converted into an ETF with almost $30 billion of existing assets the day the others launched. Investors have since pulled more than $8 billion from the fund, which charges a substantially higher fee than its competitors. Grayscale's 1.5% annual fee would generate about $400 million in annual revenue for the asset manager if the fund's average assets remained around current levels. That's all in the story for now. This is me, Ruchi Sharma, signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information and stories, log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. What's up gamers? Who can forget Mike Tyson knocking out Marvis Fraser, son of former heavyweight champion Joe Fraser in measly 30 seconds. Get out of here very, very quickly. Uppercut and Marvis is hurt. Fraser is down. Joe Cortez moves in to have a look. Still can't get over Muhammad Ali swatting Sonny Liston in the world heavyweight rematch at Lewiston in Manet which is arguably the most famous photo in sport. Well, if you're someone who loves boxing matches, there's a game made just for you. Stumble Upon Rumble, it seems easy, but it's hard to master. Stumble Upon Rumble is the first 100% skill-based play-to-earn game. It takes players back to the old days of gaming, where skill was all that mattered. This is strengthened by the arcade pixel art theme it is set in. The game is a combat action game that allows players to perform two actions, move and attack. Players can move in eight directions, kick, punch or block to protect themselves. Game modes can present different types of opponents such as clan battles, AI characters with special abilities and player versus player or player versus AI game modes. Stumble Upon Rumble brings real money gaming to the blockchain through these game modes allowing up to 30 players in a session. The game is structured as a semi-sandbox allowing uh, for various game modes and mini games making it a diverse experience. Oh by the way, Stumble Upon Rumble eliminates entry barriers like payment gates or in-game stores accommodating any type of player. Crazy right? In-game betting in the game involves placing bets on oneself using glove tokens with stakes classified into high, low, medium and zero levels. The winner gets to keep the tokens but a percentage fee is burned to enhance the deflation of the game. Players can stake on any top player in a square up with a fixed reward of 0.5% of the lowest total stake. Idle players or passive token holders can view historical and current data to make informed decisions. Staking will be closely monitored to curb collision between players with stakes. Stumble Upon Rumble is also social, allowing players to gather in servers of 30 to 40 people to watch each other fight and socialize. Players can earn glove tokens or special NFTs from the game's tournaments and mini-games. 
stumble upon rumble in game nfts are purely cosmetic adaptations allowing players to create unique characters customized fighters hats and arenas can be customized according to player preferences the game's in-game NFTs can be acquired through various methods including purchasing directly from the game's website using Ethereum, in-game sales using glove tokens and community rewards. Of the many things I find interesting about Stumble Upon Rumble, one of the most intriguing is the fact that the game is focused on creating a level playing field as opposed to games assigned with the ability to give players unfair advantage depending on their ability to acquire such. To build a gaming fan base, the game has its own version of Trollbox, where players can interact if they choose to stay away from the action. The game reignites a nostalgic feeling as a pixel-based game and even allows players to fully customize them through NFTs. Also look at the characters, they resemble famous boxers like Muhammad Ali, Marvin Hagler and Kelly Pavlik. I know your pins and needles to know where the game is available at. So the game is set to be listed on Epic Games Store as an early access version. Stay tuned. Well, we will keep updating for more such updates. Until then, keep watching 3.0TV. Do like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, do log on to our website www.3verstv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. The Indian government has advised tech businesses creating new artificial intelligence products to get official approval before releasing them. The Indian IT ministry produced an advice on March 1st that states this approval has to be given before unreliable or still trial AI technologies are made public. These tools also need to be identified as potentially erroneous query replies. Furthermore, because general elections are expected this summer, the warning asked platforms to ensure that their tools will not threaten the integrity of the electoral process. This new advice was issued soon after Google and its AI tool Gemini were criticized by a top Indian minister for providing inaccurate or biased results. Google apologized for Gemini's shortcomings and said it may not always be reliable, particularly for current social topics. Rajiv Chandrasekhar, India's Deputy IT Minister, said on X, safety and trust is platform's legal obligation. Sorry, unreliable does not exempt from law. In November, the Indian government said it would be introducing new regulations that would help combat the spread of AI-generated deepfakes prior to its upcoming elections, a move also implemented by regulators in the United States. However, officials in India received pushback from the tech community regarding its latest AI advisory, saying that India is a leader in the tech space and it would be a crime if India regulated itself out of this leadership. Chandrasekhar responded to this noise and confusion in a follow-up post on X, saying that there should be legal consequences for platforms that enable or directly output unlawful content. Meanwhile, on Feb 8th, Microsoft partnered with Indian AI startup Sarvam to bring an Indic voice large language model to its Azure AI infrastructure to reach more users in the Indian subcontinent. That's all in the story for now. This is Miruti Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information and stories, log on to our website at www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code.
with three auto TVs, stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with three auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. Readout OTV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3 Dollar TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Bitcoin has been climbing even higher over the past month, notching new all-time highs on the way with every dip bought up quickly, but the largest crypto may be poised for a cool-off phase and this want. Digital asset analytics firm Swiss Block said in a note on Wednesday that Bitcoin nearly doubled in price from $38,000 in late Jan without any meaningful pullbacks and a cooling period could be imminent. Nothing rallies in a straight line, not even BTC, Swiss Block analyst said in a Telegram update. A counter move seems to be near. On the four hour chart, Swiss Block analysts forecast a negative bearish divergence between Bitcoin's price inching higher and a falling relative strength index foreshadowing lower prices. Well, the RSI is a widely used momentum indicator that measures the speed and size of an asset's price changes. The pullback could materialize as soon as in the next few days, according to a chart by Swiss block analyst Henrik Zeberg. But in the bigger picture, lower prices will be a temporary setback before the uptrend eventually resumes to new highs. We see BTC dropping to $58,000 to $59,000 in the next move, they said, representing a 20% decline from current prices. But the top is not there. Another investment firm, Matrix Port, noted on Tuesday that Bitcoin's rally is running out of fuel and is entering a consolidation period. This bull market still has headaches, but the divergence between a declining RSI and still high Bitcoin prices could signal that uh, BTC needs to consolidate before rallying again Matrix Sport Analyst said. That's all in the story. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3voicetv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. Defund crypto exchange Gemini and crypto lender Genesis have failed to get relief from the US federal court. Their motion seeking dismissal of the US Securities and Exchange Commission case was denied by a New York judge. Edgardo Ramos of the Southern District of New York found that the regulatory agency's complaint plausibly alleges that the two firms violated securities laws, allegedly offering and selling unregistered securities to retail investors through the now defunct Gemini Earn program. A ruling on a motion to dismiss generally has to accept the plaintiff's facts as true and doesn't indicate how the court might ultimately rule on the SEC's allegations about whether Earn violated securities laws. Gemini Earn was first available to retail customers in February 2021, offering as much as 8% interest on crypto tokens invested through the program. According to the SEC's complaint, Gemini Earn had approximately 340,000 retail users and $900 million in assets on its platform when in November 2022, Genesis halted withdrawals, citing withdrawal requests which have exceeded our current liquidity. Against the backdrop of an escalating and public dispute between the leadership of the two firms, Gemini Earn was shuttered on Jan 10, 2023. Two days later, the SEC filed charges against both companies. The same month, Genesis filed for bankruptcy. In May 2023, Gemini and Genesis both filed motions to dismiss the case against them as well as subsequent alternative motions to strike the SEC's request for permanent injunctive relief and disgorgement against both firms. Judge Ramos denied each of them and ruled that the case be allowed to proceed. Meanwhile, Gemini co-founders Tyler and Cameron Winklevoss have vowed to return 100% of Gemini earned customers' funds worth roughly $1.1 billion when Genesis' bankruptcy case ends. 
That's all the story for now. This is me, Ruchi Sharma, signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 Dotto TV. And for more information stories, log on to our website, www.3watchtv.io. Scan the QR code. What's up gamers? Is it just me or you all feel like CJ from GTA? Ah oh, shit. Here we go again. I was so not prepared for this week after a long weekend. Anyways, let's get to the point. So all my gaming junkies would agree to this that GTA 6 is the most anticipated game set to be released between January and April 2025 for Xbox Series and PlayStation 5. But what if I tell you that Web3 has its own version of GTA? Gamers, fasten your seat belts, ready yourself because Wilder World is ready to set the stage on fire. Web3 game Wilder World has been given a listing on the Epic Games Store ahead of its as of yet unscheduled launch. The publisher of Wilder World is referring to Wilder World as the ultimate game. The game also offers the free roam a virtual world that begins in Miami, a metaverse city to explore, race, socialize and much more according to a press release. Every object in the world including furniture tools, land and avatars will be traded into digital assets on the wilder world market. The game's team said that in order to address the flaws in classic AAA games like Grand Theft Auto and Cyberpunk, the game will combine leading game genres into a single immersive experience. The team plans to create a single and all-encompassing game called Wilder World that combines the racing, mining and first-person shooter genres. A proprietary blockchain will be used to build the Wilder World. In order to maintain low fees, the team is working with Polygon and Celestia to build a custom, scalable blockchain as well as working with a meta gravity to power virtual worlds and thousands of players according to the news announcement. It also said by the game's developers that a proprietary cloud gaming system will eventually power the game. The game website states in a blog post that we are actively developing our own cloud gaming service that provides increased reliability and hardware guarantees as well as optimization for metaverse and web3 gaming with the use of nvidia gpus however the post notes that this is an early venture and goes on to say that a launch wilder world will be available on nvidia's streaming gaming service geforce now the team's roadmap indicates that limited functionality will be launched to players over the next 12 to 18 months with the racing portion of the game available during what they're calling act 1 and the combat portion available as act 3 Well, we will definitely review when the game gets launched. Until then, keep watching Free Dotto TV. Do like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, do log on to our website www.3versetv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to Free Dotto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Virtual digital assets are making a habit of moving against broader financial markets, especially equity markets. In the last 24 hours, similar pattern has emerged. The equities are trading lower while VDAs are gaining strength, helping Bitcoin to erase most of the week's losses. Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari's hawkish comments sent the S&P 500 and Nasdaq lower, while Bitcoin, the largest crypto by market cap, rose above $69,000 mark before retracing to current level of $68,720, up by 3.4%. 
Of late, financial markets are witnessing frequent bouts of volatility as macro indicators presented mixed cues. Today's U.S. non-farm payrolls data would provide clarity on how the interest rate scenarios are shaping up, while well, the broader crypto markets are closely tracking Bitcoin. Ethereum, the second largest crypto by market cap, continues to hold $3,300 level. It recently exchanged hands at $3,329, up by 0.1%. Elsewhere, Binance, ADA, XRP, Dogecoin, AVA were trending higher. Well, the global crypto market cap increased 2.2% to $2.55 trillion in the last 24 hours. On the other hand, the total crypto market volume fell 4% to $96.8 billion and total volume in DeFi is currently $10 billion. And all stable coins are $91 billion, representing 10% and 94% respectively of total crypto market 24-hour volume. But coin's dominance is currently 52.8%, up by 0.5% over the day. The IC15 index barometer of top 15 tokens rose 2% to 86,198. Meanwhile, as per the latest data from Commodity Futures Trading Commission, hedge funds and trading advisors have ramped up their bearish bets on Bitcoin futures. Simultaneously, the so-called futures funding rate payments to traders based on the difference between perpetual contract markets and spot prices is around a record high level. Funding rates represent traders' sentiments in the perpetual swaps market. Binance has removed support for Bitcoin ordinals, a digital asset inscribed on Satoshi, the lowest denomination of Bitcoin, as part of its effort to streamline its NFT marketplace. Well, users will no longer be able to trade Bitcoin ordinals on the Binance NFT marketplace from April 18th, and the exchange advised users to withdraw their Bitcoin ordinals before May 18th. Airdrops, benefits or utilities linked to Bitcoin ordinals will no longer be supported from April 10th. Binance also advised Runstone's holders to withdraw their NFTs by this day to ensure they still receive associated tokens, utilities and benefits. The creators of popular Bitcoin ordinals project called Runstone sent the original parent inscription valued at 8 BTC, around $525,000 worth to a wallet purported to belong to mythic Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto. Franklin Templeton, digital assets recently featured the rise of ordinal inscriptions in a new prospectus, highlighting the positive momentum in innovations on the Bitcoin blockchain. Singapore's Monetary Authority of Singapore has granted 3SR Markets its full major payment institution license, allowing its to, it to conduct over-the-counter spot and market-making services under the country's central bank. While well, the GSR Markets, founded in 2013 in the US, facilitates OTC crypto trading, derivatives, market-making and venture capital investments. 
Singapore's regulatory efforts have led to many crypto companies seeking to offer their services within the country. With Crypto.com, Coinbase and Ripple receiving formal approval in 2023 and OKX and Bitco receiving in-principle approvals in 2024. Singapore is also cracking down on retail speculation by expanding its Payment Services Act, which includes custodial services for DPTs, token transfers, exchange and cross-border fund transfers. The Shribainu magazine article Building the Future, K9 Finance's strategic vision for a DeFi revolution on Shibarium outlines K9 Finance's strategic plan to enhance the decentralized finance landscape on the Shibarium blockchain. Well, the roadmap consists of three phases, starting with the introduction of Hesper in late quarter two and ending with the launch of Boro on mainnet. The final phase, uh, K9A, aims to re realize K9 Finance's vision for a decentralized liquid staking product on Shibaria. Buzz, the K9 Finance DAO founder, emphasizes aligning the project's trajectory with the community's vision and highlights Shibarian's unique strengths, including its technological capabilities and the vibrant Shibami community as a formidable contender in the blockchain space. In the upcoming segment, we will update you about the following news. Restaking becomes Ethereum's second largest DeFi sector. Prisma stakes six million dollars funding accelerates DeFi staking innovation. Coin DCX Mesh partner to let users integrate DeFi wallets from within its app. Stay tuned for more updates. Since the Ethereum blockchain transitioned into a proof-of-stake network after the merge event in September 2022, there has been a significant increase in liquid staking protocols, including liquid restaking tokens. Eigenlayer, Ethereum's second-largest DeFi protocol by total value locked, is currently worth $12.4 billion and allows validators to earn extra rewards by securing actively validated services through restaking their staked ETH. This innovative concept allows validators to secure new Ethereum features and potentially earn additional rewards. While Coinbase highlighted the emergence of a burgeoning ecosystem surrounding LRTs mirroring the success of LSTs. This ecosystem now boasts over half a dozen protocols, each offering its own iteration of liquid restaking tokens, featuring diverse incentives and airdrop schemes. However, Coinbase also highlighted the expected challenges for LRTs in the near term, with Eigen DA expected to roll out in early quarter 2, 2024. Prisma Stake has secured $6 million in funding, marking a significant milestone in its journey to reshape the DeFi landscape. While the platform is revolutionizing the DeFi space with its holistic approach to staking, facilitating support for various blockchain protocols, including Ethereum virtual machine compatible chains and Layer 2 solutions. The initiative aims to unlock novel opportunities for users to generate passive income through diverse staking mechanisms, including ETH crypto staking and altcoin staking. The recent $8 million funding milestone is a testament to investors' confidence in Prisma Stake's vision and strategy. While the platform is committed to introducing advanced features and diverse staking packages that cater to a broad spectrum of users from novices to seasoned investors in the DeFi space. And Prisma Steak stands out for its uh, user-centric design, offering flexible staking options and focusing on security and reliability through the state-of-art smart contract technology. Coin DCX, an Indian crypto exchange platform, has announced a partnership with US-based fintech firm Mesh to integrate DeFi wallets within its platform. 
Well, the aim is to simplify connectivity between centralized exchanges and the five wallets. Coin DCX catering to a user base of 16 million recently declared its compliance with India's Financial Intelligence Unit, certifying its business to uh, safe to engage within India. Sumit Gupta, co-founder of Coin DCX, called Mesh a game changer for the platform as it offers advanced API integration that could simplify digital asset management for users. Mesh's co-founder and CEO Bam Zizi expressed excitement about the impact this collaboration will have on India's crypto sector. Coin D6 has been establishing itself as an investor-popular crypto exchange in India's evolving landscape, allowing users of the now defunct CoinX to access funds left logged on the exchange. The exchange has also initiated its new crypto awareness campaign called No Bitcoin, providing a detailed overview of the world's first and most expensive cryptocurrency. In the upcoming segment, we will update you about the following news. Google considers charging for AI-powered search. Samsung launches AI-powered home appliances with inbuilt Wi-Fi internal cameras. OnePlus introduces new AI eraser for image editing. Stay tuned for more updates. Google is considering charging for premium features powered by generative artificial intelligence, marking the first time the company has put any of its core products behind a paywall. This would be the biggest shake-up of its search business as it continues to grapple with technology that threatens its advertising business. Well, Google is looking at options including adding certain AI-powered search features to its premium subscription services which already offer access to its new Gemini AI Assistant in Gmail and Docs. Engineers are developing the technology needed to deploy the service, but executives have not yet made a final decision on whether or when to launch it. Google's traditional search engine would remain free of charge, while ads would continue to appear alongside search results, even for subscribers. Charging would represent the first time Google has made people pay for enhancements to its core search product. Samsung has launched a range of AI-powered home appliances at its Mumbai store, contributing 70% to its India sales. The appliances include washing machines, refrigerators, microwaves and residential air conditioners. These devices feature Wi-Fi, internal cameras and AI chips for convenient home management. The refrigerator can automatically suggest meals based on stored items, while the air conditioner sends notifications to start or turn off appliances. The microwave can customize recipes to low-fat versions and the washing machine can learn laundry routines over time. While well, the AI wash feature creates custom wash recipes based on load weight, fabric type, softness, water level, soiling level and detergent level. This innovation aims to improve India homes, living experiences, reduce energy consumption and contribute to a greener planet. OnePlus has introduced a new AI eraser feature for its smartphone users, which will be gradually rolled out to various devices starting this month. The feature based on generative AI technology aims to liberate user creativity and revolutionize photo editing. Users can select and remove unwanted objects within images from photo gallery and the underlying AI analyzes the selected area and generates a replacement background that blends into the surrounding environment while suiting the overall style of the image. OnePlus plans to introduce more AI features this year. The feature is built from genuine user needs and aims to provide a more convenient future for all. OnePlus recently launched the Nord CE4 smartphone in India, priced at Rs 24,999 and powered by an Octaco Qualcomm Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 chipset and 8GB RAM. The device will go on sale from April 4 onwards. That's all in the bulletin today. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. For more on such updates and market news, please log on to our website, www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code.
Hello and welcome to 3.0 TV. This is Shikha Singh. India has time and again proved its capabilities and prowess in information technology. The country is set to lead the world in the next generation technological advancement, the artificial intelligence. The confidence in uh, India's fine tech brain is bestowed by none other than Jensen Huang, chief executive in Nvidia AI super chip maker and the world's third largest company by market capitalization. Huang was speaking with media persons on the sidelines of Nvidia GPU technology technology conference on Tuesday in San Jose, California. India's technology professionals are emerging to be the front office of the world's artificial intelligence revolution by reskilling themselves with AI native skills, Huang said. India has the largest population of IT professionals, there is no question they will be reskilled for AI. When I meet with the leaders in India, it is very clear to them that this is one of the greatest opportunities for them to reskill themselves. Instead of the back of room companies, they will now become the front room of the companies where value is created. AI is used for engineering, marketing, sales, finance, business operations, marketing strategies, all of that is in front office. India is looking to come into the front office, he added. A day after announcing a new generation of AI chips that are 30 times more powerful than the preceding version, Huang also said that Nvidia is keen to participate in the Indian government's plan to procure 10,000 graphics processing units for domestic startups and researchers. The Union Cabinet recently approved the India AI mission with an outlay of 10,372 crore for five years to encourage AI development in the country. Under the mission, supercomputing capacity comprising over 10,000 GPUs will be made available to various stakeholders for creating an AI ecosystem. The centre is also planning to establish a public private partnership for AI computing, granting access to 10,000 GPUs for domestic research, academia, enterprises, and startups. Huang said the generative AI is creating a new industrial revolution. In the last industrial revolution, raw material was water and electricity. This time, it is data. Generative AI is a new type of factory, a new industrial revolution. I think AI has already made the greatest contribution to the world as you don't need to learn C++ anymore to be successful. You can be prompt engineer when my wife is talking to me, she is prompting, he added in jest. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3.0TV or log on to our website www.3verstv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Yamaha, a Japanese mobility manufacturer established in 1955, is all set to rev your hearts once again. From its first product Yamaha 125 Ya1 to its latest masterpiece Yamaha FZS 4.0, also known as the Lord of the Streets, Yamaha has remained committed not only to exhilarating biking experiences but also to riders' happiness and safety. And now Yamaha has filed a patent for augmented reality-based helmet for all the bike lovers out there. You must be wondering, how do these AR helmets work and will they revolutionize riding experience? Hello and welcome to Sweet Auto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur and you are watching our special show Metaverse Magic where we get you the latest updates from the Metaverse space. Amidst the buzz surrounding mixed reality headsets like the Apple Vision Pro and Meta Quest 3, the stage is set for Yamaha to lead the charge in immersive bike riding experience. A new patent from motorcycle manufacturer showcases the company's interest towards incorporating augmented reality into head protective gear helmets. Incorporating a head-up display design, the patent depicts four small cameras and an infrared light that enables information to be overlaid in a user's line of sight rather than having a fully immersive headset cover a user's eyes. Well, Yamaha's recent patent suggests that a form of AR headset may soon be available that will revolutionize the riding experience by providing real-time information and enhancing road safety standards. And 
now let's take a flight to Ayodhya, a city situated on the banks of Holy River Sadhu in Uttar Pradesh and explore the Ayodhya Metaverse initiative. Ever since the inauguration of Ram Mandir, more than 1 crore visitors have visited Ayodhya already. That's a huge number, big enough to discourage visitors from travelling to the holy place. Don't you worry, visitors will now have an option to undertake a virtual tour of key sites like Kanak Bhavan, Sita Rasoi, Rang Mehal and Nageshwar Nath Temple. Also, learn more about the historic and cultural importance of Ayodhya. As for the officials, a sum of Rs 30 lakh has been earmarked to start the project and final cost estimates will be known within two months. Well, creating digital replica seems exciting, but it is challenging at the same time. Arjuna Lens, a Mumbai-based company which deals with extended reality solutions, is all set to address this issue. Wondering how? Let me explain. Arjuna Lens recently represented India at the Game Developers Conference 2024 in San Francisco, USA. Interestingly, the event saw participation from top tech companies including the giants like Meta and Microsoft. Now, Arjuna Lens, which recently rolled out its Arjuna XR headset in India, also showcased cutting-edge solutions such as Arjuna HPSC, a high-performance spatial computing that allows XR developers to deliver highly immersive experiences creating AI-based applications. Well, with the help of companies such as Qualcomm, Siemens, NVIDIA and Unreal Engine, Arjuna Lens claims to have impacted over 72,000 learners in organizations such as Tata Technologies and Indian Armed Forces. So let's listen in to what Mr. Abhishek Tomar, the CTO and co-founder of Arjuna Lens has to say about the metaverse sector and how Arjuna Lens is driving innovation in India. This is a cutting-edge technology uh, which everybody knows the spatial computing, XR, AR, VR and behind the scene there is a huge uh, AI vacuum is there. Now if you see Ajna XR headset is the world lightest headset and there is a huge innovation and huge research uh, we have put it which set the benchmark in the world and we have partnered with Nvidia, we have partnered with Qualcomm, we have partnered with Siemens and like this, these are the big international players who have already partnered with NVIDIA and supporting our ecosystem. Other vertical is the defense vertical. We are working to upgrade the missile systems, to upgrade the tank systems, as well as we are making a situational awareness system through the glasses and predictive positions for uh, in, in the modern uh, warfare. It is helping as a battle of things. And now an exciting update for you all. Get ready for the third edition of Metaverse and Web3 Summit and Awards being hosted by Metaverse Entertainment World Show in Monaco from May 14 to 17, 2024. Well, for all those who don't know, this exclusive event celebrates pioneers in Web3, Metaverse, AI and NFTs. Now, among the nominees are Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Meta, Jensen Huang, co-founder of NVIDIA, Samara Cohen, Chief Investment Officer at BlackRock, and Meera Murthy, the CTO of OpenAI. Well, Metaverse is here to stay and such awards will not just boost the confidence of uh, industry players but also motivate them to develop exciting virtual worlds. This reminds me, Vitalik Buterin, speaking at the BYDL Asia conference, expressed optimism about Metaverse's potential and also laid emphasis on its potential to revolutionize online experiences by integrating crypto, virtual reality and artificial intelligence. Well, the Metaverse holds immense potential when harnessed effectively. And now, even Pakistan is exploring its applications to revolutionize education. Yes, you heard that right. The Information Technology University of Lahore just dropped a bombshell by launching Pakistan's first ever virtual reality-based classes in Metaverse in partnership with University of Denmark. Well, these innovative courses aim to provide students an immersive and interactive learning environment. Well, that's all in this episode of Metaverse Magic. I will be back with more such interesting updates from the Metaverse space. Do log on to our website www.treeverse.tv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off.
थ्री डॉटो टीवी स्टे कनेक्टेड विद द वर्ल्ड ऑफ ब्लॉक ट्रेन स्टे अप टू डेट विद इनफाइट वर्ल्ड ऑफ एन एफ टी कम एक्सप्लोर एंड इवॉल्व विथ थ्री डॉटो टीवी इन द मेटावर्स सो मेनी कॉइन्स सो मच वॉलिटिलिटी थ्री डॉटो टीवी डेलीवर्स द न्यूज दैट मैटर्स What's up gamers looking for a breather let me take you to a virtual trip to Vegas but remember what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas Las Vegas the city that never sleeps what could it possibly be like for a person to live in a city known as sin city where the only thing hotter than the bright lights is the sun Vegas the entertainment capital of a gambling mecca for millions every year from Morgan Freeman to Ben Campbell Everyone's going crazy over casino games. And with the busy schedule that we have, I know you don't want to miss out on core life experiences of playing casino games in Vegas. But now that you have the literal savior here, I'm going to tell you about casino games that you can play and earn cryptocurrencies. But today, here's a twist. We will be reviewing two games and gamers will have the final say which game is a hit, which game is a pass. So now this comes without saying that Rollbit is the king of casino games and it has established itself as a prominent player in the realm of crypto casinos and trading platforms since its inception in 2019 but a formidable contender has emerged Betroyal both Rollbit and Betroyal aren't just a crypto casino their sites also feature a sports book NFT marketplace and crypto trading So Rollbit might be a prominent uh, crypto casino platform but Rollbit's website in my opinion is a bit cluttered compared to Betroyal's website. Betroyal's website is like a site for a so rise, you know. Uh, like unlike a traditional uh, play to earn games where you have to sign in through your own MetaMask wallet, here in both the games you can just sign in with your email ID and then play the variety of games. Let us talk about the user base. Now it is self evident that the 2019 launch Rollbit boasts a user base of 2 million but Betroyal being launched in September 2023 has also rapidly amassed a substantial user base currently just over 10000 players Let's talk about the gameplay Rollbit is a comprehensive crypto gambling platform that also offers fair games sports book and NFT games The platform offers a variety of casino games and live streams and users can easily send money to the Rollbit address and convert it into dollars at a favorable rate. Rollbit is powered by major software providers like Betsoft, Evolution and NetEnt offering a vast library of slots, table games and live dealer games. The platform caters to all tastes offering classic fruit machines, 3D slots, classic table games and immersive live dealer games. Rollbit also features an active players chat allowing users to connect with each uh, gambler and discuss various topics. Where in Bet Royal apart from uh, offering similar functionalities like offering fair games, sports book and NFT games as Rollbit, Bet Royal also offers a unique staking program that provides a steady stream of passive income for its users. Bet Royal is also the first web3 online casino to integrate a tokenized asset marketplace offering exclusive discounts on luxury items like the designer clothing and jewelry. This unique offering could encourage increased wagering activity and deeper engagement with the Bet Royal brand. Let us talk about the rewards. Who doesn't love a good casino bonus? We know we do. This is why we start every casino test with an in-depth look into the bonus scheme. So what is the bottom line on both Rollbit and Bet Royal? In Bet Royal, users can earn BCR and tokens for holding their stake, allowing for the growth of token holdings over time. The platform also offers royal care packages for loyal users, providing free spins and bonus money. taking in locks vip treatment with exclusive bonus offers uh, and also allowing users to enjoy a lower wagering requirements or increased bonus amounts betroyal's newly introduced kings bank is a new collateralized lending service that allows players to use their valuable possessions as collateral replacing traditional cash or cryptocurrency deposits players can submit luxury items like designer watches jewelry or art pieces that they win in the game to receive instant credit for gameplay on the Bet Royal platform without liquidating crypto assets or depleting cash reserves but they've got the usual payment methods and there's not uh, much variety in the mix 
talking about Rollbit, any member on Rollbit, no matter how much or how little they wager, they can enjoy a host of benefits including daily bonus based on your profit and loss in the previous uh, 24 to 72 hours, rank up rewards as you level up in the VIP scheme, 5% instant rake back on any game you play. Rollbit has also introduced the version 1 Rollbot, an NFT that can be purchased from the casino granting a 10% increase in rewards. Players can also earn bonus balances for house uh, games like Extrolet with a 50% chance of doubling the bonus before withdrawal. Additionally, Rollbit has also introduced a profit-sharing scheme called Rollbit Lottery, which uses RLB's Solana-based token staking to create a lottery pool and distribute it among players. This initiative aims to reward loyal players with additional rewards. Okay, so let's do a quick pro and con check. Let's talk about Rollbit's pros first. All your favorite providers, in-house developer probably fair games, excellent sportbook, NFT loot boxes and games, you can also live stream your games. Now let's talk about Vetroyal's pros. Customizable homepage, protest payout, blended odds, same race multis, same game multis. Now let's talk about Rollbit's cons. Does not support many languages. Not many low house edge games. No sign up bonus. Now let's talk about Vetroyal's cons. No live streaming, limited payment options, and no sign up bonus. So we have witnessed how the gambling industry is picking up and we have a very special guest with us, Mr. Rohas Nagpal, to share a few details about the gambling industry. Sure. So uh, I was actually talking about the gambling sector more than the gaming sector because right. gambling finance seems to have picked up in a big way. And we must realize there are many countries in the world where gambling is legally permitted. So there it is not a crime. Whereas in places like India, that may be illegal. But yes, gambling I feel is picking up big time. Gambling 5, what we call. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3.0TV or log on to our website www.3verstv.io or scan the QR code to know more. TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3.0 TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3.0 TV delivers the news that matters. CTC ने आस्था ट्रेन और तेजस ट्रेन के लिए जारी की NFT टिकट्स। Star Trek Collectibles की लेटेस्ट कलेक्शन हुई लॉन्च। Core Foundation लेकर आ रहा है एक नई NFT मार्केटप्लेस। Hello and a very warm welcome to all of you. IRCTC की NFT टिकटिंग पहल से लेकर Star Trek के रियल लाइफ फिगरेंस तक कई मजदार NFT अपडेट्स मैं रुचि शर्मा आपके लिए लेकर आई हूं तो हो जाइए NFT वर्स के इस खास एपिसोड के लिए तैयार इसमें आपके फेवरेट NFT प्रोजेक्ट्स की डिटेल्स तो होंगी ही साथ ही हम एक स्पेशल गेस्ट से भी करेंगे मुलाकात लेकिन सबसे पहले जानते हैं पिछले हफ्ते कैसा रहा NFT मार्केट का हाल क्रिप्टो करेंसीज में पिछले हफ्ते आई गिरावट का असर NFT मार्केट पर भी देखा गया पिछले सात दिनों में NFT सेल्स करीब 16% गिरकर टोटल 358 मिलियन डॉलर्स रही। CryptoSlam.io के डेटा के मुताबिक वीकली NFT सेल्स के हिसाब से टॉप थ्री ब्लॉकचेन सभी में वीक ऑन वीक गिरावट देखी गई है। इस हफ्ते भी टॉप पर रही इथेरियम जिसने करीब 21% की गिरावट के साथ 129 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स दर्ज की। तो वहीं दूसरे तीसरे पायदान पर ही सोलाना जिसने 5% गिरावट के साथ 61.68 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स अपने नाम की तो वहीं चौथे और पांचवे पायदान पर रही पॉलीगॉन और बीएनबी चेन पिछले हफ्ते लीडिंग एनएफटी कलेक्शंस रही अनकैटेगराइज्ड ऑर्डिनल्स जिसने 43% उछाल के साथ 57 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स दर्ज की तो वहीं सेकंड हाईएस्ट एनएफटी कलेक्शन रही BAYC जिसने 14% बढ़त के साथ 13 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स अपने नाम की एनएफटी टिकट की गाड़ी तेजी पकड़ रही है क्वाइट लिटरली क्योंकि IRCTC ने अयोध्या के लिए आस्था ट्रेन और दिल्ली लखनऊ के बीच चलने वाली तेजस ट्रेन के लिए NFT टिकट्स जारी की हैं। 
22 जनवरी को अयोध्या में हुई राम लला की प्राण प्रतिष्ठा के मौके पर आई ने एक नई ट्रेन की शुरुआत की जिसे नाम दिया गया आस्था आई ने 200 आस्था ट्रेन शुरू की हैं जो भारत की छियासठ लोकेशन से श्रद्धालुओं को अयोध्या तक का सफर तय करा रही हैं। इस ट्रेन के टिकट बतौर एन जारी की जा रही है जो न सिर्फ ब्लॉकचेन पर दर्ज होगी बल्कि श्रद्धालुओं के लिए राम लला के दर्शन के लिए एक सुंदर यादगार की तरह काम करेगी यात्री आई आस्था ट्रेन वेब एप्लीकेशन के जरिए एक्सक्लूसिव डिजिटल कॉन्टेंट एक्सेस कर रहे हैं जो उन्हें सुविधा अनुसार कई भाषाओं में पहुँचाया जा रहा है आई की इस ऐप में कई भाषाओं में ऑडियो फीचर भी उपलब्ध है जो यात्रा और अन्य सुविधाओं के बारे में जरूरी जानकारी देता है इतना ही नहीं आई की तरफ से मुहैया कराई गई बुकलेट गाइड की मदद से यात्री अयोध्या में मौजूद और भी कई धार्मिक धरोहरों के बारे में जान सकते हैं उससे उनके आध्यात्मिक सफर का अनुभव और बेहतर होगा आई ने इस एन प्रोजेक्ट को दिल्ली लखनऊ रूट के लिए तेजस ट्रेन की टिकट के साथ आगे बढ़ाया है इस प्रोजेक्ट से जुड़ी खास बात यह है कि ये टिकट्स होली के पावन अवसर पर जारी की जा रही हैं। यानी दिल्ली से लखनऊ के बीच चलने वाली दो तेजस ट्रेन के लिए ये एन टिकट सिर्फ 20 मार्च से 2 अप्रैल तक उपलब्ध होंगी रंगों से भरे इस होली के त्योहार की पूरी छवि छलक रही है इन रंगीली एन एफ में जिसे यात्री अगर चाहे तो अपनी तस्वीरों के साथ थोड़ा पर्सनलाइज टच दे सकते हैं साथ ही यात्री कुछ चुनिंदा ब्रांड की तरफ ऐसी एक्सक्लूसिव ऑफर का मजा भी उठा सकते हैं आई के ऑफिशियल डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म पर शोकेस की गई एन पर दिल्ली और लखनऊ की ऐतिहासिक धरोहरों की खूबसूरत तस्वीरें उकेरी गई हैं। इस पर और ज्यादा जानकारी के लिए रुक करते हैं हमारे स्पेशल गेस्ट मिस्टर ध्रुपद दास का वेलकम टू थ्री डॉटो टीवी आई ने आस्था ट्रेन और तेजस ट्रेन के लिए एन टिकट्स जारी की है आप इस पहल को कैसे देखते हैं और इसे वेब थ्री अवेयरनेस में कितना फायदा होगा आई आर This means that these tickets double up as digital collectibles. That's a big deal for the NFT community, as well as for the entire train passenger community as well. And I'm sure that it's going to do two things. First, introduce the mass of Indian train passengers to the Web3 ecosystem. Full points. And two, it's going to create a community of Indian train passengers that lasts longer than the journey itself. We know that these communities exist during the journey. We've all experienced it. So even though I have yet to study the te- technical aspects of how these tokens are actually being issued I do know that they are being issued on Polygon and there is a tra- traceability solution provider called NFT Trace that's behind them that's what we know for sure so now to see how it actually plays out how the users interact with this and hopefully I want to get my hands on one of these tickets and see it for myself Thank you so much humse baat cheet karne ke liye aur apna keemti samay hame dene ke liye StarTech fans ke liye ek achhi khabar hai वो अब अपने आइकॉनिक स्टार ट्रेक कैरेक्टर्स के लिए रियल वर्ल्ड फिगरीन कलेक्ट कर सकते हैं स्टार ट्रेक कलेक्टेबल्स की कामयाबी के बाद फंको ने एक बेहद उत्साह के साथ अपनी नई कलेक्शन स्टार ट्रेक द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन के अपकमिंग रिलीज की अनाउंसमेंट की है इस कलेक्शन ने 12 मार्च को डेब्यू किया था साइंस फिक्शन फैंस और एन लवर्स के लिए ये एन कलेक्शन वैक्स की ड्रॉप मार्केट प्लेस अवेलेबल है फैंस स्टार ट्रेक कैरेक्टर्स को फीचर कर रहे इन डिजिटल कार्ड को ओन कर सकते हैं The Star Trek Digital Pop Series 2 Distinct Editions में डेब्यू करेगी स्टैंडर्ड पैक 18,000 पैक ऑफर करने वाली इस कलेक्शन में पांच एन आइटम्स होंगी जिनका प्राइस होगा 9.99 डॉलर तो वहीं प्रीमियम पैक एडिशन में भी 18,000 पैक्स होंगे लेकिन इसमें 17 डिजिटल एसेट की कलेक्शन होगी इतना ही नहीं कलेक्टर्स जिनके पास ग्रेल लेजेंडरी या रॉयल्टी सेट है उन्हें रिडेम्शन टोकन अवार्ड दिया जाएगा इसमें आइकॉनिक स्टार ट्रेक कैरेक्टर्स के रियल वर्ल्ड फिगरीन को ओन करने के चांसेस बढ़ जाएंगे फंको की लेटेस्ट स्टार ट्रेक सीरीज कलेक्शन में डिजिटल और फिजिकल एलिमेंट्स मर्ज करके फैंडम के साथ साथ एडिशनल बेनिफिट्स को एनहेंस किया जा रहा है एन एफ की लिस्ट में एक और नई एन एफ का नाम जुड़ गया है कोर फाउंडेशन जिसका एम डैप्स के लिए सिक्योर डिसेंट्रलाइज इकोसिस्टम क्रिएट करना है लॉन्च कर रहा है एक नई एन एफ फाउंडेशन अपनी कम्युनिटी के लिए एक एन कलेक्शन ड्रॉप भी करेगी जिसका नाम है कोर जर्नी इस एन कलेक्शन का फोकस है कोर चेन के लिए स्ट्रॉन्गर यूटिलिटी क्रिएट करना कोर ब्लॉकचेन बिटकॉइन की एडवांटेजेस को लेवरेज करेगी साथ ही ये नेटवर्क ईवीएम कंपैटिबल भी होगा ताकि इस पर इथीरियम स्मार्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट और डैप भी रन कर सके वेबसाइट के मुताबिक इस मार्केट प्लेस पर पचास आर्टिस्ट द्वारा क्रिएट की गई ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड होस्ट की गई है इसके साथ ही कोर बिल्डर्स को रिवॉर्ड करने के लिए इंसेंटिव प्रोग्राम भी रोल आउट करेगा 
कोल इग्निशन नाम का ये प्रोग्राम नेटवर्क की ग्रोथ में डेवलपर्स के कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन के लिए उन्हें रिकोगनाइज भी करेगा कोल इग्निशन यूजर्स को इंगेज करने के साथ ही रिवॉर्ड्स अर्न करने की अपॉर्चुनिटीज देगा ताकि कोर की ग्रोथ और अडोप्शन बढ़े वेल दैट्स ऑल दिस एपिसोड ऑफ एन एफ टी वर्स वक्त आ गया है आपसे विदा लेने का लेकिन एन एफ टी की दुनिया से ऐसी ही और मजेदार खबरें मैं रुचि शर्मा आप ले लाती रहूंगी टिल देन डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू थ्री डॉट टीवी और इसी तरह की इंटरेस्टिंग अपडेट्स के लिए लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट थ्री वर्सिंग डॉट आई ओ पर या फिर क्यू आर कोड को स्कैन करें Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Taking a leaf out of the United States successful launch of Spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds, financial institutions based in Hong Kong seem to be in a hurry to tap into the growing demand for cryptocurrency investment products. While Hong Kong opened applications for Bitcoin Spot ETFs in December last year, no related products have hit the market yet, leaving Asian investors at risk of lagging behind their American counterparts. Well in an attempt to bridge this gap Hong Kong based institutions are actively preparing to launch spot ETFs for Ethereum the goal is to gain an edge over the United States solidifying Hong Kong's position in the global crypto market as per reports from local media outlets the cumulative net inflow of bitcoin spot ETFs in the United States surpassed 2.24 billion dollars last week propelling the price of bitcoin to reach new all time highs According to CoinGlass data, the total assets under management of Bitcoin ETFs currently amount to 55.34 billion dollars. Well, the top three performers in this space are GBTC, IBIT, and FBTC, managing 27.73 billion dollars, 12.97 billion dollars, and 8.35 billion dollars, respectively. Amidst the surge in Bitcoin-related investment products, market attention has turned to the development of Hong Kong's Bitcoin Spot ETF offerings. Experts say that. As global crypto investors anticipate the launch of Ethereum spot ETF, Hong Kong is actively discussing and preparing for such products. Earlier reports indicated that 10 financial institutions in Hong Kong have expressed their intentions to apply for Bitcoin spot ETF launches. Harvest Fund for instance submitted relevant applications to the Securities and Futures Commission in Mid-Jan, signaling the growing interest in crypto related investment products in the region. Well, that's all in this special update. Keep watching Three Dot TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.threeverse.tv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. The Indian government has advised tech businesses creating new artificial intelligence products to get official approval before releasing them. The Indian IT Ministry produced an advice on March 1st that states this approval has to be given before unreliable or still trial AI technologies are made public. These tools also need to be identified as potentially erroneous query replies. Furthermore because general elections are expected this summer the warning asked platforms to ensure that their tools will not threaten the integrity of the electoral process 
This new advice was issued soon after Google and its AI tool Gemini were criticized by a top Indian minister for providing inaccurate or biased results. Google apologized for Gemini's shortcomings and said it may not always be reliable, particularly for current social topics. Rajiv Chandrasekhar, India's deputy IT minister, said on X, safety and trust is platform's legal obligation. Sorry, unreliable does not exempt from law. In November, the Indian government said it would be introducing new regulations that would help combat the spread of AI-generated deepfakes prior to its upcoming elections, a move also implemented by regulators in the United States. However, officials in India received pushback from the tech community regarding its latest AI advisory, saying that India is a leader in the tech space and it would be a crime if India regulated itself out of this leadership. Chandrasekhar responded to this noise and confusion in a follow-up post on X saying that there should be legal consequences for platforms that enable or directly output unlawful content. Meanwhile, on Feb 8, Microsoft partnered with the Indian AI startup Sarvam to bring an Indic voice large language model to its Azure AI infrastructure to reach more users in the Indian subcontinent. That's all in the story for now. This is Mirchi Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information and stories, log on to our website at www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. Hello and welcome to 3 Auto TV. I'm your host Shubham Joshi. Tokens pertaining to artificial intelligence gained ground last week with Fetch AI surging 35% in a day while Singularity NAT gained 30%. Interestingly, crypto market analyst Miles Dosho said that as the worldwide AI NVIDIA conference for developers and engineers draw near on March 18, coins related to artificial intelligence are booming as well. He further expects the rally to continue. Will render a GPU marketplace which lets users contribute computational power to 3D rendering projects and earn tokens in exchange rallied 31% as well. Late this month, tokens tied to the artificial intelligence saw a sharp increase as NVIDIA exceeded fourth quarter results projections. Head of Data and Analytics at FRNT Financial Strahinja Savage explained that while most of these tokens with AI themes don't really have a direct link to the adoption being driven by OpenAI or Google's Gemini, it's crucial to consider how effective exposure to artificial intelligence is through them. The Gemini is Google's family of AI models similar to OpenAI's ChatGPT. Well, that's all in today's special segment. This is me, Shubham Joshi, signing off. For more such interesting updates and market analysis, keep watching 3 TV or log on to our website or scan the QR code. Thank you. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. On Friday, a US federal court judge signed off on crypto exchange Binance's $4.3 billion plea deal with the US Department of Justice. Well, this is one of the biggest penalty in the history of financial market. A company has paid to free itself from the regulatory clutches. The move shows a growing regulatory oversight of virtual digital assets or VDAs and sets a precedence to be followed. During a sentencing hearing Friday, Judge Richard Jones of the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Washington approved the top-line fine itself, though he did not yet sign off on any monitor for the exchange. Earlier last November, the Department of Justice announced a settlement alleging Binance of violating sanctions and anti-money laundering laws over a years-long period. Under the terms of the settlement, the exchange would pay $4.3 billion, appoint an independent compliance monitor and have its CEO at the time, founder Changping Zhao, step down. Well, CZ pleaded guilty to separate charges and is currently scheduled to be sentenced in late April.
In a statement, a Binance spokesperson said the exchange was accepting responsibility through the plea deal, adding that the exchange had improved its Know Your Customer and anti-money laundering compliance in recent years. We are gratified by the recognition we have received from regulators regarding our cooperation and significantly enhanced compliance, the statement said. We look forward in the coming months to continuing to build on our efforts to set the industry standard for compliance, security and transparency. In a sentencing memo ahead of the hearing, prosecutors wrote that the agreement reflects the nature and circumstances of Binance's alleged conduct. Critically, the agreed-upon sentence will promote specific and general deterrence. As part of its plea agreement, Binance has agreed to take substantial measures to ensure its ongoing compliance with U.S. law. And the significant sentence agreed to here demonstrates to other financial institutions that may seek to break the law under the guise of innovation that uh, there will be serious consequences for their criminal actions, the memo said. That's all in the story. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to Feed Auto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Virtual digital assets are making a habit of moving against broader financial markets, especially equity markets. In the last 24 hours, similar pattern has emerged. The equities are trading lower while VDAs are gaining strength, helping Bitcoin to erase most of the week's losses. Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashkari's hawkish comments sent the S&P 500 and Nasdaq lower, while Bitcoin, the largest crypto by market cap, rose above 
$69,000 mark before retracing to current level of $68,720 up by 3.4%. Of late, financial markets are witnessing frequent bouts of volatility as macro indicators presented mixed cues. Today's U.S. non-farm payrolls data would provide clarity on how the interest rate scenarios are shaping up, while well, the broader crypto markets are closely tracking Bitcoin. Ethereum, the second largest crypto by market cap, continues to hold $3,300 level. It recently exchanged hands at $3,329, up by 0.1%. Elsewhere, Binance, ADA, XRP, Dogecoin, ADA were trending higher. Well, the global crypto market cap increased 2.2% to $2.55 trillion in the last 24 hours. On the other hand, the total crypto market volume fell 4% to $96.8 billion and total volume in DeFi is currently $10 billion. And all stable coins are $91 billion, representing 10% and 94% respectively of total crypto market 24-hour volume. Bitcoin's dominance is currently 52.8%, up by 0.5% over the day. The IC15 index barometer of top 15 tokens rose 2% to 86,198. Meanwhile, as per the latest data from Commodity Futures Trading Commission, hedge funds and trading advisors have ramped up their bearish bets on Bitcoin futures. Simultaneously, the so-called futures funding rate payments to traders based on the difference between perpetual contract markets and spot prices is around a record high level. Funding rates represent traders' sentiments in the perpetual swaps market. Binance has removed support for Bitcoin ordinals, a digital asset inscribed on Satoshi, the lowest denomination of Bitcoin, as part of its effort to streamline its NFT marketplace. While well, users will no longer be able to trade Bitcoin ordinals on the Binance NFT marketplace from April 18th, and the exchange advised users to withdraw their Bitcoin ordinals before May 18th. Airdrops, benefits or utilities linked to Bitcoin ordinals will no longer be supported from April 10th. Binance also advised Runstone's holders to withdraw their NFTs by this date to ensure they still receive associated tokens, utilities and benefits. The creators of popular Bitcoin ordinals project called Runstone sent the original parent inscription valued at 8 BTC around $525,000 worth to a wallet purported to belong to mythic Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto. Franklin Templeton, digital assets recently featured the rise of ordinal inscriptions in a new prospectus, highlighting the positive momentum in innovations on the Bitcoin blockchain. Singapore's Monetary Authority of Singapore has granted 3SR Markets its full major payment institution license, allowing it to, it to conduct over-the-counter spot and market-making services under the country's central bank. Well, the GSR Markets, founded in 2013 in the US, facilitates OTC crypto trading, derivatives, market making and venture capital investments. 
Singapore's regulatory efforts have led to many crypto companies seeking to offer their services within the country. With Crypto.com, Coinbase and Ripple receiving formal approval in 2023 and OKX and Bitco receiving in-principle approvals in 2024. Singapore is also cracking down on retail speculation by expanding its Payment Services Act, which includes custodial services for DPTs, token transfers, exchange and cross-border fund transfers. The Shribainu magazine article Building the Future, K9 Finance's strategic vision for a DeFi revolution on Shibarium outlines K9 Finance's strategic plan to enhance the decentralized finance landscape on the Shibarium blockchain. Well, the roadmap consists of three phases, starting with the introduction of Hesper in late quarter two and ending with the launch of Boro on mainnet. The final phase, uh, K9A, aims to re realize K9 Finance's vision for a decentralized liquid staking product on Shibaria. Buzz, the K9 Finance DAO founder, emphasizes aligning the project's trajectory with the community's vision and highlights Shibarian's unique strengths, including its technological capabilities and the vibrant Shibami community as a formidable contender in the blockchain space. In the upcoming segment, we will update you about the following news. Restaking becomes Ethereum's second largest DeFi sector. Prisma stakes $6 million funding accelerates DeFi staking innovation. Coin DCX Mesh partner to let users integrate DeFi wallets from within its app. Stay tuned for more updates. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Since the Ethereum blockchain transitioned into a proof-of-stake network after the merge event in September 2022, there has been a significant increase in liquid staking protocols, including liquid restaking tokens. Eigenlayer, Ethereum's second largest DeFi protocol by total value locked, is currently worth $12.4 billion and allows validators to earn extra rewards by securing actively validated services through restaking their staked ETH. This innovative concept allows validators to secure new Ethereum features and potentially earn additional rewards. While well, Coinbase highlighted the emergence of a burgeoning ecosystem surrounding LRTs mirroring the success of LSTs. This ecosystem now boasts over half a dozen protocols, each offering its own iteration of liquid restaking tokens featuring diverse incentives and airdrop schemes. However, Coinbase also highlighted the expected challenges for LRTs in the near term, with Eigen DA expected to roll out in early quarter 2, 2024. Prisma Stake has secured $6 million in funding, marking a significant milestone in its journey to reshape the DeFi landscape. While the platform is revolutionizing the DeFi space with its holistic approach to staking, facilitating support for various blockchain protocols, including Ethereum virtual machine compatible chains and Layer 2 solutions. The initiative aims to unlock novel opportunities for users to generate passive income through diverse staking mechanisms, including ETH crypto staking and altcoin staking. 
The recent $8 million funding milestone is a testament to investors' confidence in Prisma Stake's vision and strategy. While the platform is committed to introducing advanced features and diverse staking packages that cater to a broad spectrum of users from novices to seasoned investors in the DeFi space. And Prisma Stake stands out for its uh, user-centric design, offering flexible staking options and focusing on security and reliability through the state-of-art smart contract technology. Coin DCX, an Indian crypto exchange platform, has announced a partnership with US-based fintech firm Mesh to integrate DeFi wallets within its platform. While the aim is to simplify connectivity between centralized exchanges and DeFi wallets, Coin DCX, catering to a user base of 16 million, recently declared its compliance with India's Financial Intelligence Unit, certifying its business to uh, safe to engage within India. Sumit so, Gupta, co-founder of Coin DCX, called Mesh a game changer for the platform as it offers advanced API integration that could simplify digital asset management for users. Mesh's co-founder and CEO Bam Zizi expressed excitement about the impact this collaboration will have on India's crypto sector. Coin D6 has been establishing itself as an investor-popular crypto exchange in India's evolving landscape, allowing users of the now defunct CoinEx to access funds left logged on the exchange. The exchange has also initiated its new crypto awareness campaign called No Bitcoin, providing a detailed overview of world's first and most expensive cryptocurrency. In the upcoming segment, we will update you about the following news. Google considers charging for AI-powered search. Samsung launches AI-powered home appliances with inbuilt Wi-Fi internal cameras. OnePlus introduces new AI eraser for image editing. Stay tuned for more updates. Google is considering charging for premium features powered by generative artificial intelligence, marking the first time the company has put any of its core products behind a paywall. This would be the biggest shake-up of its search business as it continues to grapple with technology that threatens its advertising business. While well, Google is looking at options including adding certain AI-powered search features to its premium subscription services, which already offer access to its new Gemini AI Assistant in Gmail and Docs. Engineers are developing the technology needed to deploy the service, but executives have not yet made a final decision on whether or when to launch it. Google's traditional search engine would remain free of charge, while ads would continue to appear alongside search results, even for subscribers. Charging would represent the first time Google has made people pay for enhancements to its core search product. Samsung has launched a range of AI-powered home appliances at its Mumbai store, contributing 70% to its India sales. The appliances include washing machines, refrigerators, microwaves and residential air conditioners. These devices feature Wi-Fi, internal cameras and AI chips for convenient home management. The refrigerator can automatically suggest meals based on stored items, while the air conditioner sends notifications to start or turn off appliances. The microwave can customize recipes to low-fat versions and the washing machine can learn laundry routines over time. While the AI wash feature creates custom wash recipes based on load weight, fabric type, softness, water level, soiling level and detergent level. This innovation aims to improve India homes, living experiences, reduce energy consumption and contribute to a greener planet. OnePlus has introduced a new AI eraser feature for its smartphone users, which will be gradually rolled out to various devices starting this month. The feature based on generative AI technology aims to liberate user creativity and revolutionize photo editing. Users can select and remove unwanted objects within images from photo gallery and the underlying AI analyzes the selected area and generates a replacement background that blends into the surrounding environment 
while suiting the overall style of the image. OnePlus plans to introduce more AI features this year. The feature is built from genuine user needs and aims to provide a more convenient future for all. OnePlus recently launched the Nord CE4 smartphone in India, priced at Rs. 24,999 and powered by an Octaco Qualcomm Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 chipset and 8 GB RAM. The device will go on sale from April 4 onwards. That's all in the bulletin today. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. For more on such updates and market news, please log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. And welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Metaverse has become an important factor or key component in global business, be it education, real estate, aviation or healthcare. And the gaming industry is no exception. The Metaverse gaming industry is booming worldwide with countries like the United States leading the way in terms of user adoption and revenue generation. According to a report by Markets and Markets, the global Metaverse and gaming market is expected to be worth $120 billion by the end of 2028. So to understand the intricacies of Metaverse Gaming industry. I am joined by Mr. E. Paul Michael, the CEO of Oneverse Gaming. Welcome to 3 Dollar TV, sir. Thank you so much, Vishaka, for having me here. It's Tell a me. pleasure to have you, sir. So, sir, as I mentioned, Metaverse in the gaming market is expected to be worth $120 billion by the end of 2028. And gaming companies have already started uh, building uh, prototypes for Metaverse. For instance, the widely played Minecraft and Fortnite games as well as popular Roblox game platform have all incorporated many aspects of Metaverse. So, what are your opening remarks on booming Metaverse gaming industry and how is Metaverse going to play a role in shaping the future of the gaming industry? See, Metaverse as a company, uh, we are looking, um, you know, to to build platforms where synergies could happen. Okay. Now, what happens is when you look at the gaming spectrum, it's broadly divided into four categories. Uh, the first category is real money gaming. You have casual gaming. Uh, you have fantasy sports. You have esports. Now, if we could get in, you know, experiences to the players, uh, to the people which is submersive, which is immersive. So when you wear, you know, an equipment where you, know, you can exactly see, uh, you know, what's happening in a particular stadium right in your home, or probably if you want to face the ball of, you know, one of the best uh, bowlers. So all that synergies is possible with the uh, metaverse and immersive synergies where people can play real money games, people can play fantasy sports, e-sports, as well as casual games. So we are looking at building a platform on the metaverse where all these games are accessible to you know all the customers irrespective of age you know you know a, a small kid could play or probably a teenager could play uh, you know anybody could access uh, any kind of content and contenders because we're covering all the four spectrums of gaming wow. uh, as i also um, as i just said you know esports real money gaming, casual games, and fantasies. All right, so talking about your strategic vision, with plans to acquire 13 gaming firms, your company Oneverse Gaming is clearly aiming for dominance in Metaverse. However, could you elaborate on uh, the long-term strategic vision behind this move and how does it fit into Oneverse's broader goals and aspirations within the evolving landscape of digital interaction? The, uh, to a large extent, when you... You know, when we look at potentials as an individual company, when we combine companies, uh, the sum of results are much more better uh, or more, ex you know, it's more uh, 
beneficial to companies when we join hands together. So as I always said in uh, a couple of uh, you know a couple of times in the past, uh, united we stand. So when we are going to get all these companies together, a lot of technology could be you know best practices could be followed. Uh, efficiencies in uh, you know giving customer experience could be followed. Uh, customer care could be more enhanced. User experience could be better. So when we when we when we try to merge all these companies together and get them on one platform, help them to you know develop more. So there are two benefits in the long run. One is everyone makes uh, the customers more benefited is because he has a wide range of uh, games to play. One. The second thing is it becomes operationally it becomes quite uh, uh, you know the bottom lines increases is because operationally we are well uh, uh, equipped because we are one platform right now. Right. All right. So you spoke about the benefits of merging all the platforms together, but integrating multiple gaming firms into a cohesive platform can present significant challenges. So how does Oneverse plan to navigate these integration challenges while ensuring a seamless user experience across the acquired properties which you are aiming for? Agreed. Yes, integration is going to be a challenge uh, because every company or every platform has a different technology, different mindset, different approach to business. So. What we are doing is in the next 18 month, months, we are going to plan a complete robust uh, technology roadmap where we can see the best practices of companies, uh, get the technology teams together, uh, get in robust uh, technology softwares, database integrations. So all that is you know, in the pipeline. But I, as I said, it's going to take us at least 18 months you know, to exactly look at those synergies in terms of technologies and integration. All right. So uh, if we talk about market differentiation, Metaverse is becoming increasingly competitive and prominent players such as Meta, Apple, Disney have already joined the Metaverse bandwagon. So how does Oneverse plans to differentiate itself from other platforms, especially considering the diverse range of offerings, uh, particularly in immersive gaming experiences? Uh, see, to answer a long question short, I would just go by the simple term called big, bigger, and biggest. So probably because we are uniform, at least in the Indian ecos ecosystem, because we are uniform, uh, getting all these platforms to be on one, uh, uh, all these gaming platforms to be on one particular thing, what we would say is the price pools, okay, okay. is going to be big, bigger, and biggest. So that is going to be one differentiating factor for us in the long run is because we're going to give out a lot of prizes which will really enhance the customer's uh, you know, thrill to play more, to, to get more engaging and stuff like that. And second most important thing that what we are going to drive as a company is to ensure that things are very simple to them. Okay. Usually the, in, in gaming platforms, there's too, much, there's too much of complexity. You play this, you get that, you do this, you do that. There is too many layers, there are too many tires, there are too many levels. But I'm going to ensure that there is simplicity. So two major differentiating factors would be, as I always say, big, bigger, biggest, and you know simplicity. So we're going to give a lot of prizes out there to customers and make it extremely simple for him to have a wonderful gaming experience. So price is going to be a major factor here and it is going to play a big role. Uh, well, building a vibrant and engaged community is often crucial for the success of digital platforms. So amidst the rapid expansion and diversification, what factors apart from the community engagement will drive the growth or adoption of Metaverse? See, there are two things that, again, uh, there are many points that we could talk about it in okay. terms of communities and stuff like that. But I will just highlight two major points. Uh, one is simplicity, as I've always said. Uh, keeping things very simple, keeping things very short and sweet. So whether it is player making a particular deposit or player trying to cash out, player trying to uh, use a particular interface or anything of that kind, I'm just going to make it in one term, simple. Okay. The second factor, though there are many other factors, but I'm just highlighting the two factors for you. The second factor is responsible gaming. Okay, so we're going to build systems where responsible gaming has been uh, the utmost priority. Age verifications, following the guidelines of every law of the land, uh, ensuring that there is, uh, you know, you have robust data securities, uh, to cite some examples. 
uh, in, in, to ensure that there is no malpractices. So when you look at community, when you look at that concept, so I would just say two things, simplicity and responsible game. When I say responsible building, again, I reiterate, I tell you it is following the law of the land, uh, ensuring there is data uh, security you know, to a large extent, age verification, creating support systems, you know, for, you know, to ensure that there is uh, people having with gaming problems. We don't want people to have a lot of gaming problems either. So we're going to build support systems even for that. All right, so a major player should mainly focus on responsible gaming. Apart from that, as you spoke about privacy challenges, there are various roadblocks on the path to metaverse integration in various sectors, such as privacy, of course, and interoperability issues. So how and when will these be resolved? And is there a need for regulations? Uh, see, to a large extent, technology would play a major factor in terms of security, as you said. And, uh, and we have a robust, uh, you know, uh, IT laws in the country, which we will other to to a large extent and to the fullest, no, not to a large extent, but I really think, but to the fullest, we will apply, you know, follow the, all the rules and regulations as per the IT rules and regulations as per the land of the law. Uh, but security in terms of data, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, other, other activities, other components will be other to a, to a large extent. All right. Thank you so much for being on 3 Dotto TV, Mr. Michael, and sharing your views and knowledge with our viewers. It was really great having you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So this was Mr. E. Paul Michael, the CEO of OneVerse Gaming. He shared insights on the metaverse gaming industry. Keep watching 3 Dotto TV. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. And for updates related to Web3, please log on to our website www.3versetv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters.
नमस्कार मैं हूं रुचि शर्मा वेब थ्री की तमाम बड़ी खबरें लेकर हाजिर हैं हम एक प्रसिद्ध डिजिटल आर्टिस्ट और रेयर पेपे नॉन फंजबल टोकन कलेक्शन के पीछे की ब्रेन चाइल्ड क्रिल आवेंचुरा ने विशेष रूप से बिटकॉइन ब्लॉकचेन नेटवर्क पर एक नया डिजिटल कलेक्टेबल लॉन्च करने के लिए फेमस अमेरिकन म्यूजिक आर्टिस्ट गोस्ट फेस किला के साथ पार्टनरशिप की है तीस मार्च के साइट पब्लिकेशन में ऑन चेन आर्टिफिशियल मार्केट प्लेटफॉर्म ने पुष्टि की कि स्क्रिला वेंचुरा ने एक गाने के लिए कवर आर्ट को इंस्क्राइब किया है जिसे गोस्ट फेस किला शेप विशेष रूप से बिटकॉइन ब्लॉकचेन नेटवर्क पर एक ओरिजिनल कलेक्शन के रूप में जारी कर रहा है नए इंटीग्रेशन के तहत गोस्ट फेस किला और रेयर स्क्रिला ने बिटकॉइन ब्लॉकचेन नेटवर्क पर किला के अपकमिंग नए ट्रैक के कवर आर्ट को अंकित करने के लिए सेना में शामिल हो गए हैं कवर आर्ट जिसमें स्टेज पर किला को पेपे द फ्रॉग हेड के साथ अप्रयुक्त दिखाया गया है को क्रिएशन ब्लॉक 836-987 पर अंकित किया गया है बढ़ते हैं अगली खबर की ओर मेथ्रेजा एक अग्रणी टेक्नोलॉजी नॉन प्रॉफिट यूजर एम्पावरमेंट ऑथेंटिक कनेक्शंस और ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी इंटीग्रेशन पर जोर देने के साथ सोशल नेटवर्किंग और एप्लीकेशन डेवलपमेंट में क्रांति लाने के लिए तैयार है इसकी पहल के केंद्र में मेज डॉट एम ए है जो एक अग्रणी सोशल नेटवर्क प्लेटफॉर्म है जिसमें मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन का एक डायनेमिक सूट शामिल है जो ब्लॉक सिक्योर्ड इकोसिस्टम के भीतर जेनुअन इंटरक्शन म्यूचुअल रिस्पेक्ट और सिक्योर ट्रांजेक्शन को बढ़ावा देने के लिए डिजाइन किया गया है मेथ्रेजा का प्रमुख प्लेटफॉर्म मेट डॉट एम ई यूजर्स को उनकी एल्गोरिथम प्रेफरेंसेस को अनुकूलित करने की क्षमता प्रदान करने वाला पहला नेटवर्क है जिसमें सोशल इंटरेक्शन की ऑथेंटिसिटी और रेलिवेंस बढ़ता है इस समर तक यूजर्स बेस 100,000 से अधिक होने की उम्मीद के साथ मेट डॉट एम ई महत्वाकांक्षी रूप से पर्याप्त वैश्विक दर्शकों को लक्षित कर रहा है निरंतर विकास और स्थिरता सुनिश्चित करने के लिए एक सब्सक्रिप्शन मॉडल के साथ प्लेटफॉर्म मुफ्त में उपलब्ध है अप्रैल में मेट टोकन के साथ क्रिएटर्स को पुरस्कृत करने के लिए एक इनोवेटिव एयर ड्रॉप प्रोग्राम भी निर्धारित किया गया है जो हाई क्वालिटी कॉन्टेंट क्रिएशन को प्रोत्साहित करेगा बाकी अहम खबरों के लिए करते हैं विशाखा गरुख नांजिंग में एक विश्व प्रसिद्ध कल्चरल सिंबल और हिस्टोरिकल लैंडमार्क के रूप में पोखलेन टा हेरिटेज पार्क आउटस्टैंडिंग ट्रेडिशनल कल्चर को बढ़ावा देने के लिए प्रतिबद्ध है 2023 में पार्क के भीतर एक म्यूजियम में ट्रू लिंक मेटावर्स के कॉन्सेप्ट पर केंद्रित एक इंटरक्टिव प्रोजेक्ट खोला गया ये प्रोजेक्ट विजिटर्स को एक यूनिक म्यूजियम एक्सपीरियंस प्रदान करती है जिसमें कि मेटावर्स एक्सपीरियंस शैम्बो वी आर इंटरक्शन डिजिटल कंपेनियंस और कल्चरल हेरिटेज साइट की रिस्टोरेशन जैसे तत्व शामिल हैं जो कि म्यूजियम एक्सप्लोरेशन का एक नया रूप प्रदर्शित करते हैं इस अद्भुत यात्रा को शुरू करने के लिए पहला कदम एक डिजिटल आवटा बनाना है आंगतुक बस इंस्टॉलेशन में कदम रखते हैं और लगभग एक से दो मिनट के बाद वे पोखलेन टा साइट की वर्चुअल वर्ल्ड के भीतर अपनी स्क्रीन पर अपने वर्चुअल आवटास को प्रदर्शित होते हुए देख सकते हैं स्क्रीन पर एक क्यूआर कोड को स्कैन करके विजिटर्स एक साथ व्यक्तिगत रूप से वेन्यू का पता लगा सकते हैं और अपने मोबाइल फोन के साथ वर्चुअल वर्ल्ड में घूम भी सकते हैं बढ़ते हैं अगली खबर की ओर टेदर यू एस टी टी स्टेबल कॉइन के पीछे की कंपनी टेदर ने इकतीस मार्च को छह सौ अठारह मिलियन डॉलर मूल्य के एट थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एंड एटी एट बिटकॉइन का अधिग्रहण किया अधिग्रहण के बाद ऑन चेन डेटा के अनुसार टेदर के वॉलेट में अब सेवेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड थ्री फिफ्टी फोर बिटकॉइन है की एवरेज प्राइस पर खरीदा गया था जिसकी कीमत लगभग फाइव बिलियन डॉलर थी कॉइन स्टार्ट डेटा के अनुसार वॉलेट एक प्रतिशत से अधिक बढ़ गया है वर्तमान में 2.94 बिलियन डॉलर्स का अप्राप्त लाभ है यह अधिग्रहण यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स बेस स्पॉट बिटकॉइन एक्सचेंज क्रेडिट फंड्स की मंजूरी और आने वाले बिटकॉइन हाविंग के कारण बिटकॉइन में बढ़ते इंस्टीट्यूशनल इंटरेस्ट के समय हुआ जो केवल उन्नीस दिनों में ब्लॉक सप्लाई एशुएंस को कम करने के लिए तैयार है ओवर यू रोशनी ब्लॉक सिक्योरिटी फर्म पिक्चर द्वारा कंपाइल डेटा के अनुसार मार्च हाक में चुराई गई लगभग 100 मिलियन डॉलर्स की लगभग डिजिटल एसेट बरामद कर ली गई है पेक्शल ने एक अप्रैल को कहा कि मार्च में 30 से अधिक हैकिंग की घटनाएं हुई जिसमें 187 मिलियन डॉलर की फंड्स का नुकसान हुआ जबकि घाटा लाखों में हुआ हैक किए गए फंड्स का 52.8 परसेंट वापस कर दिया गया पेक्शल ने कहा की पिछले महीने चोरी की गई नाइन्टी मिलियन डॉलर के डिजिटल एसेट बरामद की गयी है पेक्शल ने महीने के भीतर टॉप पाँच इवेंट्स आरोप भी प्रकाश डाला हैकिंग की घटना में नुकसान के मामले में मंचबल्स इंसिडेंट ने टॉप स्पॉट हासिल किया है इसके बाद क्यूरियो हैक प्रिज्मा फाइनेंस इंसिडेंट एन एफ प्रॉम्प्ट हैक और वुफी एक्सप्लॉयट हुआ तो आज के लिए फिलहाल इतना ही ऐसी वेबसाइट से जुड़ी खबरों के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉट टीवी 
ऐसी और ज्यादा अपडेट्स के लिए हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू पर लॉग ऑन करें या फिर स्कैन करें क्यू कोड थैंक यू नमस्कार मैं हूं रुचि शर्मा वेब थ्री की तमाम बड़ी खबरें लेकर हाजिर हैं हम सोलाना आधारित टोकन की खरीद और बिक्री की सुविधा प्रदान करने वाले टेलीग्राम ट्रेडिंग ऐप सोलेरियम ने सुरक्षा उल्लंघन के बाद इसे बंद करने की घोषणा की है जिसकी वजह से यूजर वॉलेट से लगभग 523,000 डॉलर मूल्य के एस ड्रेन हो गए हैं पिछले हफ्ते के अंत में हुए इस एक्सप्लॉयट से 300 से अधिक सोलाना यूजर्स प्रभावित हुए हैं शुरुआत में पॉपुलर टेलीग्राम ट्रेडिंग बॉट बॉक बॉट के खिलाफ संदेह जताया गया था कुछ यूजर्स ने इसे प्राइवेट कीज लीक करने के लिए जिम्मेदार माना था हालांकि बॉन्क मीम कॉइन के पीछे की टीम ने अपनी ओर से किसी भी सिक्योरिटी लैब्स से इनकार किया जिससे जिसमें कहा गया कि प्रभावित बॉन्क बॉट यूजर्स ने पहले अन्य एप्लीकेशंस में उपयोग के लिए अपनी प्राइवेट कीज एक्सपोर्ट की थी सोलेरियम ने बाद में एक ट्वीट प्रतिक्रिया में एक्सप्लॉयड हुए जाने की संभावना को स्वीकार किया सोलेरियम ने घोषणा की कि वह इस कठिन विकल्प के पीछे प्रेरक शक्तियों के रूप में इन सफिशियंट फंड उभरते मार्केट ट्रेंड्स और हाल ही में सुरक्षा उल्लंघन सहित कारकों के संयोजन का हवाला देते हुए प्रोजेक्ट को बंद कर देगा बढ़ते हैं अगली खबर की ओर पॉपुलर डूडल्स एन ब्रांड के को फाउंडर ने कम्युनिटी मेंबर्स के लिए वीकेंड में एक आश्चर्यजनक पूप टोकन जारी किया इससे उत्साह को इस उत्साह तो बड़ा ही लेकिन साथ ही कुछ विवाद भी क्योंकि टोटल सप्लाई का एक बड़ा हिस्सा तुरंत स्नाइपर्स द्वारा छीन लिया गया जिससे ट्रेडर्स पर इन साइड के साथ काम करने का आरोप लगा पूप टोकन को बेस पर लॉन्च किया गया था जो कॉइन बेस द्वारा निर्मित एक इथेरियम स्केलिंग नेटवर्क है जो हाल ही में एक मीम कॉइन ट्रेडिंग हॉटस्पॉट बन गया है पूप कॉइन का एलोकेशन पास और प्रेजेंट में डूडल स्टेक होल्डर्स को एड्रॉप किया गया था जिसमें अफिलियटेड एन जैसे कि डूडल्स डूडल्स जेनेसिस बॉक्सेस डुप्लीकेटर्स और वन ऑफ वन डूडल्स के होल्डर्स शामिल थे ओरिजिनल डूडल्स और जेनेसिस बॉक्स एन के मिंटर्स और वो वॉलेट जिन्होंने कम्युनिटी के ऑन चेन ट्रेजरी डूडल बैंक के मैनेजमेंट में भाग लिया था बाकी अहम खबरों के लिए करते हैं विशाखा का रुख अल्फा जैन इंटेलिजेंस कॉप ने ब्लॉकचेन पर दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा इमर्सिव ब्यूटी प्लेटफॉर्म लॉन्च किया है जो कि 2030 तक संभावित 13 ट्रिलियन डॉलर्स मूल्य के साथ मेटावर्स में एक महत्वपूर्ण कदम है इस वर्चुअल ब्यूटी मेट्रोपोलिस का बीटा लॉन्च जो कि डिजिटल कलेक्टिबल्स और रॉयल्टी प्रोग्राम को एकीकृत करता है जो एक मल्टी मिलियन डॉलर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट का अनुसरण करता है और जेनजी और गेमर्स को लक्षित करते हुए बड़े पैमाने पर आकर्षक अनुभव प्रदान करने की अल्फा जैन की क्षमता को प्रदर्शित करता है नोक्यू अप्रैल या मई 2024 के आसपास अपने आईसीओ के साथ आ रहा है जो एक पायनियरिंग इकोसिस्टम पेश करने वाला है जो ब्लॉकचेन, एआई, एमएल, क्रिप्टो और इंश्योरेंस को मर्ज करने वाला है जो इस क्षेत्र में पहली बार है नोक्यू का लक्ष्य ब्लॉकचेन, वेब थ्री क्रिप्टो करेंसी और मेटावर्स में सिक्योरिटी यूजेबिलिटी एक्सेसिबिलिटी और सस्टेनेबिलिटी लाना है क्रिप्टो करेंसी मार्केट की अस्थिरता और हाई प्रोफाइल विफलताओं के जवाब में नोक्यू रियल वर्ल्ड वैल्यू के साथ एक डिजिटल करेंसी की पेशकश करके एक नया दृष्टिकोण प्रस्तुत करता है फ्लीटिंग फेम लूना डोज और एफ को आगे बढ़ाने वाले पिछले प्रोजेक्ट्स के विपरीत नोक्यू रियल एस्टेट और कंज्यूमर गुड्स जैसे टैंजबल एसेट्स द्वारा समर्थित वास्तविक उपयोगिता प्रदान करने पर ध्यान केंद्रित कर रहा है नोकी नीव ब्लॉक चेन प्रोफेशनल फाइनेंशियल मार्केट एक्सपर्ट ए आई स्पेशलिस्ट और ग्लोबल इन्फ्लुएंसर की एक्सपर्टीज पर बनाई गई है ये इंश्योरेंस क्लेम सेटलमेंट्स दक्षता और पहुंच बढ़ाने के लिए तैयार पहला ए आई और एम एल ड्रिविन ब्लॉक चेन पेश करता है इसके साथ साथ प्रोजेक्ट ने एन ओ क्यू लॉन्च किया जो की रियल वर्ल्ड एसेट्स पर आधारित एक टोकन है जो ब्लॉक चेन क्रिप्टो मेटावर्स और इंश्योरेंस सर्विसेज में खरीदारी को सक्षम बनाता है ओवरट यू रोशनी दुनिया के लीडिंग क्रिप्टो ऑप्शन एक्सचेंज डेरीबिट ने मंगलवार को कहा कि उसकी दुबई बेस्ड यूनिट डेरीबिट एफ ने लोकल रेगुलेटर से कंडीशनल वर्चुअल एसेट प्रोवाइडर लाइसेंस जीता है डेरीबिट ने प्रेस रिलीज में कहा कि एफ को स्पॉट और डेरिवेटिव ट्रेडिंग के लिए 
वर्चुअल आसर एक्सचेंज के रूप में काम करने की इजाजत देने वाला लाइसेंस तब तक नॉन ऑपरेशनल रहेगा जब तक डेरीबिट दुबई के वर्चुअल एसेट रेगुलेटरी अथॉरिटी की सभी रिमेनिंग कंडीशंस और लोकल रिक्वायरमेंट को पूरा नहीं करता है लाइसेंस एक बार चालू होने पर डेरीबिट को अपने पैनामा बेस्ड ब्रोकर एफिलियट के माध्यम से रिटेल इन्वेस्टर्स की सेवा जारी रखते हुए इंस्टीट्यूशनल और क्वालिफाइड इन्वेस्टर्स की सेवा करने की अनुमति देगा एक्सचेंज ने यह भी कहा है कि वो अपने ग्लोबल हेडक्वार्टर्स को पैनामा से दुबई में शिफ्ट करने पर विचार कर रहा है और 2019 में चीफ कमर्शियल ऑफिसर के रूप में कार्यरत लुक्स तर्जर्स को नए चीफ एग्जीक्यूटिव ऑफिसर के रूप में घोषित किया तो आज के लिए फिलहाल इतना ही ऐसी वेब थ्री से जुड़ी खबरों के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉट टीवी ऐसी और ज्यादा अपडेट्स के लिए हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू पर लॉग ऑन करें या फिर स्कैन करें क्यू कोड थैंक यू नमस्कार मैं हूँ रुचि शर्मा वेब थ्री की तमाम बड़ी खबरें लेकर हाजिर हैं हम ओपन सी ने ई आर सी सेवन ट्वेंटी वन सी टोकन स्टैंडर्ड के लिए समर्थन की घोषणा की है जो एन एफ टी क्रिएटर्स के लिए लागू करने योग्य ऑन चेन रॉयल्टी के मुद्दे को संबोधित करने के लिए डिजाइन किया गया एक नया टोकन स्टैंडर्ड है ये नया स्टैंडर्ड एन एफ टी क्रिएटर्स के लिए प्रोग्रामेबल अर्निंग्स की अनुमति देता है एक सोल्यूशन जिससे ओपन सी ने एन एफ टी वॉश ट्रेडिंग के लंबे समय से चले आ रहे मुद्दे की प्रतिक्रिया के रूप में देखा पहले ई आर सी सेवन ट्वेंटी वन सी के बिना जब कमीशन इनिशियल मार्केट के बाहर प्रोग्राम किया जाता था तो यूजर्स को रॉयल्टी नहीं मिलती थी और जब ये सेकेंडरी uh, मार्केट्स में पहुंचता था तो एन पर उनका अधिकार खो जाता था निर्माता के विवेक पर एन एफ रॉयल्टी प्रति बिक्री 2.5 परसेंट से 10 परसेंट के बीच होती है आज तक तो टॉप 10 एन कलेक्शन ने अपनी स्थापना के बाद से 345 मिलियन डॉलर से अधिक रॉयल्टी अर्जित की है ओपन सी ने स्टैंडर्ड के विकास के पीछे ब्लॉकचेन गेमिंग फर्म लिमिट ब्रेक के साथ ई आर के एकीकरण पर काम करना शुरू कर दिया है बढ़ते हैं अगली खबर की ओर ब्लॉकचेन बेस्ड वोटिंग सिस्टम विकसित करने में रुचि रखने वाले कई अमेरिकी राज्यों ने कार्डानो फाउंडेशन से संपर्क किया है ये जानकारी डेलीकॉइन द्वारा कार्डानो फाउंडेशन के सीईओ फेडरिक ग्रेगार्ड के साथ हाल ही में आयोजित एक इंटरव्यू के दौरान सामने आई ग्रेगार्ड ने चुनावी प्रतिक्रियाओं को बढ़ाने के लिए ब्लॉकचेन का लाभ उठाने में सरकारी नियमों की बढ़ती रुचि पर प्रकाश डालते हुए इंगेजमेंट की पुष्टि की इन राज्यों की रुचि वोटिंग सिस्टम में ट्रांसपेरेंसी और अकाउंटेबिलिटी बढ़ाने के उद्देश्य से लाइट वेट ब्लॉक चेन बनाने पर केंद्रित है जबकि ग्रेगार्ड ने पूछताछ के बारे में उत्साह व्यक्त किया उन्होंने इसमें शामिल चुनौतियों पर भी ध्यान दिया विशेष रूप से इस तरह के समाधान को लागू करने के लिए राज्यों द्वारा अनुरोध की गई समय सीमा के संबंध में है बाकी अहम खबरों के लिए करते हैं विशाखा गरु क्रिप्टो करेंसी एक्सचेंज बिटफिनिक्स नए बिटकॉइन और ईथर वॉलिटिलिटी फ्यूचर्स पेश करके क्रिप्टो मार्केट्स में अस्थिरता के जवाब में ट्रेडिंग टूल का विस्तार कर रहा है बिटफिनिक्स के डेरिवेटिव प्लेटफॉर्म बिटफिनिक्स डेरिवेटिव्स आई फिनिक्स फाइनेंशियल द्वारा प्रदान किया गया है ने दो नए पपेचुअल फ्यूचर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट का व्यापार शुरू किया फॉर्म ने तीन अप्रैल को कॉइन टेलीग्राफ को घोषणा की खैर नए कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स वॉलमिक्स इम्प्लाइड वॉलेटिलिटी इंडेक्सेस, बिटकॉइन इम्प्लाइड वॉलेटिलिटी इंडेक्स और इथेरियम इम्प्लाइड वॉलेटिलिटी इंडेक्स पर आधारित हैं इंडेक्सेस 30 दिन की अपेक्षित अस्थिरता या बीटीसी और ई ऑप्शन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट की निहित अस्थिरता को ट्रैक भी करते हैं अब बढ़ते हैं अगली खबर की ओर लेंडिंग प्रोटोकॉल आवे ने डाई स्टेबल कॉइन के रिस्क पैरामीटर्स को एडजस्ट करने के लिए एक नया आवे रिस्क फ्रेमवर्क कमेटी प्रस्ताव लॉन्च किया आवे ट्रैन इनिशिएटिव टीम ने प्रस्ताव रखा जिसमें सुझाव दिया गया है कि डाई के लोन टू वैल्यू रेशियो को सभी आवे डिप्लॉयमेंट्स पर जीरो परसेंट पर एडजस्ट किया जाए दो अप्रैल को जारी प्रस्ताव के एक भाग में सुझाव दिया गया कि एस इंसेंटिव को मेरिट प्रोग्राम से हटा दिया जाए जो कि मेरिट राउंड दो और उसके बाद से प्रभावी होगा इस कार्रवाई का उद्देश्य मेकडाउ का हालिया आक्रामक डी थ्री एम प्लान का प्रतिकार करना है जिसने एक महीने के भीतर तेजी से डाई क्रेडिट लाइन को शून्य से अनुमानित छह मिलियन डाई तक विस्तारित किया जो जल्द ही एक बिलियन डाई तक पहुंच सकता है 
प्रस्ताव यूजर्स पर न्यूनतम प्रभाव डालते हुए संभावित जोखिमों को कम करने का प्रयास करता है और ये देखते हुए कि डाय डिपॉजिट्स का केवल एक अंश आवे पर कोलाट्रल के रूप में काम करता है और यूजर्स आसानी से ऑल्टरनेटिव कोलाट्रल ऑप्शन के रूप में यूएसडीसी कॉइन या टेदर पर स्विच कर सकते हैं ओवर यू रोशनी डिसेंट्रलाइज एक्सचेंज क्राउड स्वाप ने पहला डिसेंट्रलाइज क्रिप्टो एक्सचेंज क्रेडिट फंड लॉन्च किया है जिसमें बिटकॉइन और इथेरियम सहित कई क्रिप्टो एसेट शामिल है तीन अप्रैल को घोषित बुलरन डीईटीएफ निवेशकों को क्रिप्टो इकोसिस्टम के भीतर विविध पोर्टफोलियो तक पहुंच प्रदान करता है ईटीएफ में पॉलीगॉन चेन लिंक पोलका डॉट सहित दस टोकन शामिल है जैसा कि कहा गया है कि निवेशक केवल एक क्रिप्टो टोकन का उपयोग करके इन दस टोकन में निवेश कर सकते हैं और उसी सिंगल क्रिप्टो में विद्रॉ कर सकते हैं कंपनी ने एक प्रेस रिलीज में कहा फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट का उद्देश्य इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रोसेस को सुव्यवस्थित करना सिंप्लिसिटी और डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन को सुनिश्चित करना है तो आज के लिए फिलहाल इतना ही ऐसी वेब से जुड़ी खबरों के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉटो टीवी ऐसी और ज्यादा अपडेट्स के लिए हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू पर लॉग ऑन करें या फिर स्कैन करें क्यू कोड थैंक यू Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with Three Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. Three Auto TV delivers the news that matters. नमस्कार मैं हूँ रुचि शर्मा वेब थ्री की तमाम बड़ी खबरें लेकर हाजिर हैं हम क्रिप्टो मार्केट मेकर और लिक्विडिटी प्रोवाइडर जीएसआर को सिंगापुर के मॉन्ट्री अथॉरिटी ऑफ सिंगापुर द्वारा एक प्रमुख पेमेंट इंस्टीट्यूशन लाइसेंस से सम्मानित किया गया है जीएसआर के पास अब सिंगापुर का डिजिटल पेमेंट टोकन सर्विस लाइसेंस है जो कंपनियों को डिजिटल पेमेंट टोकन खरीदने और बेचने के लिए अधिकृत करता है जिसे गवर्नमेंट क्रिप्टो कहती है और लाइसेंस एक्सचेंज भी इसका उपयोग करते हैं मार्केट मेकर को पहली बार सितंबर में एम से इन प्रिंसिपल अप्रूवल मिला आमतौर पर लिक्विडिटी प्रोवाइडर्स और मार्केट मेकर्स लाइसेंस एंटिटीज नहीं है क्योंकि वे ग्राहक सामना करने वाली एंटिटीज नहीं है हाल ही में सिंगापुर ने कस्टोडियल सर्विसेज और क्रॉस बॉर्डर मनी ट्रांसफर्स को शामिल करने के लिए अपने लाइसेंसिंग रिजीम के दायरे का विस्तार किया है बढ़ते हैं अगली खबर की ओर इन्वेस्टमेंट फॉर्म वैनिक का अनुमान है कि इथेरियम लेयर टू नेटवर्क का मूल्य 2030 तक 1 ट्रिलियन डॉलर से अधिक होगा लेकिन ऐसे कई नेटवर्क्स की दीर्घकालिक संभावनाओं पर आमतौर पर मंदी बनी हुई है फर्म ने पांच प्रमुख क्षेत्रों में 46 लेयर टू नेटवर्क का मूल्यांकन किया और अंततः हजारों रोल अप उभरने की भविष्यवाणी की आबिट्रम सबसे एक्सटेंसिव इको है जिसमें एटीन बिलियन डॉलर से अधिक के लॉक्ड टोकन है वैनिक ने कहा की ट्रांजेक्शन प्राइसिंग डेवेलपर एक्सपीरियंस यूजर एक्सपीरियंस ट्रस्ट अजम्पन और इकोसिस्टम साइज लेयर टू नेटवर्क के ग्रोथ में भूमिका निभा सकते हैं इस बीच वैनिक के एनलिस्ट बस्क और सीजल ने लिखा है कि कंपनी को उम्मीद है कि लेयर टूल्स के बीच कड़ी प्रतिस्पर्धा होगी उन्होंने कहा कि वे आमतौर पर सेक्टर के बेहतर प्रदर्शन पर मंदी का रुख रखते हैं बाकी अहम खबरों के लिए करते हैं विशाखा का रुख एक यूनिफाइड और ओपन वर्चुअल सोसाइटी के निर्माण के लक्ष्य के साथ इंडिपेंडेंट मेटावर्स ओरिएंटेड वर्चुअल सोसाइटी फाउंडेशन ने सोमनिया प्रोजेक्ट के लॉन्च की घोषणा की टीम के बयान के अनुसार सोमनिया एक ईवीएम बेस्ड एल वन ब्लॉक चेन और ओमनी चेन का एक सेट का उद्देश्य मेटावर्स को एक यूनिफाइड वर्चुअल सोसाइटी से जोड़ना स्केलेबिलिटी और गति को बढ़ाने और इसके साथ साथ बिल्डर्स को मेटावर्स में बनाने के लिए प्रोत्साहित करना है 
सोमनिया को नेक्स्ट जनरेशन मेटावर्स के लिए उच्च गति बनाए रखते हुए वैश्विक स्तर पर लाखों यूजर्स का समर्थन करने के लिए डिजाइन किया गया है ये ब्लॉकचेन स्केलेबिलिटी की लंबे समय से चल रही चुनौती का समाधान प्रदान करता है जो कि एक वर्चुअल सोसाइटी को संचालित करने के लिए आवश्यक है इसके साथ साथ सोमनिया एक एंटर ऑपरेबल प्लेटफॉर्म प्रदान करता है जो यूजर्स और क्रिएटर्स को सहयोग करने और प्लेटफॉर्म पर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटर्स के बीच जनरेटेड वैल्यू को शेयर करने की अनुमति देता है सोमनिया के लॉन्च पर बोलते हुए सोमनिया के फाउंडर पॉल थॉम्सन ने कहा कि प्लेटफॉर्म मेटावर्स में क्रांति ला देगा जिससे कि ब्लॉकचेन क्षेत्र में सोशल और क्रिएटिव वेंचर्स को अधिक अवसर मिलेंगे अब बढ़ते हैं अगली खबर की ओर बैंक ऑफ इंग्लैंड और फाइनेंशियल कंडक्ट अथॉरिटी ने अपने डिजिटल सिक्योरिटी सैंडबॉक्स के लिए ड्राफ्ट गाइडेंस पर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन शुरू कर दिया है जिससे प्रतिभागियों को शेयर्स और बॉन्ड्स जैसी डिजिटल सिक्योरिटीज के ट्रेडिंग और सेटलमेंट के लिए डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड लेजर टेक्नोलॉजी का परीक्षण करने की अनुमति देने के लिए डिजाइन किया गया है तीन अप्रैल को जारी एक ज्वाइंट कंसल्टेशन और ड्राफ्ट गाइडेंस के अनुसार सैंडबॉक्स पांच साल तक चलेगा और सिक्योरिटी सेटलमेंट के लिए एक नई रेगुलेटरी रिजीम का नेतृत्व कर सकता है सैंडबॉक्स का उपयोग करने वाले सक्सेसफुल एप्लीकेंट सिक्योरिटी डिपॉजिटरी और सेटलमेंट सर्विसेज प्रदान करने के साथ साथ मॉडिफाइड रेगुलेशन के तहत एक ट्रेडिंग वेन्यू संचालित करने में सक्षम होंगे बैंक ऑफ इंग्लैंड और यूनाइटेड किंगडम के फाइनेंशियल रेगुलेटर फाइनेंशियल कंडक्ट अथॉरिटी का लक्ष्य एप्लीकेंट्स के इनॉकरल ग्रुप को दो में डिजिटल सिक्योरिटी सैंडबॉक्स में शामिल करना है ओविड यू रोशनी लेयर वन ब्लॉकचेन नेटवर्क सोलाना पर स्टेबल कॉइन सप्लाई साल की शुरुआत से लगातार बढ़ा है जो पिछले हफ्ते के दौरान तीन बिलियन डॉलर्स का आंकड़ा पार कर गया है ब्लॉकचेन एनालिटिकल प्लेटफॉर्म आर्टमिस के डेटा के अनुसार नेटवर्क पर स्टेबल कॉइन सप्लाई पिछले तीन महीनों में 55.72 फाइव बढ़कर थ्री बिलियन डॉलर तक पहुँच गया है विशेष रूप ऐसी ये संख्या दो में नेटवर्क आरोप शेष राशि के मुकाबले काफी कम है उस समय सिक्स बिलियन डॉलर ऐसी अधिक मूल्य की ये एसेट्स ब्लॉक चेन थी हालांकि हिस्टोरिक बे मार्केट सिचुएशन के दौरान यह गिरकर 1.4 बिलियन डॉलर से भी कम हो गया हालांकि अब सप्लाई फिर से बढ़ता दिख रहा है सोलाना नेटवर्क पर स्टेबल कॉइन चार्ज का नेतृत्व यूएसडीसी कर रहा है आर्टमिस के अनुसार सर्कल के स्टेबल कॉइन नेटवर्क पर ऐसे एसेट्स का 73 परसेंट हिस्सा है सर्कल द्वारा छब्बीस मार्च को नेटवर्क आरोप अपने क्रॉस ट्रेन ट्रांसफर प्रोटोकॉल को लॉन्च इस हाल या उछाल का संभावित कारण है आर्टमिस डेटा से पता चलता है कि यूएसडीसी ने 2 अप्रैल को 63.69 बिलियन डॉलर्स की स्टेबल कॉइन ट्रांसफर वॉल्यूम का योगदान दिया जो कि यूएसडीटी के 812.41 बिलियन डॉलर से कहीं अधिक है इस बीच सोलाना पर स्टेबल कॉइन ट्रांसफर वॉल्यूम 164 परसेंट बढ़कर 1.4 ट्रिलियन डॉलर हो गया जो नेटवर्क द्वारा आनंद ली गई एक्टिविटी की महत्वपूर्ण अमाउंट को दर्शाता है बढ़ता स्टेबल कॉइन सप्लाई बढ़ी हुई लिक्विडिटी को इंगित करता है और बढ़ी हुई कैपिटल इन्फ्यूजन का संकेत देता है तो आज के लिए फिलहाल इतना ही ऐसी वेब से जुड़ी खबरों के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉटो टीवी ऐसी और ज्यादा अपडेट्स के लिए हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट थ्री वर्स टीवी डॉट आई पर लॉग ऑन करें या फिर स्कैन करें क्यू आर कोड थैंक यू नमस्कार मैं हूँ रुचि शर्मा वेब थ्री की तमाम बड़ी खबरें लेकर हाजिर हैं हम हाल ही में व्यापक रूप से बढ़ते इथीना प्रोटोकॉल ने ईएनए टोकन के लॉन्च की घोषणा की ये लॉन्च डिजिटल करेंसीज के विकास में एक महत्वपूर्ण माइलस्टोन है विशेष रूप से प्रोटोकॉल की यूएसडी ई सप्लाई वन बिलियन डॉलर ऐसी अधिक हो गई है जिससे ये क्रिप्टो इतिहास में इस माइल तक पहुँचने वाली सबसे फास्टेस्ट यू एस एसेट में ऐसी एक बन गई है ये उपलब्धि डीफाइन लैंडस्केप में एक नए इमर्जिंग लीडर के रूप में इथीना की स्थिति को रेखांकित करती है अपने बढ़ते इकोसिस्टम के साथ इथीना ने डीफाई स्पेस में प्रमुख खिलाड़ियों को आकर्षित किया है जिसमें मेकर डाउ फ्रैक्स कर्व फाइनेंस और आवे शामिल है ये इंटीग्रेशन व्यापक ब्रॉडर डीफाई इको के भीतर इथीना के यूएसडी स्टेबल कॉइन की बढ़ती रेलिवेंस और अडोप्शन को भी दर्शाते हैं 
दो अप्रैल के लिए निर्धारित यूजर्स को 750 मिलियन ईएनए टोकन्स के अपने हिस्से का दावा करने का अवसर मिलेगा जो टोटल सप्लाई के 5 परसेंट का प्रतिनिधित्व करता है जो उनके इक्यूमुलेटेड शार्ड्स के आधार पर इथीना इकोसिस्टम में उनके योगदान का भी एक उपाय है बढ़ते हैं अगली खबर की ओर पैरलर एक साइफाई एन एफ कार्ड गेम जो इथेरियम ब्लॉकचेन और बेस लेयर टू चेन का समर्थन करता है ने इन्वेस्टर्स के एक पूल से 35 मिलियन डॉलर्स प्राप्त करके एक और फाइनेंसिंग राउंड पूरा कर लिया है 28 मार्च को एक एक्स पोस्ट में गेम डेवलपर्स ने एक की फंडिंग को डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड ग्लोबल द ऑपरेटिंग ग्रुप वैनिक सोलाना वेंचर्स बेस इको फंड और एम्बर सहित अन्य लोगों द्वारा समर्थित किया गया था फंडिंग के बाद प्रोजेक्ट के वैल्यूएशन का खुलासा नहीं किया गया हालांकि डेवलपर्स ने कहा कि प्रोसीडिंग्स का उपयोग नए माध्यमों और प्लेटफॉर्म्स में पैरेलल यूनिवर्स का विस्तार करने के लिए किया जाएगा बाकी अहम खबरों के लिए करते हैं विशाखा का रुख इंडोनेशिया में क्रिप्टो करेंसी इंडस्ट्री के परिदृश्य को नया आकार देने के लिए फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज अथॉरिटी ने घोषणा की है कि क्रिप्टो फॉर्म्स को संचालन के लिए लाइसेंस प्राप्त करने से पहले एक रेगुलेटरी सैंडबॉक्स में मूल्यांकन के अधीन किया जाएगा ये विकास जनवरी दो में होने वाले कमोडिटीज और फ्यूचर्स ट्रेडिंग रेगुलेटर बैपिट टी से ओजे के तक रेगुलेटरी ओवरसाइट के ट्रांजेक्शन के हिस्से के रूप में आता है नए रेगुलेटरी फ्रेमवर्क के तहत इंडोनेशिया में क्रिप्टो सर्विसेज प्रदान करने वाली कंपनियों को नियामक सैंडबॉक्स के भीतर मूल्यांकन से गुजरना होगा इस शर्त का पालन करने में विफलता की वजह से ऐसी फॉर्म्स को देश के भीतर अवैध रूप से संचालित माना जाएगा एक रेगुलेटरी सैंडबॉक्स एक कंट्रोल एनवायरमेंट के रूप में कार्य करता है जहां इनोवेटिव और फाइनेंशियल प्रोडक्ट्स और सर्विसेज का उनकी सेफ्टी और रिलायबिलिटी सुनिश्चित करने के लिए परीक्षण किया जा सकता है बढ़ते हैं अगली खबर की ओर बाइबिट ने नीदरलैंड में यूजर्स के लिए एक रेगुलेटरी डिजिटल एसेट प्लेटफॉर्म बाइबिट डॉट एन एल के लॉन्च की घोषणा की है क्रिप्टो समाचार तब आता है जब बिटकॉइन के 70,000 डॉलर से ऊपर बढ़ने के बीच अधिक लोग क्रिप्टो ट्रेडिंग और निवेश पर ध्यान दे रहे हैं बाइबिट के अनुसार बाइबिट डॉट एन एल के माध्यम से नीदरलैंड में विस्तार दुनिया भर में अधिक यूजर्स के लिए क्रिप्टो लाने के मिशन का हिस्सा है नया डिजिटल एसेट प्लेटफॉर्म नीदरलैंड्स के रेगुलेटरी गाइडलाइंस के तहत इसकी अनुमति दे रहा है ओवर टू रोशनी जुपिटर फाउंडेशन ने सोलाना पर एवोल्यूशनरी इनोवेशंस के लिए 137 मिलियन डॉलर की कैपिटल के साथ आधिकारिक तौर पर एक डाओ लॉन्च किया है सोलाना ब्लॉकचेन नेटवर्क में अग्रणी डिसेंट्रलाइज एक्सचेंज जुपिटर प्रोटोकॉल ने एक बड़े फनल से युक्त एक इनिशियल फंड डाओ बनाया है जुपिटर टेन मिलियन डॉलर मूल्य का यू और वन मिलियन डॉलर का लोकल जुपिटर टोकन जुपिटर डाओ में वितरित कर रहा है जिसकी स्थापना एक डिसेंट्रलाइज बैंक बनने और कंपनी के एसेट को ट्रेड करने के लिए की गई थी ये कदम सीधे डाओ को सोलाना क्षेत्र के भीतर सरल प्रोजेक्ट में निवेश करने में सक्षम बनाता है बजट एलोकेशन साबित करता है कि जुपिटर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड लेजर और डिसेंट्रलाइज ऑटोनोमस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के सतत विकास के साथ साथ लॉन्ग टर्म कॉइन होल्डिंग्स को प्रोत्साहित करेगा तो आज के लिए फिलहाल इतना ही ऐसी वेब से जुड़ी खबरों के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉटो टीवी ऐसी और ज्यादा अपडेट्स के लिए हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू पर लॉग ऑन करें या फिर स्कैन करें क्यूआर आर कोड थैंक यू Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. What's up gamers? Is it just me or you all feel like CJ from GTA? Oh shit. Here we go again. I was so not prepared for this week after a long weekend. Anyways, let's get to the point. So all my gaming junkies would agree to this that GTA 6 is the most anticipated game set to be released between January and April 2025 for Xbox Series and PlayStation 5. But what if I tell you that Web3 has its own version of GTA? 
Gamers, fasten your seatbelts, ready yourself because Wilder World is ready to set the stage on fire. Web3 gamer Wilder World has been given a listing on the Epic Games Store ahead of its as of yet unscheduled launch. The publisher of Wilder World is referring to Wilder World as the ultimate game. The game also offers the free roam a virtual world that begins in Miami, a metaverse city to explore, race, socialize and much more according to a press release. Every object in the world including furniture tools, land and avatars will be traded into digital assets on the Wilder World market. The game's team said that in order to address the flaws in classic AAA games like Grand Theft Auto and Cyberpunk, the game will combine leading game genres into a single immersive experience. The team plans to create a single and all-encompassing game called Wilder World that combines the racing, mining and first-person shooter genres. A proprietary blockchain will be used to build the Wilder World. In order to maintain low fees, the team is working with Polygon and Celestia to build a custom, scalable blockchain as well as working with a meta gravity to power virtual worlds and thousands of players according to the news announcement. It also said by the game's developers that a proprietary cloud gaming system will eventually power the game. The game website states in a blog post that we are actively developing our own cloud gaming service that provides increased reliability and hardware guarantees as well as optimization for Metaverse and Web3 gaming with the use of NVIDIA GPUs. However, the post notes that this is an early venture and goes on to say that a launch, Wilder World will be available on NVIDIA's streaming gaming service, GeForce Now. The team's roadmap indicates that limited functionality will be launched to players over the next 12 to 18 months with the racing portion of the game available during what they're calling Act 1 and the combat portion available as Act 3. Well, we will definitely review when the game gets launched. Until then, keep watching Freelotto TV. Do like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, do log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. नमस्कार मैं विशाखा ठाकुर स्वागत है आप सभी का थ्री डॉटो टीवी में वर्चुअल डिजिटल एसेट्स ब्रॉडर फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स विशेषकर इक्विटी मार्केट्स के खिलाफ जाने की आदत बना रही है पिछले 24 घंटे में कुछ ऐसा ही पैटर्न सामने आया है इक्विटी नीचे ट्रेड कर रही हैं जबकि वीडियोस मजबूत हो रहे हैं जिससे कि बिटकॉइन को हफ्ते के अधिकांश घाटे को मिटाने में मदद मिल रही है मिनियापोलिस फेड प्रेसिडेंट नील काशकारी की हॉकिस टिप्पणियों ने एस एंड पी फाइव हंड्रेड और नास्टा को नीचे भेज दिया जबकि बिटकॉइन 3.4 परसेंट की बढ़त के साथ 68,720 डॉलर के वर्तमान स्तर पर वापस आने से पहले 69,000 मार्क से ऊपर चली गई हाल ही में फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स में लगातार अस्थिरता देखी जा रही है क्योंकि मैक्रो संकेतक मिश्रित संकेत प्रस्तुत कर रहे हैं आज का यूएस नॉन फार्म पेरोल डेटा इस बात पर स्पष्टता प्रदान करता है कि इंटरेस्ट रेट सिनेरियोस कैसे आकार ले रहे हैं ब्रॉडर क्रिप्टो मार्केट्स बिटकॉइन पर बारीकी से नजर भी रख रहे हैं इथेरियम 3,300 डॉलर्स के स्तर पर बना हुआ है हाल ही में ये मात्र 0.1 परसेंट की बढ़त के साथ 3,329 डॉलर्स पर पहुंच गया वहीं दूसरी ओर बाइनांस का बी एन बी एडीए एक्सापी रोजकॉइन एवीए उच्च स्तर पर ट्रेड कर रहे थे पिछले चौबीस घंटों में वार्षिक क्रिप्टो मार्केट कैप टू बढ़कर टू ट्रिलियन डॉलर हुआ दूसरी ओर कुल क्रिप्टो मार्केट का वॉल्यूम 4 परसेंट गिर कर नाइन्टी बिलियन डॉलर हो गया डीफाइन में टोटल वॉल्यूम वर्तमान में 10 बिलियन डॉलर है और सभी स्टेबल कॉइन्स 
91 बिलियन डॉलर्स हैं जो कि कुल क्रिप्टो मार्केट के 24 घंटे की वॉल्यूम का क्रमश 10% और 94% का प्रतिनिधित्व करते हैं बिटकॉइन का प्रभुत्व वर्तमान में 52.8% है जो दिन के मुकाबले 0.5% अधिक है टॉप 100 टोकन का बारोमीटर IC15 इंडेक्स 2% परसेंट बढ़कर एटी पर पहुंच गया इसी बीच कमोडिटी फ्यूचर्स ट्रेडिंग कमीशन के लेटेस्ट डेटा के अनुसार हेड फंड और ट्रेडिंग एडवाइजर्स ने बिटकॉइन फ्यूचर्स पर अपने मंदी के दाम बढ़ा दिए हैं इसके साथ ही सो कॉल्ड फ्यूचर्स व फंडिंग रेट पर पेट्रोल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट मार्केट्स और स्पॉट प्राइसेस के बीच अंतर के आधार पर ट्रेडर्स को भुगतान एक रिकॉर्ड उच्च स्तर के आसपास है फंडिंग रेट पर पेट्रोल स्वैप्स मार्केट में ट्रेडर्स की भावनाओं का प्रतिनिधित्व कर रही है बाइनांस ने अपने एन मार्केटप्लेस को सुव्यवस्थित करने के प्रयासों के तहत बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स के लिए समर्थन हटा दिया है जो कि सातोशी पर इंस्क्राइब्ड एक डिजिटल एसेट है जो बिटकॉइन का सबसे लोएस्ट डिनोमिनेशन है यूजर्स अब अठारह अप्रैल से बाइनांस एन एफ टी पर बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स का ट्रेड नहीं कर पाएंगे और एक्सचेंज ने यूजर्स को अठारह मई से पहले अपने बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स वापस लेने की सलाह दी है बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल से जुड़े एयर ड्रॉप्स बेनिफिट्स या यूटिलिटीज को अब 10 अप्रैल से समर्थित नहीं किया जाएगा फाइनेंस ने रनस्टोन होल्डर्स को इस तिथि तक अपने एन वापस लेने की भी सलाह दी ताकि ये सुनिश्चित हो सके कि उन्हें अभी भी संबंधित टोकन बेनिफिट्स और यूटिलिटीज प्राप्त हो रनस्टोन नामक पॉपुलर बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल प्रोजेक्ट के क्रिएटर्स ने ऑरिजिनल पेरेंट इंस्क्रिप्शन जिसका मूल्य आठ पी लगभग फाइव है जो कि पृथिक बिटकॉइन क्रिएटर सातोशी नाकामोटो के वॉलेट में भेजा गया था फ्रांसिस नेप्रिटन डिजिटल एसेट्स ने हाल ही में एक नए प्रोस्पेक्टिस में ऑर्डिनल ऑन इंस्क्रिप्शन का उदय दिखाया जो कि बिटकॉइन ब्लॉकचेन पर इनोवेशन में पॉजिटिव मोमेंटम को उजागर करता है सिंगापुर के मॉनेटरी अथॉरिटी ऑफ सिंगापुर ने ट्रीएसआर मार्केट्स को अपना फुल मेजर पेमेंट इंस्टीट्यूशन लाइसेंस प्रदान किया है जिससे उसे देश के सेंट्रल बैंक के तहत ओवर द काउंटर और इसके साथ ही स्पॉट और मार्केट मेकिंग सर्विसेज संचालित करने की अनुमति मिलती है जीएसआर मार्केट्स 2013 में अमेरिका में स्थापित ओ टी सी क्रिप्टो ट्रेडिंग डेरेवेटिव मार्केट मेकिंग और वेंचर कैपिटल इन्वेस्टमेंट्स की सुविधा प्रदान करता है सिंगापुर के रेगुलेटरी एफर्ट्स ने कई क्रिप्टो कंपनियों को देश के भीतर अपनी सर्विसेज देने की मांग की है जिसमें क्रिप्टो डॉट कॉम कॉइन बेस और रिपल को दो हजार तेईस में फॉर्मल अप्रूवल मिला और ओकेक्स और पिटको को दो हजार चौबीस में इन प्रिंसिपल अप्रूवल मिले सिंगापुर अपने पेमेंट सर्विसेज एक्ट का विस्तार करके रिटेल स्पेकुलेशन भी नकेल कस रहा है जिसमें की डीपीटी टोकन ट्रांसफर्स एक्सचेंज और क्रॉस बॉर्डर फंड ट्रांसफर्स के लिए कस्टोडियल सर्विसेज शामिल है शिबाइनू मैगजीन का आर्टिकल बिल्डिंग द फ्यूचर शिबेरियम पर डीफाई क्रांति के लिए के नाइन फाइनेंस का स्ट्रेटेजिक विजन शिबेरियम ब्लॉकचेन पर डीफाई लैंडस्केप को बढ़ाने के लिए के नाइन फाइनेंस की स्ट्रेटेजिक प्लान की रूपरेखा तैयार करता है रोडमैप में तीन फेजेस हैं जो कि दूसरी तिमाही के अंत में है इस पर की शुरुआत से शुरू होगा और मेन नेट पर बोरो के लॉन्च के साथ समाप्त होगा फाइनल फेज कैनियन के लक्ष्य शिबेरियम पर डिसेंट्रलाइज लिक्विड स्टेकिंग प्रोडक्ट के लिए के नाइन फाइनेंस के दृष्टिकोण को साकार करना है के नाइन फाइनेंस डाओ के फाउंडर बाज प्रोजेक्ट के प्रोजेक्ट्री को कम्युनिटी के दृष्टिकोण के साथ संरेखित करने पर जोर दे रहे हैं और ब्लॉकचेन क्षेत्र में एक फॉर्मिडेबल कंटेंडर के रूप में शिबेरियम की तकनीकी क्षमताओं और इसके साथ ही वाइब्रेंट शिबामी कम्युनिटी सहित इसकी यूनिक स्ट्रेंथ पर प्रकाश भी डालते हैं सितंबर 2022 में द मर्ज इवेंट के बाद शिबेरियम ब्लॉकचेन के प्रूफ ऑफ स्टेक नेटवर्क में परिवर्तित होने के बाद से लिक्विड रीस्टेकिंग टोकन सहित लिक्विड स्टेकिंग प्रोटोकॉल में उल्लेखनीय वृद्धि हुई है आइगन लेयर टोटल वैल्यू लॉक द्वारा इथेरियम का दूसरा सबसे बड़ा डी प्रोटोकॉल वर्तमान में 12.4 बिलियन डॉलर्स का है और वैलिडेटर्स को अपने दाव पर लगे ई को पुनः प्राप्त करके एक्टिवली वैलिडेटेड सर्विसेज को सुरक्षित करके एक्स्ट्रा रिवॉर्ड्स अर्न करने की अनुमति देता है ये इनोवेटिव कॉन्सेप्ट वैलिडेटर्स को नई इथेरियम सुविधाओं को सुरक्षित करने और संभावित रूप से एडिशनल रिवॉर्ड्स अर्जित करने की अनुमति देती है कॉइन बेस ने एल के आसपास एक बढ़ते इकोसिस्टम के उद्धव पर प्रकाश डाला जो कि एल की सफलता को दर्शाता है ये इकोसिस्टम अब आधा दर्जन से अधिक प्रोटोकॉल का दावा करता है हर लिक्विड रीस्टेकिंग टोकन की अपनी पुनरावृत्ति की पेशकश भी करता है जिसमें कि विविध प्रोत्साहन और एयर ड्रॉप योजनाएं शामिल हैं। हालांकि कॉइन बेस ने निकट अवधि में एल के लिए अपेक्षित चुनौतियों पर भी प्रकाश डाला आयगन डी के दो की दूसरी तिमाही की शुरुआत में शुरू होने की उम्मीद है 
क्रिसमस टेक ने छह मिलियन डॉलर्स की फंडिंग हासिल की है जो कि डीफाई लैंडस्केप को नया आकार देने की अपनी यात्रा में एक महत्वपूर्ण माइलस्टोन है प्लेटफॉर्म स्टेकिंग के लिए अपने समग्र दृष्टिकोण के साथ डीफाई स्पेस में क्रांति ला रहा है इथेरियम वर्चुअल मशीन यानी कि ईवीएम कंपैटिबल ट्रेन और लेयर टू समाधान सहित विभिन्न ब्लॉक प्रोटोकॉल के लिए समर्थन की सुविधा प्रदान कर रहा है इस पहल का उद्देश्य उपयोगकर्ताओं के लिए ईटीएच क्रिप्टो स्टेकिंग और ऑल्ट कॉइन स्टेकिंग और सहित विभिन्न स्टेकिंग तंत्रों के माध्यम से पासिव इनकम उत्पन्न करने के नए अवसरों को अनलॉक करना है भारतीय क्रिप्टो एक्सचेंज प्लेटफॉर्म कॉइन डी ने अपने प्लेटफॉर्म के भीतर डीफाई वॉलेट को एकीकृत करने के लिए यूएस आधारित फिनटेक फॉर्म मेश के साथ साझेदारी की घोषणा की है इसका उद्देश्य सेटेलाइट एक्सचेंजों और डीफाई वॉलेट के बीच कनेक्टिविटी को सरल बनाना है 16 मिलियन के यूजर बेस को केटर करने वाले कॉइन डी ने हाल ही में भारत की फाइनेंशियल इंटेलिजेंस यूनिट यानी कि एफ के साथ अपने व्यवसाय को प्रमाणित करते हुए भारत में संलग्न होने के लिए सुरक्षित होने की घोषणा की कॉइन डी सी एक्स के सह संस्थापक सुमित गुप्ता ने मेश को प्लेटफॉर्म के लिए गेम चेंजर कहा क्योंकि ये उन्नत एपीआई एकीकरण प्रदान करता है जो कि उपयोगकर्ताओं के लिए डिजिटल एसेट मैनेजमेंट को सरल बना सकता है गूगल जनरेटिव आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस द्वारा संचालित प्रीमियम सुविधाओं के लिए शुल्क लेने पर विचार कर रहा है ये पहली बार है कि कंपनी ने अपने किसी मुख्य प्रोडक्ट को पेवॉल के पीछे रखा ये इसके सर्च बिजनेस का सबसे बड़ा छटका होगा क्योंकि ये लगातार ऐसी तकनीक से जूझ रहा है जिससे कि इसका विज्ञापन व्यवसाय को खतरा है गूगल अपनी प्रीमियम सदस्यता सेवाओं में कुछ एआई संचालित सर्च फीचर्स को जोड़ने सहित विकल्पों पर विचार कर रहा है जो कि पहले से ही जीमेल और डॉक्स में अपने नए जेबिनाए एआई सहायक तक पहुंच प्रदान करते हैं इंजीनियर सेवा को तैनात करने के लिए आवश्यक तकनीक विकसित कर रहे हैं लेकिन अधिकारियों ने अभी तक इस पर अंतिम निर्णय नहीं लिया है कि इसे कब लॉन्च किया जाए या नहीं सैमसंग ने अपने मुंबई स्टोर में एआई संचालित घरेलू उपकरणों की एक श्रृंखला लॉन्च की है जो इसकी भारत की बिक्री में 70 प्रतिशत का योगदान देती है उपकरणों में वॉशिंग मशीन रेफ्रिजरेटर माइक्रोवेव और रेजिडेंशियल एयर कंडीशनर शामिल हैं। इन उपकरणों में सुविधाजनक घरेलू प्रबंधन के लिए वाईफाई इंटरनल कैमरे और ए ट्रिप्स की सुविधा है रेफ्रिजरेटर संग्रहित वस्तुओं के आधार पर स्वचालित रूप से भोजन का सुझाव दे सकता है जबकि एयर कंडीशनर उपकरणों को चालू या बंद करने के लिए सूचनाएं भेजता है माइक्रोवेव व्यंजनों को लो फैट वॉशिंग में कस्टमाइज कर सकता है और वॉशिंग मशीन समय के साथ कपड़े धोने की दिनचर्या सीख सकती है ए आई वॉश फीचर लोड वजन कपड़ों के प्रकार कोमलता पानी के स्तर गंदगी के स्तर और डिटर्जेंट के स्तर के आधार पर कस्टम वॉश रेसिपी बनाता है इस नवाचार का उद्देश्य भारतीय घरों के रहने के अनुभवों को बेहतर बनाना ऊर्जा की खपत को कम करना और ग्रीनर प्लानिट में योगदान देना है वन प्लस ने अपने स्मार्टफोन उपयोगकर्ताओं के लिए एक नया ए आई इरेजर फीचर पेश किया है जिसे इस महीने से धीरे धीरे विभिन्न डिवाइसेस में पेश किया जाएगा जनरेटिव ए आई तकनीक पर आधारित इस फीचर का उद्देश्य उपयोगकर्ता की रचनात्मक को मुक्त करना और फोटो एडिटिंग में क्रांति लाना है उपयोगकर्ता फोटो गैलरी से इमेजेस के भीतर अनवांटेड आइटम्स का चयन और हटा सकते हैं उन्हें और अंडरलाइंग ए आई सिलेक्टेड एरिया का विश्लेषण भी करता है ये और इस रिप्लेसमेंट बैकग्राउंड उत्पन्न करता है जो कि इमेज की समग्र शैली के अनुरूप आसपास के वातावरण में मिश्रित होता है वन प्लस इस साल और अधिक ए फीचर पेश करने की योजना बना रहा है ये सुविधा वास्तविक उपयोगकर्ता आवश्यकताओं से बनाई गई है और इसका उद्देश्य सभी के लिए अधिक सुविधाजनक भविष्य प्रदान करना है वन प्लस ने हाल ही में भारत में नॉर्थ सी फोर स्मार्टफोन लॉन्च किया है जिसकी कीमत 24,999 रुपए है और ये ऑटो ऑक्टो को क्वालकॉम स्नैपड्रैगन 7 जेन 3 चिपसेट और आठ जी रैम द्वारा संचालित है ये डिवाइस चार अप्रैल से बिक्री के लिए उपलब्ध होगा आज के लिए बुलेटिन में फिलहाल इतना ही ऐसी ही वेब थ्री से जुड़ी अपडेट्स के लिए लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू पर या फिर स्कैन करें क्यू कोड
नोस्ट्रोडामस बाबा वेंगा और महाभारत के सहदेव में एक बात क्या कॉमन है आप जानते हैं कहते हैं कि इन तीनों लोगों के पास भविष्य को देखने की दिव्य शक्तियां थी अगर फिक्शनल वर्ल्ड की बात करें तो मैट्रिक्स फिल्म में नियो को अपना फ्यूचर बताने वाली औरकल और नेक्स्ट फिल्म में जादूगर का किरदार निभाने वाले निकोलस केज के पास भी भविष्य को देखने की शक्ति थी अब अगर क्रिप्टो करेंसी और ब्लॉकचेन की दुनिया की बात करें तो यहाँ पर भी एक ऐसा गुमनाम शख्स है जिसकी बिटकॉइन को लेकर की गई भविष्यवाणियां सच साबित हो रही हैं। जी हाँ हम बात कर रहे हैं दुनिया की पहली और सबसे बड़ी क्रिप्टो करेंसी बिटकॉइन के जनक सातोशी नाकामोटो की 2009 में इजाद हुए बिटकॉइन का शुरुआती मूल्य मात्र छह पैसे प्रति बिटकॉइन था और अब फेबर 2024 में वही एक बिटकॉइन तकरीबन 47 लाख रुपीस पर ट्रेड कर रहा है 2009 में बिटकॉइन बनाने के बाद सातोशी नाकामोटो 2011 में अचानक डिजिटल दुनिया से गायब ही हो गए ना चिट्ठी ना कोई संदेश पता नहीं कहाँ वो चले गए और आज तक सातोशी नाका मोटो कौन है वो एक व्यक्ति है या एक समुदाय है ये बात इक्कीसवीं सदी का एक बहुत बड़ा राज बनकर रह गई है लेकिन 2011 में गायब होने से पहले उन्होंने अपने साथी मार्टी मालवी को कुछ ईमेल्स भेजे थे और उसमें उन्होंने बिटकॉइन को लेकर जो भविष्यवाणिया की थी वो आज दो में सच साबित हो गई है जिसे देखकर तो ये लगता है कि जैसे सातोशी नाका मोटो के पास कोई जादुई क्रिस्टल बॉल हो जिसमें उन्होंने भविष्य को देख लिया होगा खैर तो आइए जानते हैं कि आखिर वो तीन क्या भविष्यवाणियां थी जो आज सच साबित हो गई हैं। सातोशी नाका मोटो ने 2010 में कहा था कि अगर बिटकॉइन का उपयोग बढ़ा तो बिटकॉइन को बनाने में खपत होती ऊर्जा और बिटकॉइन माइनिंग से वातावरण पर पड़ता असर एक वैश्विक ज्वलंत मुद्दा बन जाएगा उनकी ये भविष्यवाणी आज सच साबित हो गई है अमेरिका के एनर्जी इंफॉर्मेशन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन के एक एनालिसिस के मुताबिक दुनिया भर के बिटकॉइन माइनर्स में 2023 में ऑस्ट्रेलिया में होते पावर कंजम्पन के बराबर एनर्जी का उपयोग किया है बिटकॉइन माइनिंग में खपत होती ऊर्जा से ज्यादा मात्र में कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड का एमिशन होता है जिससे कि वातावरण पर विषम प्रभाव पड़ता है सातोशी नाकामोटो ने कहा था कि जैसे जैसे बिटकॉइन प्रचलित डिजिटल करेंसी बनती जाएगी वैसे वैसे उस पर दुनिया भर की सरकारों द्वारा बिटकॉइन की गतिविधियों को नियंत्रित करने का प्रयास बढ़ता जाएगा आज ये बात भी सच साबित हो गई है अगर भारत की बात करें तो बिटकॉइन जैसी डिजिटल करेंसी में ट्रेड करने पर भारत सरकार ने 30 प्रतिशत टैक्स और 1 प्रतिशत टी लागू कर दिया है विश्व के कई देशों ने बिटकॉइन जैसी क्रिप्टो करेंसी को लेकर रूल्स और रेगुलेशन लागू कर दिए हैं जिसका प्रमुख उदाहरण है अमेरिका में हाल ही में लॉन्च हुआ स्पॉट बिटकॉइन ई जिसको सिक्योरिटी एंड एक्सचेंज कमीशन ने अप्रूवल दे दिया है जिसकी वजह से अब ब्लैक रॉक और फिडेलिटी जैसे बड़े बड़े नामी गिरामी इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स भी बिटकॉइन पर दाव लगाने लगे हैं और फाइनली सातोशी नाका ने ये भी कहा था कि आने वाले समय में लोग अपनी आइडेंटिटी छुपाकर बिटकॉइन द्वारा पैसों की लेन देन कर पाएंगे और कुछ ऐसे लोग भी होंगे जो इसका गलत फायदा उठाएंगे ये बात भी सच साबित हो गई है जिसका चीता चाकता उदाहरण है डार्क वेब मार्केटप्लेस सिल्क रोड जिसको अब रेगुलेटर्स ने बंद कर दिया है पर सिल्क रोड मार्केटप्लेस पर बिटकॉइन द्वारा ड्रग्स खरीदने से लेकर किसी को शांत से मारने की सुपारी देनी जैसी अवैध गतिविधियां होती हैं पर इसमें बिटकॉइन का कोई दोष नहीं है बिटकॉइन एक टेक्नोलॉजी है और ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी की जननी है जिसके द्वारा आज दुनिया और भी ज्यादा ट्रांसपेरेंट और सुरक्षित बन रही है अंत में इतना ही कहना चाहूंगी कि बिटकॉइन के निर्माता सातोशी नाकामोटो की दीर्घ दृष्टि की दाद देनी पड़ेगी जिन्होंने बिटकॉइन के आविष्कार के साथ दुनिया ही बदल दी लेट्स होप आने वाले समय में आखिर सातोशी नाकामोटो कौन है इस रात से भी पर्दा उठ जाए 
तब तक के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉटो टी हमारे चैनल को लाइक शेयर और सब्सक्राइब जरूर करें और अधिक जानकारी के लिए हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू पर लॉग ऑन करें या स्कैन करें क्यू कोड Hello and welcome to 3.0 Auto TV. This is Shikhar Singh, Immutable, a leading developer and publisher of Web3 games, and Tap Nation, a leading Web2 game developer, have joined forces to create a diverse and inclusive Web3 gaming environment. Immutable is a top developer platform for creating and growing Web3 games on Ethereum, while Tap Nation is a well-known French mobile game publisher. Through the strategic partnership, Tap Nation and Immutable will enable the French publisher to make use of Immutable scalability solution for games that provides Ethereum security, low cost, wide scale, and EVM compatibility, all while bringing Tap Nation substantial player base into the Web3 era. Head of Web3 at Tap Nation, Philip Lenormand, expressed excitement about the partnership, stating that it will help drive Web2 players into Web3 and take them on a new journey. Tap Nation is aiming to improve user experience by creating intuitive blockchain experiences and a user-friendly onboarding experience. The company will enhance the user experience on two popular mobile games, Giant Rush and Parking Jam. The partnership between Tap Nation and Immutable is currently in the process of developing the game, which is scheduled to release in few months. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3.0 TV or log on to our website www.3versetv.io or scan the QR code to know more. TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3.0 TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3.0 TV delivers the news that matters. अरे आपने ये न्यूज देखी रशियन आर्टिस्ट एंड्रे मुलाटकिन पिकासो रिमब्रांड और वॉहोल जैसे आर्टिस्ट के 16 मास्टर पीसेस को जलाने की धमकी दे रहे हैं हम्म बहुत ज्यादा शॉकिंग है ये और इस पूरे आर्टवर्क की कीमत 45 मिलियन डॉलर से ज्यादा है सो बेसिकली एंड्रे जो है वो जूलियन असांज के सपोर्टर है और उन्होंने क्लियरली ये कह दिया है कि अगर प्रिजन में जूलियन की मौत हो जाती है या फिर एंड्रे को हर रोज जूलियन की वेलबींग की खबर नहीं मिलती है तो वो सारे आर्टवर्क को जला देंगे और इसकी पूरी तैयारी भी उन्होंने कर ली है हां ये उन्तीस टन के बड़े से वॉल्ट में दो बैरल क्रॉसिव सब्सटेंस में डिप्ड है ये आर्टवर्क और अगर जूलियन सांच की डेथ हो जाती है जेल में तो एंड्रे मलॉटकिन इस वॉल्ट में आग लगा देंगे और सारा आर्टवर्क खाक हो जाएगा वैसे ये जूलियन सांच है कौन और इनका एन से क्या कनेक्शन है सो बेसिकली जूलियन सांच विकिलीक्स के फाउंडर है और उन पर कंप्यूटर इंट्रोजन करके कॉन्स्परेसी के तहत डिफेंस डिपार्टमेंट की बहुत ही कॉन्फिडेंशियल खबरें और डॉक्यूमेंट्स लीक करने का उन पर आरोप है और इसीलिए वो हिरासत में है और ज्यादा की बात है कि जूलियन का एन से क्या नाता है तो बेसिकली जूलियन ने एक एन एफ आर्टिस्ट है पाक उनके साथ मिलकर एक एन बनाई थी क्लॉक तो बेसिकली अब तक जूलियन ने कितना जेल में वक्त बिताया है उस टाइम को क्लॉक कर रही है यानी कि जूलियन कितने साल से कितने महीनों से कितने दिनों से कितने घंटों से कितने सेकंड से वो जेल में है वो इस क्लॉक पर डिस्प्ले हो रहा है ये डिजिटल क्लॉक है और ये एन वन ऑफ द मोस्ट एक्सपेंसिव एन है ये फिफ्टी मिलियन डॉलर में बिकी है और ये जो कीमत मिली है जूलियन को इसकी सेल से उससे वो अपने लीगल डिफेंस के सारे एक्सपेंसिस पे आउट कर रहे हैं ऐसे ही इंटरेस्टिंग अपडेट्स के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉटो टी और ज्यादा इन्फॉर्मेशन के लिए लॉग ऑन करें डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट थ्री वर्स टी वी डॉट आयो या फिर स्कैन करें हमारा क्यू आर कोड
Hello and welcome to Three Dotto TV. This is Shikha Singh. It seems the rush is among leading banks in the United States to corner as many clients as possible. They are not letting go any opportunity. It doesn't matter whether the product they offer is based on virtual digital asset. Two Wall Street giants, Bank of America's Merrill Lynch and Wells Fargo, are adding spot Bitcoin ETFs to their brokerage platforms. Bloomberg reported, citing people familiar with the matter. Ever since the launch of 10 ETFs in January, industry participants have been wondering when major U.S. brokerages would start offering their funds to their clients, which could potentially bring much more buying power to the market for Bitcoin ETFs. The Bloomberg story follows a CoinDesk scoop Wednesday that Morgan Stanley, another titan in the space, is in the midst of deciding whether to give clients the option to invest in the funds. In January, CoinDesk reported first that UBS and Citigroup were letting some customers buy Bitcoin ETFs. Merrill Lynch and Wells Fargo have been offering the Bitcoin ETFs to clients who specifically asked to get exposure to it. Bloomberg reported, "Spot Bitcoin ETFs are experiencing neck break trading activity. The segment witnessed tremendous demand since they began trading on January 11th. On Wednesday alone, a record 7.7 million dollars worth of all the funds traded." Moreover, the volume growth achieved without the participation of high-caliber players. Nonetheless, the entry of Merrill Lynch and Wells Fargo, perhaps Morgan Stanley, could bring a new wave of demand. Bitwise Chief Investment Officer Matt Hogan said earlier on Thursday. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow Three Dot TV or log on to our website www.threeverse.tv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. According to Right Platform's most recent annual report, the Bitcoin miner may see financial difficulties as a result of a persistent chip scarcity, the continued need to increase hash rate, and the growing pro-climate movement in the U.S. Right is one of the many Bitcoin mining companies getting ready for the impending halving event. In its annual 10K filing, which was filed on February 23rd, the company expressly identified over 13 major risks to its future profitability in Bitcoin mining. The filing also included a section on risk factor disclosures. Wright cited the continuing global chip crisis as one of the risk factors, as only a small number of manufacturers are able to produce the highly specialized ASIC chips that Wright needs. Wright agreed to pay $291 million to purchase 66,560 miners from manufacturer MicroBT in December. According to Jason Les, CEO of the business, it was the largest order of hash rate in its history. Wright stated in its most recent annual report that until the chip scarcity issue is remedied, it anticipates continuing to pay higher than usual prices to acquire and deploy the mining equipment. Wright pointed out that even if they had access to ASIC miners, they may still run into design flaws. The company said that in attempting to modify its miners to run into immersion cooled conditions, it has previously encountered software and firmware problems, and that it may run into similar problems going forward. Wright adds that a risk associated with a more competitive industry exists, meaning that in order to preserve its market share, the company must keep raising its hash rate in tandem with the worldwide hash rate. Meanwhile, Wright also noted that Bitcoin faces significant scaling obstacles that could hinder its ability to become a widely accepted means of payment. An increasingly pro-climate change agenda in the Texas and United States governments could present challenges for the firm too, it said. Wright said it may lose a competitive advantage should it be subject to stricter regulations than its peers in other regions. Meanwhile, Wright boosted its Bitcoin production by 19% in 2023, mining a total of 6,626 BTC worth 341.4 million dollars at current prices. The firm's average cost to mine Bitcoin for 2023 also decreased 33% to $7,539 in 2023.
that's all the story for now. This is me, Ruchi Sharma, signing off. Do like, share, and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information and stories, log on to our website, www.3watchtv.io, or scan the QR code. आज की इस पास पेस ग्लोबली इंटरकनेक्टेड दुनिया में हर कोई दिन रात पैसे कमाने के लिए भाग रहा है ताकि वो अपने सपने साकार कर सके लेकिन अक्सर हम पैसे कमाने के चक्कर में अपना स्वास्थ्य खो देते हैं और फिर स्वास्थ्य को ठीक करने के लिए पैसे गवाते हैं दुनिया के ज्यादातर लोग इसी चक्रव्यूह में फंसे हुए है लेकिन अब इस चक्रव्यूह को तोड़ने में मददगार होगी ब्लॉक टेक्नोलॉजी नमस्कार स्वागत है आप सभी का थ्री टीवी में और आज के ब्लॉक ऑफ द रॉक्स के खास एपिसोड में हम देखेंगे कि कैसे ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी के उपयोग से स्वास्थ्य और पर्यावरण से जुड़ी रियल लाइफ प्रॉब्लम्स को सॉल्व किया जा सके स्वास्थ्य का गणित बिल्कुल सरल है अच्छा खाना खाने से और पॉल्यूशन फ्री वातावरण में रहने से आपका स्वास्थ्य तंदुरुस्त रहेगा लेकिन फिर भी हम इतनी सरल बात को रोजिंदा जिंदगी में फॉलो नहीं करते हैं ज्यादातर लोग इस गलत फहमी में जीते हैं कि वो फ्रेश वेजिटेबल फ्रूट्स और उच्च गुणवत्ता वाले गेहूं और चावल का उपयोग करके पौष्टिक खुराक लेते हैं जिससे उनका स्वास्थ्य तंदुरुस्त बनेगा लेकिन वो भूल जाते हैं कि सब्जी फल गेहूं, चावल जीरा और मसालों की फसल को उगाने में खतरनाक जंतुनाशक रसायन यानी पेस्टिसाइड और रसायन खाद का उपयोग करके जिनके रेगुलर सेवन से हमें कैंसर जैसी खतरनाक बीमारी की झपेट में आ सकते हैं अब ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी द्वारा ऑर्गेनिक फार्मर्स का एक डेटाबेस तैयार किया गया है जो फार्म से लेकर फोक तक आपके खाने को ट्रैक करेगी फॉर एग्जांपल आपकी प्लेट में आए टमाटर किस ऑर्गेनिक फार्म में पैदा हुए फिर उसे किस मंडी में बेचा गया कहां उसे स्टोर किया गया और फाइनली किस रिटेलर द्वारा आपके पास पहुँचा इसका पूरा रिकॉर्ड या कहे की टमाटर की पूरी जन्म कुंडली ब्लॉक चेन स्टोर की जाएगी ताकि आप निश्चिंत होकर ऑर्गेनिक फार्म के फ्रेश प्रोड्यूस ऐसी बनी डिश ऐसी स्वास्थ्य और स्वाद दोनों का आनंद ले सके इसका जीता जागता एग्जाम्पल है यूके का मल्टी पार्टनर रिसर्च और डेवलपमेंट प्रोजेक्ट सेक्वल जिसका फुल फॉर्म है सिक्योर क्वालिटी एश्योर लॉजिस्टिक फॉर डिजिटल फूड इकोसिस्टम जिसके जरिए आपकी प्लेट में आए हुए हर एक निवाला कहा उपज हुआ कहा स्टोर हुआ और कहा खरीदा गया सब कुछ एक पैकिंग सिस्टम के साथ ब्लॉक चेन स्टोर होगा जिससे भेल सेल यानी की अडल्ट्रेशन का कोई खतरा नहीं रहेगा स्वच्छ और पौष्टिक खाने के बाद अब आगे बढ़ते हुए हम बात करेंगे पर्यावरण पर ब्लॉकचेन ने कैसे अपना इम्पैक्ट छोड़ा है बियॉन्ड इमेजिनेशन टेक्नोलॉजीज ने ब्लॉकचेन बेस्ड बिट भूमि को डिजाइन किया है ताकि पर्यावरण की सस्टेनेबिलिटी पर ध्यान रखा जा सके बिट भूमि एक ब्लॉक चेन पावर प्लेटफॉर्म है जो हर एक इनिशियटिव को डिजिटल मॉनिटरिंग रिपोर्टिंग और वेरिफिकेशन के लिए बनाया गया है विशेष रूप से शहरी और ग्रामीण क्षेत्रों में खुले जगहों को फॉरेस्ट्रेशन यानी वनीकरण करने पर ध्यान दिया गया है आने वाले हफ्तों में ये प्लेटफॉर्म अपने एक्सक्लूसिव क्रिप्टोकरेंसी भूमि डॉलर्स के लॉन्च का प्लान बना रही है एक प्रेस रिलीज के अनुसार ये डिजिटल एसेट सिर्फ क्राउड फंडिंग का साधन नहीं होगा बल्कि एक ब्लॉक कम्युनिटी को भी बढ़ावा देगा जो तकनीकी हालों के माध्यम से असली दुनिया के समस्याओं का सामना करती है बिट भूमि ब्लॉकचेन और एनएफटी टेक्नोलॉजी की शक्ति का इस्तेमाल डोनेशन कैंपेन की ट्रांसपेरेंसी और ट्रेसिबिलिटी को बढ़ाने के लिए काम करती है विशेष रूप से इंसानी गतिविधियों के पर्यावरण पर दुष्प्रभाव को कम करने पर ध्यान दिया गया है आशा करते हैं कि आने वाले समय में अनाज का हर एक दाना और पृथ्वी का हर एक पेड़ पौधा ब्लॉक टेक्नोलॉजी की निगरानी में आ जाएगा तब न सिर्फ हमारी पृथ्वी ज्यादा ग्रीन भी होगी बल्कि हमारी जीवन शैली ज्यादा सेहतमंद भी बनेगी आज के खास सेगमेंट में बस इतना ही अगले हफ्ते हम ब्लॉकचेन से जुड़ी नई अपडेट्स के साथ फिर मिलेंगे तब तक के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉटो टीवी हमारे चैनल को लाइक शेयर और सब्सक्राइब करना ना भूलें। अधिक जानकारी के लिए हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट थ्री वर्स टीवी डॉट आई पर लॉग ऑन करें या फिर स्कैन करें क्यू आर कोड थैंक यू
music and the scene instantly teleports us right into the middle of galactic saga of George Lucas Star Wars series filled with larger than life characters like Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, R2D2, Jedi, and of course the villain of the story and apparently Luke's father Darth Vader and his band of deadly stormtroopers. Now it seems Darth Vader's laser gun wielding lethal stormtroopers are entering the Wetri galaxy. Apparently, the Stormtrooper character from Star Wars A New Hope will be added to Mixed Mob's card-based strategy and racing game Racer 1 as an NFT collection and playable character the Solana-based gaming company announced on Thursday. However, this license agreement has a few intriguing details. The famous Stormtrooper from the original 1977 blockbuster science fiction movie is the licensed character, although no one from Disney, Lucasfilms or their representatives mediated this agreement. Rather, the agreement is with Andrew Ainsworth, the original Star Wars prop manufacturer and Shepperton Design Studios. The well-known white-armoured soldier from the first movie was created by Ainsworth. When he began manufacturing and marketing imitation helmets based on his own design decades later, Lucasfilm brought out its lawyers and began a protracted legal battle. All in all, Ainsworth managed to obtain restricted rights for the design's commercialization. A mixed mob representative confirmed that the game studio cannot use Star Wars branding and that the deal in this case is limited to armor design from A New Hope. Nevertheless, it is a noteworthy addition to a well-known pop culture franchise that will be featured in an NFT game that seeks to offer a taste of remix culture. The game's developer, Mixmob, has announced that it intends to incorporate additional licensed characters and content and a mobile version of the game will launch in quarter 2 of 2024. This year, Mixmob plans to reveal three more license integrations. Sale details for the Stormtroopers NFTs have not been revealed. According to the team, owners of Micmob's Gen O Mask and Gen O Mixbots NFTs will be given priority access to the Mint. Mixmob's Solana based governance token, MXM, is up nearly 15% on March 1st, 2024, to a price of above $0.1 per data from CoinGecko. The token, which debuted on February 1st with an airdrop to reward early players and NFT owners, set an all time high price of $0.1136 last week. That's all the story for now. This is Miruchi Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information and stories, log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. On Friday, a US federal court judge signed off on crypto exchange Binance's $4.3 billion plea deal with the US Department of Justice. Well, this is one of the biggest penalty in the history of financial market. A company has paid to free itself from the regulatory clutches. The move shows a growing regulatory oversight of virtual digital assets or VDAs and sets a precedence to be followed. During a sentencing hearing Friday, Judge Richard Jones of the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Washington approved the top-line fine itself, though he did not yet sign off on any monitor for the exchange. Earlier last November, the Department of Justice announced a settlement alleging Binance of violating sanctions and anti-money laundering laws over a years-long period. 
Under the terms of the settlement, the exchange would pay $4.3 billion, appoint an independent compliance monitor and have its CEO at the time, founder Changping Zhao, step down. Well, CZ pleaded guilty to separate charges and is currently scheduled to be sentenced in late April. In a statement, a Binance spokesperson said the exchange was accepting responsibility through the plea deal, adding that the exchange had improved its Know Your Customer and anti-money laundering compliance in recent years. We are gratified by the recognition we have received from regulators regarding our corporation and significantly enhanced compliance, the statement said. We look forward in the coming months to continuing to build on our efforts to set the industry standard for compliance, security and transparency. In a sentencing memo ahead of the hearing, prosecutors wrote that the agreement reflects the nature and circumstances of Binance's alleged conduct. Critically, the agreed-upon sentence will promote specific and general deterrence. As part of its plea agreement, Binance has agreed to take substantial measures to ensure its ongoing compliance with U.S. law. And the significant sentence agreed to here demonstrates to other financial institutions that may seek to break the law under the guise of innovation that uh, there will be serious consequences for their criminal actions, the memo said. That's all in the story. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. मैजिक ईडन पर बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स ने की जबरदस्त कमाई पजी पेंगुइन्स की लेटेस्ट पार्टनरशिप बढ़ाएगी पॉपुलैरिटी एनएफटी स्पेस में वैन की एंट्री हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स में आए सर्च से लेकर एनएफटी स्पेस में वैन की एंट्री तक कई मजेदार एनएफटी अपडेट्स मैं रुचि शर्मा आपके लिए लेकर आई हूँ तो हो जाइए एनएफटी वर्स के इस खास एपिसोड के तैयार इसमें आपकी फेवरेट एनएफटी प्रोजेक्ट्स की डिटेल्स तो होंगी ही साथ ही हम एक स्पेशल गेस्ट से भी करेंगे मुलाकात लेकिन सबसे पहले जानते हैं पिछले हफ्ते कैसा रहा एनएफटी मार्केट का हाल एनएफटी सेल्स पिछले हफ्ते 35 परसेंट ऊपर रही दो महीने के इंतजार के बाद बिटकॉइन ऑर्डर ने फिर से बाजी मारते हुए पहली पोजिशन हासिल की पिछले हफ्ते की कुल 412 मिलियन डॉलर्स की एनएफटी सेल्स में से बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स ने 154 मिलियन डॉलर्स की सेल्स बटोरी जो कि पिछले हफ्ते के मुकाबले 103 परसेंट का जबरदस्त उछाल है तो वहीं बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स के आंकड़े के बेहद करीब थी इथेरियम एनएफटीज जिसने 10 परसेंट की बढ़त के साथ हंड्रेड मिलियन डॉलर की एन सेल्स दर्ज की तो वहीं तीसरे चौथे और पांचवे पायदान पर रही सोलाना बी और माइथोस चेन ने पिछले हफ्ते के मुकाबले ग्रोथ दर्ज की बिटकॉइन की प्राइस में जबरदस्त उछाल देखा जा रहा है जो अपने ऑल टाइम हाई के बेहद करीब है तो इसका फायदा बिटकॉइन एनएफटी को भी मिल रहा है बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल दमदार वापसी के संकेत दे रही है क्योंकि फरवरी की शुरुआत में फाइव टू सिक्स मिलियन डॉलर्स ट्रेडिंग वॉल्यूम दर्ज कर रही बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल अब अक्रॉस मेजर मार्केट प्लेसेस फिफ्टीन मिलियन डॉलर से नाइनटीन मिलियन डॉलर से ज्यादा ट्रेडिंग वॉल्यूम दर्ज कर रही है जून डेटा के मुताबिक क्रॉस चेन मार्केटप्लेस मैजिक ईडन पर एक बार फिर बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स ने टॉप स्पॉट हासिल किया है मैजिक ईडन पर बिटकॉइन एनएफटीज ने फरवरी के महीने 100 मिलियन डॉलर से ज्यादा की ट्रेडिंग वॉल्यूम दर्ज की इसके साथ ही मैजिक ईडन पर बिटकॉइन एनएफटीज की बाइंग एंड सेलिंग पर खर्च की गई टू मिलियन डॉलर की फीस ने भी मैजिक ईडन पर रिकॉर्ड सेट किया एन एफ में फोर्टी बायर्स और नाइन्टी वन ज्यादा सेलर्स शामिल थे इस पर और ज्यादा जानकारी के लिए रुक करते हैं हमारे स्पेशल गेस्ट मिस्टर जॉन इग्लेस्टन का वेलकम टू थ्री ऑर्डर टीवी बिटकॉइन के प्राइस सर्च का कितना इम्पैक्ट होga बिटकॉइन ऑर्डर्स पर और ये इम्पैक्ट कब तक रहेगा Plenty of new creators and collectors diving in on the action. Well, NFTs on other blockchains such as Ethereum are also seeing an increase in price and activity. It's less pronounced compared to Bitcoin ordinals. It makes sense that ordinals are performing well because Bitcoin is leading the way in the market. But there's there's a little more to it than that. Because ordinals are created by inscribing individual satoshis. Thank you so much humse baat cheet karne ke liye aur apna keemti samay hame dene ke liye. Pudgy Penguins ka marathon success abhi bhi jari hai. Pudgy Toys, Pudgy World, Pudgy Games ke baad ab kya hai Pudgy Penguins ka naya plan? Chaliye batate hain aapko. 
ब्लू चिप एन एफ टी कलेक्शन पजी पेंग ने अनस्टॉपेबल डोमेन के साथ पार्टनरशिप करके डॉट पजी डोमेन नेम्स इंट्रोड्यूस किए हैं हाल ही में हुए इस कोलेबोरेशन की बदौलत अनस्टॉपेबल डोमेन के अब कस्टमर्स टॉप लेवल डोमेन नेम्स जो डॉट पजी से एंड होंगे उन्हें खरीद सकते हैं और उन्हें पजी पेंगुल एन एफ टी के साथ एसोसिएट कर सकते हैं ऐसे में डोमेन होल्डर्स के लिए न्यूमरस पॉसिबिलिटीज खुल जाएंगी जैसे कि वेब थ्री मैसेजेस को सेंड और रिसीव करना डोमेन एड्रेसेस के बीच क्रिप्टो पेमेंट्स करना और न्यू डोमेन्स के जरिए एक्सक्लूसिव यूटिलिटी बैजेस कलेक्ट करना अनस्टॉपेबल डोमेन्स ने पजी एम्बेसडर प्रोग्राम और पजी स्टोरी टेलिंग कैंपेन भी लॉन्च किया है ताकि कम्युनिटी को और बेहतर तरीके से एंगेज किया जा सके एम्बेसडर प्रोग्राम में पजी के प्रोमिनेंट कम्युनिटी मेंबर्स में से एम्बेसडर सिलेक्ट किए जाएंगे जो डॉट पजी डोमेन नेम्स के इस्तेमाल को प्रमोट करेंगे और स्पेशल पजी एम्बेसडर बैजेस रिसीव करेंगे तो दूसरी तरफ स्टोरी टेलिंग कैंपेन यूजर्स को सोशल मीडिया पर पजी रिलेटेड कॉन्टेंट को क्रिएट और शेयर करने के लिए इंकरेज करेगी हर महीने अनस्टॉपेबल डोमेन चूज करेंगे कम्युनिटी स्टोरी टेलर जिन्हें वेबसाइट पर शोकेस किया जाएगा साथ ही विनर्स को फ्री ऑफ चार्ज मल्टीपल डॉट पजी डोमेन दिए जाएंगे देर आए दुरुस्त आए देर से ही सही लेकिन आखिरकार मैजिक ईडन और युगा लैब्स ने क्रिएटर रॉयल्टीज के लिए एक बड़ा कदम उठाया है एन एफ टी स्टूडियो युगा लैब्स ने अनाउंस किया है कि वो अब उन मार्केट प्लेसेस को सपोर्ट नहीं करेगा जो क्रिएटर रॉयल्टीज को ऑनर नहीं करती ये फैसला मैजिक ईडन का इथीरम पर आने के बाद लिया गया है युगा और मैजिक ईडन साथ मिलकर क्रिएटर रॉयल्टीज को लागू करने के लिए एक बड़ा कदम उठा रहे हैं युगा लैब्स ने हाल ही में एक्स पर पोस्ट किया कि हमारी रॉयल्टी फिल्टर वाली कलेक्शन अब सिर्फ उन्हीं मार्केट प्लेसेस पर ट्रेड करेगी जो क्रिएटर रॉयल्टीज देते होंगे ये फैसला ब्लॉक के मेजोरिटी एन ट्रेडिंग वॉल्यूम को कैप्चर करने के करीब एक साल बाद लिया गया है इसके बाद ओपन सी ने भी ब्लॉक के साथ कम्पीट करने के लिए अपनी रॉयल्टी फीस घटा दी थी कम रॉयल्टी स्ट्रक्चर साथ ही गिरती ट्रेडिंग वॉल्यूम्स की वजह से युगा लैब्स के रेवेन्यूज पिछले साल बहुत ज्यादा गिर गए थे फिर नवंबर में मैजिक ईडन ने अनाउंस किया कि उसने युगा लैब्स के साथ पार्टनर किया है ताकि वो साथ मिलकर इथेरियम एनर्टीज के लिए एक ऐसी मार्केट प्लेस लॉन्च कर सके जो कॉन्ट्रैक्ट के तहत क्रिएटर रॉयल्टीज दे वाले का बिटकॉइन ई अप्रूव हुआ तो जैसे पैसों की बारिश होने लगी पैसों की ये बरसात रुके नहीं बल्कि और बढ़े इसलिए वैनिक ने एन को भी कैश करने का फुल प्लान बना लिया है स्पॉट बिटकॉइन ईटीएफ के सक्सेस के बाद वैनिक ने अब एन मार्केट में कदम रखने का प्लान बना लिया है वैनिक लेकर आ रहा है अपनी पहली सेल्फ कस्टोडियल मार्केट प्लेस और इसे नाम दिया गया है सेगमेंट सेगमेंट यूरोप और एशिया में क्रिप्टो एंथुजियास को टारगेट करेगी रेगुलेटरी कंसर्न की वजह ऐसी यूनाइटेड स्टेट रेजिडेंट के लिए ये अवेलेबल नहीं होगी सेगमेंट को नोवा डॉट टेक और डेलीगेट डॉट एक्स वाई जी के साथ पार्टनरशिप में क्रिएट किया गया है सेगमेंट कोई आम एन एफ टी मार्केट प्लेस नहीं होगी ये कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव डिजिटल एसेट प्लेटफॉर्म होगा जिसका एम होगा एसेट के एक्सचेंज और स्टोरेज को सिक्योर और एक्सेसिबल बनाना ये लॉक एंड की मॉडल पर काम करेगी जैसा कि हाई सिक्योरिटी वॉल्ट में होता है जिसमें डिजिटल एसेट को शेयर किया जा सकता है बिना सिक्योरिटी रिस्क ब्रीचेस के वेल दैट्स ऑल इन दिस एपिसोड ऑफ एन एफ टी वर्स वक्त आ गया है आपसे विदा लेने का लेकिन एन एफ टी की दुनिया से ऐसी और मजेदार खबरें मैं रुचि शर्मा आपके लिए हर हफ्ते लाती रहूंगी टिल देन डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू थ्री डॉट टीवी और इसी तरह की इंटरेस्टिंग अपडेट्स के लिए लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट थ्री वर्सी डॉट आई ओ पर या फिर क्यू आर कोड को स्कैन करें Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3.0 TV. This is Shikhar Singh. The meme coin market has been experiencing a strong uptrend, outperforming the altcoin market. 
Broader market optimism has prompted analysts to predict a massive price increases in meme coin projects ranging from 5 to 100x in 2024. Given the biggest growth opportunity right ahead, uh, investors are holding meme coins in large sum this year. While the surge of meme coins is causing speculations of repeat of the 2021 season, the scenarios this time around seems quite different that may keep upward trend rally perfectly intact. Let's consider some meme coins' performance and the factor propelling their upsurge. At the top of the list is Shiba Inu. So Shiba Inu, a top canine themed meme coin, has experienced a significant price increase of over 200% in February and remains a popular investment option. It has also become the first top meme coin to adopt an advanced FHE technique for advanced uh, enhanced security and launched the Shib name service in March. Fully homomorphic encryption is a new cryptographic technique that enables developers to perform computations on encrypted data, revolutionizing the relationship between data processing and privacy. Another meme coin leading the rally is Bonk. The first meme coin on the Solana network has also gained popularity and utility as a meme coin to return liquidity to the Solana DEX ecosystem. In February, Bonk's price rose more than 150%, indicating continuous growth. Despite a 40% decrease from its all-time high, its track record suggests it could increase by up to a 5x before the end of 2024. Another Solana-based meme coin, WEN, has also gained attention and benefited 1 million wallets. WEN's goal is to permanently spread awareness and its value has increased by over 300% in February. The coin's success has raised expectations for its raise in 2024. Dog Whiff Hat, another meme coin on the Solana network, has seen a 500% increase in traction and set a new all-time high in 2024 about $1.5. Developed to track transactions and on-chain data for Solana and Solana-related tokens, Whiff gained popularity after being listed on Binance. Whiff also shot up late Jan 2024 as asset management firm Franklin Templeton also praised the Solana network in a tweet. Smog, another meme coin based on the Solana blockchain launched uh, in February, has also quickly gained popularity and is now available on Ethereum for better accessibility and affordability. Smog's viral airdrops on social media platforms are its main attraction, with 30% of the token supply allocated for airdrops and 50% for marketing, making it a valuable meme coin. Smog coin exploded 391% this week to attain $265 million market capitalization. Cat-themed coins, including Taylor Swift's Cat, Banana Cat, and Pop Cat, have seen significant gains with Taylor Swift's Cat token increasing 25-fold in the past seven days. The cat-themed meme category, with a market capitalization of $55 billion, surpasses liquid staking layer 2s and gaming tokens. Doge, the original meme coin, dominates with a market capitalization exceeding $20 billion. The sector has also experienced a 84% surge in the past week with notable performers like Sheeb, Pepe, Bonk, Dog Whiff Hat, Floki and Popcat contributing billions of dollars to their market caps. Other significant gainers include Miro and Mock. Solana, a blockchain platform known for its low transaction costs, has become a popular platform for trading meme coins featuring caricatures of public figures like Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Ethereum's popularity is also reaching its highest level and its price also soared past $4,000 level. And with its latest 10 can upgrade scheduled on March 13th, all eyes are on Ethereum, leading to a surge in demand for Ethereum-based meme coins like Pepe and Dog with Hat, causing investors to double their portfolios. The Ethereum network's revenue reached a two-year high this week due to speculative frenzy with the meme coins. The main its revenue from a network fees reached $193 million, the highest since May 2022 and a 78% increase from last week. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3.tv or log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Hello and a very warm welcome, I am Ruchi Sharma. The newly launched Spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds in the United States are overwhelmed by growing investor appetite. The investor frenzy witnessed a tsunami of volume for the alternative product. On March 5th, as price of Bitcoin price hit a new all-time high, trading volume of Spot BTC ETFs hit a milestone of $10 billion. 
These are banana numbers for ETFs under two months old, Bloomberg ETF analyst Eric Balchunar said in a March 5th ex post reporting the figures. BlackRock's iShares Bitcoin ETF saw the most volume at $3.7 billion, while the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust and the Fidelity Wise Origin Bitcoin Fund respectively tallied $2.8 billion and $2 billion as per Otaviani's figures. Bitcoin saw significant price swings over the US trading day, hitting a new all-time high of $69,200, momentarily then falling 12% to a low of $60,860. Bitcoin has partially recovered to $63,350 at the time of writing. IBIT and FBTC both fell around 8.6% on the day with other spot Bitcoin ETFs recording similar price drops according to Google Finance. Investors have piled into the funds at a historic clip since their January 11th launch with total assets in the 10 US spot Bitcoin funds on the market swelling to nearly $50 billion. What interests investors? The funds allow buying virtual digital assets through their brokerage accounts without having to go to a crypto exchange or to funds that track Bitcoin's price through futures contracts. Meanwhile, an interesting trend has emerged in recent times. Only about 4% of the more than 3,000 listed US ETFs have more than $10 billion in assets according to Bloomberg Intelligence. BlackRock has achieved the feat at a breakneck speed. Nine of the Bitcoin funds were new to the market in January, while Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust converted into an ETF with almost $30 billion of existing assets the day the others launched. Investors have since pulled more than $8 billion from the fund, which charges a substantially higher fee than its competitors. Grayscale's 1.5% annual fee would generate about $400 million in annual revenue for the asset manager if the fund's average assets remained around current levels. That's all in the story for now. This is me, Ruchi Sharma, signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information and stories, log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Vashakha Thakur. The Cooperation Council for the Arab States of the Gulf, also known as the Gulf Cooperation Council, comprising of the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman and Qatar, are targeting a $15 billion metaverse opportunity by 2030. According to a report by Strategy and PwC, the metaverse industry is projected to contribute $15 billion to Gulf Cooperation Council nations by 2030. Well, GCC aims to explore the impact of metaverse in energizing and transforming various sectors such as healthcare, tourism, real estate, etc. per strategy and PwC report. Well, ongoing metaverse projects in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates are also highlighted in the report, indicating potential expansion across the region as these countries are eager to use the big opportunities offered by the metaverse to boost their economies. Talking about Dubai, it aims to inject a substantial $4 billion into the economy and generate 40,000 virtual jobs by 2030. Saudi Arabia, on the other hand, has recently launched the world's first national-level metaverse platform. Interestingly, the report also highlighted that four key technologies, virtual reality, augmented reality, blockchain and haptic technology as essential elements for the GCC metaverse initiative. Well, the report has detailed seven essential components necessary for the GCC to fulfill its goals within the metaverse such as use cases, engagement strategies, types of metaverse infrastructure and regulatory frameworks. Strategy and PwC have also acknowledged the presence of both anticipated and unforeseen risks that might lead to setbacks or disappointments. Well, that's all in this story. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3voicetv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. 
The Indian government has advised tech businesses creating new artificial intelligence products to get official approval before releasing them. The Indian IT ministry produced an advice on March 1st that states this approval has to be given before unreliable or still trial AI technologies are made public. These tools also need to be identified as potentially erroneous, query replies. Furthermore, because general elections are expected this summer, the warning asked platforms to ensure that their tools will not threaten the integrity of the electoral process. This new advice was issued soon after Google and its AI tool Gemini were criticized by a top Indian minister for providing inaccurate or biased results. Google apologized for Gemini's shortcomings and said it may not always be reliable, particularly for current social topics. Rajiv Chandrasekhar, India's Deputy IT Minister, said on X, safety and trust is platform's legal obligation. Sorry, unreliable does not exempt from law. In November, the Indian government said it would be introducing new regulations that would help combat the spread of AI-generated deepfakes prior to its upcoming elections, a move also implemented by regulators in the United States. However, officials in India received pushback from the tech community regarding its latest AI advisory, saying that India is a leader in the tech space and it would be a crime if India regulated itself out of this leadership. Chandrasekhar responded to this noise and confusion in a follow-up post on X, saying that there should be legal consequences for platforms that enable or directly output unlawful content. Meanwhile, on Feb 8, Microsoft partnered with an Indian AI startup Sarvam to bring an Indic voice large language model to its Azure AI infrastructure to reach more users in the Indian subcontinent. That's all in the story for now. This is Miruti Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3.TV and for more information and stories, log on to our website at www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. नमस्कार मैं विशाखा ठाकुर स्वागत है आप सभी का थ्री डॉटो टीवी में वर्चुअल डिजिटल एसेट्स ब्रॉडर फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स विशेषकर इक्विटी मार्केट्स के खिलाफ जाने की आदत बना रही है पिछले 24 घंटे में कुछ ऐसा ही पैटर्न सामने आया है इक्विटी नीचे ट्रेड कर रहे हैं जबकि वीडियोस मजबूत हो रहे हैं जिससे कि बिटकॉइन को हफ्ते के अधिकांश घाटे को मिटाने में मदद मिल रही है मिनियापोलिस फेड प्रेसिडेंट नील काशकारी की हॉकिश टिप्पणियों ने एस एंड पी फाइव हंड्रेड और नास्टैक को नीचे भेज दिया जबकि बिटकॉइन 3.4 परसेंट की बढ़त के साथ 68,720 डॉलर्स के वर्तमान स्तर पर वापस आने से पहले 69,000 मार्क से ऊपर चली गई हाल ही में फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स में लगातार स्थिरता देखी जा रही है क्योंकि मैक्रो संकेतक मिश्रित संकेत प्रस्तुत कर रहे हैं आज का यूएस नॉन फार्म पेरोल डेटा इस बात पर स्पष्टता प्रदान करता है कि इंटरेस्ट रेट सिनेरियोज कैसे आकार ले रहे हैं ब्रॉडर क्रिप्टो मार्केट्स बिटकॉइन पर बारीकी से नजर भी रख रहे हैं इथेरियम 3,300 डॉलर्स के स्तर पर बना हुआ है हाल ही में ये मात्र 0.1 परसेंट की बढ़त के साथ 3,329 डॉलर्स पर पहुंच गया वहीं दूसरी ओर बायनास का बी एन बी एडीए एक्सापी रोजकॉइन एवीए उच्च स्तर पर ट्रेड कर रहे थे पिछले चौबीस घंटों में वार्षिक क्रिप्टो मार्केट कैप टू बढ़कर टू ट्रिलियन डॉलर हुआ दूसरी ओर कुल क्रिप्टो मार्केट का वॉल्यूम 4 परसेंट गिर कर नाइन्टी बिलियन डॉलर्स हो गया डीफाई में टोटल वॉल्यूम वर्तमान में 10 बिलियन डॉलर्स है और सभी स्टेबल कॉइन्स 91 बिलियन डॉलर्स हैं जो कि कुल क्रिप्टो मार्केट के चौबीस घंटे की वॉल्यूम का क्रमश 10 परसेंट और 94 परसेंट का प्रतिनिधित्व करते हैं बिटकॉइन का प्रभुत्व वर्तमान में फिफ्टी है जो दिन के मुकाबले जीरो अधिक है टॉप पंद्रह टोकन का बारोमीटर आई सी फिफ्टीन इंडेक्स टू परसेंट बढ़कर एटी सिक्स थाउजेंड वन नाइन्टी एट पर पहुंच गया इसी बीच कमोडिटी फ्यूचर्स ट्रेडिंग कमीशन के लेटेस्ट डेटा के अनुसार हेड फंड और ट्रेडिंग एडवाइजर्स ने बिटकॉइन फ्यूचर्स पर अपने मंदी के दाम बढ़ा दिए हैं इसके साथ ही सो कॉल्ड फ्यूचर्स व फंडिंग रेट पर पेट्रोल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट मार्केट्स और स्पॉट प्राइसेस के बीच अंतर के आधार पर ट्रेडर्स को भुगतान एक रिकॉर्ड उच्च स्तर के आसपास है 
फंडिंग रेट परपेचुअल स्वैप मार्केट में ट्रेडर्स की भावनाओं का प्रतिनिधित्व कर रही है बायनांस ने अपने एन मार्केटप्लेस को सुव्यवस्थित करने के प्रयासों के तहत बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स के लिए समर्थन हटा दिया है जो कि सातोशी पर इंस्क्राइब्ड एक डिजिटल एसेट है जो बिटकॉइन का सबसे लोएस्ट डिनोमिनेशन है यूजर्स अब अठारह अप्रैल से बायनांस एन एफ मार्केट प्लेस पर बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स का ट्रेड नहीं कर पाएंगे और एक्सचेंज ने यूजर्स को अठारह मई से पहले अपने बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स वापस लेने की सलाह दी है बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल से जुड़े एयर ड्रॉप्स बेनिफिट्स या यूटिलिटीज को अब 10 अप्रैल से समर्थित नहीं किया जाएगा फाइनेंस ने रनस्टोन होल्डर्स को इस तिथि तक अपने एन वापस लेने की भी सलाह दी ताकि ये सुनिश्चित हो सके कि उन्हें अभी भी संबंधित टोकन बेनिफिट्स और यूटिलिटीज प्राप्त हो रनस्टोन नामक पॉपुलर बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल प्रोजेक्ट के क्रिएटर्स ने ऑरिजिनल पेरेंट इंस्क्रिप्शन जिसका मूल्य आठ पी लगभग फाइव ट्वेंटी है जो कि मिथिक बिटकॉइन क्रिएटर सातोशी नाकामोटो के वॉलेट में भेजा गया था फ्रैंकलिन नेपटन डिजिटल एसेट्स ने हाल ही में एक नए प्रोस्पेक्टिस में ऑर्डिनल ऑन इंस्क्रिप्शन का उदय दिखाया जो कि बिटकॉइन ब्लॉकचेन पर इनोवेशन में पॉजिटिव मोमेंटम को उजागर करता है सिंगापुर के मॉनेटरी अथॉरिटी ऑफ सिंगापुर ने जीएसआर मार्केट्स को अपना फुल मेजर पेमेंट इंस्टीट्यूशन लाइसेंस प्रदान किया है जिससे उसे देश के सेंट्रल बैंक के तहत ओवर द काउंटर और इसके साथ ही स्पॉट और मार्केट मेकिंग सर्विसेज संचालित करने की अनुमति मिलती है जीएसआर मार्केट्स 2013 में अमेरिका में स्थापित ओ टी सी क्रिप्टो ट्रेडिंग डेरेवेटिव मार्केट मेकिंग और वेंचर कैपिटल इन्वेस्टमेंट्स की सुविधा प्रदान करता है सिंगापुर के रेगुलेटरी एफर्ट्स ने कई क्रिप्टो कंपनियों को देश के भीतर अपनी सर्विसेज देने की मांग की है जिसमें क्रिप्टो डॉट कॉम कॉइन बेस और रिपल को दो हजार तेईस में फॉर्मल अप्रूवल मिला और ओकेक्स और बिटको को दो हजार चौबीस में इन प्रिंसिपल अप्रूवल मिले सिंगापुर अपने पेमेंट सर्विसेज एक्ट का विस्तार करके रिटेल स्पेकुलेशन पर भी नकेल कस रहा है जिसमें की डीपीटी टोकन ट्रांसफर्स एक्सचेंज और क्रॉस बॉर्डर फंड ट्रांसफर्स के लिए कस्टोडियल सर्विसेज शामिल है शिबाइनो मैगजीन का आर्टिकल बिल्डिंग द फ्यूचर शिबेरियम पर डिफाई क्रांति के लिए केनाइन फाइनेंस का स्ट्रेटेजिक विजन शिबेरियम ब्लॉकचेन पर डिफाई लैंडस्केप को बढ़ाने के लिए केनाइन फाइनेंस की स्ट्रेटेजिक प्लान की रूपरेखा तैयार करता है रोडमैप में तीन फेजेस हैं जो कि दूसरी तिमाही के अंत में है इस पर की शुरुआत से शुरू होगा और मेहनत पर बोरो के लॉन्च के साथ समाप्त होगा फाइनल फेज कैनियन के लक्ष्य शिबेरियम पर डिसेंट्रलाइज लिक्विड स्टेकिंग प्रोडक्ट के लिए केनाइन फाइनेंस के दृष्टिकोण को साकार करना है केनाइन फाइनेंस डाओ के फाउंडर बाज प्रोजेक्ट के प्रोजेक्ट्री को कम्युनिटी के दृष्टिकोण के साथ संरेखित करने पर जोर दे रहे हैं और ब्लॉकचेन क्षेत्र में एक फॉर्मिडेबल कंटेंडर के रूप में शिबेरियम की तकनीकी क्षमताओं और इसके साथ ही वाइब्रेंट शिबामी कम्युनिटी सहित इसकी यूनिक स्ट्रेंथ पर प्रकाश भी डालते हैं सितंबर 2022 में द मर्ज इवेंट के बाद शिबेरियम ब्लॉकचेन के प्रूफ ऑफ स्टेक नेटवर्क में परिवर्तित होने के बाद से लिक्विड रीस्टेकिंग टोकन सहित लिक्विड स्टेकिंग प्रोटोकॉल में उल्लेखनीय वृद्धि हुई है आइगन लेयर टोटल वैल्यू लॉक द्वारा इथेरियम का दूसरा सबसे बड़ा डीफाई प्रोटोकॉल वर्तमान में 12.4 बिलियन डॉलर्स का है और वैलिडेटर्स को अपने दाव पर लगे ई को पुनः प्राप्त करके एक्टिवली वैलिडेटेड सर्विसेज को सुरक्षित करके एक्स्ट्रा रिवॉर्ड अर्न करने की अनुमति देता है ये इनोवेटिव कॉन्सेप्ट वैलिडेटर्स को नई इथेरियम सुविधाओं को सुरक्षित करने और संभावित रूप से एडिशनल रिवॉर्ड अर्जित करने की अनुमति देती है कॉइनबेस ने एल के आसपास एक बढ़ते इकोसिस्टम के उद्धव पर प्रकाश डाला जो कि एल की सफलता को दर्शाता है ये इकोसिस्टम अब आधा दर्जन से अधिक प्रोटोकॉल का दावा करता है हर लिक्विड रीस्टेकिंग टोकन की अपनी पुनरावृत्ति की पेशकश भी करता है जिसमें कि विविध प्रोत्साहन और एयर ड्रॉप योजनाएं शामिल हैं। हालांकि कॉइनबेस ने निकट अवधि में एल के लिए अपेक्षित चुनौतियों पर भी प्रकाश डाला आयगन डी के दो की दूसरी तिमाही की शुरुआत में शुरू होने की उम्मीद है प्रिस्मा स्टेक ने छह मिलियन डॉलर्स की फंडिंग हासिल की है जो कि डीफाई लैंडस्केप को नया आकार देने की अपनी यात्रा में एक महत्वपूर्ण माइलस्टोन है प्लेटफॉर्म स्टेकिंग के लिए अपने समग्र दृष्टिकोण के साथ डीफाई स्पेस में क्रांति ला रहा है इथेरियम वर्चुअल मशीन यानी कि ईवीएम कंपैटिबल चेन और लेयर टू समाधान सहित विभिन्न ब्लॉक प्रोटोकॉल के लिए समर्थन की सुविधा प्रदान कर रहा है इस पहल का उद्देश्य उपयोगकर्ताओं के लिए ईटीएच क्रिप्टो स्टेकिंग और ऑल्ट कॉइन स्टेकिंग और सहित विभिन्न स्टेकिंग तंत्रों के माध्यम से पैसिव इनकम उत्पन्न करने के नए अवसरों को अनलॉक करना है 
भारतीय क्रिप्टो एक्सचेंज प्लेटफॉर्म कॉइन डी ने अपने प्लेटफॉर्म के भीतर डीफाई वॉलेट को एकीकृत करने के लिए यूएस आधारित फिनटेक फॉर्म मेश के साथ साझेदारी की घोषणा की है इसका उद्देश्य सेंट्रलाइज एक्सचेंजों और डीफाई वॉलेट के बीच कनेक्टिविटी को सरल बनाना है 16 मिलियन के यूजर बेस को केटर करने वाले कॉइन डी ने हाल ही में भारत की फाइनेंशियल इंटेलिजेंस यूनिट यानी कि एफ के साथ अपने व्यवसाय को प्रमाणित करते हुए भारत में संलग्न होने के लिए सुरक्षित होने की घोषणा की कॉइन डी के सह संस्थापक सुमित गुप्ता ने मेष को प्लेटफॉर्म के लिए गेम चेंजर कहा क्योंकि ये उन्नत एपीआई एकीकरण प्रदान करता है जो कि उपयोगकर्ताओं के लिए डिजिटल एसेट मैनेजमेंट को सरल बना सकता है गूगल जेनरेटिव आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस द्वारा संचालित प्रीमियम सुविधाओं के लिए शुल्क लेने पर विचार कर रहा है ये पहली बार है कि कंपनी ने अपने किसी मुख्य प्रोडक्ट को पेवॉल के पीछे रखा ये इसके सर्च बिजनेस का सबसे बड़ा छटका होगा क्योंकि ये लगातार ऐसी तकनीक से जूझ रहा है जिससे कि इसका विज्ञापन व्यवसाय को खतरा है गूगल अपनी प्रीमियम सदस्यता सेवाओं में कुछ ए संचालित सर्च फीचर्स को जोड़ने सहित विकल्पों पर विचार कर रहा है जो कि पहले से ही जी और डॉक्स में अपने नए जेबेनाई ए सहायक तक पहुंच प्रदान करते हैं इंजीनियर सेवा को तैनात करने के लिए आवश्यक तकनीक विकसित कर रहे हैं लेकिन अधिकारियों ने अभी तक इस पर अंतिम निर्णय नहीं लिया है कि इसे कब लॉन्च किया जाए या नहीं सैमसंग ने अपने मुंबई स्टोर में एआई संचालित घरेलू उपकरणों की एक श्रृंखला लॉन्च की है जो इसकी भारत की बिक्री में 70 प्रतिशत का योगदान देती है उपकरणों में वॉशिंग मशीन रेफ्रिजरेटर माइक्रोवेव और रेजिडेंशियल एयर कंडीशनर शामिल हैं। इन उपकरणों में सुविधाजनक घरेलू प्रबंधन के लिए वाईफाई इंटरनल कैमरे और ए ट्रिप्स की सुविधा है रेफ्रिजरेटर संग्रहित वस्तुओं के आधार पर स्वचालित रूप से भोजन का सुझाव दे सकता है जबकि एयर कंडीशनर उपकरणों को चालू या बंद करने के सूचनाएं भेजता है माइक्रोवेव व्यंजनों को लो फैट वॉशन में कस्टमाइज कर सकता है और वॉशिंग मशीन समय के साथ कपड़े धोने की दिनचर्या सीख सकती है एआई वॉश फीचर लोड वजन कपड़ों के प्रकार कोमलता पानी के स्तर गंदगी के स्तर और डिटर्जेंट के स्तर के आधार पर कस्टम वॉश रेसिपी बनाता है इस नवाचार का उद्देश्य भारतीय घरों के रहने के अनुभवों को बेहतर बनाना ऊर्जा की खपत को कम करना और ग्रीनर प्लानिट में योगदान देना है वन प्लस ने अपने स्मार्टफोन उपयोगकर्ताओं के लिए एक नया ए आई इरेजर फीचर पेश किया है जिसे इस महीने से धीरे धीरे विभिन्न डिवाइसेस में पेश किया जाएगा जनरेटिव ए आई तकनीक पर आधारित इस फीचर का उद्देश्य उपयोगकर्ता की रचनात्मक को मुक्त करना और फोटो एडिटिंग में क्रांति लाना है उपयोगकर्ता फोटो गैलरी से इमेजेस के भीतर अनवांटेड आइटम्स का चयन और हटा सकते हैं उन्हें और अंडरलाइंग ए आई सिलेक्टेड एरिया का विश्लेषण भी करता है ये और इस रिप्लेसमेंट बैकग्राउंड उत्पन्न करता है जो कि इमेज की समग्र शैली के अनुरूप आसपास के वातावरण में मिश्रित होता है वन प्लस इस साल और अधिक ए फीचर पेश करने की योजना बना रहा है ये सुविधा वास्तविक उपयोगकर्ता आवश्यकताओं से बनाई गई है और इसका उद्देश्य सभी के लिए अधिक सुविधाजनक भविष्य प्रदान करना है वन प्लस ने हाल ही में भारत में नॉर्थ सी फोर स्मार्टफोन लॉन्च किया है जिसकी कीमत 24,999 रुपए है और ये ऑटो ऑक्टो कोर क्वालकॉम स्नैपड्रैगन 7 सेवन जेन थ्री चिपसेट और आठ जी रैम द्वारा संचालित है ये डिवाइस चार अप्रैल से बिक्री के लिए उपलब्ध होगा आज के लिए बुलेटिन में फिलहाल इतना ही ऐसी ही वेब थ्री से जुड़ी अपडेट्स के लिए लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू पर या फिर स्कैन करें क्यू कोड
With three auto TVs, stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with three auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. Readout OTV delivers the news that matters. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. CoinShares, a European digital asset investment company, made a big move in its effort to consolidate its position as a leading investment company by offering spot Bitcoin prices and exchange traded funds. CoinShares acquired the sponsor rights to Valkyrie's physically backed Bitcoin ETF, the Valkyrie Bitcoin Fund, as well as the company's investment advisory business, Valkyrie Investment Incorporation. After three years, Valkyrie's financial performance will determine the acquisition price. CoinShares will now manage the Valkyrie Bitcoin and Ether Strategy ETF, the Valkyrie Bitcoin Miners ETF and the Valkyrie Bitcoin Futures Leverage Strategy ETF among other ETFs from Valkyrie as per the agreement. According to Jean-Marie Mognetti, the CEO of CoinShares, the US is a critical market for global asset managers. Mognetti wrote, the Valkyrie acquisition is yet another step in our growth strategy with a special focus this time in the US. This acquisition brings an additional $530 million AUM to coin shares, which makes it a top-line contributor from day one. More importantly, it broadens our product offerings, strengthens our innovation capacity and increases by a factor of 15 our total addressable market. After the acquisition, CoinShares will begin rebranding Valkyrie and its products within its own ecosystem. Since November 2023, CoinShares has held a purchase option over Valkyrie. The acquisition is part of CoinShares' strategy to expand its asset management platform in the United States. Meanwhile, according to Dune data, Bitwise Bitcoin ETFs were the latest ETF to surpass $2 billion in Bitcoin holdings on March 11th, the fifth fund to surpass the milestone. Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust ETF is still the largest with $29 billion worth of Bitcoin under management. ETFs are projected to absorb 8.98% of the BTC supply on a yearly basis if the growth of the past two weeks continues. This could lead to a sell-side liquidity crisis by September if the institutional inflows were to continue, according to Ki Yong Yu, founder and CEO of on-chain analytics platform CryptoQuant. Last week, spot ETFs saw net flows exceeding 30,000 BTC. Known entities like exchanges and miners hold around 3 million BTC, including 1.5 million BTC by US entities. At this rate, we'll see a sell-side liquidity crisis within six months, he said. That's all the story for now. This is Muruti Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information and stories, log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. नमस्कार थ्री डॉटो टीवी में आप सभी का स्वागत है आज के इस खास एपिसोड में हम बात करेंगे कैसे ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी ने भारत में अपनी खास जगह बना ली है बिटकॉइन के सर्वकालीन उच्च स्तर पर पहुंचने की खबर तो आप सभी जानते ही होंगे पर क्या आप जानते हैं बिटकॉइन को जन्म देने वाली ब्लॉक किस तरह दिन ब दिन कामयाबी की नई ऊंचाइयों को छू रही है तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं भारत के 50 प्रतिशत से भी ज्यादा राज्यों ने अपनी रोजाना जिंदगी में ई गवर्नेंस के जरिए ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी को अपना लिया है हर किसी की आम जरूरत होती है रोटी कपड़ा और मकान और इन जरूरतों को पूरा करने में ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी मददगार साबित हो रही है बिल्कुल जहां एक तरफ ब्लॉकचेन द्वारा ग्रास रूट लेवल पर देश के किसानों को ग्रेन डिस्ट्रीब्यूट किए जा रहे हैं तो वहीं दूसरी तरफ कपड़ा उद्योग यानी कि टेक्सटाइल इंडस्ट्री में वर्कर्स को उपयुक्त मुआवजा मिले इसके लिए ब्लॉक टेक्नोलॉजी के ट्रांसपेरेंसी और ट्रेसिबिलिटी फीचर्स का फायदा उठाया जा रहा है इतना ही नहीं अब लैंड रिकॉर्ड्स में धोखाधड़ी और फर्जी दस्तावेजों पर रोक लगाने के लिए ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी का इस्तेमाल किया जा रहा है क्योंकि ब्लॉकचेन पर स्टोर किया हुआ डेटा टैंपर प्रूफ और सुरक्षित रहता है 
एग्रीकल्चर टेक्सटाइल इंडस्ट्री लैंड रजिस्ट्रेशन के अलावा एजुकेशन और हेल्थ सेक्टर में भी ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी क्रांति ला रही है अलग अलग मिनिस्ट्रीज और डिपार्टमेंट्स को डिजिटल सॉल्यूशन प्रोवाइड करने वाला भारत सरकार का डिपार्टमेंट एन यानी नेशनल इन्फॉर्मेटिक्स सेंटर अब ब्लॉकचेन को और भी नए तरीकों से उपयोग में लाना चाहता है जी हाँ एन इंडिया ने बताया है कि वह अभी पाँच ब्लॉकचेन पर लगभग आठ मिलियन सरकारी दस्तावेज होस्ट कर रही है एन ने अपने ब्लॉक चेन को हाईलाइट करने के लिए एक नई वेबसाइट भी लॉन्च की है वाह ये तो वाकई बहुत ही इम्प्रेसिव है और इस डेटा के हिसाब से ये डॉक्यूमेंट्स शिक्षा संपत्ति न्यायिक और ड्रग लॉजिस्टिक्स जैसे क्षेत्रों को कवर करते हैं आपने बिल्कुल सही कहा और ये भी जान लेना जरूरी है कि भारत में प्रोडक्ट्स का विकास मुख्य रूप से तीन ब्लॉकचेन प्लेटफॉर्म्स पर आधारित है हाइपरलेजो फैब्रिक हाइपरलेजो सॉटुथ और इथेरियम देश वर्तमान में पांच ब्लॉकचेन प्रोडक्ट्स का उपयोग कर रहा है और ये डॉक्यूमेंट्स छह मुख्य विभागों से उत्पन्न होते हैं और तीन सरकारी विभागों से यानी केंद्रीय माध्यमिक शिक्षा बोर्ड उपभोक्ता मामले मंत्रालय और न्याय मंत्रालय वह ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी का उपयोग करने वाले विभागों ने संपत्ति के स्वामित्व जन्म और मृत्यु प्रमाण पत्र और दवाओं और शिक्षा प्रमाण पत्रों के लिए वेरिफिकेशन सर्विसेज लागू की हैं। इसके अलावा भारत ब्लड बैंक्स, गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज टैक्स ट्रैकिंग और एक सार्वजनिक वितरण प्रणाली के लिए प्रूफ ऑफ कॉन्सेप्ट ब्लॉक का विकास कर रहा है भारत का ब्लॉकचेन में इंटरेस्ट नया नहीं है 2023 में हिंदुस्तान पेट्रोलियम भारत की सबसे बड़ी ऑयल और गैस कंपनीज में से एक ने अपने परचेज ऑर्डर सिस्टम में ब्लॉकचेन बेस्ड डिजिटल क्रेडेंशियलिंग टेक्नोलॉजी को इंटीग्रेट करने के लिए ब्लॉकचेन सॉफ्टवेयर फॉर्म जपल लैब्स के साथ कोलाबोरेशन किया था फैसिनेटिंग और ये तो सिर्फ शुरुआत है भारत का लक्ष्य है की ब्लॉक को हर एक लेवल पर हर एक क्षेत्र में अपना कर गवर्नमेंट बॉडीज की कार्य को और भी ज्यादा ट्रस्टेड ट्रांसपेरेंट और ट्रेसेबल बनाया जा सके जी हाँ अंत में केवल इतना ही कहना चाहेंगे कि विकसित भारत के सपने को साकार करने के लिए जहाँ भी डिजिटल ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन और डिजिटल सॉल्यूशंस की आवश्यकता पड़ेगी वहाँ ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी एक वरदान के रूप में हमेशा हमारा साथ देगी इस खास स्टोरी में फिलहाल इतना ही आप देखते रहिए थ्री डॉट टीवी और ज्यादा जानकारी और स्टोरीज के लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू पर या फिर क्यू कोड को स्कैन करें Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Taking a leaf out of the United States successful launch of Spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds, financial institutions based in Hong Kong seem to be in a hurry to tap into the growing demand for cryptocurrency investment products. While Hong Kong opened applications for Bitcoin Spot ETFs in December last year, no related products have hit the market yet, leaving Asian investors at risk of lagging behind their American counterparts. Well in an attempt to bridge this gap Hong Kong based institutions are actively preparing to launch spot ETFs for Ethereum the goal is to gain an edge over the United States solidifying Hong Kong's position in the global crypto market as per reports from local media outlets the cumulative net inflow of bitcoin spot ETFs in the United States surpassed 2.24 billion dollars last week propelling the price of bitcoin to reach new all time highs According to CoinGlass data, the total assets under management of Bitcoin ETFs currently amount to 55.34 billion dollars. While the top three performers in this space are GBT, CIBIT, and FPTC, managing 27.73 billion dollars, 12.97 billion dollars, and 8.35 billion dollars respectively. Amidst the surge in Bitcoin-related investment products, market attention has turned to the development of Hong Kong's Bitcoin Spot ETF offerings. Experts say that. As global crypto investors anticipate the launch of Ethereum spot ETF, Hong Kong is actively discussing and preparing for such products. Earlier reports indicated that 10 financial institutions in Hong Kong have expressed their intentions to apply for Bitcoin spot ETF launches. Harvest Fund for instance submitted relevant applications to the Securities and Futures Commission in Mid-Jan, signaling the growing interest in crypto-related investment products in the region. 
Well, that's all in this special update. Keep watching Three Dot TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.threeverse.tv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Prashaka Thakur, signing off. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. CryptoPunk hashtag 3100 ने बटोरी सेकंड हाईएस्ट सेल। नोड मॉन्कीज ने पहली बार की 1 मिलियन डॉलर से ज्यादा की कमाई। बैटमैन अपनी 85th एनिवर्सरी पर लॉन्च करेगा लेटेस्ट एनिफ्टी कलेक्शन। हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू। बैटमैन की लेटेस्ट कलेक्शन से लेकर रिकॉर्ड तोर एनिफ्टी कलेक्शन तक। कई मजदार NFT अपडेट्स मैं रुचि शर्मा आप लेकर आई हूं तो हो जाइए NFT वर्स के इस खास एपिसोड के लिए तैयार इसमें आपकी फेवरेट NFT प्रोजेक्ट्स की डिटेल्स तो होगी ही साथ ही हम एक स्पेशल गेस्ट से भी करेंगे मुलाकात लेकिन सबसे पहले जानते हैं पिछले हफ्ते कैसा रहा NFT मार्केट का हाल NFT सेल्स पिछले 7 दिनों में करीब 12% बढ़कर 442 मिलियन डॉलर्स रही पिछले हफ्ते की तरह इस हफ्ते भी बिटकॉइन एनिफ्टीज ने टॉप पोजीशन हासिल की करीब 14% उछाल के साथ बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स ने 166 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स बटोरी तो वहीं इथेरियम एनिफ्टीज भी ज्यादा दूर नहीं थी 165 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स के साथ इथेरियम ने बिटकॉइन एनिफ्टीज को कड़ी टक कर दी पिछले हफ्ते के मुकाबले इथेरियम एनिफ्टीज में करीब 12% का उछाल देखा गया तो वहीं तीसरे चौथे और पांचवें पायदान पर रही सोलाना बीएनबी और माइथोस चेन क्रिप्टो मार्केट इन दिनों उफान पर है और इसका अच्छा खासा असर एनएफटी मार्केट पर भी देखा जा रहा है हाल ही में क्रिप्टो पंक एनएफटी ने अब तक की सेकंड हाईएस्ट सेल दर्ज की ये क्रिप्टो पंक हैशटैग 3100 जिसे एलियन पंक के नाम से भी जाना जाता है 4500 ईटीएच यानी कि 16 मिलियन डॉलर्स में बिकी आपको जानकर हैरानी होगी कि यही एनएफटी 3 साल पहले 7.5 मिलियन डॉलर्स में बिकी थी यानी 3 सालों में इसकी वैल्यू करीब 8.4 मिलियन डॉलर्स बढ़ गई है ये तो बात हुई दूसरी सबसे महंगी क्रिप्टो पंक एनएफटी की तो फिर सबसे महंगी क्रिप्टो पंक एनएफटी कौन सी है वो है क्रिप्टो पंक हैशटैग 5822 ये भी एक एलियन पंक है जिसने 23.7 मिलियन डॉलर्स की सेल्स दर्ज की थी इस क्रिप्टो पंक की खासियत है कि इसने एक हेड बैंड पहना हुआ है वैसे आपको बता दें कि क्रिप्टो पंक हैशटैग 3100 को अब तक तीन अलग-अलग कलेक्टर्स ओन कर चुके हैं आप जानकर दंग रह जाएंगे कि 7 साल पहले यही क्रिप्टो पंक महज 2133 डॉलर्स में बिका था खैर इस हालिया 16 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स ने इसे 24 आवर्स की सेल में सबसे आगे खड़ा कर दिया है ऐसे में क्रिप्टो पंक ने नोड मॉन्कीज और अन कैटेगराइज ऑर्डिनल्स की पॉपुलैरिटी को मात देते हुए नंबर 1 की पोजीशन अपने नाम की है बिटकॉइन और बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स दोनों की किस्मत खुल गई है क्योंकि दोनों अपने ऑल टाइम हाई पर हैं बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स पर कैसे हो रही है पैसों की बरसात चलिए जानते हैं बिटकॉइन दिन ब दिन एक नए ऑल टाइम हाई को छू रहा है ऐसे में बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स की सेल्स में भी जबरदस्त उछाल देखा जा रहा है बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स पर खासी पॉपुलर कलेक्शन नोड मॉन्कीज ने पहली बार 1 मिलियन डॉलर्स की सेल्स के साथ बिटकॉइन एनएफटीज में अपना नाम सबसे ऊपर लिख दिया है क्रिप्टो स्लैम के डेटा के मुताबिक बिटकॉइन एनएफटी प्रोजेक्ट में नोड मॉन्कीज पिछले 7 दिनों में टॉप सेलिंग इंडिविजुअल ऑर्डिनल्स या एनएफटी प्रोजेक्ट है जिसकी सेकेंडरी मार्केट सेल्स इसी दौरान 45 मिलियन डॉलर्स के करीब थी पिछले 24 घंटों में नोड मॉन्की से ऊपर सिर्फ एक इथेरियम एनएफटी प्रोजेक्ट था क्रिप्टो पंक्स जो 16 मिलियन डॉलर्स में बिका था एलिन हुडी नोड मॉन्कीज मैजिक ईडन पर 4 मार्च को 17 बिटकॉइन या कहें 1.08 मिलियन डॉलर्स में बिका ये अब तक की नोड मॉन्कीज की सबसे बड़ी सेल है और ऑर्डिनल्स की अब तक की सेकंड हाईएस्ट सेल जैसे जैसे बिटकॉइन का प्राइस बढ़ रहा है बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल सेल्स में सर जा रहा है साथ ही नोड मॉन्कीज का प्राइस भी आसमान छू रहा है इस पर और ज्यादा जानकारी के लिए रुक करते हैं हमारी स्पेशल गेस्ट मिस नचता बेस्टर का वेलकम टू 3.0 टीवी 
नजदा बिटकॉइन के प्राइस सर्च का कितना इम्पैक्ट होगा बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स पर और ये इम्पैक्ट कब तक रहेगा नाउ डिस्पाइट द ब्रोडर एन एफ टी मार्केट डाउन टर्न Bitcoin ordinals are gaining interest, uh, very possibly due to the direct relationship with Bitcoin's price increase. Uh, the appeal of Bitcoin ordinals, I think, lies in their novelty. They are a novel asset class, and the direct embedding of digital artifacts onto the Bitcoin blockchain, differentiating them, differentiating them from all other NFTs. Bitcoin's come a long way uh, since its birth. There's also a lineup of new innovations in the BTC NFT space, like BRC20 tokens, Bitcoin stamps, Atomical, uh, Atomicals, etc. And I think we can really expect to see more innovation coming in uh, this year and beyond. Thank you so much. हमसे बातचीत करने के लिए और अपना कीमती समय हमें देने के लिए. आपका favorite superhero कौन सा है? Well, मेरा favorite superhero तो super stylish है. Latest technology और gadgets use करता है. रात में उसकी पावर्स और ज्यादा स्ट्रॉन्ग हो जाती है एनी गेसेस यस यू गेस्ट इट राइट इट्स बैटमैन जी हाँ लौट रहा है बैटमैन द डार्क नाइट बड़े पर्दे पर नहीं बल्कि इथेरियम पर अपनी एटी फिफ्थ एनिवर्सरी का शानदार जश्न बैटमैन मनाएगा अपनी लेटेस्ट एनएफटी कलेक्शन के साथ 2022 बैट काउल बैटमैन थीम्ड एनएफटी सीरीज का डेब्यू हुआ था और अब द लेगेसी काउल्स कलेक्शन लॉन्च होगी ये एनएफटी कलेक्शन डीसी कॉमिक्स और वार्नर ब्रदर्स डिस्कवरी ग्रुप के साथ कोलैबोरेशन में बनाई गई है इसमें 11,544 डिजिटल कलेक्टेबल्स होंगे मार्च 29 को रिलीज हो रही ये कलेक्शन कैंडी डिजिटल पर 49.99 डॉलर्स पर अवेलेबल होगी बैटमैन द लेगेसी काउल पर बेस्ड इन थ्री कलेक्टेबल्स और आर्टवर्क को क्रिएट किया है डी आर्टिस्ट पैब्लो एम कॉलर और राइटर डैन एबलेट ने अगर आपको म्यूजिक और एन दोनों से बेहद प्यार है तो अगली खबर आपके लिए ही है कुचेला म्यूजिक फेस्टिवल के बारे में तो आप जानते ही होंगे सोचिए अगर आपको इसके वीआईपी पासेस मिल जाए तो अरे मैं मजाक नहीं कर रही ये पॉसिबल है कैसे चलिए बताते हैं आपको कुचेला म्यूजिक फेस्टिवल ने अनाउंस किया है कुचेला की जो थ्री एन एफ की सीरीज है और इसे एन एफ ओपन सी के साथ पार्टनरशिप में प्रोड्यूस किया गया है अवलांश ब्लॉकचेन पर बेस्ड ये कलेक्शन फेस्टिवल के एक्सक्लूसिव वीआईपी एरियाज के लिए एक्सेस की तरह काम करेगी साथ ही इसके जरिए लिमिटेड एडिशन होल्डर्स ओनली मर्चेंडाइज भी अवेलेबल होंगे 5 मार्च को लॉन्च हुआ इसका पहला कीप सेक था द वीआईपी पास प्लस ओइस लाउंज कीप सेक जो फेस्टिवल के वीकेंड के लिए अवेलेबल होगा ये पास होल्डर्स ओनली ओएस लाउंज के लिए एक्सेस अनलॉक करेगा ओएस लाउंज एक पीसफुल स्पेस ऑफर करता है जिसमें कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री ड्रिंक्स की रेंज तो होगी ही साथ ही मेंबर्स के लिए एक शेडेड लाउंज भी अवेलेबल है 1499 डॉलर्स ईच पर प्राइस ये 1000 टोकन्स अप्रैल फर्स्ट तक परचेज के लिए ओपन सी के डेडिकेटेड कलेक्शन पेज पर अवेलेबल होंगे सेकेंड ड्रॉप में कैनवस वेलकम बॉक्स कीप सेक होगा जो मार्च 25 को लॉन्च होगा और यूनिक मर्चेंडाइज डिजिटल कंटेंट और रोज गार्डन वीआईपी एरिया एक्सेस ऑफर करेगा कुछ चैला का फाइनल ड्रॉप यानी आर्टिस्ट कोलैबोरेशन कीप सेक लॉन्च होगा मिड अप्रैल में और इसकी आर्टिस्ट आइडेंटिटी और होल्डर्स बेनिफिट मार्च एंड के करीब अनाउंस किए जाएंगे Well, that's all in this episode of NFT Verse. वक्त आ गया है आपसे विदा लेने का लेकिन NFT की दुनिया से ऐसी ही मजेदार खबरें मैं रुचि शर्मा आपके लिए हर हफ्ते लाती रहूंगी टिल देन डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू थ्री डॉट टीवी और इसी तरह की इंटरेस्टिंग अपडेट्स के लिए लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट थ्री वर्सी डॉट आई ओ पर या फिर क्यू आर कोड को स्कैन करें Hello and welcome to Three Dotto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. The Hong Kong Monetary Authority started a regulatory sandbox to give potential stablecoin issuers an environment for developing and testing certain operations without penalty. Well, the sandbox provides regulatory leeway and aligns with Hong Kong's plan to regulate fiat-backed stablecoins, which are cryptocurrencies spread to the value of sovereign currencies like the US or Hong Kong dollar. The regulator said on Tuesday. Applicants should have genuine interest in developing a stablecoin issuance business in Hong Kong with a reasonable business plan and their proposed operations under the sandbox arrangement will be conducted within limited scope and in a risk-controllable manner the HKMA notice said 
In December, the jurisdiction's regulator started seeing public views on its regulatory proposals for stablecoins, including requiring issuers to be licensed in order to operate in Hong Kong. The HKMA wishes to leverage the sandbox arrangement to communicate supervisory expectations to parties interested in issuing fiat reference stablecoins in Hong Kong, as well as to obtain feedback from participants on the proposed regulatory requirements, the notice said. That's all in this update. Keep watching 3 TV for more such stories and do log on to our website www.3verstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. नमस्कार मैं हूँ रुचि शर्मा भारतीय यात्रियों का सबसे पुराना हमसफर इंडियन रेलवे जो राज्यों को जोड़ती है परिवारों को मिलाती है लोगों के बीच दूरियां मिटाती है सफर सुहाना बनाती है अपने सुखद अनुभव से भारतीयों को लुभाती है दशकों पुरानी ये रेलगाड़ी सुविधा अब वक्त के साथ बदल रही है या यूँ कहे की बदलते वक्त और तकनीक के साथ कंधे ऐसी कंधा मिलाकर विकास के मार्ग आरोप अग्रसर है याद है आपको वो वक्त जब टिकट खिड़की पर लगी लंबी कतार में घंटों खड़े होने के बाद टिकट खरीदी जाती थी फिर वक्त बदला और वेब टू के जमाने में ये टिकट्स ऑनलाइन खरीदी जाने लगी लेकिन अब वेब थ्री के जमाने में ये टिकट्स ब्लॉकचेन पर बतौर एन भी बुक होने लगी हैं। यकीन नहीं होता न की कि किस रफ्तार ऐसी इंडिया डिजिटल हो रहा है आई आर सी टी सी की इस लेटेस्ट पहल के जरिए रेलवे न सिर्फ ब्लॉक चेन के साथ अपना ट्रैक जोड़ रहा है बल्कि इसकी शुरुआत भी बड़े ही आध्यात्मिक तरीके से हुई है 11 जनवरी को अयोध्या में हुई रामलला की प्राण प्रतिष्ठा के मौके पर आई आर सी टी सी ने एक नई ट्रेन की शुरुआत की जिसे नाम दिया गया है आस्था आई आर सी टी सी ने दो सौ आस्था ट्रेन शुरू की है जो भारत की छियासठ लोकेशन ऐसी श्रद्धालुओं को अयोध्या तक का सफर तय करा रही है रामलला के दर्शन के प्रार्थी लाखों करोड़ों श्रद्धालुओं की मनोकामना पूरी कर रही है ये ट्रेन इस ट्रेन से जुड़ी खास बात ये है कि इस ट्रेन की टिकट्स असल में एन टिकट होगी जो न सिर्फ ब्लॉकचेन पर दर्ज होगी बल्कि श्रद्धालुओं के लिए रामलला के दर्शन की एक सुंदर यादगार की तरह काम करेगी जो हमेशा उन्हें याद दिलाएगी की रामलला के दर्शन का अनुभव कितना अद्भुत था यही वजह है की आस्था ट्रेन में सफर करने के बाद कई श्रद्धालुओं ने फेसबुक व्हाट्सएप ट्विटर और लिंक जैसे सोशल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म्स पर अपनी एन टिकट की फोटो के साथ साथ अपना शानदार अनुभव शेयर किया इस बेहतरीन सफर के अलावा यात्री आई आस्था ट्रेन वेब एप्लीकेशन के जरिए एक्सक्लूसिव डिजिटल कंटेंट एक्सेस कर रहे हैं जो उन्हें सुविधा अनुसार कई भाषाओं में पहुँचाया जा रहा है आई की इस ऐप में कई भाषाओं में ऑडियो फीचर भी उपलब्ध है जो यात्रा और अन्य सुविधाओं के बारे में जरूरी जानकारी देता है इतना ही नहीं आई की तरफ से मुहैया कराई गई बुकलेट गाइड की मदद से यात्री अयोध्या में मौजूद और भी कई धार्मिक धरोहरों के बारे में जान सकते हैं इससे उनके आध्यात्मिक सफर का अनुभव और बेहतर होगा इसके साथ ही हर पैसेंजर कोच में एक कोच लीडर भी मौजूद होगा जो श्रद्धालुओं के इस धार्मिक सफर को और सुखद बनाएगा वाकई आई की ये पहल सराहनीय है जो आस्था और तकनीक का एक ऐसा अनूठा संगम लेकर आई है जिसका उल्लेख डिजिटल इंडिया के इतिहास में सुनहरों शब्दों से लिखा जाएगा इस खास स्टोरी में फिलहाल इतना ही ऐसे ही दिलचस्प स्टोरीज के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉलो टीवी और ज्यादा अपडेट्स के लिए लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू डब्ल्यू या फिर क्यू कोड को स्कैन करें Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. 
Come explore and evolve with Fidoto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. Fidoto TV delivers the news that matters. What's up gamers? You know South Korea is that one country with rapidly expanding gaming industry surpassing 20 trillion Korean won approximately 15 billion dollars in market size making it the fourth largest gaming market globally. South Korea's strict regulations on blockchain games particularly web3 games offer limited growth opportunities for the gaming industry. However, major Korean AAA game studios like Nexon, Netmarble, Com to Us and WeMade are actively recognizing the potential of the blockchain gaming market. Nexon is leading the way by developing a blockchain-based gaming platform and looks to encash market opportunity. Nexon's famous Web2 game, Maple Story, is entering the Web3 space through a partnership with Avalanche Blockchain. Maple Story will launch a blockchain-based multiplayer online role-playing game named Maple Story N. This new dimension to the Maple Story universe will feature novel gameplay elements and reward mechanisms. Maple Story N set to launch on PC by 2024 will utilize Avalanche's subnet technology to create customized blockchains enabling a wider range of decentralized applications and services. Maple Story by the way is known for pioneering the free to play MMORPG module achieving over 3 billion dollars in global revenue by 2020. Maple Story universe switched from Polygon to avalanche due to eva lab support and server and infrastructure development this is not the first time when a game switched from polygon blockchain to the avalanche blockchain long ago mirai lab the creator of pegxi migrated from polygon to avalanche and integrated social fi with esports economics into blockchain gaming this move was aimed to enhance the gaming experience for guild members supporters and casual gamers by allowing buying and selling key like assets Mirai Labs had launched a Mirai chain on the Avalanche subnet adopting a blockchain platform known for its scalability, security and decentralization. This migration included the entire suite of Mirai Labs offerings including the free to play racing game Pegxi, Pitopia with social fi, esports integration, the native token PGX, Mirai ID, the Mirai app and the Mirai Pay. Now you might want to know why are gaming studios shifting from the Polygon blockchain to the Avalanche blockchain? See both Polygon and Avalanche emerge as the fastest growing networks uh, with uh, you know uh, various use cases that benefit crypto developers and decentralized platforms. Each blockchain offers distinct uh, benefits and supports multiple tokens and coins. So Eva Labs, a, a software provider for the Avalanche network launched Avalanche Arcade, a collaborative program designed to ease the transition of traditional gaming studios into web3. Avalanche has also rolled out a string of gaming partnership throughout 2022 and 2023. Avalanche Arcade is legit the deal here. It is a dedicated platform for gamers. Avalanche Arcade is an initiative which has been launched with Japanese media giants Gri and Gumi aiming to help companies navigate web3 gaming challenges such as onboarding to blockchain technology, marketing and tokenomics. The program links web2 publishers with leading studios, guilds and groups building web3 and an Eva Labs team that has built over 100 games and helped build 10 plus gaming subnets. publishers with millions of active monthly users are embracing web3 gaming on avalanche in contrast polygon's influence on the web3 gaming industry is a bit uh, restricted still polygon stands as the toughest contender uh, when it comes to choosing a blockchain for games both these protocols avalanche and polygon use a variation of proof of stake consensus mechanism in addition uh, avalanche uses a snowball mechanism which has received a lot of positive feedback for achieving speed without compromising decentralization Polygon uses the proof of stake consensus mechanism. Polygon users can participate directly by becoming a network validators or indirectly by becoming a delegator. So Avalanche's gas fees is higher compared to Polygon's gas fees. But what sets Avalanche apart from all the other blockchains is being the fastest smart contract and its ever booming market capitalization which is considerably higher than that of Polygon. Avax has a market capitalization of 20 billion dollars whereas Polygon has a market capitalization of 15 billion dollars. Avalanche on the other hand has a reliable security protocol that preserves decentralization and scalability. On the other hand, Polygon still relies on the Ethereum blockchain, which can potentially create a network disruptions or network congestion and still has scalability issues. Avalanche supports many crypto projects and web3.0 platforms. 
Avalanche supports over 200 crypto projects with a total value locked in uh, that peaked at $10 billion. On the other hand, Polygon Network supports many crypto platforms such as QuickSwap, SushiSwap, Curve, and it's very limited. Avalanche's TVL compared to Polygon's TVL is also higher. Avalanche's TVL stands at $1.3 billion, whereas Polygon's TVL may have plated around $1 billion. Avalanche is the fastest smart contract platform in blockchain industry, offering fast, low-cost and eco-friendly deployment options for any smart contract-enabled application. Polygon is also the first structure platform uh, for Ethereum scaling and infrastructure development based on its modular flexible Polygon SDK framework, which supports building various applications. Not only these blockchains, but there are n number of blockchains that are on the rise. In fact, the overall blockchain gaming industry is on the rise. The industry is up by 54% since Jan 2024 compared to the overall market in 2023. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3.0TV or log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am here to bring you a groundbreaking development straight from the land of abundance opportunity in Web3, the oasis of MENA region, Dubai. Dubai Police has inked a game-changing partnership with Cardano, one of the leading blockchain platforms in the world, to spearhead blockchain technology for law enforcement. That's right, the Dubai Police Force is stepping into the future by harnessing the power of blockchain technology. But what exactly does this mean for law enforcement? Well, it means a more secure and efficient way to share crucial information from criminal investigations. Imagine being able to securely share bullet scans and other sensitive data with law enforcement agencies worldwide, all with a click of a button. This partnership is not just about technology, it's about making the world a safer place. By leveraging blockchain technology, Dubai police are taking a giant leap forward in their efforts to combat crime and ensure justice is served effectively and efficiently. So what's next? With Dubai's ambitious goals to become a hub of crypto and blockchain technology, this partnership with Cardano is just the beginning. This may open up a Pandora's box in the near future. One thing for sure, Dubai police and Cardano are paving the way for safer, more secure future. That's all for today. This is me, Roshni Shingre, signing off. For more such updates, watch 3 TV or log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io or scan the QR code. Thank you. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. A day after successfully raising $800 million through a convertible debt issue, Michael Saylor's Bitcoin development company MicroStrategy approached regulators seeking approval for raising another $500 million. The company intends to use the proceeds to purchase more Bitcoin, according to a press release. MicroStrategy purchased 12,000 Bitcoins worth $812.7 million from the proceeds of a recently concluded fundraising round originally planned at $600 million and later increased to $800 million. Million. Following that buy, MicroStrategy stack stood at 205,000 Bitcoins now worth just shy of $15 billion. Assuming Bitcoin remains around its current $73,000 level, the company would be able to purchase somewhere in the area of 6,800 additional tokens with proceeds from this latest offering. MicroStrategy shares lost some sheen in after-hour trading, having accumulated a 10.8% rise during the session, reaching an all-time high of $1,766. 
The stocks now up 158% year to date alongside Bitcoin's rise to a record high above $73,000. Remember, Saylor is optimistic about Bitcoin's potential. In a recent media interaction, MicroStrategy Executive Chairman said crypto will be a much more valuable asset than gold in the future. Bitcoin is certainly at least a digital gold. It's going to eat gold. Saylor said it's got all of the great attributes of gold and it's got none of the defects of gold. That's all the story for now. This is Mirchi Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3.TV and for more information and stories, log on to our website www.3.tv.io or scan the QR code. Hello and welcome to 3 Dollar TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Bitcoin has been climbing even higher over the past month, notching new all-time highs on the way with every dip bought up quickly, but the largest crypto may be poised for a cool-off phase and respond. Digital asset analytics firm Swiss Block said in a note on Wednesday that Bitcoin nearly doubled in price from $38,000 in late Jan without any meaningful pullbacks and a cooling period could be imminent. Nothing rallies in a straight line, not even BTC, Swiss block analysts said in a Telegram update. A counter move seems to be near. On a four hour chart, Swiss block analysts forecast a negative bearish divergence between Bitcoin's price inching higher and a falling relative strength index, foreshadowing lower prices. Well, the RSI is a widely used momentum indicator that measures the speed and size of an asset's price changes. The pullback could materialize as soon as in the next few days, according to a chart by Swiss block analyst Hendrik Zeberg. But in the bigger picture, lower prices will be a temporary setback before the uptrend eventually resumes to new highs. We see BTC dropping to $58,000 to $59,000 in the next move, they said, representing a 20% decline from current prices. But the top is not there. Another investment firm, Matrix Port, noted on Tuesday that Bitcoin's rally is running out of fuel and is entering a consolidation period. This bull market still has legs, but the divergence between a declining RSI and still high Bitcoin prices could signal that uh, BTC needs to consolidate before rallying again Matrix Sport Analyst said. That's all in the story. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. Defund crypto exchange Gemini and crypto lender Genesis have failed to get relief from the US federal court. Their motion seeking dismissal of the US Securities and Exchange Commission case was denied by a New York judge. Edgardo Ramos of the Southern District of New York found that the regulatory agency's complaint plausibly alleges that the two firms violated securities laws, allegedly offering and selling unregistered securities to retail investors through the now defunct Gemini Earn program. A ruling on a motion to dismiss generally has to accept the plaintiff's facts as true and doesn't indicate how the court might ultimately rule on the SEC's allegations about whether Earn violated securities laws. Gemini Earn was first available to retail customers in February 2021, offering as much as 8% interest on crypto tokens invested through the program. According to the SEC's complaint, Gemini Earn had approximately 340,000 retail users and $900 million in assets on its platform when in November 2022, Genesis halted withdrawals, citing withdrawal requests which have exceeded our current liquidity. Against the backdrop of an escalating and public dispute between the leadership of the two firms, Gemini Earn was shuttered on Jan 10, 2023. Two days later, the SEC filed charges against both companies. The same month, Genesis filed for bankruptcy. In May 2023, Gemini and Genesis both filed motions to dismiss the case against them as well as subsequent alternative motions to strike the SEC's request for permanent injunctive relief and disgorgement against both firms. Judge Ramos denied each of them and ruled that the case be allowed to proceed. 
Meanwhile, Gemini co-founder Styler and Cameron Winklevoss have vowed to return 100% of Gemini earned customers' funds worth roughly $1.1 billion when Genesis' bankruptcy case ends. That's all the story for now. This is Biruti Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 Daughter TV. And for more information stories, log on to our website www.3watchtv.io or scan the QR code. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Every move you make sparks a new adventure. Well, this fascinating world is called Open. Ernest Klein, the visionary behind Ready Player One, is back with his latest creation, Open. So prepare yourself for a gaming revolution. Hello and welcome to 3 Dollar TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. And you are watching our special show, Metaverse Magic, where we get you the latest updates from the Metaverse space. A multi-genre, multi-IP and multi-mode battle royale experience designed for PC and current generation platforms is coming your way. Ernest Klein, the visionary behind Ready Player One, along with his co-founders at Readyverse Studios, Shara Senderoff, Dan Farah and Aaron McDonald, has introduced the electrifying world of Open. The Open, launched in collaboration with Walker Labs, will be the hero experience in the Readyverse. Well, Readyverse is a next-gen immersive and interoperable platform for discovering Metaverse games and experiences. And Walker Labs is a seasoned team of senior game developers that hail from Epic Games, DICE, Microsoft, PlayStation, Ubisoft, Electronic Arts and more. Interesting, isn't it? But do you know what exactly sets Open apart from other gaming experiences? Well, it's the commitment to openness and accessibility. With a focus on content interoperability and digital content ownership, Open aims to create a virtual space where players can shape their own destinies. And now let's explore the fascinating Ottoman Empire event by Sandbox. The Sandbox has recently launched its exclusive whitelist meant for magnificent century avatars paying homage to the illustrious heritage of Ottoman Empire. Well, this limited collection featuring 1500 avatars including the iconic Sultan Suleiman promises to transport players to an era of grandeur. From embarking on quests to participating in VIP events, magnificent century avatars offer players a chance to earn rewards including a share of the game's substantial $35,000 or 50,000 sand price pool. While talking about the additional perks, top avatar owners stand a chance to receive exclusive rewards, including a trip to Istanbul. So, you may try your luck. And now let's listen in to our special guest for his views on the metaverse sector. So future as far as this year of the metaverse is concerned, I see uh, one very, very meaningful uh, and uh, reasonable solutions uh, that's going to come in. Number two, I see a larger integration of blockchain uh, wherein the Web3 economics uh, plays a big role both with respect to scaling up the metaverse operations or uh, bringing in uh, you know, rewards and things like that. 
Uh, third but not the least uh, is the integration of uh, artificial intelligence in uh, metaverse solutions. Uh, days are not far when uh, you would be actually interacting with an avatar, um, the holographic image of the founder of the company, the chairman, uh, even for that matter, celebrities, uh, where we would ask questions to them and uh, get answers. So lots and lots of opportunities both with respect to B2B and B2C. Moving on, a recent medical breakthrough showcases the innovative use of Apple Vision Pro in healthcare as a surgical team at Cromwell Hospital in London successfully utilized the headset during spinal operation. Well, the mixed reality headset worn by a scrub nurse played a crucial role in assisting surgeons during two microsurgical spine procedures. The introduction of Apple Vision Pro headset to Cromwell Hospital was facilitated by EXDX, a tech platform provided for hospitals. Well, EXDX is a US-based company which has previously developed the same software for Microsoft's HoloLens headset. Well, the successful implementation of Apple Vision Pro headset in spinal surgery procedures underscores the transformative role of technology in advancing healthcare practices. And now, let's explore the allure of Qatar on Roblox, which has left millions eager to explore its wonders in person. Qatar Adventure, a virtual heaven on Roblox, welcomed over 7 million players from 32 countries across four continents during its seven-week run from December 15, 2023 to February 8, 2024. Developed by Qatar's international media offices Q Life and Century Games, this immersive experience showcased the nation's cultural richness and achievements following the success of FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022. The adventure featured iconic Qatari landmarks like the Golden Nostal Stadium, attracting 3.7 million visits online. A survey among players revealed overwhelming satisfaction, with some 86% expressing the desire to visit Qatar in person. Accessible through live Topia on Roblox, Qatar Adventure showcased the allure of Qatar, leaving millions eager to explore its wonders in person. And let's not forget about the financial side of the metaverse. Han ETF is making waves with the launch of first ETF dedicated to the metaverse. With a focus on companies shaping the future of virtual experiences, this ETF offers investors a unique opportunity to capitalize on growing trends of virtualization. From gaming to entertainment to finance, the Metaverse is undergoing a rapid transformation. Well, that's all in this episode of Metaverse Magic. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3vastv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. नमस्कार मैं हूं रुचि शर्मा इंडियन रेलवेज इन दिनों बारीकी से ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी की काबिलियत को परख रही है पिछले साल पॉलीगॉन के साथ किए गए कोलैबोरेशन के तहत नेशनल एकेडमी ऑफ इंडियन रेलवेज ने रेलवे सेक्टर में ब्लॉकचेन के बढ़ते फायदों के प्रति लोगों की जागरूकता बढ़ाने के लिए कई वर्कशॉप ऑर्गेनाइज किए हाल ही में आई ने अयोध्या के लिए शुरू की गई आस्था ट्रेन की टिकट बतौर एन जारी की IRCTC की ये पहल इस कदर सफल हुई कि IRCTC ने इस NFT प्रोजेक्ट को दिल्ली लखनऊ रूट के लिए तेजस ट्रेन की टिकट के साथ आगे बढ़ाने में देर नहीं लगाई महज दो महीनों में IRCTC का ये दूसरा NFT टिकट प्रोजेक्ट है इस प्रोजेक्ट से जुड़ी खास बात ये है कि ये टिकट्स होली के पावन अवसर पर जारी की जा रही है यानी दिल्ली से लखनऊ के बीच चलने वाली दो तेजस ट्रेन के लिए ये एन टिकट सिर्फ बीस मार्च से दो अप्रैल तक उपलब्ध होंगी रंगों से भरे इस होली के त्योहार की पूरी छवि छलक रही है इन रंगीली एन एफ टी में जिसे यात्री अगर चाहें तो अपनी तस्वीरों के साथ अपना अलग पर्सनलाइज टच दे सकते हैं 
जी हाँ अपनी एन एफ टिकट्स पर अपनी पसंदीदा तस्वीरें लगाकर यात्री अपने सफर से जुड़ी सुहानी यादों को हमेशा के लिए संजो कर रख सकते हैं साथ ही यात्री कुछ चुनिंदा ब्रांड्स की तरफ से एक्सक्लूसिव ऑफर्स का मजा भी उठा सकते हैं आई आर सी टी सी इज इशूंग टिकट As well as for the entire train passenger community as well, and I'm sure that's going to do two things. First, introduce the mass of Indian train passengers to the Web3 ecosystem, full points, and two, it's going to create a community of Indian train passengers that last longer than the journey itself. We know that these communities exist during the journey. We've all experienced it. So even though I have yet to study the te- technical aspects of how these tokens are actually being issued, I do know that they are being issued on Polygon, and there is a tr- traceability solution provider called NFT Trace that's behind them. That's what we know for sure. So now to see how it actually plays out, how the users interact with this, and hopefully I want to get my hands on one of these tickets and see it for myself. IRCTC के ऑफिशियल डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म पर शोकेस की गई इन एन पर दिल्ली और लखनऊ की ऐतिहासिक धरोहरों की खूबसूरत तस्वीरें उकेरी गई हैं। खैर ब्लॉकचेन तकनीक को अपनाने और डिजिटल इंडिया के सपने को साकार करने की तरफ यकीनन ये आई का अहम और कारगर कदम साबित होगा इस खास स्टोरी में फिलहाल इतना ही आप देखते रहिए थ्री डॉट टीवी और ज्यादा जानकारी और स्टोरी ऐसी लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू पर या फिर क्यू कोड को स्कैन करें Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3Doto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. According to a report from Coin Shares, capital inflows broke the previously set record of 2.7 billion dollars, while the latest week's inflows take year-to-date inflows to 13.2 billion dollars, topping 2021 total inflows of 10.6 billion dollars. Simultaneously, the week's trading volumes reached 43 billion dollars, surpassing the previous week's record and accounting for over 47% of all Bitcoin traded globally. Following 6 weeks of outflows, 19 million dollars worth of blockchain shares saw an influx. For the first time during the week, worldwide ETPs exceeded 100 billion dollars, but a subsequent price adjustment caused them to settle at 97 billion dollars. Well, 97% of the overall inflows this year have been made into Bitcoin, with total inflows of 2.86 billion dollars last week. For the fifth consecutive week, short Bitcoin inflows for the year came to a total of 26 million dollars at the same time. The top cryptocurrencies are seeing withdrawals of capital. 14 million dollars was lost by Ethereum, 2.7 million dollars was lost by Solana. and 6.8 million dollars was lost by Polygon Spark. Well, prior to this week on March 4 to 8, 2024, capital inflows into cryptocurrency investment products hit a record breaking 2.7 billion dollars. Over the past 2 months, the total inflow amounted to 10.3 billion dollars. Experts pointed out that by contrast, in 2021, the sum was 10.6 billion dollars. Well the introduction of the first cryptocurrency was essential to the rise in volume. 2.6 billion dollars was accounted by Bitcoin. Well that's all in the story. Keep watching Feedoto TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.feedostv.io or scan the QR code. This is me Vishakha Thakur signing off.
Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. In a span of 10 seconds, Bitcoin, the largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization, experienced a major upheaval. Last Monday, Bitcoin suffered a brief cash to as low as $8,900 on cryptocurrency exchange BitMEX, while prices on other exchanges held well above $60,000. The slide began at 22.40 UTC and within two minutes, prices fell to $8,900, the lowest since early 2020. The recovery was equally quick with prices rebounding to $67,000 by 2050 UTC. Throughout the boom-bust episode, on BitMEX, Bitcoin global average price held steady at around $67,400. Well, that's all for today. This is me, Roshni Shingre, signing off. For more such updates, watch 3.tv or log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. Thank you. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Siemens, a German tech company focused on industry, infrastructure, transport and healthcare with a market cap of over $157 billion, is all set to make waves in the industrial sector by defining the path for industrialists across the globe. The tech conglomerate, which recently unveiled its vision for an industrial metaverse and joined hands with industry leaders such as Amazon Web Services, Sony Corporation and AI chip maker NVIDIA, is now now planning to bring immersive visualization to its Team Center X, a cloud-based product lifecycle management offering. Now, what's even more interesting here is that this immersive visualization is powered by NVIDIA's Omniverse technology, which is fueling growth of an AI-driven digital twin technology. We are bringing the real and digital world even closer. That's what Dr. Roland Bush, the CEO of Siemens, says. Take a look. Now we are bringing the real and digital worlds even closer by integrating NVIDIA AI and Omniverse technologies into Team Center X. Omniverse APIs enable data interoperability and physics-based rendering to industrial-scale design and manufacturing projects. Well, it will be fascinating to see how generative AI can revolutionize the visualization of complex data, making photorealism possible. And one can witness the transformation very soon as Siemens and NVIDIA are roping in HD Hyundai, a market leader in sustainable ship manufacture, to begin with. Interestingly, HD Hyundai has been developing ammonia and hydrogen powered ships that can contain over 7 million discrete parts. By using Siemens' new product, HD Hyundai can unify and visualize these massive engineering data sets interactively. Mr. Bush explains it well. Take a look. Hyundai, market leader in sustainable ship manufacturing, builds ammonia and hydrogen powered ships, often comprising over 7 million discrete parts. Omniverse APIs, Team Center X lets companies like HD Hyundai unify and visualize these massive engineering data sets interactively and integrate generative AI to generate 3D objects or HDRI backgrounds to see their projects in context. The result, an ultra-intuitive, photoreal, physics-based digital twin that eliminates waste and errors, delivering huge savings in cost and time. Sounds exciting, right? Well, this is just the beginning. Siemens is bringing NVIDIA platforms to their customers and opening new opportunities for industry leaders to build the next wave of AI-enabled digital twins at every scale. As per PwC's global AI study, AI could contribute up to $15 trillion to the global economy in 2030, which is more than the current output of China and India combined. And not to forget NVIDIA, the third most valuable company with a market cap of over $2 trillion, is bringing its Omniverse technology to Apple's Vision Pro headset. Watch as NVIDIA CEO Jensen Yuang announces the news during an annual conference in San Jose.
That was not an animation. That was Omniverse. Today we're announcing that Omniverse Cloud streams to the Vision Pro. Well, the main aim of this integration is to let developers use Omniverse tools to create things like factories in a digital space so that they can understand how workers will move around the facility even before they put shovels into the ground. Technology is evolving rapidly and so is the industrial space. It will be fascinating to see how things unfold in the future. Well, that's all in this special segment. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. IRCTC ne Astha train or Tejas train ke liye jari ki NFT tickets. Star Trek Collectibles ki latest collection hui launch. Core Foundation lekar aa raha hai ek nayi NFT marketplace. Hello and a very warm welcome to all of you. IRCTC ki NFT ticketing pehel se lekar Star Trek ke real life figurines tak kai mazedar NFT updates main Ruchi Sharma aapke liye lekar aayi hu. तो हो जाइए NFT वर्स के इस खास एपिसोड के लिए तैयार इसमें आपके फेवरेट NFT प्रोजेक्ट्स की डिटेल्स तो होंगी ही साथ ही हम एक स्पेशल गेस्ट से भी करेंगे मुलाकात लेकिन सबसे पहले जानते हैं पिछले हफ्ते कैसा रहा NFT मार्केट का हाल क्रिप्टो करेंसीज में पिछले हफ्ते आई गिरावट का असर NFT मार्केट पर भी देखा गया पिछले 7 दिनों में NFT सेल्स करीब 16% गिरकर टोटल 358 मिलियन डॉलर्स रही Cryptoslam.io के डेटा के मुताबिक वीकली NFT सेल्स के हिसाब से टॉप 3 ब्लॉकचेन सभी में वीक ऑन वीक गिरावट देखी गई है इस हफ्ते भी टॉप पर रही इथेरियम जिसने करीब 21% की गिरावट के साथ 129 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स दर्ज की तो वहीं दूसरे पायदान पर रही बिटकॉइन एनएफटीज ने भी करीब 20% गिरावट के साथ 124 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स दर्ज की तीसरे पायदान पर रही सोलाना जिसने 5% गिरावट के साथ 61.68 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स अपने नाम की तो वहीं चौथे और पांचवे पायदान पर रही पॉलीगॉन और बीएनबी चेन पिछले हफ्ते लीडिंग एनएफटी कलेक्शंस रही अनकैटेगराइज्ड ऑर्डिनल्स जिसने 43% उछाल के साथ 57 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स दर्ज की तो वहीं सेकंड हाईएस्ट एनएफटी कलेक्शन रही बीएवाईसी जिसने 14% बढ़त के साथ 13 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स अपने नाम की एनएफटी टिकट की गाड़ी तेजी पकड़ रही है क्वाइट लिटरली क्योंकि IRCTC ने अयोध्या के लिए आस्था ट्रेन और दिल्ली लखनऊ के बीच चलने वाली तेजस ट्रेन के लिए NFT टिकट्स जारी की हैं। 22 जनवरी को अयोध्या में हुई राम लला की प्राण प्रतिष्ठा के मौके पर IRCTC ने एक नई ट्रेन की शुरुआत की जिसे नाम दिया गया आस्था IRCTC ने 200 आस्था ट्रेन शुरू की है जो भारत की छियासठ लोकेशन ऐसी श्रद्धालुओं को अयोध्या तक का सफर तय करा रही है इस ट्रेन के टिकट बतौर एनएफटी जारी की जा रही है जो ना सिर्फ ब्लॉकचेन पर दर्ज होगी बल्कि श्रद्धालुओं के लिए राम लला के दर्शन के लिए एक सुंदर यादगार की तरह काम करेगी यात्री आई आस्था ट्रेन वेब एप्लीकेशन के जरिए एक्सक्लूसिव डिजिटल कंटेंट एक्सेस कर रहे हैं जो उन्हें सुविधा अनुसार कई भाषाओं में पहुँचाया जा रहा है आई की इस ऐप में कई भाषाओं में ऑडियो फीचर भी उपलब्ध है जो यात्रा और अन्य सुविधाओं के बारे में जरूरी जानकारी देता है इतना ही नहीं IRCTC की तरफ से मुहैया कराई गई बुकलेट गाइड की मदद से यात्री अयोध्या में मौजूद और भी कई धार्मिक धरोहरों के बारे में जान सकते हैं उससे उनके आध्यात्मिक सफर का अनुभव और बेहतर होगा IRCTC ने इस NFT प्रोजेक्ट को दिल्ली लखनऊ रूट के लिए तेजस ट्रेन की टिकट के साथ आगे बढ़ाया है इस प्रोजेक्ट ऐसी जुड़ी खास बात यह है की ये टिकट होली के पावन अवसर आरोप जारी की जा रही है यानी दिल्ली से लखनऊ के बीच चलने वाली दो तेजस ट्रेन के लिए ये एन टिकट सिर्फ 20 मार्च से 2 अप्रैल तक उपलब्ध होंगी रंगों से भरे इस होली के त्योहार की पूरी छवि छलक रही है इन रंगीली एन एफ में जिसे यात्री अगर चाहें तो अपनी तस्वीरों के साथ थोड़ा पर्सनलाइज टच दे सकते हैं साथ ही यात्री कुछ चुनिंदा ब्रांड्स की तरफ ऐसी एक्सक्लूसिव ऑफर का मजा भी उठा सकते हैं IRCTC के ऑफिशियल डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म पर शोकेस की गई एन एफ पर दिल्ली और लखनऊ की ऐतिहासिक धरोहरों की खूबसूरत तस्वीरें उकेरी गई हैं। इस पर और ज्यादा जानकारी के लिए रुक करते हैं हमारे स्पेशल गेस्ट मिस्टर ध्रुप दास का वेलकम टू थ्री डॉटो टीवी आई ने आस्था ट्रेन और तेजस ट्रेन के लिए एन टिकट्स जारी की है आप इस पहल को कैसे देखते हैं और इससे वेब थ्री अवेयरनेस में कितना फायदा होगा 
IRCTC is issuing tickets as NFTs on the blockchain. This means that these tickets double up as digital collectibles. That's a big deal for the NFT community, as well as for the entire train passenger community as well. And I'm sure that's going to do two things. First, introduce the mass of Indian train passengers to the Web3 ecosystem, full points. And two, it's going to create a community of Indian train passengers that lasts longer than the journey itself. We know that these communities exist during the journey. We've all experienced it. So even though I've yet to study the te technical aspects of how these tokens are actually being issued, I do know that they're being issued on Polygon and there is a tra traceability solution provider called NFT Trace that's behind them. That's what we know for sure. So now to see how it actually plays out, how the users interact with this, and hopefully I want to get my hands on one of these tickets and see it for myself. Thank you so much for talking to us and for our time to give us. Star Trek fans are a good news for Star Trek fans. वो अब अपने आइकॉनिक स्टार ट्रेक कैरेक्टर्स के लिए रियल वर्ल्ड फिगरीन कलेक्ट कर सकते हैं स्टार ट्रेक कलेक्टेबल्स की कामयाबी के बाद फंको ने एक बेहद उत्साह के साथ अपनी नई कलेक्शन स्टार ट्रेक द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन की अपकमिंग रिलीज की अनाउंसमेंट की है इस कलेक्शन ने 12 मार्च को डेब्यू किया था साइंस फिक्शन फैंस और एन लवर्स के लिए ये एन कलेक्शन वैक्स की ड्रॉप मार्केट प्लेस पर अवेलेबल है फैंस स्टार ट्रेक कैरेक्टर्स को फीचर कर रहे इन डिजिटल कार्ड को ओन कर सकते हैं The Star Trek Digital Pop Series 2 District Editions में डेब्यू करेगी स्टैंडर्ड पैक 18,000 पैक ऑफर करने वाली इस कलेक्शन में पांच एन आइटम्स होंगी जिनका प्राइस होगा 9.99 डॉलर तो वहीं प्रीमियम पैक एडिशन में भी 18,000 पैक्स होंगे लेकिन इसमें 17 डिजिटल एसेट की कलेक्शन होगी इतना ही नहीं कलेक्टर्स जिनके पास ग्रेल लेजेंडरी या रॉयल्टी सेट है उन्हें रिडेम्शन टोकन अवार्ड दिया जाएगा इसमें आइकॉनिक स्टार ट्रेक कैरेक्टर्स के रियल वर्ल्ड फिगरीन को ओन करने के चांसेस बढ़ जाएंगे फंको की लेटेस्ट स्टार ट्रेक सीरीज कलेक्शन में डिजिटल और फिजिकल एलिमेंट्स मर्ज करके फैंडम के साथ साथ एडिशनल बेनिफिट्स को एनहेंस किया जा रहा है एन एफ मार्केटप्लेस की लिस्ट में एक और नई एन मार्केट प्लेस का नाम जुड़ गया है कोर फाउंडेशन जिसका एम डैप्स के लिए सिक्योर डिसेंट्रलाइज इकोसिस्टम क्रिएट करना है लॉन्च कर रहा है एक नई एन एफ फाउंडेशन अपनी कम्युनिटी के लिए एक एन कलेक्शन ड्रॉप भी करेगी जिसका नाम है कोर जर्नी इस एन कलेक्शन का फोकस है कोर चेन के लिए स्ट्रॉन्गर यूटिलिटी क्रिएट करना कोर ब्लॉकचेन बिटकॉइन की एडवांटेजेस को लेवरेज करेगी साथ ही ये नेटवर्क ईवीएम कम्पेटेबल भी होगा ताकि इस पर इथीरियम स्मार्ट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट और डैप भी रन कर सके वेबसाइट के मुताबिक इस मार्केट प्लेस पर पचास आर्टिस्ट द्वारा क्रिएट की गई ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड होस्ट की गई है इसके साथ ही कोर बिल्डर्स को रिवॉर्ड करने के लिए इंसेंटिव प्रोग्राम भी रोल आउट करेगा कोर इग्निशन नाम का ये प्रोग्राम नेटवर्क की ग्रोथ में डेवलपर्स के कंट्रीब्यूशन के लिए उन्हें रिकॉग्नाइज भी करेगा कोर इग्निशन यूजर्स को इंगेज करने के साथ ही रिवॉर्ड्स अर्न करने की अपॉर्चुनिटीज देगा ताकि कोर की ग्रोथ और अडोप्शन बढ़े वेल दैट्स ऑल दिस एपिसोड ऑफ एन वर्स वक्त आ गया है आपसे विदा लेने का लेकिन एन की दुनिया से ऐसी ही और मजेदार खबरें मैं रुचि शर्मा आप ले लाती रहूंगी टिल देन डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू थ्री डॉट टीवी और इसी तरह की इंटरेस्टिंग अपडेट्स के लिए लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू पर या फिर क्यू कोड को स्कैन करें Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to Fidoro TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. The cryptocurrency market is overwhelmed by Nvidia's growth story, which has underlined the enormous potential in artificial intelligence sector. A growing interest among investors for AI-focused cryptocurrency projects 
coincides with a spike in tech stocks and coins associated with machine learning applications. Over the past year, as the value of Bitcoin reached uh, all-time highs, has left investors awestruck. But Bitcoin's rally can't hide the ascent of various AI-related cryptocurrency tokens that have outperformed Bitcoin comfortably. According to CoinGecko data, the combined market value of AI tokens increased dramatically from just $2.7 billion in April of last year to $26.4 billion till date. Over the last 30 days, tokens associated with these projects have increased between 145% and 297%. As both AI systems and blockchain networks continue to grow, we will see more and more use cases fusing together the two industries, said Marcus Levin, co-founder of blockchain data storage firm XYO Network. According to data from Kaiho Research, trading volumes for AI tokens have also increased significantly this year, reaching an all-time high of $3.8 billion in late February. Currently, some of the best AI networks include the Render Network, a blockchain platform for peer-to-peer -peer sharing of AI-generated visuals, Fetch.ai, a platform for developing AI apps, and Singularity Net, a marketplace for AI services. According to investment firm Vanek, income from AI-related cryptocurrency projects could exceed $51 billion in a bull market scenario and $10.2 billion in a base case by 2030. Well, Vanek also pointed out that main ways that blockchain technology contributes practically to AI research are in the areas namely data verification, using crypto tokens as rewards, creating physical processing infrastructure and transparency in showcasing digital ownership. Yet, just as with the AI boom itself, picking winners and losers could be fraught with peril. So that's all in this special update. Keep watching Feed Auto TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3ostv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. What's up gamers? Remember the good old days when you used to go to cyber cafes and play games? I used to spend my entire pocket money playing games in cyber cafe. As a young kid, one of my favorite pastime was playing games on computer, many of which I come back to even now, uh, just for the cherishing nostalgic moments and good old memories I associate with them even today. That's a big monologue to begin the show. Okay, so let's return to the present world and at a time when Southeast Asian country, the Philippines, is giving a good old wipe. But with the Web3 twist. In downtown Quezon City, which is 10 miles away from Manila, a flourishing crypto game internet cafe is bringing together a community with a common vision of making money. Channel Bond's business, a leading figure in the crypto world, symbolizes more than just a simple business. It represents the resilience and adaptability of the Filipino spirit. For many of Bond's clients, gaming platforms such as Heroes of Mavia and Nifty Island represent more than just virtual environments. These are good learning opportunities for them because of the cryptocurrency tokens being integrated as rewards. And with Heroes of Mavia's native currency, Mavia, hitting its all-time high a few weeks ago and nabbing over 1 million downloads, the Web3 gaming sector appears to be off to a strong start. Nifty Island, by the way, also officially launched its public beta this year. So coming back to the story, one of the main reasons why people in the uh, Philippines uh, are engaging themselves in Web3 gaming as a livelihood opportunity is because these tokens offer a steady income that is significantly higher than the, uh, than the national uh, minimum wage and may be exchanged for local currency. Often players convert their tokens to pesos, the country's currency earning around twice the country's minimum wage of $11 a day. According to data from the research firm Chainalysis, the value of cryptocurrency transactions in the Philippines rose 70% from September and October to hit $7.3 billion in November and December. New adverts for cryptocurrency companies have appeared all over the rice capital of the world, which is also now becoming the Web3 gaming capital of the world, Manila. Nowadays, gamers in Philippines are farming virtual crops for profit in the cryptocurrency farming game Pixels. 
Chain analysis reports also stated that Pixel's players in the Philippines jumped from 80,000 in November to more than 830,000 in March. They also stated that around 30% of the world's cryptocurrency earning video gamers are in the Philippines. The Philippines has seen crypto become particularly popular during the pandemic lockdown. Although over 40% of the country's population is unbanked, the majority of Philippine households have access to the internet, allowing a crypto to expand even into rural areas. During the lockdown, people in Filipinos played Axie Infinity, developed by the Viat Mimi's company, SkyMavis. The game basically allows players to fight Pokemon-like characters to earn a cryptocurrency called Smooth Love Potion. In 2021, at a peak of Axie's popularity, Smooth Love Potion was accepted as an alternative to the pesos by renters, fuel stations, and even some restaurants in Philippines. Unfortunately, when the crypto collapsed a year later, Thousands of Filipinos lost their life savings in smooth love potion. Tokens in the game, which some players traded to sell for thousands of dollars, became worthless. Mr. Bond's new internet cafe is a sign of how crypto has begun booming again in Philippines, which has long been a center of crypto activity. This business concept is special because it not only sustains livelihoods, but also ignites ambitions demonstrating that hard work and enthusiasm can lead to success. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3.0TV or log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Vashakha Thakur. Over the past seven days, Solana-based decentralized exchanges have recorded higher volume than that of its counterpart, the Ethereum-based DEX. The meme coin frenzy seems to have catalyzed higher volumes on Solana. Solana has surpassed Ethereum to become the top smart contract blockchain by trading volume. According to data from DeFi Lama, trading activity on Solana-based decentralized exchanges surged 67% in just seven days, reaching $21.3 billion. During the same time frame, the volume on Ethereum-based decentralized exchanges increased by 3% to $19.4 billion. Well, there are 17 decentralized exchanges on the Solana platform, with 88% of the overall volume, Orca tops the chart. Uniswap is the front-runner among the 46 decentralized exchanges on Ethereum and the speculative frenzy in Solana-based meme coins, namely Dog with Hat, Bonk, Book of Meme and Slurf are driving force behind rise in trading volumes. Well, the amount of stable coins on Solana reached a multi-year high of $2.80 billion on March 13 due to the speculative frenzy, which resulted in the creation of 2,300 meme coins in an hour. As per reflexivity research, the increase in Solana's volume started in the fourth quarter of 2023 due to the widespread adoption of point programs and airdrops, such as the Solana decentralized exchange Jupiter. Furthermore, compared to Ethereum and other smart contract blockchains, Solana has an improved capital efficiency. In other words, the blockchain can accommodate increased trading volumes while reducing the total dollar amount of assets that are logged within the DeFi ecosystem. Interestingly, the DEX volume to total value logged ratio has recently highlighted Solana's notable performance over Ethereum. Solana Sol token has jumped 68% to $170 this year, while Ether rallied 40% to $3,214. That's all in the story. Keep watching Free Auto TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Hello and welcome to 3 Daughter TV. This is Shikha Singh. More to earn games have emerged as a new way of rewarding players with digital tokens for staying fit and healthy in recent times. You may literally get money from these games just by carrying out your regular exercise regime uh, because they use technology to track users' movements. 
Moto and game allows players to earn watch by digital currencies popularly known as cryptocurrency or other digital assets by performing tasks in the real world. Players are typically rewarded for walking, running, cycling, visiting specific locations or completing challenges within the game. These actions are tracked using GPS and other sensors and rewards are distributed through blockchain or other digital payment systems. It is expected that the segment would generate substantial revenue by 2031. The Moto One games market has seen significant growth in recent years due to the rise in blockchain technology and the potential for players to earn real-world rewards. These games attract a growing community of players, often featuring a strong social component. The market's growth is also driven by the increasing interest in blockchain technology and cryptocurrency as uh, players can earn cryptocurrency without directly investing in it. The global move to earn games market is expected to grow rapidly in 2024 with a high CAGR from 2021 to 2031. The North American move to earn games market has experienced significant growth in recent years driven by the rise of mobile gaming and the popularity of games that allow players to earn rewards for their actions. This trend is particularly prominent in mobile gaming market where players can easily access move to earn games on their smartphones or tablets. Europe is a major market for move to earn games, allowing players to earn digital assets through in-game tasks. The region's Web3 gaming industry, particularly in Germany, France and the UK, is thriving with leading companies. The region's strong gaming culture and large audience makes it an attractive destination for innovative games. Popular games including Axie Infinity, The Sandbox and Gods Unchained. The market is dynamic and evolving, with blockchain technology expected to become more important in Europe and beyond. Key players in this industry are Metagym, Step, Dotmoose, Sweatcoin, Chenopets, StepApp, Olivex, Callow, Digital Fitness, Watchful. Growing influence of technology in gaming space, uh, which helps in engaging a tech-savvy millennium generation, the earning prospects of companies, developing games has trended. In fact, not just move to own gaming segment, but the overall Web3 uh, gaming sector looks promising due to the discernible changes in the underlying fundamentals. Exciting stuff, stay fit, play digital games and get rewarded, both physically and financially. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3.TV or log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io or scan the QR code to know more. TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3.0 TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3.0 TV delivers the news that matters. Founder and CEO of the Forever Social. Stockholm's eighth unicorn. Yeah, that rich famous asshole has been promising digital immortality. A Swedish tycoon, Carl Axel Mattiesen, has been accused of a pivotal murder, fraud and theft of hundreds of millions of dollars. The murder has spelled doom for his firm, the Forever of Social. But, as per Carl, he is not the one behind this murder. So who is the actual killer? Carl's best friend and CTO was shot at from point-blank distance, completely disfiguring her face. And her nose was stuck in the wall next to another crater created by Polet. The police, Interpol and investors all are annoyed. And Carl has been hiding in a secret location running for his life. He needs your help. So are you ready to solve a murder mystery in the metaverse and discover the truth? Wondering how you can be a part of it? 
Hello and welcome to 3 Doro TV. I am Vishakha Thakur and you are watching a special show Metaverse Magic. In every episode we get some fascinating updates for you and this time we are starting with a story filled with several murder mysteries and unexpected twists compelling all the players to solve one ultimate question. How has forever fallen or who is the actual killer? Well, Forever Has Fallen is a captivating, story-driven metaverse where you, as a player, can take on the role of a bounty hunter to delve into thrilling mysteries. As a bounty hunter, you can immerse yourself in the riveting tale of Carl Axel Mathieson. The deal is, you will get an opportunity to engage with high-definition audio narratives and find some clues. Well, these clues hidden within fictional websites will lead you on a captivating quest. Interestingly, in this thrilling adventure, a meticulous NFT ticketing system will ensure that every solved mystery receives due acknowledgements and rewards. Well, the mystery of life is not a problem to solve, but a reality to experience. Deep, right? So let's lighten up the mood as we are now exploring a resort in the metaverse. I am talking about Blue Diamond Resorts, the fastest growing hotel brand in the Caribbean who have recently entered into metaverse. All the travelers can now experience 360 degree virtual tours of all their properties in the Caribbean. Let me tell you that Blue Diamond Resorts encompasses over 60 properties in the most popular holiday destinations in the Caribbean. Anticipated to be available for virtual touring before the end of April 2024, this initiative demonstrates Blue Diamond Resorts' commitment to innovation and leadership in providing immersive experiences for its guests wherein one can immerse themselves in carefree days and have a relaxing spa near some fascinating beaches. And now let's explore the sporty side of the metaverse. Basketball legend Lisa Leslie has joined the Metaverse bandwagon as she has recently partnered with Loot Mogul, which is a multiverse blockchain gaming platform where sports enthusiasts and influencers converge. When well, Lisa is a three time Women's National Basketball Association's Most Valuable Player Award winner and a four time Olympic gold medalist. She has now joined Loot Mogul as its brand ambassador and business partner. By being a partner as well as a brand ambassador, she is pivotal in shaping the platform's vision and outreach, particularly in bridging the gap between traditional sports fanfare and the world of virtual experiences. And now let's listen in to what our special guest has to say about the metaverse sector. So if you look at Vishaka, uh, the last one year, if you look at it, the metaverse has jumped so much uh, that, you know, you have almost 20, 20 plus billion dollars coming up from the metaverse market. And it's all because of a lot of things which have happened. First of all, you have a huge number of industries coming in, like NVIDIA uh, has come out, Apple has come out, you have Facebook, which has come out. Apart from that, you have um, uh, Siemens and uh, Accenture, everybody is working on the platform. For, for metaverse so digital queen and other applications have become much more and more important in the next two years we are expecting around 40 billion dollars of a um, market for metaverse to come up and india i think will be um, um, gaining almost 10 percent of the market share in this particular uh, model i feel that's that's in a uh, way to move forward to. moving on we have often heard about wildlife conservation afforestation protecting flora and fauna but there is little or no awareness of marine mammal conservation. But now, Palaco Sanctuary is taking step to raise awareness on this through Metaverse. Well, Palaco Sanctuary is a cross-border sanctuary for the safeguard of marine biodiversity. On the 25th of November 1999, the Palacos Agreement was signed in Rome by France, Italy and the Principality of Monaco. The Metaverse Initiative will create an immersive, educational and fun experience for the younger generations as it will mainly focus on the importance of marine mammal conservation. And you will also have an opportunity to explore the diversity of marine life that thrives in the Pelago Sanctuary as well as understand its daily challenges. And now an exciting update for you all. It is often said that a pen is the tongue of the mind. And today, I am going to tell you a story about a magical pen. 
The Big Crystal is an inexpensive, disposable ballpoint pen which is mass produced in France. It was introduced in the year 1950 and later became one of the best selling pens in the world. Well, Big aims to empower youth through creativity and self expression, and in regard to this, the firm has been organizing several events. In order to broaden its reach, Big has launched an art gallery in Metaverse to promote innovation and creativity in Africa. Yes, by launching the Art Master Africa Metaverse Gallery, Big aims to encourage talents to express themselves using the Big Ballpoint Pen. Isn't that exciting? Well, this is an exciting opportunity for all the artists from the Southern, Eastern and West African region. And all the visitors across the globe can immerse themselves in the creative work crafted by the renowned or budding artists based in Africa. Well, that's all in this episode of Metaverse Patrick. I will be back with more such interesting updates from the Metaverse space. Do log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I'm your host Shubham Joshi. Global investment company Alliance Bernstein continues to hold a bullish outlook on Bitcoin, the largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization. Bernstein raised its year-end Bitcoin price forecast to $90,000 from $80,000 and updated estimates from mining stocks in its coverage, the broker said in a research report. With the new Bitcoin bull cycle, strong ETF inflows, aggressive miner capacity expansion and all-time high miner dollar revenues, we continue to find Bitcoin miners compelling buys for equity investors seeking exposure to the crypto cycle, wrote analyst Gautam Chugani and Mahika Sapra. We assume a 7% reduction in hash rate post-halving from shutdowns versus 15% earlier, the authors wrote. A proof-of-work blockchain uses hash rate, which is the total combined computational power to mine and process transactions. Quadrennial reward halving is when mining rewards are cut in half, but the next halving is expected in mid-April. Recently, Bitcoin flipped silver's market cap to become the 8th largest asset. At $71,000, Bitcoin market cap reached $1.4 trillion. Analysts at Bernstein predicted that Bitcoin would reach $150,000 in 2025 due to huge demand for newly approved spot Bitcoin exchange-traded funds in the United States. Well, the US SEC approved 11 Bitcoin ETFs in January following a decade of attempts by high-profile firms. The products which trade on stock exchanges have experienced massive inflows as investors with interest in the asset snap up the ETF shares. Bernstein raised its price target for outperform rated CleanSpark to $30 from $14.2. Well, it trimmed its price target for outperformed rated Riot platforms to $22 from $22.5 and lifted its Marathon Digital price target to $23 from previous $14.3. CleanSpark closed at $20.25 on Wednesday, Riot at $12.4 and Marathon at $22.43. Well, Riot and CleanSpark are set to emerge as leaders in the sector as the largest miners with the largest self-mining capacity, the reports added. Well, that's all in today's special segment. This is me, Shobham Joshi, signing off. For more such interesting updates and market analysis, keep watching 3 TV or log on to our website or scan the QR code. Thank you. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. Exchange traded funds for Spot Bitcoin in the United States have snapped a recent streak of outflows for five days in a row as per the provisional data published by investment firm Farsight. Fidelity's FBTC led the inflows, followed by BlackRock's IBIT and others like BITB, BTCO, EZBC, and BRRR. Spot Bitcoin ETF saw a net outflows with $750 million departing the 10 authorized funds on March 20th. 
According to Farsight, investor statistics net outflows on March 18th and 19th were $154.3 million and $326.2 million respectively. It lost nearly $1.4 billion in the next four days. The net outflows was caused by profit taking after prices of Bitcoin scaling fresh highs near $74,000 mark on March 14th. Further compounding situation is selling by Grayscale, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which lost $386.6 million on another strong day, was mostly to blame for the outflow. $10.2 million also left the Invesco Galaxy Bitcoin ETF. The trickle of inflows from the eight other authorized ETFs was eventually overshadowed by both. Meanwhile, Bitcoin gained nearly 6% during US trading hours and has seen a 8% gain over 24 hours to trade at $70,911 as the countdown to the blockchain's halving in which mining incentives are reduced by 50% approaches its last month. Bitcoin has fallen throughout the past week from its record high set on March 14. Historically, BTC has fallen in the lead up to the halving and it has followed a similar pattern this time around as the event enters into the final 30 days as per CoinMarketCap data. That's all the story for now. This is me Ruchi Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. and for more information and stories, log on to our website www.3wars.tv.io or scan the QR code. नमस्कार थ्री डॉटो टीवी में आप सभी का स्वागत है आप देख रहे हैं ब्लॉक ऑन रॉक्स का एक और खास एपिसोड रोड पर जमी बर्फ के कारण हर साल सिर्फ यूएस में ही पाँच लाख से ज्यादा एक्सीडेंट्स होते हैं जिससे हजारों लोग अपनी जान को बैठते हैं यूएसए के अलावा कनाडा और बहुत से यूरोपियन कंट्रीज और यहाँ तक की हमारे नॉर्दर्न पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया में भी स्नो के कारण होते एक्सीडेंट्स की संख्या बढ़ती जा रही है लेकिन अब इन एक्सीडेंट्स को नमक के इस्तेमाल से रोका जा सकता है आज के इस खास एपिसोड में हम आपको बताएंगे कि कैसे नमक और ब्लॉकचेन के इस्तेमाल से सिर्फ जान ही नहीं बल्कि पर्यावरण को भी बचाया जा सकता है सड़कों की रक्षा के क्षेत्र में एक क्रांतिकारी विचार ने अपना प्रारंभ किया है फॉर्ड एक ऐसी ऑटोमोटिव महाशक्ति जो नई सोच के लिए मशहूर है सड़कों आरोप सॉल्ट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन में एक बदलावात्मक प्रक्रिया को अग्रसर कर रही है प्राचीन तरीकों पर निर्भर होने की जगह जो कि इनफिशियंसी और पर्यावरण को नुकसान पहुंचा सकती है पर फॉर्ड एक स्मार्ट रोड सॉल्ट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सिस्टम को शुरू कर रही है जो नए तकनीक का उपयोग करके नमक उपयोग को मॉनिटर और ऑप्टिमाइज करता है सड़कों पर नमक वितरण का महत्व सर्दियों में रक्षा के क्षेत्र में महत्वपूर्ण है ठंड के मौसम में सड़क बर्फीली और खतरनाक हो सकती है जो सवार और पैदल चलने वालों के लिए खतरा पैदा कर सकती है इस समस्या को समाधान करने के लिए नमक को सड़क के सरफेस पर फैलाया जाता है ताकि मौजूदा बर्फ को पिघलाया जा सके और नए बर्फ का जमाव ना हो लेकिन अधिक नमक उपयोग पर्यावरण पर हानिकारक प्रभाव डाल सकता है जैसे पानी के स्रोत को प्रदूषित कर सकता है और जीव जंतु को नुकसान पहुंचा सकता है इसलिए सुरक्षा को सुनिश्चित करने और पर्यावरण पर प्रभाव को कम करने के बीच एक संतुलन स्थापित करना महत्वपूर्ण है फॉर्ड की नई सिस्टम इस समस्या को समाधान करती है जिससे ब्लॉकचेन तकनीक और उन्नत सेंसर्स का उपयोग किया जाता है ब्लॉकचेन का उपयोग करके सॉल्ट स्प्रेडिंग एक्टिविटीज को गहनता से ट्रैक किया जाता है और रियल टाइम में दर्ज किया जाता है हर सॉल्ट एप्लीकेशन को विश्वसनीय और डिजिटलाइज डिजिटल लेजर आरोप ट्रांसपेरेंट और इम्यूटेबल तरीके ऐसी दर्ज किया जाता है ये न सिर्फ अकाउंटेबिलिटी को बढ़ाता है बल्कि सॉल्ट यूसेज को निर्धारित करने में भी सहायक होता है इसे सुनिश्चित करते हुए कि सड़क पर केवल आवश्यक मात्रा में ही सॉल्ट डाला जाता है इसके अलावा फॉर्ड के सॉल्ट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ट्रक्स को उत्कृष्ट सेंसर्स के साथ सजाया गया है इसमें लाइट डिटेक्शन और रेंजिंग यानी लिडार कैमराज और टेम्परेचर सेंसर शामिल है ये सेंसर सड़क की स्थिति को लगातार मॉनिटर करते हैं प्रोसाइज डेटा प्रदान करते हैं जो नमक के इस्तेमाल को ऑप्टिमाइज करने में मदद करता है तापमान गिलेपन का स्तर और ट्रैफिक पैटर्न्स जैसे फैक्टर्स का विश्लेषण करके सिस्टम सॉल्ट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन के सबसे प्रभावी समय और लोकेशंस को निर्धारित कर सकता है इस अनुकूल नीति से सॉल्ट वेस्टेज को कम किया जाता है और पर्यावरण के नुकसान को कम किया जाता है जिससे सड़क सुरक्षा को और भी सुधरित किया जा सकता है फॉर्ड के स्मार्ट रोड सॉल्ट डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सिस्टम का प्रभाव गंभीर है ये सर्दियों के मेंटेनेंस को समझने के तरीकों में एक परिवर्तन है जो एक प्राचीन समस्या का एक सस्टेनेबल और एफिशियंट सोल्यूशन प्रस्तुत करता है 
जैसे ही सरकार और शहर इस तकनीक को अपनाती है हम भी एक भविष्य की कल्पना कर सकते हैं जहाँ सड़क सुरक्षित होती है पर्यावरण को बचाया जाता है और संसाधन को बुद्धिमान तरीके ऐसी इस्तेमाल किया जाता है ब्लॉकचेन की इनोवेटिव टेक्निक के जरिए हम भावी पीढ़ी के लिए एक सुरक्षित और एनवायरमेंटल फ्रेंडली भविष्य का निर्माण कर सकते हैं तो आज के लिए फिलहाल इतना ही ऐसी इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरीज के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉटो टीवी अधिक जानकारी के लिए हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट थ्री वर्स टीवी डॉट आईओ आरोप लॉग ऑन करें या फिर स्कैन करें क्यू आर कोड थैंक यू Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. After a successful launch of Spot Bitcoin Exchange Traded Fund, the US multinational investment company BlackRock is making next move to attract big money the institutional investors. The world's largest asset manager with 10 trillion dollars in assets under management has created a fund called the BlackRock USD Institutional Digital Liquidity Fund according to a document filed with the US Securities and Exchange Commission. The fund incorporated in the British Virgin Islands will be launched in partnership with asset tokenization firm Securitize. Although the filing provides little details on fund's investment, but considering Securitize's preference potentially suggests the product has something to do with the tokenization of real-world assets or RWA industry jargon for representing ownership of a wide range of assets through a token on a blockchain. Observers pointed to blockchain data showing 100 million dollars of circa's USDC stablecoin on the Ethereum network was moved to an address related to a securitized deployer which could potentially be a seed investment into the fund though that's not certain. The move follows BlackRock's foray into digital asset funds listing a spot-based Bitcoin ETF in January which amassed over 15 billion dollars of assets under management. The company also filed for Spot Ether ETF last year. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink said in a January interview with CNBC that BTC and ETH ETF are just stepping stones towards tokenization and I really do believe this is where we are going to be going. Tokenization of real world assets is a growing sector in the intersection of digital assets and traditional finance that involves placing traditional assets on blockchain rails in pursuit of faster settlements and increased efficiency. That's all in the story for now. This is Mr. Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3.tv and for more information stories log on to our website www.3.tv.io or scan the QR code. and welcome to 3 dot tv i am vishakha thakur metaverse has become an important factor or key component in global business be it education real estate aviation or healthcare and the gaming industry is no exception the metaverse gaming industry is booming worldwide with countries like the united states leading the way in terms of user adoption and revenue generation according to a report by markets and markets the global metaverse and gaming market is expected to be worth 120 billion dollars by the end of 2028 so to understand the intricacies of metaverse gaming industry i am joined by mr e paul michael the ceo of one verse gaming welcome to 3.0 tv sir thank you so much vishakha for having me here it's Tell a pleasure me. to have you sir 
So, sir, as I mentioned, Metaverse in the gaming market is expected to be worth $120 billion by the end of 2028. And gaming companies have already started uh, building uh, prototypes for Metaverse. For instance, the widely played Minecraft and Fortnite games as well as popular Roblox game platform have all incorporated many aspects of Metaverse. So, what are your opening remarks on booming Metaverse gaming industry and how is Metaverse going to play a role in shaping the future of the gaming industry? See, Metaverse as a company, uh, we are looking, um, you know, to to build platforms where synergies could happen. Okay. Now, what happens is when you look at the gaming spectrum, it's broadly divided into four categories. Uh, the first category is real money gaming. You have casual gaming. Uh, you have fantasy sports. You have esports. Now, if we could get in, you know, experiences to the players, uh, to the people which is submersive, which is immersive. So when you wear, you know, an equipment where you, know, you can exactly see, uh, you know, what's happening in a particular stadium right in your home, or probably if you want to face a ball of, you know, one of the best uh, bowlers. So all that synergies is possible with the uh, metaverse and immersive synergies where people can play real money games, people can play fantasy sports, e-sports, as well as casual games. So we are looking at building a platform on the metaverse where all these games are accessible to you know all the customers irrespective of age you know you know a, a small kid could play or probably a teenager could play uh, you know anybody could access uh, any kind of content and content is because we're covering all the four spectrums of gaming wow. uh, as i also um, as i just said you know esports real money gaming, casual games, and fantasies. All right, so talking about your strategic vision, with plans to acquire 13 gaming firms, your company Oneverse Gaming is clearly aiming for dominance in Metaverse. However, could you elaborate on uh, the long-term strategic vision behind this move and how does it fit into Oneverse's broader goals and aspirations within the evolving landscape of digital interaction? The, uh, to a large extent, when you... You know, when we look at potentials as an individual company, when we combine companies, uh, the sum of results are much more better uh, or more, ex you know, it's more uh, uh, beneficial to companies when we join hands together. So as I always said in uh, a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of times in the past, uh, united we stand. So when we are going to get all these companies together, a lot of technology could be, you know, best practices could be followed. Uh, efficiencies in, uh, you know, giving customer experience could be followed. Uh, customer care could be more enhanced. User experience could be better. So when we when we when we try to merge all these companies together and get them on one platform, help them to you know develop more. So there are two benefits in the long run. One is everyone makes uh, the customers more benefited is because he has a wide range of uh, games to play. One. The second thing is it becomes operationally, it becomes quite, uh, uh, you know, the bottom lines increases is because operationally we are well uh, uh, equipped because we are one platform right now. Right. All right. So you spoke about the benefits of merging all the platforms together, but integrating multiple gaming firms into a cohesive platform can present significant challenges. So how does Oneverse plan to navigate these integration challenges while ensuring a seamless user experience across the acquired properties which you are aiming for? Agreed. Yes, integration is going to be a challenge uh, because every company or every platform has a different technology, different mindset, different approach to business. So. What we are doing is in the next 18 month, months, we are going to plan a complete robust uh, technology roadmap where we can see the best practices of companies, uh, get the technology teams together, uh, get in robust uh, technology softwares, database integrations. So all that is you know, in the pipeline. But I, as I said, it's going to take us at least 18 months you know, to exactly look at those synergies in terms of technologies and integration. All right. So uh, if we talk about market differentiation, Metaverse is becoming increasingly competitive and prominent players such as Meta, Apple, Disney have already joined the Metaverse bandwagon. So how does Oneverse plans to differentiate itself from other platforms, especially considering the diverse range of offerings, uh, particularly in immersive gaming experiences? Uh, see, to answer a long question short, I would just go by the simple term called big, bigger, and biggest. 
So probably because we are uniform, at least in the Indian ecos ecosystem, because we are uniform, uh, getting all these platforms to be on one, uh, uh, all these gaming platforms to be on one particular thing, what we would say is the price pools, okay, okay. is going to be big, bigger and bigger. So that is going to be one differentiating factor for us in the long run is because we're going to give out a lot of prizes which will really enhance the customer's, uh, you know, thrill to play more, to, to get more engaging and stuff like that. And second most important thing that what we are going to drive as a company is to ensure that things are very simple to them. Okay. Usually the, in, in gaming platforms, there's too, much, there's too much of complexity. You play this, you get that, you do this, you do that. There is too many layers, there are too many tires, there are too many levels. But I'm going to ensure that there is simplicity. So two major differentiating factors would be, as I always say, big, bigger, biggest, and you know, simplicity. So we're going to give a lot of prizes out there to customers and make it extremely simple for him to have a wonderful gaming experience. So price is going to be a major factor here and it is going to play a big role. Uh, well, building a vibrant and engaged community is often crucial for the success of digital platforms. So amidst the rapid expansion and diversification, what factors apart from the community engagement will drive the growth or adoption of Metaverse? See, there are two things that, again, uh, there are many points that we could talk about it in okay. terms of communities and stuff like that. But I will just highlight two major points. Uh, one is simplicity, as I've always said. Uh, keeping things very simple. Keeping things very short and sweet. So whether it is player making a particular deposit or player trying to cash out, player trying to uh, use a particular interface or anything of that kind, I'm just going to make it in one term, simple. Okay? The second factor, though there are many other factors, but I'm just highlighting the two factors for you. The second factor is responsible gaming. Okay, so we're going to build systems where responsible gaming has been uh, the utmost priority. Age verifications, following the guidelines of every law of the land, uh, ensuring that there is, uh, you know, you have robust data securities, uh, to cite some examples, uh, in, in, to ensure that there is no malpractices. So when you look at community, when you look at that concept, so I would just say two things. Simplicity and responsible game. When I say responsible building, again, I reiterate, I tell you it is following the law of the land, uh, ensuring there is data uh, security you know, to a large extent, age verification, creating support systems, you know, for, you know, to ensure that there is uh, people having with gaming problems. We don't want people to have a lot of gaming problems either. So we're going to build support systems even for that. All right, so a major player should mainly focus on responsible gaming. Apart from that, as you spoke about privacy challenges, there are various roadblocks on the path to metaverse integration in various sectors, such as privacy, of course, and interoperability issues. So how and when will these be resolved, and is there a need for regulations? Uh, see, to a large extent, technology would play a major factor in terms of security, as you said. And, uh, and we have a robust, uh, you know, uh, IT laws in the country, which we will other to to a large extent and to the fullest, no, not to a large extent, but I think, but to the fullest, we will apply, you know, follow the, all the rules and regulations as per the IT rules and regulations as per the land of the law. Uh, but security in terms of data, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, other, other activities, other components will be other to a, to a large extent. All right. Thank you so much for being on 3 Dotto TV, Mr. Michael, and sharing your views and knowledge with our viewers. It was really great having you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So this was Mr. E. Paul Michael, the CEO of OneVerse Gaming. He shared insights on the Metaverse gaming industry. Keep watching 3 Dotto TV. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. And for updates related to Web3, please log on to our website www.3versetv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off.
three auto TVs stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with three auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. Three auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and a very warm welcome to all the viewers of 3 Dotto TV. This is Shikha Singh. Artificial intelligence is driving emerging technologies like big data, robotics and IoT with generative AI expanding its possibilities. A 2024 IBM survey revealed that 42% of enterprise scale businesses have integrated AI into their operations and 40% are uh, considering AI for their organizations. These rapid changes in AI can have significant implications for various industries and society. AI has become a teacher, guide, friend and even more to people worldwide. Holding answers to almost every question and the ability to think, it has astonishingly even passed multiple exams curated to identify the human mindset and thought process. And today we have a very special guest with us, Mr. Snehal Dhru, to shed some light on how the AI sector is performing. Welcome to 3 Dotto TV, sir. Sure. So, uh, the excitement around artificial intelligence is driving the market ahead with NVIDIA at the forefront. Uh, we have seen a remarkable jump in AI-based tokens such as Fetch.ai, Injective and Render. Uh, what are the factors driving the rally in the tokens? Sure. So, I would say it all started last year, right? As soon as ChatGPT was launched, uh, it brought in a wave of understanding the potential of AI. And now everyone is moving towards AGI, which is more like an artificial general intelligence. So as that progression happens, this entire movement, the rate at which the innovation is happening as well. Recently, Sora was launched, uh, the, the model which will be generally available for public at a later point in time. Uh, but all these innovations and the rate at which that is happening, the rate at which the industries are, are adapting these technologies, the uh, infrastructure required to kind of make this happen also has the requirement. And that's why we've seen a big rally in uh, like NVIDIA's value into the ecosystem. But at the same time, anybody in this space and any value that anybody brings in, including like the AI coins and the way uh, things operate, also brings in that value. And that's why we're seeing like a big shift uh, into the space as well, is because this space, I would say, is like, like super hot. Anything that you touch today and any value, true value, that you can create uh, into the space is only uh, like a gold rush today that everybody needs to tap into. All right, so uh, we've also seen how Kerala's KTCT school has uh, recently launched IRIS, India's first AI teacher. Uh, do you think this will become a norm in the near future? And what impact do you think this uh, will have on India's education sector? Wonderful question. Uh, I think AI in education or AI in any sector today, I think every industry is exploring and education is definitely like a promising. Uh, I would say like top three advantages of AI in education. One is personalized education, what it can bring to the table. So today everyone has a different level of adapting knowledge and different pace as well. Uh, today with just a single human or few teachers in a classroom setup, uh, limits the way the knowledge is adopted, but the way AI can play a role is personalizing that entire process. The second is accessibility. So let's say me being a Gujarati, I am, maybe I'm better to learn in that language rather than the traditional English, Hindi or whatever the local dialect is. So adapting AI and adding these you know, newer formats of engagement in a more assistive manner uh, you know, provides tremendous value because in the end, education is something that you want to get through and not just, just a check mark. Today we've realized learning is all about, you know, having skills rather than saying I have this certificate and, you know, this is what I've read. But can you actually practice it? Can you practice that skill? That becomes very important. Third is the level of insights. Because it's personalized, because it's accessible, the amount of data that you can gather, gather now uh, from every interaction that a student is doing with that AI teacher provides you that insight uh, to make sure real-time changes can be brought into or more emphasis on certain parts of the uh, education curriculum uh, to make sure the information is 
uh, pass through and the skill set is truly transformed. Uh, of course, it comes with its own challenges uh, that to me, AI is never about uh, replacing something. It's about enabling something, enhancing something. So I would say just having an AI teacher is not a replacement of human beings. Human beings have to be part of it. That emotional, uh, that direct connection is very important uh, while AI helps you with everything else. But it's more an assistive function to a teacher's role and the amount of education that can be imparted at scale truly becomes accessible and available. All right, so the health sector is also the torchbearer of the AI's use cases. Be it uh, developing medicines or carrying out the critical operations, you know, or detecting various kinds of diseases. Healthcare is uh, going to witness a sea change in the way we approach medicine. What are your thoughts on the same? So again, a wonderful question and a pretty inter interesting industry because I think over the years we're realizing that the aging process, though, is, is part of it. There are several diseases to what it they used to be. But the aging process overall, like the average age of a human being, is definitely increasing, even though st stats what they say otherwise. Uh, the way AI brings value to this entire thing is a naked eye, you know, has essentially, or a human being essentially, has uh, different permutations and combinations, mood sentiments to the knowledge, uh, to the referential information available to kind of detect something. But what AI can do at multitude and the level and scale uh, truly increases. So again, it's empowerment as an additional tool, as an additional eye uh, that AI brings in into the healthcare space. The, and we, we've seen over the past few years as well, the iteration of uh, you know, testing or validating information or the permutations and combinations, what AI enables us to do. Uh, apart from the traditional mechanisms what we used to do earlier, has phenomenally gotten faster and faster. What that essentially brings is um, when diseases coming, disease come in, uh, the level of which the, uh, the testing needs to be done to make sure uh, you know, a solution for that is brought into the market as soon as possible. That's what AI also empowers, uh, is uh, bringing these things sooner than what we imagined and making the iteration process faster and faster uh, and, you know, uh, scaling it at just on the level. So healthcare is definitely uh, out there to be disrupted by AI. And I think every, everybody in, in this space is thinking about it and adapting it. And it's just going to uh, get at a different scale and new heights. So uh, fraud detection has become an important aspect when it comes to the evolving digital world. Uh, how do you see AI playing a role in controlling or containment of such activities prevalent in the decentralized world? Can you highlight uh, some real life examples? So um, I would say misuse and misinformation leads to eventually the fraud detect fraud frauds that are, that are happening today. Uh, it is very vital to understand that uh, while there is empowerment of uh, these technologies, there is misuse and uh, abuse of the technology as well. So it is very vital to make sure while it can be used for good, uh, we also use it for uh, detecting the misuse of it. And in this case, like frauds that can happen. Uh, we've seen examples where a police officer's image was used to create a video and then eventually used to scam people or scare people. We've also heard about situations where uh, voice artists are being called for auditions. Uh, they are paid peanuts and then they see a book released into a similar voice of theirs. So generative AI essentially has brought in lots of opportunities in the content space, but it also brought in lots of challenges. How do you uh, make it very effective that while it can be used for good, it can also be used for bad and uh, providing the right detection tools and uh, you know, working towards these challenges, what you know, we want to also, to, uh, also look forward to bringing those solutions out in the front. Uh, because whether in any format, whether it's in a visual format, whether it's in the audio scams that we've heard about, that people receive calls calls from their loved ones uh, asking for money and then people end up sending the money as well, making sure that, that fraud detection can occur at that level, that as you receive calls, as you receive this information, things can be validated before somebody actions, rather than, you know, we're only hearing it in the news afterwards. Very well said, sir. Uh, so moving on. Uh, in the digital age where entertainment is but a click away, uh, a silent yet powerful transformation is underway. Uh, how do you think AI is reshaping the entertainment industry? So, impact of AI and entertainment. 
I think it has multitude level, not only at the content creation, but in the marketing and advertising as well. So I would take one instance over the other. So let's say on content creation, it is making things faster where uh, instead of having a full, um, a full big blown studios or you know setups sets being made, uh, now using AI you can simulate a story, you can create a, a visual a storyboard before actually investing too much money on creating a set. So it's simplifying, you know, creation of production of content at that level that you can actually visualize, you can bring things to life. It gives you multitude again of options uh, and combinations which you uh, in the uh, uh, previous avatar would only had to bring multitude of uh, designers, artists to kind of visualize that information. So it simplifies and fastens the entire process of uh, going from a text uh, content to like a visual content and then letting down, uh, le uh, going forward into production. The other applications are of course how do you make fan engagement or entertainment uh, accessible to like a lo lot of uh, population. We've seen a beautiful example for Amazon Prime. The way uh, on one of the content pieces uh, recently released India Police Force, um, they essentially use AI in this case to have characters as you are accessing or ex viewing that content, you actually, depending upon which part of India or which part, region of the world you are accessing from, some of the talent actually gets replaced with that character so you can relate more. So bringing in more relatability into the content makes you feel that no, it's like the content next door. Uh, you know, it, it can happen in your backyard as well. So giving that accessibility, giving that speed of iteration, making um, the very, like a third great example on content is uh, making it multilingual. So eventually the speech is going to get better the way robotic voices are today, but they are only getting better and better. So imagine that a talent, uh, let's say even like you know, Amitabh Bachchan today, he won't be able to directly have a conversation in Tamil, but using AI, we can actually hear him speak Tamil. Uh, we've already seen at a national level that people are experimenting and testing voice iterations, but that's how you know it brings in value in this entire entertainment segment that again, bringing in accessibility, the speed at which the content can be created and the type of content that be, can be created as well, providing that A and B testing formats. Right, artificial intelligence is transforming the world and uh, it is no secret that it is the future of growth. Thank you for your insightful information, Mr. Dhruv. It was a great opportunity having you on 3.0 TV. This is me, Shakha Singh, signing off. Until then, keep watching 3.0 TV. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3Dotto TV. I'm your host Shubham Joshi. Web3 gaming sector is buzzing with a lot of activities these days. As the technology is continuously evolving, the sector appears more promising than ever. It is important to do a quick check on the latest developments and the future prospects. To give us his view and insight into the gaming sector and help us navigate through this most exciting Web3 vertical, I have been joined by Mr. Arad Malhotra, founder and CEO of Report to Earn and co-founder of Skyless Games. He was also included in Forbes 30 Under 30 Games 2016. On that note, let's invite a special guest. Welcome to Theta Auto TV, sir. So my first question to you is, as crypto gaming has turned out to be one of the biggest narrative in this year's bull run, and we have witnessed how Bitcoin's price rise 
prompted the rise in the major gaming tokens like Ronin, Pixel, Axie Infinity. What in your opinion has led to this boom in Web3 gaming and GameFi sector, sir? Uh, it's a very exciting time, especially with the bull run coming back right now. Um, there's a lot of interesting things happening which are combining traditional gaming and the Web3 world. Uh, what's interesting is even at the market crash that happened over the last couple of years, uh, blockchain gaming was one of the few use cases that actually was not affected as badly as some of the other markets. So overall, it's a very, very exciting time. There's some very exciting uh, applications of gaming and gamification that have been integrated into Web3. And uh, from a market perspective, this is probably one of the most exciting times as uh, you know, crypto becomes mainstream. And gaming, of course, has been growing year after year uh, massively, especially after COVID. The amount of growth that we've seen uh, of overall gamers in the world is fantastic. Uh, I do want to take a second just to note that you know the idea of what a gamer is uh, has evolved over the years. There are close to 3 billion, or actually over 3 billion gamers in the world, which includes more gamers over the age of 51 than under the age of 18, and an average age of a gamer is 35. So, you know, sometimes we stereotype and think that gamers are only for those hardcore gamers or kids. That has changed. Continuing on that note, crypto projects, particularly blockchain-based games, have been highlighted in the media for negative reasons like scams, frauds, and cyber attacks. Even so, the industry has re-emphasized security measures to protect users and prevent potential scams. In contrast, we have also seen how Web3 Gaming has a lot of beneficial use cases. So can you please highlight some of these examples? Absolutely. I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, because, you know, with the bull run, of course, come uh, a lot of negatives too, right? We saw in the last bull run that there was a lot of uh, pump and dumps and uh, fake projects essentially, but it's very important to emphasize on very positive use cases of Web3 and gaming in general. Uh, so there is an entire organization called Games for Change as an example that has for many, many years been focused on not using games just as an entertainment medium, but teaching people things, not just math and science, uh, but teaching them how to be better human beings or cultural exchange and stuff like that from a gaming perspective. For Web3 now, there's been a lot of great use cases, especially in the sustainability space, uh, looking at you know tokenizing things such as carbon credits. Um, there are also other use cases in terms of government. In fact, uh, we ourselves as Report to Earn are working on a use case uh, to make the world a better place by um, having people being rewarded for daily uh, reporting daily things. Uh, so there's a lot of very interesting use cases and a lot of positive impact that can be created just by leveraging the technology versus just being games being an entertainment product essentially or Web3 just being, uh, being about crypto. So I think I really want to emphasize that um, again, there's about you know, over maybe 70% of uh, coins out there actually might not survive, might not see the light of day. But some of these really strong use cases uh, beyond just the trading aspects are going to be the ones that survive and thrive. Not very different than the dot-com bubble back in the early 2000s. All right, sir, you spoke very well about the use cases of Web3 Gaming. And there's a lot of optimism in the sector with new gaming projects being launched in 2024. And we have also witnessed projects designing efficient tokenomics for their games with some 250 million worth of tokens being unlocked in the March itself. So what are your thoughts about this? Uh, yes, so I mean, there's a lot of interesting projects that are happening. Uh, you know, Illuvium is obviously one which is very, very popular and uh, is doing pretty well, essentially. Um, interestingly, there hasn't been a big breakout success other than the first you know, major project, which is Axie Infinity. Um, and I think the reason for that is that right now, again, the use cases for gaming have not been refined very well. Uh, the, re the core reason for that is that people are too, you know, too focused on um, just the crypto side of things versus the fundamental solid game mechanics. So these four or five titles that we talk about, like I mentioned, Illuvium, Axie Infinity, um, you, know, uh, uh, you have Sandbox. These are, are successful because they have very strong game mechanics and they're fun to play. And then they integrate crypto into it. Uh, what I think a lot of developers are doing wrong today is that they're just trying to follow the markets and again, trying to hype up the coins and the tokenomics of the coin versus fundamentally creating fun games and then uh, trying to integrate essentially what the tokenomics should be in order to make it financially successful. Uh, but again, since you specifically asked about tokenomics, um, 
I think Axie is a very good example again because they actually failed with the initial tokenomics where the cost per coin became so high, which again to the average user meant that the point of entry into the game became extremely high. Uh, and then they modified that to have what we call as a dual token system, where they had a more balanced economy. Uh, we can definitely talk more details, but the idea is that you do not want these games to be prohibitive. You actually want them to be welcoming so that there is higher sustainability in terms of user growth as well as user retention. All right, sir. A lot of investors and gamers believe that adding AI to Web3 games will spark an explosion of innovation. What are your thoughts about this and what is the relation between AI and gaming? If you can please highlight, sir. So AI and gaming go hand in hand for many, many years. Uh, I know it's become very popular now after the chat GPT age. And uh, again, for some of the younger generation, they think you know AI is brand new. But um, AI and gaming, again, go hand in hand way back into you know even before the 60s or the 70s. Um, and some of the strongest use cases of uh, AI were gaming. So for example, uh, Pac-Man, you know, a traditional game that even non-gamers would have played, uh, you know, the way that the ghosts follow you around is based on AI. Uh, so coming to present day, essentially, uh, AI and the way that it is progressing has multiple different uh, applications and multiple different ways to improve the gaming industry. Of course, the most obvious is having more sophisticated characters within the game, essentially. So your NPCs or non-playing characters and the way that they interact with you is going to be a lot more natural. Uh, AI tools are also going to be used for the game development process itself. You know, game de development uh, is very, very expensive or has been very, very expensive and tedious essentially ne uh, needing uh, multi-talented teams and very, very high budgets. But thanks to a lot of AI tools from the graphics side to the music production that goes into games to, of course, the development itself, the amount of progress is extremely significant. Uh, and on the flip side, gaming itself has contributed to the success or the breakout of AI. Uh, because uh, as we know, uh, the way AI has advanced is primarily because of GPUs, which are your graphical processing units. And these GPUs have been advanced in order to support use cases of gaming. So it's literally, uh, it's a marriage. Uh, AI can't really survive without gaming or cannot thrive without gaming. And on the flip side, uh, gaming has a lot to take from AI, both in terms of the development, the application, uh, as well as, you know, again, future ways of combining the two to create something very powerful. Well, thank you, Mr. Arut Malhotra, for explaining us the dynamics of the Web3 gaming sector. Well, that's all in today's special segment. This is me, Shobham Joshi, signing off. For more such interesting updates and market analysis, keep watching 3 TV or log on to our website or scan the QR code. Thank you. TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Dotto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Dotto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. Blockchain technology is gaining popularity at a brisk pace. It has mesmerized the world of technology through some path setting innovation. In a view of growing influence of newest technology features such as immutability and decentralization, many businesses and domains have started adopting blockchain technology in their enterprise suit. As per Statista estimates, by 2024, the spending on blockchain will reach almost $19 billion. That's a mind-boggling number. I'm sure several questions must be popping to your mind. The very basic questions would be, how does this technology help different industries? How can blockchain change the world around us? And what does its future look like? And many more. So to understand the current trends on blockchain technology, I'm joined by Mr. Yashodhan Ramdeke, founder of Blockbuzz Innovate. Welcome to 3.0 TV, sir. 
Hi, Roshni. So talking about the tokenization of assets, it is becoming increasingly popular in blockchain space. Uh, what are the examples of assets that can be tokenized and could you shed some light on how tokenization unlock liquidity, accessibility and fractional ownership opportunities for investors? I think this is a very good question and uh, tokenization of real world assets because we have been seeing blockchain is in vogue for a very long time. One of the first use cases of blockchain where it came, we had NFTs where we had NFTs of CryptoPunk and a lot of things which were not very tangible. So we had uh, those NFTs, uh, so it was more of a hype kind of a thing. But recently since past one or two years, we are seeing uh, the blockchain world is moving from hype towards value. And we are tokenizing rather than intangible assets, we are directly tokenizing tangible assets, which directly has inbuilt value in them. The earlier NFTs did not have any inbuilt value in them. But with the tokenization of real world assets, here lies the actual uh, value and the beauty of blockchain. So I'll just give you one, two examples where we ourselves are work working in uh, this space. And I have a direct or uh, first hand uh, experience in this. So one thing which is very interesting is we are tokenizing the carbon offsets. Uh, so carbon credits is a very uh, unique market. And we had uh, a lot of carbon credits which were being traded. One of the things which is happening currently is those carbon credits are being tokenized. Uh, around, apart from carbon credits, the other things which we see being tokenized are your real estates. So now real estate again is a very interesting market. And because usually people were not able to buy uh, properties uh, which are very high value and currently Recently, the Indian government, also the regulators have also allowed uh, tokenization of real, uh, real estate assets. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, fractionalize the real estate and tokenize it. And then you can buy the, buy the fractions of the uh, tokenized real estate assets, which gives you access, which increases the liquidity in the market as well. One very interesting use case, which we are working with two or three state governments is tokenization of TDRs. That is a transferable development rights. Now, again, if you tokenize the TDRs, transferable token, uh, transferable development rights, you can again bring liquidity to a completely illiquid market. The TDRs were a very illiquid markets. So they are trying to tokenize TDRs where uh, you can completely build a layer of fintech on, uh, once the TDRs are tokenized. You can have debt raised on that. You can have a trading of uh, TDRs, which are very uh, much possible. So I see a lot of interesting things where real world uh, assets are being tokenized. I've heard about gold being tokenized in some of the geographies. So very interesting things happening in this space. So following our discussion on tokenization, let's pivot to another crucial application of blockchain technology that is supply chain transparency. And it's evident that blockchain has vast potential in this area. So how do you see its impact on improving transparency and traceability? And what benefits does it offer to businesses and consumers? Again, a very nice question of how blockchain, basically the concept of blockchain was to eliminate trust and build a public ledger where different parties can interact and transact with each other without the need for a third party trust. We had banks, we had another uh, agencies which were required in a traditional system where blockchain was not used to build that trust between two parties. Now blockchain gives you the solution and typically supply chains are where a lot of parties interchange their uh, material, their value, their data to create a complete product and this product uh, goes through different supply lines and reaches the consumer. Now with blockchain, once we identify each partner who is coming in the supply chain, make every supply partner a node and they, there is a digital identity for each supply partner. You can see whatever is going inside the uh, supply chain in a very transparent, traceable and immutable manner. Hmm. And the end customer is also very happy what he is getting. I will just give you two examples where we have seen blockchain and supply chain being used very beautifully. There is a farmer uh, organization in Nasik called as Sayadri Farms. So they are one of the largest exporters of grapes from India. And the consumers usually do not know where the source of grapes is coming from, what is the harvest, 
how much money actually goes to the uh, uh, farmer who is actually doing this thing are there any third party is get, getting the benefit of this so sayadri farms has put the complete uh, supply there's complete supply chain right from the harvesting of the grape where it is been harvested which farmer is there where the packaging happens where the export happens till the last consumer and they have put a qr code printed qr code and they are on their packaging once you uh, scan the qr code the whole supply chain of the grape fruit comes to them with a complete year of where it was packaged where which farmer actually grew it also the beauty is that you don't even know you you need know where the farmer with uh, it was produced where the, it was harvested you also get to know how much of the money which you are paying to the to get the grapes is going to the farmer as well so supply chain uh, blockchain and supply chain makes this transparency very useful for the elements in the block in the supply chain as well as to the consumers one more example i will give you where again we have seen very amazing uh, use of blockchain in uh, the supply chain side is where uh, hyundai and kia the the car manufacturers have put their co2 emissions on uh, the car on the blockchain so hyundai and kia are putting their own emissions in the blockchain and along with that they have implemented scms where their supply side the whole supply upstream and downstream supply of their value chain supply chain their emissions are also being monitored measured and being put on the uh, on the blockchain so that the last consumer or anybody who wants to check the scope one scope two scope three emissions they can come and directly check it on uh, the blockchain so these are two three very exciting examples of how blockchain is being used in the supply chain for the benefit of the whole uh, supply chain players as well as the consumers Continuing our exploration of blockchain's diverse applications, let's discuss the concept of tokenizing carbon credits. This ties into the previous discussion on transparency and accountability. How do you envision blockchain's role in revolutionizing carbon markets? Thank you, uh, Roshni. This is a question which is very close to my heart, uh, sustainability. And I think this is a question which should be close to everybody's heart. We have been seeing a lot of climate change uh, things happening uh currently uh we i stay in mumbai i think you are also there in mumbai so we have seen yeah. the aqi getting affected very badly the weather patterns have changed very drastically all this kyoto protocols all this carbon credits they were just very fancy terms some 2 3 years back but currently every uh, body in the world and uh, is getting affected by it and there is a real need to tackle this problem one of the basic uh, problems with the carbon market the traditional carbon market was there was no traceability of the whole carbons there was no uh, oh, there was a lot of vague and uh, that was very vague and very opaque what blockchain brings is the trust and traceability in this uh, market and what was happening a lot of companies were saying that we are bring we are to buying the carbon credits from the carbon projects but there was a no traceability and transparency of what is happening behind the scene so we have seen a lot of green washing happening in the traditional carbon markets a lot of double counting happening in the traditional markets double counting is uh, say suppose a same project is generating say uh, x number of carbon credits and the final buyer has to only buy this x numbers but what we have seen is this x numbers of credit are getting generated with the two buyers buying the same carbon credit because the traditional market does, did not have any transparency uh, in the process so this double counting was happening there was a lot of green washing happening suppose somebody has to offset 10000 credits and they are only generating 1000 credits uh, and just showing that we have done the uh, other activity so this a uh, gap was is was something which is called as green washing so this was very prevalent before the blockchain era and uh, this is not something which is going because all this companies the countries and companies have pledged their net zero uh, some companies are going to be net zero by 2030 sub by 2040 india has also pledged their to uh, their net zero goal somewhere in 2070s but to achieve this net zero goal uh, you have to offset your carbon and it has to be in a very traceable and transparent manner this is where the blockchain world has come in which has completely brought traceability and uh, 
transparency to the market. So this is how I see in helping the carbon industry in terms of traceability and uh, uh, transparency. The other problem now this is a solution, but what we are seeing is you can again tokenize carbon credits and the traditional market was working in a very OTC kind of a manner, a uh, uh, one-time settlement kind of a manner. Uh, now with tokenizing carbons, you can bring it on a marketplace and tokenized carbons can be traded. So again, this is bringing liquidity to the much needed market. We are seeing we have created carbons uh, on a UNCDM methodology and we have put it on a head on Hedera's blockchain. And surprisingly, these are coming from Indian market and they are being bought by people in US or retail people uh, like retail individuals who want to just uh, offset their individual carbon footprints. So this is a very amazing example of how carbon credits on blockchain are being used and the liquidity is being bought in the market. Okay, so one more last question is from the realm of law enforcement. The recent collaboration between Dubai Police and Cardano highlights the evolving landscape of blockchain integration. How do you foresee this technology shaping the future of criminal investigation worldwide? I think this is a very novel and innovative uh, thing which the Dubai government has done with the Dubai Police uh, putting law enforcement things on blockchain. Right. Uh, I have seen uh, this being used in India as well. As you know, the, uh, India it was very uh, not very transparent of how the police cases are being registered, uh, what happens when, when the police case is registered and the transparency was completely lacking. I have recently seen UP police using blockchain uh, technology, Polygon. Uh, so they have put the whole port, uh, port uh, they have come with a portal where the whole portal is blockchain enabled. So that anybody who wants to come and register his complaint can come to the portal and register his complaint. Hmm. And once it is uh, there, it becomes completely trackable. And you know the beauty of uh, blockchain, it is immutable. So somebody tries to put pressure and change the report or change any finding, it cannot happen because it is in a completely public ledger, completely immutable. So that kind of trust and uh, transparency is maintained. So I find it very, very uh, unique and very novel uh, for the law enforcement agencies to have blockchain kind of a thing. And I'm very happy that Dubai has done it uh, in India. UP police is doing it on Polygon. And I see that a lot of places uh, in other uh, countries also where this will be used. I recently heard that Goa police was also uh, planning uh, this. Uh, Mumbai police is also planning this. So this is a very uh, interesting uh, thing. Again, I think they they were using uh, Metaverse. Dubai police is also using Metaverse uh, centers where people can come and register their complaints in a blockchain and a Metaverse Web3 kind of an environment. Because a lot of time you will not may not feel very comfortable going to a police station. So this Metaverse kind of environment gives you that kind of comfort that you can go there, interact to the first level of interaction. So all these technologies will definitely help the citizens a lot and governments taking this initiative of making it accessible transfer uh, transparent to the citizens is very welcome all right thank you so much so for being on 3 daughter tv and sharing your insights with us today thank you thank you roshni so this was mr yashodan ramteke founder of blogbus innovate so that's all for today. This is me, Roshni Shingre, signing off. For more such interesting updates, watch 3 Daughter TV or log on to our website www.3verstv.io or scan the QR code. Thank you.
Hello and welcome to 3 Dot TV. This is Shikha Singh. India has time and again proved its capabilities and prowess in information technology. The country is set to lead the world in the next generation technological advancement, the artificial intelligence. The confidence in uh, India's fine tech brain is bestowed by none other than Jensen Huang, chief executive in Nvidia AI super chip maker and the world's third largest company by market capitalization. Huang was speaking with media persons on the sidelines of Nvidia chief technology. Technology conference on Tuesday in San Jose, California. India's technology professionals are emerging to be the front office of the world's artificial intelligence revolution by reskilling themselves with AI native skills, Huang said. India has the largest population of IT professionals. There is no question they will be reskilled for AI. When I meet with the leaders in India, it is very clear to them that this is one of the greatest opportunities for them to reskill themselves. Instead of the back of room companies, they will now become the front room of the companies where value is created. AI is used for engineering, marketing, sales, finance, business operations, marketing strategies, all of that is in front office. India is looking to come into the front office, he added. A day after announcing a new generation of AI chips that are 30 times more powerful than the preceding version, Huang also said that NVIDIA is keen to participate in the Indian government's plan to procure 10,000 graphics processing units for domestic startups and researchers. The Union Cabinet recently approved the India AI mission with an outlay of 10,372 crore for five years to encourage AI development in the country. Under the mission, supercomputing capacity comprising over 10,000 GPUs will be made available to various stakeholders for creating an AI ecosystem. The centre is also planning to establish a public-private partnership for AI computing, granting access to 10,000 GPUs for domestic research, academia, enterprises and startups. Huang said the generator AI is creating a new industrial revolution. In the last industrial revolution, raw material was water and electricity. This time it is data. Generative AI is a new type of factory, a new industrial revolution. I think AI has already made the greatest contribution to the world as you don't need to learn C++ anymore to be successful. You can be prompt engineer when my wife is talking to me, she is prompting, he added in jest. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3 TV or log on to our website www.3verstv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Node Monkeys market cap में निकली BAYC से आगे. Dog with Hat NFT बनी सबसे महंगी meme NFT. 16.4 million dollars में बिका दूसरा सबसे महंगा crypto punk. Hello and a very warm welcome to all of you. Dog with Hat NFT की record breaking sale से लेकर second most expensive crypto punk तक कई मजदार NFT updates मैं रुचि शर्मा आपके लिए कराई हूँ. तो हो जाइए NFT वर्स के इस खास एपिसोड के लिए तैयार इसमें आपके फेवरेट NFT प्रोजेक्ट्स की डिटेल्स तो होंगी ही साथ ही हम एक स्पेशल गेस्ट से भी करेंगे मुलाकात लेकिन सबसे पहले जानते हैं पिछले हफ्ते कैसा रहा NFT मार्केट का हाल पिछले हफ्ते क्रिप्टो मार्केट में आई गिरावट का असर NFT मार्केट पर भी देखा गया पिछले 7 दिनों में NFT मार्केट में करीब 18% की गिरावट देखी गई पिछले हफ्ते टोटल NFT सेल्स रही 290.5 मिलियन डॉलर्स पिछले कुछ हफ्तों की तरह इस हफ्ते भी नंबर 1 की पोजीशन पर थी इथेरियम जिसने करीब 17% की गिरावट के साथ 107.2 मिलियन डॉलर्स NFT सेल्स दर्ज की तो वहीं एनएफटी ट्रांजैक्शंस में करीब 25% की गिरावट के बावजूद बिटकॉइन एनएफटीज दूसरा पायदान हासिल करने में कामयाब रही तीसरे पायदान पर रही सोलाना जिसने करीब 8% गिरावट दर्ज की चौथे पायदान पर मौजूद बीएनबी चेन की सेल्स में 17% की गिरावट देखी गई तो वहीं पांचवे पायदान पर मौजूद माइथोस एनएफटी सेल्स में 4% की गिरावट देखी गई कुल मिलाकर इन पांच ब्लॉकचेन्स ने पिछले हफ्ते दर्ज की गई 290.5 मिलियन डॉलर्स की टोटल वीकली सेल्स का 92% हिस्सा यानी 268.9 मिलियन डॉलर्स कंट्रीब्यूट किया एक एनएफटी प्रोजेक्ट है जो BAYC कोड कड़ी टक्कर दे रहा है इनफैक्ट कुछ ही समय में इस नए नवेले एनएफटी प्रोजेक्ट ने BAYC की मार्केट कैप को पीछे छोड़ दिया है पिछले हफ्ते भले ही बिटकॉइन की कीमत में कई उतार चढ़ाव आए हों, लेकिन इससे नोड मॉन्कीज की पॉपुलैरिटी और डिमांड में कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ा बल्कि नोड मॉन्कीज ने तो सेल्स के मामले में एक नया रिकॉर्ड बना दिया 
बिटकॉइन एन एफ टी नोट मॉन्कीस का बेस प्राइस फिफ्टी परसेंट तक बढ़कर जीरो पॉइंट एट टू बी टी सी हो गया और इसकी मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन फाइव हंड्रेड फिफ्टी फोर मिलियन डॉलर तक पहुंच गई इस जबरदस्त उछाल की बदौलत नोट मॉन्कीज ने बोर्ड एप यॉट क्लब की मार्केट कैप को पछाड़ते हुए सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट एन एफ टी प्रोजेक्ट का खिताब अपने नाम किया वैसे आपको बता दें कि मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन के हिसाब से नंबर वन पोजीशन पर है क्रिप्टो पंक्स 1.76 बिलियन डॉलर्स की मार्केट कैप के साथ तो वहीं तीसरे पायदान पर खड़े बोर्ड एप यॉट क्लब की मार्केट कैप है 490.9 बिलियन डॉलर्स इतना ही नहीं नोन मॉन्कीज ने अपनी सेल्स में भी एक बड़ा उछाल देखा क्रिप्टो पंक की किस्मत का सितारा इन दिनों बुलंदी पर है अभी दो हफ्ते पहले ही एक क्रिप्टो पंक सिक्सटीन मिलियन डॉलर में बिका था और अब एक और क्रिप्टो पंक ने इस आंकड़े को पछाड़ दिया है क्रिप्टो पंक हैश टैग जो 9 एलियन पंक्स में से एक है हाल ही में 4,850 ईटीएच यानी 16.4 मिलियन डॉलर्स में बिका ऐसे में सेकेंड मोस्ट एक्सपेंसिव क्रिप्टो पंक बन गया है अभी दो हफ्ते पहले ही एलियन पंक हैश टैग थ्री मिलियन डॉलर्स में बिका था और दूसरा सबसे महंगा बिकने वाला पंक बन गया था लेकिन क्रिप्टो पंक हैश टैग की 16.4 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स ने पंक हैश टैग की सेल्स को मात देते हुए सेकंड मोस्ट एक्सपेंसिव क्रिप्टो पंक का खिताब अपने नाम कर लिया पंक हैश टैग के बायर की फिलहाल कोई जानकारी नहीं है वैसे आपको बता दें कि अब तक का सबसे महंगा बिकने वाला क्रिप्टो पंक भी एक एलियन पंक था जिसे एक क्रिप्टो स्टार्टअप के सीईओ ने फरवरी 2022 में 8,000 ईटीएच या 23.7 मिलियन डॉलर्स में खरीदा था फॉर मोर डिटेल्स ऑन दिस लेट्स कट अक्रॉस टू आर गेस्ट मिस्टर जेसन फर्नांडिस को फाउंडर एड लिनु वेलकम टू थ्री डॉट टीवी जेसन Node Monkey surpassed BYC's market capitalization, the second most expensive crypto punk sold for 16.4 million dollars. Is it a sign of NFT market revival? What is the current NFT market situation? We see a bit of an uptick in the NFT market as increased interest, uh but I think that that recent uptick is uh attributable in that large part to uh the fact that Bitcoin is pumping. Uh there's there's a lot more interest in the industry at large, cryptocurrency in general. Uh and and that's increased capital, you know, uh flowing to to NFTs. Thank you so much for having this conversation with us and for giving us your valuable time. डॉ विफ हैट इन दिनों हर तरफ से पैसा बटोर रहा है ये मीम कॉइन तो जबरदस्त कमाई कर ही रहा है और अब इस मीम कॉइन के पीछे जो ओरिजिनल डॉग है आची उसकी तस्वीर की एनएफटी सबसे महंगी मीम एनएफटी बन गई है सोलाना पर मौजूद डॉ विफ हैट मीम कॉइन की कामयाबी इन दिनों देखते ही बनती है जो लगातार सफलता की सीढ़िया चढ़ रहा है इसी कामयाबी को देखते हुए डॉ विफ हैट मीम कॉइन के पीछे मौजूद रियल डॉग आची के ओनर्स ने उसकी ओरिजिनल पिक्चर की एन लॉन्च की पिंक बिनी हैट पहने हुए आची की ये फेमस ओरिजिनल पिक्चर एन एफ टी ऑक्शन प्लेटफॉर्म फाउंडेशन पर सिक्सटींथ मार्च को जीरो पॉइंट वन फाइव ई टी एच की इनिशियल बिड प्राइस पर ऑक्शन की गई दरअसल डॉग विफ हैट और सोलाना टोकन पर जिस शिबा इनो डॉग की तस्वीर इस्तेमाल की जा रही है उसका असल नाम है आची ये तस्वीर दो हजार अठारह में ली गई थी पिंक कलर की बीनी कैप पहने हुए आची की ये तस्वीर जबरदस्त वायरल हुई थी सालों बाद इसी वायरल पिक्चर पर बेस टोकन डॉग विफ हैट भी लॉन्च होते ही हिट हो गया ऐसे में आची के मालिक ने इस पॉपुलैरिटी और ट्रेंड को कैश करने के लिए इसकी एनएफटी लॉन्च कर दी जिसे इन्फ्लुएंशियल ट्रेडर जाइगेंटिक रिबर्थ ने चार मिलियन डॉलर्स की भारी भरकम रकम पर खरीद लिया और ये बन गई मोस्ट एक्सपेंसिव मीम एनएफटी। फेमस रैपर गोस्ट फेस किला लॉन्च करेंगे अपना पहला बिटकॉइन ऑरिजिनल एक ऐसी खुशखबरी के साथ जिसे सुनकर उनके तमाम फैंस और एन होल्डर्स की खुशी का ठिकाना नहीं रहेगा अमेरिकन रैपर डेनिस डेविड कोल्स जो गोस्ट फेस किलर के नाम से भी जाने जाते हैं बिटकॉइन ऑर्डनल्स पर जल्द लेकर आएंगे अपना एक्सक्लूसिव म्यूजिक सोशल मीडिया एक्स प्लेटफॉर्म पर डेनिस ने एक पोस्ट के जरिए कहा कि ये 10,000 थाउजेंड ऑर्डनल्स की कलेक्शन होगी जिसे फ्री में मिंट किया जा सकेगा और होल्डर्स को इस म्यूजिक के क्रिएटिव कॉमन जीरो राइट भी मिलेंगे है ना होल्डर्स के लिए कमाल का सौदा CCO का मतलब है कि इस म्यूजिक पर कोई कॉपीराइट इंटरेस्ट नहीं होगा और लोग इसे फ्रीली यूज कर सकेंगे इस पर कुछ भी बिल्ड कर सकेंगे इसे एनहेंस कर सकेंगे और इसे री यूज तक कर सकेंगे वेल दैट्स ऑल इन दिस एपिसोड ऑफ एन एफ टी वर्स वक्त आ गया है आपसे विदा लेने का लेकिन एन एफ टी की दुनिया से ऐसी ही और मजेदार खबरें मैं रुचि शर्मा आपके लिए हर हफ्ते लाती रहूंगी टिल देन डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू थ्री डॉट टीवी और इसी तरह की इंटरेस्टिंग अपडेट्स के लिए लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट थ्री वॉसी डॉट आई ओ पर या फिर क्यू आर कोड को स्कैन करें
Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. This is Shikha Singh. The United Arab Emirates Central Bank is getting ready to launch the first part of its Central Bank Digital Currency Plan. It examines CBDC for usage in both retail and wholesale markets. The CBUAE launched a new approach on March 23rd with a signing ceremony including R3 and G42 Cloud, a division of G42 AI holding company located in United Arab Emirates. The technology for the digital dirham will be provided by G42 Cloud, while R3 will handle the infrastructure. There will be three parts to the strategy's initial phase. It envisages Project Emirates Soft a limited launch, a proof of concept for a bilateral CBDC bridge with India, one of the UAE's main trade partners, will come in second. A domestic CBDC's proof of concept for both wholesale and retail use will come in third. The CBDC plan is a component of the wider financial infrastructure transformation program of the CBUA. One of the founding members of the Project Embridge, dubbed the first real-value cross-border CBDC pilot, is the CBUA. It also mentioned Project ABBA as an effective effort that came before the new approach carried out in collaboration with the Saudi Central Bank. In March 2023, the deals with R3 and G42 located in Abu Dhabi were revealed. It was anticipated at the time that the approach would take 12 to 15 months to implement. One of the main producers of CBDC technology is R3. It is the company that offers the permissioned blockchain CRODA. It has participated in many initiatives with the Bank of International Settlements in addition to others. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3.0TV or log on to our website www.3verstv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Hello and welcome to 3 TV. I'm your host Shubham Joshi. Solana's weekly stablecoin transfer volume reached $365 billion, surpassing Ethereum Network's $153 billion according to blockchain analytics company Artemis. While volumes on other leading chains such as Tron and BNB chain totaled $101 billion and $23 billion respectively. While the overall March stablecoin transfer volume reached $804 billion nearly surpassing the $960 billion Solana stablecoin transfer volume for the month of February. Additionally, the $804 billion transferred so far in March 2023 is 3,410% higher than the $11.56 billion in stablecoin transfers in the month of March 2023. Currently, Solana holds 42.3% of the total stablecoin market, an enormous increase for 1.9% a year ago. Well, since October 2023, there has been a steady 1,770% growth in the stablecoin activity on Solana. Well, since the beginning of the year, Ethereum has consistently led the industry in stablecoin transfer volumes and has lagged behind Solana. The Layer 1 blockchain had a market share of more than 31% in December 2023, but has since lost its dominance to Solana, currently accounting for about 27% of the stablecoin transfer volume. With $101 billion transferred over the past week and $367 billion in the month of March, Tron is the third largest blockchain for stablecoin transfers. Data from DeFi Lama shows that Solana has seen a surge in decentralized finance activities, driving its total value lock to $4.5 billion, the highest level since April 2022. This is also being shown by increasing volume of decentralized exchanges where Solana, o 2 Ethereum and other chains on March 19th well, that's all in today's special segment. This is me, Shobham Joshi, signing off. For most of interesting updates and market analysis, keep watching 3 TV or log on to our website or scan the QR code. Thank you. What's up gamers? Who can forget Mike Tyson knocking out Marvis Fraser, son of former heavyweight champion Joe Fraser in measly 30 seconds. Get out of here very, very quickly. Uppercut and Marvis is hurt. Fraser is down. Joe Cortez moves in to have a look. Still can't get over Muhammad Ali swatting Sonny Liston in the World Heavyweight rematch at Lewiston in Manet. 
which is arguably the most famous photo in sport. Well, if you're someone who loves boxing matches, there's a game made just for you. Stumble upon Rumble, it seems easy, but it's hard to master. Stumble upon Rumble is the first 100% skill-based play-to-earn game. It takes players back to the old days of gaming where skill was all that mattered. This is strengthened by the arcade pixel art theme it is set in. The game is a combat action game that allows players to perform two actions, move and attack. Players can move in eight directions, kick, punch or block to protect themselves. Game modes can present different types of opponents such as clan battles, AI characters with special abilities and player versus player or player versus AI game modes. Stumble Upon Rumble brings real money gaming to the blockchain through these game modes allowing up to 30 players in a session. The game is structured as a semi-sandbox allowing uh, for various game modes and mini games making it a diverse experience. Oh by the way, Stumble Upon Rumble eliminates entry barriers like payment gates or in-game stores accommodating any type of player. Crazy right? In-game betting in the game involves placing bets on oneself using glove tokens with stakes classified into high, low, medium and zero levels. The winner gets to keep the tokens but a percentage fee is burned to enhance the deflation of the game. Players can stake on any top player in a square up with a fixed reward of 0.5% of the lowest total stake. Idle players or passive token holders can view historical and current data to make informed decisions. Staking will be closely monitored to curb collision between players with stakes. Stumble Upon Rumble is also social, allowing players to gather in servers of 30 to 40 people to watch each other fight and socialize. Players can earn glove tokens or special NFTs from the game's tournaments and mini games. Stumble Upon Rumble in game NFTs are purely cosmetic adaptations, allowing players to create unique characters. Customized fighters, hats, and arenas can be customized according to player preferences. The game's in-game NFTs can be acquired through various methods including purchasing directly from the game's website using Ethereum, in-game sales using glove tokens and community rewards. Of the many things I find interesting about Stumble Upon Rumble, one of the most intriguing is the fact that the game is focused on creating a level playing field as opposed to games assigned with the ability to give players unfair advantage depending on their ability to acquire such. To build a gaming fan base, the game has its own version of Trollbox, where players can interact if they choose to stay away from the action. The game reignites a nostalgic feeling as a pixel-based game and even allows players to fully customize them through NFTs. Also look at the characters, they resemble famous boxers like Muhammad Ali, Marvin Hagler and Kelly Pavlik. I know your pins and needles to know where the game is available at. So the game is set to be listed on Epic Games Store as an early access version. Stay tuned. Well, we will keep updating for more such updates. Until then, keep watching 3 TV. Do like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, do log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io. Scan the QR code to know more. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3 Dodo TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Texas-based Bitcoin miner Giga Energy has expanded its operations into Argentina as part of a move to utilize wasted energy from natural gas flaring on the South American nation's oil fields. Co-founder of Giga Brent Whitehead wrote on LinkedIn on March 26 that the company's growth is a significant milestone. The process of burning natural gas used in oil production is known as gas flaring. Giga uses the methane it releases throughout the process to fuel its Bitcoin mining equipment by turning it into energy.
According to a March 26 CNBC story, Giga will expand by placing a large shipping container containing hundreds of Bitcoin miners atop an oil well, directing the extra gas into generators and then using that energy to power Bitcoin mining equipment. Well, according to Matt Lostro, another co-founder of the company, Giga's mining site in the Mendoza province of Argentina has been mining Bitcoin since December and has already produced between $200,000 and $250,000 worth of Bitcoin. The site is now in a test phase. But before the company can expand its operations to their full potential, it still has to import all the equipments. The company does not anticipate turning a profit until that time. According to University of Michigan scholarly report, Argentina has the second largest shale gas reservoir in the world. The firm's Bitcoin mining operation will also reduce methane emissions, Whitehead told CNBC. Exatec, an IT services company, will assist Giga with managing operations on site, while Phoenix Global Resources, an oil and gas company, will supply the gas required to run the Bitcoin miners. According to CNBC, Giga began mining Bitcoin in 2019 and currently has 150 megawatts of installed container capacity at its locations in Texas and Shanghai. Well, the move comes as Bitcoin mining firms prepare for the upcoming Bitcoin halving event currently slated to occur sometime around April 20. That's all in this update. Keep watching 3 TV for more such stories and do log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3 TV. I'm your host Shubham Joshi. The world of finance is buzzing with anticipation. Something old will soon change into a new. Yes, we are talking about real world assets. Some of you must be familiar with real world assets like property, stocks or even art. But there's a twist, a digital makeover. Real world assets is an aspect of the cryptocurrency markets which utilizes blockchain technology to transfer physical or intangible assets into digital tokens. This movement, propelled by a major asset manager, highlights the tokens to watch out for. First on the list is Ondo Token. Earlier when investment management giant, BlackRock created a fund called the BlackRock USD Institutional Digital Liquidity Fund, Ondo Finance jumped as high as 20% on increasing use cases of the tokenization. Ondo Finance, the DeFi pioneer, connects different stakeholders in the space including investors of all stripes and DAOs. Well now, next on the list, let's talk about MakerDAO. MakerDAO, the leading Ethereum-based lending network, eliminates intermediaries by offering collateralized loans. Yes, that's right. The cutting-edge platform has established itself as an integral component in the DeFi industry, contributing to high-level activity levels within the cryptocurrency world. Well, MakerDAO price witnessed a remarkable surge, growing over 56% in the past month and adding 11% just last week. Next on the list, it's TokenFi. Multi-chain coin TokenFi, the latest addition to the Floki ecosystem, garnered tremendous interest since its introduction on Uniswap and PancakeSwap. It is also available on Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. TokenFi allows users to create a token or tokenize real-world assets on an all-in-one platform. Yes, it aims to expedite the process of crypto and asset tokenization. TokenFi price increased 15% in the past 24 hours and is up to 54% over the past week. Now let's move on to Goldfinch token. 
Goldfinch is pioneering a global credit protocol as it offers stablecoin yields derived from real-world economic activities. Goldfinch, led by the Ethereum-based token GFI, aims at making DeFi lending more accessible. It makes loans supported by both digital and tangible assets possible. Well, Goldfinch protocol registered an impressive price increase of 162% in the past 30 days. Last on the list is Proppy token. Proppy is a blockchain protocol pertaining to the real estate sector. It streamlines the process of buying and selling properties, making it quicker, simpler and more secure by leveraging Web3 technologies. Well, the token registered a remarkable surge of 51% in the past 24 hours and more than 250% in the past one month, highlighting it as a significant real estate focused token. Well, that's all in today's special segment. This is me, Shobham Joshi, signing off. For more such interesting updates and market analysis, keep watching 3.0 TV or log on to our website or scan the QR code. Thank you. Welcome to 3 Toto TV. I am your host, Ruchi Sharma. It's Monday, the day to bring you the latest update from the Mint Street. A bunch of curated stories in the Web3 space, giving you the flavor of market activity and the fresh deals struck during this week. We have collated deals from various segments in this show so that you, our viewers, stay well informed of the latest developments and benefits from the action taking place in this space. But first, a quick look at the trends so far. Ethereum Layer 2 Scaling Network Optimism is releasing $3.3 billion worth of its Optimism token for community distribution. The 815 million OP tokens, 20% of the initial OP token supply will be distributed over four rounds starting in May and continuing throughout 2024. The fourth round will focus on on-chain builders, while rounds 5 through 7 will reward infrastructure, governance and dev tooling contributors. The OP token is allocated to projects or individuals considered important contributors to the blockchain's ecosystem. After that quick update, let's turn to deals this week. To begin with, the first deal on the show talks of pre-seed funding. Ochi Labs or Zero Gravity Labs, the developer of a modular blockchain focus on decentralized artificial intelligence applications, has raised $35 million in pre-seed funding. A host of investors joined the round, including HackVC, OKX Ventures, GSR, Enimuka Brands, Arca, NGC Ventures, DWF Labs, Foresight Ventures, Gummy Cryptos Capital, and Dispersion Capital. OG Labs said, adding that it aimed to create a decentralized cap table with many investors in the round. This was a single round structured as a simple agreement for future equity with token warrants, Michael Henrich, co founder and CEO of OG Labs, told the blog. He declined to comment on the valuation. In the second deal, we cover Godzilla Games' fundraising activity. Godzilla Games, a Frankfurt-based gaming studio, has raised $30 million in combined funding to bolster the development of its forthcoming Web3 title, Off the Grid. The cyberpunk battle royale third-person shooter alongside Guns, the studio's blockchain-based platform, is set to benefit from this influx of capital with increased development resources. The funding round was co-led by Coin Fund and Avalanche Blizzard Fund, who contributed $10 million in token funding with other participants including Republic Capital and Morningstar Ventures. The third deal covers Layer 1 blockchain firm Peak Funding Round. Peak said it raised $15 million in funding to expand its ecosystem of decentralized physical infrastructure networks. The funding round led by Generative Ventures and Borderless Capital and featuring participation from Spartan Group, CMCC Global and Animoca Brands comes ahead of the blockchain's minute launch and listing of the peak token. Deepin refers to using blockchain technology and token incentives to build physical infrastructure networks so other projects don't need to buy and run their own equipment. In other words, Deepin is a decentralized version of Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud. Moving on to Deal 4. 
Elixir Games has successfully concluded its seed funding round raising $14 million, according to a press release. The notable investors participated to this seed round as Square Enix, the Solana Foundation and Shima Capital alongside other private entities. According to reports, the funding will go towards launching the ELIX token which will power Elixir Games products along with the launchpad and incubation program. Investors were particularly drawn to Elixir's launchpad and incubation program which offered a simplified launch process for its portfolio of Web3 gaming titles. Final deal on the show. Web3 gaming firm Illuvium has raised $12 million in a Series A funding round with contributions from investors such as Australian venture capital firm King River Capital, Errington Capital and Animoca Ventures. The funding will be used to develop new games within the Illuvium ecosystem as the firm gears up for its second quarter 2024 gaming releases. That's all in Deal Corner for now. This is Mirti Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 Daughter TV. And for more information and stories, log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. Hello and welcome to 3 Daughter TV. This is Shikha Singh. Synthetic stablecoin startup Athena Labs is gearing up to airdrop 750 million to its governance tokens on April 2nd. Athena Labs said in a statement that 750 million ENA tokens will be distributed using the decentralized finance protocol to holders of shards or digital units indicating users' participation with the platform. 5% of the 15 billion ENA token supply are the tokens that were airdropped. The tokens will go to users who hold the USDE, the protocol synthetic dollar pegged to the US currency. The ENA token will be made accessible to centralized cryptocurrency exchanges and airdrop to qualified users on April 2nd, according to a statement from Athena Labs. Each user's drop size is based on how many shards they had accumulated as of April 1st. According to the announcement, in order to get the free tokens, users have to maintain their USDE staked or otherwise stored on the Athena network. Athena Labs' airdrop follows the Athena Shard campaign, a six-week event that tasks crypto enthusiasts with collecting shards by performing activities on the Athena protocol. According to Athena Labs, during the event, the supply of USD reached a value of $1.3 billion, making it the fastest asset denominated in USD to surpass a $1 billion supply. The token's rollout also comes after investors injected $20.5 million into Athena Labs during the past year in two funding rounds. These rounds included participation from Galaxy Digital, OKX, Dragonfly, Finance Labs and Bybit among other investors setting the token makers valuation at $300 million, CoinGecko reported. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3 TV or log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Yamaha, a Japanese mobility manufacturer established in 1955, is all set to rev your hearts once again. From its first product Yamaha 125 Yar 1 to its latest masterpiece Yamaha FZS 4.0, also known as the Lord of the Streets, 
Yamaha has remained committed not only to exhilarating biking experiences but also to riders' happiness and safety. And now Yamaha has filed a patent for augmented reality based helmet for all the bike lovers out there. You must be wondering how do these AR helmets work and will they revolutionize riding experience? Hello and welcome to Speed Auto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur and you are watching our special show Metaverse Magic where we get you the latest updates from the Metaverse space. Amidst the buzz surrounding mixed reality headsets like the Apple Vision Pro and Meta Quest 3, the stage is set for Yamaha to lead the charge in immersive bike riding experience. A new patent from motorcycle manufacturer showcases the company's interest towards incorporating augmented reality into head protective gear helmets. Incorporating a head-up display design, the patent depicts four small cameras and an infrared light that enables information to be overlaid in a user's line of sight rather than having a fully immersive headset cover a user's eyes. Well, Yamaha's recent patent suggests that a form of AR headset may soon be available that will revolutionize the riding experience by providing real-time information and enhancing road safety standards. And now let's take a flight to Ayodhya, a city situated on the banks of Holy River Saryu in Uttar Pradesh and explore the Ayodhya Metaverse initiative. Ever since the inauguration of Ram Mandir, more than 1 crore visitors have visited Ayodhya already. That's a huge number, big enough to discourage visitors from travelling to the holy place. Don't you worry, visitors will now have an option to undertake virtual tour of key sites like Kanak Bhavan, Sita Rasoi, Rang Mehal and Nageshwar Nath Temple. Also, learn more about the historic and cultural importance of Ayodhya. As for the officials, a sum of Rs 30 lakh has been earmarked to start the project and final cost estimates would be known within two months. Well, creating digital replica seems exciting, but it is challenging at the same time. Arjuna Lens, a Mumbai-based company which deals with extended reality solutions, is all set to address this issue. Wondering how? Let me explain. Arjuna Lens recently represented India at the Game Developers Conference 2024 in San Francisco, USA. Interestingly, the event saw participation from top tech companies including the giants like Meta and Microsoft. Now, Arjuna Lens, which recently rolled out its Arjuna XR headset in India, also showcased cutting-edge solutions such as Arjuna HPSC, a high-performance spatial computing that allows XR developers to deliver highly immersive experiences creating AI-based applications. Well, with the help of companies such as Qualcomm, Siemens, NVIDIA and Unreal Engine, Arjuna Lens claims to have impacted over 72,000 learners in organizations such as Tata Technologies and Indian Armed Forces. So let's listen in to what Mr. Abhishek Tomar, the CTO and co-founder of Arjuna Lens has to say about the metaverse sector and how Arjuna Lens is driving innovation in India. This is a cutting-edge technology uh, which everybody knows the spatial computing, XR, AR, VR and behind the scene there is a huge uh, AI backing is there. Now if you see Ajna XR headset is the world lightest headset and there is a huge innovation and huge research uh, we have put it which set the benchmark in the world and we have partnered with Nvidia, we have partnered with Qualcomm, we have partnered with Siemens and like this, these are the big international players who have already partnered with NVIDIA and supporting our ecosystem. Other vertical is the defense vertical. We are working to upgrade the missile systems, to upgrade the tank systems, as well as we are making a situational awareness system through the glasses and predictive positions for uh, in, in the modern uh, warfare. It is helping as a battle of things. And now an exciting update for you all. Get ready for the third edition of Metaverse and Web3 Summit and Awards being hosted by Metaverse Entertainment World Show in Monaco from May 14 to 17, 2024. Well, for all those who don't know, this exclusive event celebrates pioneers in Web3, Metaverse, AI and NFTs. 
Now, among the nominees are Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Meta, Jensen Huang, co-founder of NVIDIA, Samara Cohen, Chief Investment Officer at BlackRock, and Meera Murthy, the CTO of OpenAI. Well, Metaverse is here to stay and such awards will not just boost the confidence of uh, industry players but also motivate them to develop exciting virtual worlds. This reminds me, Vitalik Buterin, speaking at the BYDL Asia conference, expressed optimism about Metaverse's potential and also laid emphasis on its potential to revolutionize online experiences by integrating crypto, virtual reality and artificial intelligence. Well, the Metaverse holds immense potential when harnessed effectively. And now, even Pakistan is exploring its applications to revolutionize education. Yes, you heard that right. The Information Technology University of Lahore just dropped a bombshell by launching Pakistan's first ever virtual reality-based classes in Metaverse in partnership with University of Denmark. Well, these innovative courses aim to provide students an immersive and interactive learning environment. Well, that's all in this episode of Metaverse Magic. I will be back with more such interesting updates from the Metaverse space. Do log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Hello and welcome to 3 Dodo TV, I am Vishakha Thakur. Global Mofi Metaverse Limited, a China-based technology solutions provider, is all set to revolutionize the fashion industry. After unveiling plans to innovate healthcare with AI, the company recently showcased its technological prowess at China's 2024 Fashion Week. Well, Global Mofi has highlighted the convergence of digitized fashion, AI and Metaverse. Originated in 1997, China's Fashion Week is one of the most significant fashion events held twice a year that hosts professional contests, exhibitions and fashion forums. At this year's China Fashion Week, the China Fashion Summit focused on topics such as OpenAI Sora, the Metaverse, new consumption patterns, design trends and intellectual property protection. Well, Global Mofi not only highlighted the infinite possibilities of cutting-edge technology emerging across the entire fashion industry, such as sustainable growth, higher brand awareness and increased customer satisfaction, but also discussed exploring an exciting journey with designers, brands and fashion enthusiasts all over the world through its proprietary Morphe Lab technology platform. Moving forward, the company believes that technological advancements such as Metaverse, AI, 5G and higher computing power will make wearable gadgets commercially viable, leading to a realistic virtual experience. Also, as customer demand for sustainable fashion and personalized items develops, digital technology will play an increasingly important role in addressing those needs. Well, it will be interesting to see how the future of fashion industry unfolds with the help of Metaverse. That's all in the story. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3worldstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Hello and a very warm welcome, I am Ruchi Sharma. Grayscale Investments, the world's largest crypto asset manager, is taking no chance while trying to capitalize on going crypto bull run. The firm has announced an investment fund tailored to sophisticated clients eager to expose their portfolios to income generated from staking cryptocurrency tokens. According to a recent statement, the Grayscale Dynamic Income Fund is only available to clients with more than $1.1 million asset under management or a net worth of more than $2.2 million. The fund aims to convert staking rewards, 
into United States dollars weekly with distributions planned quarterly for investors. Additionally, Grayscale claims that careful analysis will be conducted to select the proof of stake tokens included in the fund's portfolio. The main priority of the fund is to maximize staking income from the assets with capital growth as a secondary focus, according to Grayscale. Crypto staking involves locking up crypto tokens to earn interest or rewards, which in turn ensures the secure and efficient operation of the blockchain network. Grayscale has named three POS tokens that will be held in the funds. Osmosis has a 24% share, Solana has 20% share and Polkadot has 14% while 43% is categorized under other tokens. Osmo currently offers a staking reward rate of 11.09%. SOL offers 7.42% and DOT is at 11.9% according to data from staking rewards. However, only SOL ranks among the top 10 POS tokens by market capitalization as per coin market cap data. Meanwhile, Grayscale's Spot Bitcoin Exchange Traded Fund, which launched on January 11th, has seen billions of outflows. On March 26, Cointelegraph reported that the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust has seen daily outflows totaling over $14 billion since its launch. Grayscale's Bitcoin ETF charges a 1.5% per year management fee, five times that of the 0.3% average of other spot Bitcoin ETFs. Grayscale has applied for an Ethereum future ETF, but the United States Securities and Exchange Commission recently delayed a decision on whether to approve the product. That's all in the story for now. This is Mirchi Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information and stories, log on to our website www.3wastv.io or scan the QR code. इंडस्ट्री ने ब्लॉकचेन की क्रांति ग्लोबल कॉमर्स की हलचल भरी दुनिया में जहां माल की आवाजाही अर्थव्यवस्थाओं की जीवन रेखा है जहां अब क्रांति लेकर आई है ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी जो कार्गो इंडस्ट्री को बदल रही है नमस्कार थ्री डॉटो टीवी में आप सभी का स्वागत है और आप देख रहे हैं ब्लॉक ऑन द रॉक्स का एक खास एपिसोड बढ़ती हुई ट्रांसपेरेंसी सिक्योरिटी और एफिशियंसी के अपने वादे के साथ ब्लॉकचेन ने अपने सप्लाई चेन ऑपरेशंस में क्रांति लाने की चाह रखने वाले फॉरवर्ड थिंकिंग कंपनीज का ध्यान आकर्षित कर रही है बिजनेस रिसर्च कंपनी के डेटा के अनुसार अगले कुछ सालों में एयर कार्गो सर्विस मार्केट के साइज में मजबूत वृद्धि देखने की उम्मीद है ये सिक्स की सी ए जी आर में बढ़कर नाइन्टी बिलियन डॉलर तक पहुँचने की उम्मीद है भारत दुनिया के सबसे तेजी से बढ़ते एक्सप्रेस डिलीवरी क्षेत्रों में से एक बन गया है जिसमें एयर ट्रांसपोर्ट महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका निभा रहा है भारतीय एयर कार्गो मार्केट 5.65 पॉइंट सिक्स के साथ 2028 तक 17 बिलियन डॉलर्स तक पहुंचने की उम्मीद है नवाचार के शोर के बीच टर्की की एक प्रमुख एयरलाइन एम एन बदलाव के मामले में सबसे आगे खड़ी है उनकी नवीनतम घोषणा ने इंडस्ट्री को चौंका दिया है क्योंकि उन्होंने एक अग्रणी ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी प्रोवाइडर वेनम के साथ एक अभूतपूर्व साझेदारी का अनावरण किया है ऐसे सहयोग के लिए मंच तैयार किया है जो ग्लोबल सप्लाई चेन के ताने बाने को फिर से परिभाषित करने का वादा करता है इस पार्टनरशिप के पीछे के विजनरी एक ऐसे भविष्य की कल्पना कर रहे हैं जहाँ हर शिपमेंट हर पैलेट और हर बॉक्स महज एक वस्तु नहीं बल्कि ट्रांसपेरेंसी और एफिशियंसी का प्रतीक हो वेनम के कटिंग एज ब्लॉक चेन ट्रैक एंड ट्रेस सोल्यूशन को एम एन के संचालन में सहजता से एकीकृत करने के साथ सप्लाई चेन मैनेजमेंट में एक नए युग का जन्म हुआ है खोए हुए शिपमेंट और ब्यूरोक्रेटिक बॉटल के दिन अब गए उसकी जगह एक सुव्यवस्थित प्रक्रिया आ गई है जहां रियल टाइम विजिबिलिटी सर्वोच्च है लेकिन ये पार्टनरशिप सिर्फ एक बिजनेस ट्रांजेक्शन से कई अधिक है ये ट्रांसफॉर्मेटिव ब्लॉक चेन टेक्नोलॉजी के क्षेत्र में टर्की के बढ़ते प्रभाव का एक प्रमाण है जैसे एम एन जी एयरलाइंस ने इस क्रांति का नेतृत्व किया है पूरी दुनिया कार्गो लॉजिस्टिक में एक नए युग की शुरुआत देखने के लिए उत्सुक है आने वाले समय में विश्व की अग्रणी एयर कार्गो शिपमेंट कंपनियां भी ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी को अपनाकर एयर कार्गो इंडस्ट्री को रेवोल्यूशनाइज करने के लिए जरूर कदम बढ़ाएगी ऐसी और इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरीज के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉटो टीवी अधिक जानकारी के लिए हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट थ्री वर्स टीवी डॉट आईओ पर लॉग ऑन करें या फिर स्कैन करें क्यू आर कोड थैंक यू
Hello and welcome to Three Dot TV. I am your host Shubham Joshi. Elon Musk's Tesla emerges one of the top corporate holders of Bitcoin, outpacing even some of the most prominent firms within the digital currency sector. As per the most recent data available on the Bitcoin Treasuries dot net, Tesla is the third largest corporate holder of Bitcoin with an amazing holding of nine thousand seven hundred and twenty bitcoins, valued at roughly six seventy five million dollars. With its substantial Bitcoin holdings. Tesla outpaces Coinbase, a well-known cryptocurrency exchange which has 9480 bitcoins. Well, it's interesting to know that the Coinbase's core business revolves around cryptocurrency services, unlike Tesla, which is primarily known for its electric vehicles and renewable energy products. Well, we cannot forget about MicroStrategy. The MicroStrategy led by Bitcoin evangelist Michael Saylor is at the top of the corporate ownership ranking for the Bitcoin. The corporation is leading the pack of publicly traded companies that invest in Bitcoin with an impressive 214,246 bitcoins of the digital currencies. Although Tesla primarily concentrates on electric cars and renewable energy, Musk's holding of the company's Bitcoin holding indicates a cautious but positive outlook on the future of cryptocurrencies. As the corporate investment landscape in Bitcoin continues to evolve, Tesla stands underlines the diverse and dynamic nature of digital currencies adoption across various industries. Well, that's all in today's special segment. This is me, Shubham Joshi, signing off. For most of the interesting updates and market analysis, keep watching Three Dot TV or log on to our website or scan the QR code. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Three Dot TV. This is Shikha Singh. In the first quarter of 2024, the cryptocurrency market saw a 23% decrease in losses from hacking and scams when compared to 2023, according to a study report released by blockchain security company Immunify. The report identifies 46 hacking incidents and 15 cases of fraudulent activities. DeFi systems continue to be a major target for hackers, as evidenced by all of the exploits found by Immunify in quarter one, compared to none for central. Centralized finance platforms, with approximately hundred billion dollars of total value locked in Web3 protocols. The majority of the losses, 144.5 million dollars in total, or 43% of the total, were attributed to two projects. The biggest hack, which cost 81.7 million dollars, was launched on New Year's Eve against the Orbit Bridge cross-chain bridge protocol. At 133 million dollars, January's monthly losses in quarter one were the greatest. Immunify CEO Michelle Lamadou brought attention to the vulnerability of DeFi platforms to private key comprises, emphasizing the urgent need for improved security measures throughout protocol and core infrastructure. A $62 million hack on the Blast-based non-fungible token game Munchables was the source of the second largest attack. However, as soon as the hacker turned over to the private keys to the wallet holding Munchables assets, the money was returned within a day. Out of the total funds obtained from seven exploits in quarter one, which is $73.9 million, which is 22%, were recovered. Uh, from 74 attacks uh, in quarter one 2023 to 61 attacks in quarter one 2024, there was a 17.6% decline in attacks. Hacks accounted for 95.6% of the losses across 46 incidents, amounting to $321 million. While fraud, scams, and rug pulls accounted for 4.4% in 15 incidents, amounting to $14 million. Ethereum was the most targeted chain ahead of the BNB chain, with both networks accounting for 73% of total losses combined. With 33 events, Ethereum experienced the most attacks, uh, which accounted for 51% of the losses. 12 attacks on the BNB chain resulted in a 22% of the funds being abused. Additional occurrences were found on Base, Confluence Network, Blast, Polygon, Optimism, Arbitrum, and Solana. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow Three Dot TV or log on to our website www.freeworldtv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain.
Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3Doto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3Doto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3 Auto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Real-world asset tokenization space continue to buzz with a lot of activities these days. Several biggies such as BlackRock, HSBC and others entering the fray while trying to exploit use case potentials. In United States, government treasuries of more than $1 billion now exist across Ethereum. Polygon, Solana and other blockchains helped in part by the recent launch of the BlackRock USD Institutional Digital Liquidity Fund. Well, BlackRock's product, ticket BUIDL, was launched on Ethereum on March 20 and now boasts a market cap of $244.8 million. According to Etherscan, four transactions to the fund totaling $95 million over the week added a boost to the fund making it the second largest tokenized government securities fund. Well, BUIDL now only trails Franklin Templeton's 11-month-old Franklin on-chain U.S. government money fund, which has $360.2 million in U.S. treasuries, according to data compiled by the parent firm of 21 shares on a Dune Analytics dashboard. Well, the dashboard shows that $1.08 billion in U.S. treasuries have now been tokenized across 17 products. The most recent $79.3 million deposit to BlackRock's fund was made by real-world asset tokenization firm Ondo Finance, which will allow instant settlements for its own U.S. Treasury-backed token, OUSG. Well, the firm made a total of $95 million in deposits across four transactions, according to Etherscan. Ondo Finance now owns a 38% share in BUIDL, noted Tom Van, a recent strategist at 21.co in a March 27 expo. Well, BUIDL's price is pegged one ratio one with the United States dollar and pays daily accrued dividends directly to investors each month. It was launched on Ethereum via the Securitized Protocol. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink recently voiced that capital markets could be made more efficient by blockchain tokenization, which Boston Consulting Group estimates will become a $16 trillion market by 2030. Well, US Treasuries are only one piece of the pie. Stocks, real estate and many other assets can also be tokenized. Ethereum also accounts for $700 million of all real-world assets tokenized on-chain. Franklin Templeton's FOBXX is tokenized on Stellar and Polygon, which have the second and third largest market share of tokenized products at $358 million and $13 million respectively. While well, Wisdom Tree, another large asset management firm tokenizing RWAs, while Ondo Finance, Pact Finance, Matrix Stock, Maple Finance, and Swarm are among the blockchain native firms operating in the space. Well, that's all in this special segment. Keep watching 3Doto TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3versetv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Hello and welcome to 3Doctor TV. Coinbase Ethereum Layer 2 network base has shattered its trading volume record within a 24 hour on decentralized exchange, jumping approximately 25% compared to the previous day and surpassing the $1 billion mark. According to Dune Analytics, base registered $1.21 billion in DEX trading volume on March 30th, which was 25% increase over the $959 million recorded the day before. Most of the trading activity occurred on Uniswap, which accounted for 64.3% of the volume. 
followed by Aerodrome Finance at 9.7% and Shark Swap at 7.8%. Additionally, there was 12.4% increase in daily active users going from 153,000 to 172,000. There have been 667,765 weekly active users on average during the last six weeks. The expanding network may eventually serve as the next meme coin hub, according to rumors of circulating in cryptocurrency industry. According to CoinGecko, two of the biggest base meme coins are Degen and Brett, with a market capitalization of $709 million and $654 million respectively. The mere week earlier on March 25th, Degen's market capitalization was $143 million. This represents the almost five-fold surge in just seven days. In another news, Coinbase will start moving more of its customer and corporate USD coin stablecoin account to base. In a social media post, Vice President of Coinbase, Max Brandberg, said that the action would enable the cryptocurrency exchange to manage and secure customer funds with lower fees and faster settlement times. Only Coinbase.com accounts will be impacted by the change. Coinbase wallet customers are in charge of their own private keys. Well, that's all for today. This is me, Roshni Shinkre, signing off. For more such updates, watch 3.tv or log on to our website www.3worldstv.io or scan the QR code. Thank you. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. The Commodity Futures Trading Commission or CFTC, a regulatory body overseeing commodity and derivatives markets in the United States, resorts to assert its authority in the rapidly evolving world of cryptocurrency. On March 26, the CFTC filed a complaint in the US District Court for the Southern District of New York taking action against an unnamed entity for alleged unregistered crypto asset, derivative trading and other legal violations. Well, this move is part of a broader effort to regulate the crypto market, which has been marked by a surge in trading activities and increased scrutiny from various regulatory agencies. Well, CFTC Commissioner Caroline D. Pham responded to this enforcement action with a public statement that both commends the vigilance of the Division of Enforcement and raises significant concerns regarding the potential overreach of CFTC jurisdiction. Well, Commissioner Pham's critique highlights a critical issue at the intersection of regulatory authorities, the delineation of responsibilities between the CFTC and the SEC. The ambiguity stems from the complaint's interpretation of fund shares, which are typically considered securities and fall under the SEC's remit as equating to leverage trading under the Commodity Exchange Act. This interpretation, according to Farm, blurs the lines between the act of investing in a fund and the trading activities conducted by the fund. The former is a security investment while the latter pertains to derivative trading, which is within the CFTC's jurisdiction. Commissioner's statement expresses concern that this approach by CFTC could infringe upon the SEC's authority, potentially disrupting long-standing investor protection laws. The statement underscores the importance of maintaining a clear distinction between a financial instrument and a financial activity, cautioning that combining the two could destabilize the foundations of securities markets. Well, this case is indicative of growing pains within the regulatory framework as it adapts to the complexities introduced by digital asset space. It also highlights the need for clarity and collaboration between C 
CFTC and SEC to ensure that the markets are adequately regulated without overlapping jurisdictions that could lead to inefficiencies and legal uncertainties. While Commissioner Farm's statement offers a window into the internal debates and the complexity of regulating a market that defies traditional categorization. It also serves as a reminder of the challenges regulators face in adapting old laws to new financial technologies and the importance of clear regulatory boundaries to maintain market stability and protect investors. So that's all in this update. Keep watching 3 TV for more such stories and do log on to our website www.3verstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me Vishakha Thakur signing off. Hello and welcome to 3Dotto TV. I'm your host Shubham Joshi. Consensus, the private blockchain software technology company, in a comment letter submitted to the US SEC, has advocated approving Ethereum based exchange traded funds as Joseph Lubin, founded firm, believes that Ethereum's POS model incorporates robust anti fraud and anti manipulation mechanisms. The Fort Worth US-based company was responding to a recent request for public comments on Nasdaq's application for a rule change to permit the trading of iShares Ethereum Trust. Well, the SEC specifically inquired about unique concerns related to Ethereum's POS consensus mechanism and concentration of control or the influence. Well, one of the key advantages highlighted by consensus is faster block finality. It also emphasized that the distributed and randomized validation process employed in the Ethereum POS prevents large stakeholder control and serves as a check against manipulation. Consensus further addressed the concept of Byzantine fault tolerance which measures the minimum proportion of network validators required for the system integrity. Additionally, Ethereum's POS model includes slashing penalties for validators who violate protocol rules acting as both a deterrent and a punitive measure. The letter also emphasized environmental benefits of Ethereum's POS model compared to Bitcoin's POW model that is proof of work. With significantly lower energy consumption, Ethereum demonstrates its commitment to sustainability. Consensus has further highlighted the decentralized community and transparency of Ethereum as additional safeguards. Consensus has also urged the SEC to recognize the advanced safeguards inherent in Ethereum's design. It has also asserted that Ethereum's POS implementation meets and exceeds the exemplary security and resilience safeguards underlying Bitcoin-based EDPs that were previously approved by the SEC. Consensus considers its comment letter as a step towards driving progress and providing relevant and useful information to the public. It looks forward to an ongoing constructive dialogue with the SEC. Well, that's all in today's special segment. This is me, Shobham Joshi, signing off. For more such interesting updates and market analysis, keep watching 3 TV or log on to our website or scan the QR code. Thank you. Hello and welcome to 3 TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Metaverse has the potential to revolutionize the way we approach education. Gone are the days of boring school lectures as Metaverse brings professors and students together remotely in shared spaces and opens up new prospects for lifelong learning. From the United States to South Korea, educational institutions are embracing the Metaverse. And now, Metaverse is bringing the students from Miami and India together. Yes, the School of Architecture of the University of Miami and Anand National University Ahmedabad have launched a new course, Architecture in Metaverse. Well, University of Miami is a Florida-based private university founded in 1925 and Anand National University based in Ahmedabad was founded in 2016. The newly launched course allows students to meet in a virtual world called Engage VR and experience architecture in a completely new way. Well, traditional teaching methods have certain boundaries, but the metaverse allows you to walk through the building and have a better sense of how it would look and feel. 
As of now, students provide renderings on a whiteboard as a final project, but in the metaverse, the presentations will become much more dynamic and immersive. Interestingly, the course is hosted by the Rad Lab, a California-based architecture firm that focuses on innovative and cutting-edge designs and it is being taught in collaboration with Anand National University in Ahmedabad. Well, 21 architecture students from Anand National University are also taking the course wherein they are asked to complete an initial assignment of designing a visiting center for Zen City, a smart city in Mexico. The only disadvantage that the faculty finds is the time difference as India is nine and a half hours ahead of Miami. So, the students from India get up at 3 a.m. to attend the class. But still, it's a great opportunity for all of them to learn how metaverse can be used in world of architecture. Well, the future education system seems interesting and exciting as metaverse can make every course content more enjoyable and at the same time add fun element into the learning process. Well, that's all in the story. Keep watching 3.0TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Redemption ticket NFT collection में आया 480% का जबरदस्त उछाल। NFT सेल्फीज के लिए मशहूर गुजाली के मीम कॉइन प्रीसेल ने की 1.8 मिलियन डॉलर्स की कमाई। Netflix पर जल्द आएगी NFT बेस्ड डॉक्यूमेंट्री। Hello and a very warm welcome to all of you. NFT डॉक्यूमेंट्री से लेकर मीम कॉइन क्रेज तक कई मजेदार NFT अपडेट्स मैं रुचि शर्मा आपके लिए लेकर आई हूं तो हो जाइए NFT वर्स के इस खास एपिसोड के तैयार इसमें आपके फेवरेट NFT प्रोजेक्ट्स की डिटेल्स तो होंगी ही साथ ही हम एक स्पेशल गेस्ट से भी करेंगे मुलाकात लेकिन सबसे पहले जानते हैं पिछले हफ्ते कैसा रहा NFT मार्केट का हाल पिछले हफ्ते वीकली NFT सेल्स में 15% की गिरावट के साथ टोटल 233 मिलियन डॉलर्स की सेल्स देखी गई करीब तीन हफ्ते के इंतजार के बाद बिटकॉइन एनएफटीज ने एक बार फिर हाईएस्ट वीकली एनएफटी सेल्स का खिताब अपने नाम किया 3.8% की मामूली गिरावट के साथ बिटकॉइन एनएफटीज ने पिछले हफ्ते 82.6 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स दर्ज की तो वहीं 73 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स के साथ सेकंड पोजीशन पर रही इथेरियम एनएफटीज जिसने 26.39% की भारी गिरावट दर्ज की तीसरे पायदान पर रही सोलाना एनएफटीज 46.61 मिलियन डॉलर सेल्स के साथ तो वहीं 7.3 मिलियन डॉलर्स और 7.1 मिलियन डॉलर्स के मामूली फर्क के साथ चौथे और पांचवें पायदान पर रही पॉलीगॉन और माइथोस चेन तो एक तरफ जहां लगभग तमाम बड़ी ब्लॉकचेन्स ने एनएफटी सेल्स में गिरावट दर्ज की तो वहीं दूसरी तरफ सिर्फ माइथोस चेन ने 0.92% की मामूली बढ़त देखी वीकली सेल्स में भले ही बिटकॉइन ने इथेरियम को मात दे दी हो लेकिन पिछले हफ्ते इथेरियम ने डेली सेल्स में बाजी मारी थी और इसका पूरा श्रेय जाता है उस एनएफटी कलेक्शन को जिसने 480% का जबरदस्त उछाल देखा FRX ETH Redemption Ticket NFT Collection ने 480% की जबरदस्त जंप के साथ 24 hours में 4.64 मिलियन डॉलर्स की सेल्स दर्ज करते हुए टॉप परफॉर्मर ऑफ द डे का खिताब हासिल किया ऐसे में FRX ETH Redemption Ticket NFT Collection ने Azuki और BAYC जैसे ब्लू चिप NFTs को पीछे छोड़ दिया इस कलेक्शन की कमाल की कमाई के चलते Ethereum की डेली सेल 17.02 मिलियन डॉलर्स तक पहुंच गई और ब्लॉकचेन रैंकिंग में Ethereum टॉप पर पहुंच गई सेकंड पोजीशन पर रही इथेरियम की अजूकी कलेक्शन ने 263% के उछाल के साथ 1.55 मिलियन डॉलर्स की सेल्स दर्ज की बीएवाईसी रही थर्ड पोजीशन पर 1.5 मिलियन डॉलर्स सेल्स के साथ 
वैसे इन कमाल की सेल्स की बदौलत इथेरियम प्लेटफॉर्म ने उन 24 घंटों के दौरान 39 परसेंट की बढ़त दर्ज की और इथेरियम की ऑल टाइम सेल्स वॉल्यूम यहाँ फोर्टी बिलियन डॉलर तक पहुंच गई जो पूरी एन इंडस्ट्री में सबसे ऊपर है For more details on this, let's cut across to our guest, Ms. Nachita Besta. Welcome to Three Dollar TV. Market resilience is being tested as NFT sales fell for the third consecutive week. What is the current NFT market situation? So, thanks to the current Bitcoin rally and, of course, the renewed interest in Web3 investing, NFTs are finally able to finish what it first started in 2021, which is to start with singular use cases for the technology. And then evolve into an entire ecosystem. Uh, Crypto punks, the same as Board A Yacht Club, are PFP flexes, yes, but they are also pay once to play always tickets to a global insider network. Uh, the artwork, the profile picture, that's not the utility. Access and insider status is. Uh, at the same time, we've just emerged from two years of crypto death, so the fear and the greed index is far to the right. Uh, we can also expect to see a lot of new innovation and thus hype and thus growth and hopefully adoption as NFTs continue to ramp up across different segments of the Web3 uh, tech sector. Thank you so much for having this conversation with us and for giving us your valuable time. किस्मत जब किसी पर मेहरबान होती है तो मामूली सा बेतुका प्रोजेक्ट भी सोना उगलने लगता है NFT selfies जैसे प्रोजेक्ट से मिलियनर बने गुजाली के लेटेस्ट नीम कॉइन की प्री सेल भी धमाल मचा रही है याद है आपको 2022 में एक इंडोनेशियन कॉलेज स्टूडेंट सुल्तान गुस्ताफ अल गुजाली ने 2018 से 2022 के बीच लगातार पांच सालों तक रोजाना अपनी सेल्फी खींचकर उसकी एनएफटी बनाई थी गुजाली ने करीब हजार सेल्फी से ये एनएफटी तैयार की थी और इसे नाम दिया था गुजाली एवरीडे इस एन ने करीब वन मिलियन डॉलर कमाए थे वही गुजाली अब लौट आया है एक एन प्रोजेक्ट के साथ और इसके लिए उसने एक मीम कॉइन की प्री सेल से 1.8 मिलियन डॉलर्स भी जुटा लिए हैं। इस प्रोजेक्ट की प्री सेल का टारगेट था 400 ईथर लेकिन इस प्री सेल ने इस टारगेट को पार करते हुए 527 हंड्रेड यानी करीब 1.8 मिलियन डॉलर की सेल की 2023 में कॉलेज से ग्रेजुएट होने के बाद गुजाली ने एक्स पर यह पोस्ट किया कि वो अब फाइनली सेल्फीज लेना बंद कर देंगे और वो खुद को लकी मानते हैं कि ऐसे स्टूपिड आइडिया से उन्होंने इतनी कमाई की है खैर मीम कॉइन्स में चल रही रैली को देखकर गुजाली ने अपना मन बदल लिया और अब वो गुजाली एवरीडेज का सेकेंड एडिशन लेकर आने वाले है ये प्रोजेक्ट बेस्ड ब्लॉक पर होगा और बेहद यूनिक तरीके से ई आर फॉर्मेट में मीम कॉइन्स और एन को ब्लेंड करेगा दुनिया भर में अब एन को लेकर एक्साइटमेंट बढ़ रही है तभी तो अब बहुत जल्द नेटफ्लिक्स पर आप देखेंगे एन बेस्ड डॉक्यूमेंट्री जिसमें डेमिन हर्स से लेकर स्नूप डॉग और बीपल भी शिरकत करेंगे बाफ्ता विनिंग फिल्म मेकर डेविड शुलमन डायरेक्ट कर रहे हैं एक अपकमिंग डॉक्यूमेंट्री एन एफ ये नॉन फंजिबल टोकन पर बेस्ड एक डॉक्यूमेंट्री है जिसमें एन की दुनिया और आर्ट मार्केट पर उसका क्या इम्पैक्ट हो रहा है ये दिखाया जाएगा इस डॉक्यूमेंट्री को नेटफ्लिक्स ने यूके के लिए अक्वायर कर लिया है इस डॉक्यूमेंट्री में एन सेक्टर से जुड़ी कई हस्तियों का इंटरव्यू होगा जिनमें डेमिन हर्स्ट जैसे आर्टिस्ट तो होंगे ही साथ ही क्रिप्टो पंक्स बोर्ड एप यॉर्ट क्लब जैसे ब्लू चिप प्रोजेक्ट्स के सेलिब्रिटी कलेक्टर्स का इंटरव्यू भी देखने को मिलेगा साथ ही एन प्रोजेक्ट फाउंडर्स और अर्ली अडोप्टर्स जैसे की स्नूप डॉग और बीपल जैसे डिजिटल आर्टिस्ट को भी फीचर करेगा इस डॉक्यूमेंट्री में हर्स ने अपने एन प्रोजेक्ट द करेंसी की भी चर्चा की है जो कि 10,000 यूनिक स्पॉट पेंटिंग्स की सीरीज थी और इसके लिए कलेक्टर्स को ऑप्शन दिया गया था कि वो चाहे तो फिजिकल आर्टवर्क रख सकते हैं या फिर उसका एन डिजिटल वर्जन रख सकते हैं और जिन कलेक्टर्स ने एन वर्जन को चुना उनकी ओरिजिनल पेंटिंग्स को जला दिया गया नेटफ्लिक्स की इस डॉक्यूमेंट्री में दिखाया जाएगा की कलेक्टर्स ने ये मुश्किल फैसला कैसे किया और अब बात करते हैं ऐसे आर्टिस्ट की जो खुद पर बेस्ड पेंटिंग्स बनाते हैं करोड़ों कमाते हैं आर्टिस्ट यू मिन जुन जिनके आर्ट की एन कलेक्शन बाउंडलेस को अगस्त 2023 में काफी पसंद किया गया था वो अब लेकर आ रहे हैं अपना अगला एन प्रोजेक्ट ह्यूमन ये उनकी पहली ऑर्डिनल कलेक्शन होगी जो अप्रैल में लाइव आर्ट पर लॉन्च होगी मिंजुन के पहले एन आर्ट ने लाइव आर्ट पर ग्लोबल सेल्स में 150 मिलियन डॉलर्स और डिजिटल सेल्स में करीब 3 मिलियन डॉलर्स कमाए थे 
मिंजुन का आर्ट वर्क एक लाफिंग मैन के इर्द गिर्द क्रिएट किया गया है इस हंसते हुए शख्स को मिंजुन ने किसी और पर नहीं बल्कि खुद पर बेस किया है यानी ये कैरेक्टर मिंजुन को ही रिप्रेजेंट और रिफ्लेक्ट करता है इन पेंटिंग्स में इस लाफिंग मैन को अलग अलग सिचुएशंस में दिखाया गया है अपने लेटेस्ट वर्क ह्यूमन के लिए मिंजुन ने ह्यूमन हिस्ट्री से इंस्पिरेशन ली है ये सीरीज जिसमें 1200 यूनिक वर्क्स शामिल हैं, उसमें मिंजुन ने दो एलिमेंट्स कंबाइन किए हैं फोरग्राउंड में अपने कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स फिगर्स और पिक्सलेटेड बैकग्राउंड में पिरामिड्स, सिटी स्काईलाइन वॉल स्ट्रीट का चार्जिंग बुल बिटकॉइन लोगोस और वैन गॉक्स की स्टारी नाइट वेल दैट्स ऑल इन दिस एपिसोड ऑफ एन एफ्टी वर्स वक्त आ गया है आपसे विदा लेने का लेकिन एन एफ्टी की दुनिया से ऐसी और मजेदार खबरें मैं रुचि शर्मा हर हफ्ते आपके लिए लाती रहूंगी टिल देन डू लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब टू थ्री डॉटो टीवी और इसी तरह की इंटरेस्टिंग अपडेट्स के लिए लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट थ्री वर्स टीवी डॉट आई ओ पर या फिर क्यू आर कोड को स्कैन करें Hello and welcome to 3 Dollar TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Tether, the company behind the USDT stablecoin, has successfully completed independent auditing of security compliance, demonstrating its commitment to offering safe and secure user experience. Well, the completion of a system and organization controls to audit the highest level or gold standard of security compliance an organization can achieve. was developed by the American Institute of Certified Accountants. Tether underwent the SOC 2 audit type 1 audit which examines security compliance and scores its position as an industry leader committed to delivering a secure experience. The AICPA also tagged a SOC 2 examination report on controls pertaining to the security of a firm, its availability, processing integrity confidentiality and privacy while well, the audit ensures that tether has robust it control measures in place to enhance its system safety it also ensures that the business can be accessed when needed and any sensitive data or information is disclosed only to authorized individuals via encrypted transmissions The audit also tested Tether's firewalls, problem resolution speed, intrusion detection, customer authentication and network reliability. Speaking about the successful completion of the audit, Tether's CEO Paolo Adorno stated, "This compliance measure assures our customers that their assets and data are managed in an environment meeting the highest standards for data protection and information security." This independent validation of security controls is vital for Tether, demonstrating our commitment to being the world's most trusted and compliant stablecoin. Well, Tether has outlined its commitment to maintaining high standards by committing to undergo the SOC 2 examinations annually and ensure that its operations and security practices are operational at the highest standards. Meanwhile, Tether plans to expand beyond stable coins and has committed to spending $500 million to build Bitcoin mining facilities in uh, Uruguay, El Salvador and Paraguay. Tether CEO stated that the company plans to grow its uh, computing power to 1% of the Bitcoin mining network. The new sites will boast a capacity between 40 and 70 megawatts and will also include a $610 million debt financing facility extended to Northern Data Group. Well, the company also plans to increase its direct mining operations capacity to 450 megawatts by the end of 2025. It is also contemplating setting up a separate 300 megawatt facility. These facilities are being set up within containers so that they can be moved when electricity prices change. Tether posted net profit of 6.2 billion dollars in 2023. Also, Tether is one of the most profitable financial companies in the world, and Tether's net profit is uh, more than the leading companies such as United Airlines, Starbucks, Netflix, Airbus, Volvo, Nike, to name a few. And not to forget, Tether is one of the most traded cryptocurrencies as it trades only Bitcoin and Ethereum in market cap. 
and tethers U.S. debt holdings stands at a whopping $80.3 billion. That's more than a few countries, namely United Arab Emirates, the Netherlands, Australia, Sweden, Israel and Italy. So that's all in this segment. Keep watching Speed Auto TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.speedwarstv.io or scan this QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. This is Shikha Singh. VDAs have been gaining strength against broader financial markets, particularly equity markets, in the last 24 hours. Bitcoin rose about $69,000 before retracting, so $68,720, up 3.4%. Financial markets are experiencing frequent volatility due to mixed macro indicators. The US non farm payrolls data could provide clarity on interest rate scenarios. Uh, the global cryptocurrency market capitalization increased 2.2% to $2.5 trillion in the last 24 hours, while the total crypto market volume fell 4% to $96.8 billion. Bitcoin's dominance is currently at 52%, up 0.5% over the day. Let us have a look at the buzzing crypto watch list for today and the week ahead. First on the list, we have Athena. Athena Protocol, known as ENA, the project behind USDE, has seen its total value lock surpass $2 billion, marking a 30% growth spurt. The protocol's 27% annual percentage yield and recent DNA token airdrop have attracted investors, with MakerDAO exploring a 600 million DAI allocation. The platform is supported by Delphi Digital, Wintermute, and Galaxy Digital. However, concerns have been raised by DeFi and Luminary and Rick Andre about USD potentially facing a collapse mirroring the Terra USD, also known as USD debacle. Athena's native token ENA saw a remarkable price increase from $0.62 to $1.25 in less than two days following a successful airdrop. Next on the list, we have Shiba Inu. K9 Finance is aiming to revolutionize the decentralized finance landscape on the Shibarium blockchain through its strategic plan. The roadmap consists of three phases, starting with the introduction of uh, Hesper in quarter two and en ending the launch of Boro on the mainnet. The final phase, which is K9, aims to create a decentralized liquid staking product on Shibarium. The project is aligned with the community's vision and Shibarium's technological capabilities, making it a formidable contender in the blockchain space. Next on the list, we have Dogecoin. The resurgence of long dormant investors known as the ancient Doge Whale has sparked significant interest in the crypto community, especially as it coincides with Doge Day on April 20th. This resurgence is akin to past ICOs such as Ethereum's, where participants have been closely monitored. Dogecoin, the eighth largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization, has seen a surge in popularity with each token priced at $0.17. However, the cryptocurrency experienced a 19% decline in the price in April, contrasting with a significant growth from February to March when its value soared by 180%. As the ancient Doge whale re-emerges into active trading, the cryptocurrency community awaits further developments and assesses its potential impact on the market trend, especially as Doge Day approaches. Next on the list, we have Ethereum. In quarter one, the market experienced significant volatility with top altcoins like Ethereum and Bitcoin experiencing significant rallies. Ethereum's quarter one report showed promising growth in income, fees and revenue with a total number of holders reaching $114 million. ETH's circulating market capitalization increased by 48% and exceeding $350 billion. However, Ethereum's PF ratio dropped, indicating undervalued assets. AMB Crypto plans to check Ethereum's metrics to predict price movement 
Cryptocon's data showed a drop in uh, Ethereum's exchange reserve, a low selling pressure and increased transaction volume. The derivatives market appeared optimistic with Ethereum trading at $3,319 with a market capitalization of over $398 billion. Next on the list we have XRP. Ripple is set to launch a stablecoin pack to the US dollar this year with projections suggesting the market will surpass $2.8 trillion by 2028. The stablecoin will be fully collateralized by US dollar deposits, short-term US investors, government treasuries and other cash equivalents. Ripple will publish a monthly attestations of reserve assets audited by a third-party accounting firm. This move positions Ripple as a competitor to established uh, stablecoin market leaders like Tether and Circle. The stablecoin will initially launch on the XRP ledger and Ethereum blockchains, but will eventually expand to other blockchains, DeFi protocols and various applications. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3.TV or log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Hello and welcome to 3.0TV, this is Shikhar Singh. Mirror World, a leading web 3 application development platform, has launched the first gaming roll-up on Solana, marking a significant milestone in the evolution of decentralized gaming ecosystems. The Solana Virtual Machine, also known as SVM Computation Engine, named Sonic, enables developers to deploy game engines or virtual machines on Solana using Mirror World Software Development Kit SDK. Sonic facilitates seamless in-app transactions, providing a streamlined experience for gamers and developers. Mirror World's cutting-edge technology, Hypergrid, enables gaming platforms to establish their own on-ramp and cross-chain decentralized exchange aggregators for Solana, fostering vibrant in-game interactions and transactions. The Mirror World SDK has been embraced by 50 gaming clients, serving as initial distribution nodes. Notable games such as Mahjong Meta, Matrix Fire, and Serav uh, Actors Soft have already integrated the SDK, resulting in over 200,000 traffic and transaction engagements during gaming sessions. Mirror World CEO Chris Zhu emphasized Sonic's pivotal role in expanding Solana's gaming horizon, stating that it provides natively integrated tools for payment and settlement infrastructure and user engagement tools necessary for building successful Web3 games. The platform also offers a smart marketplace. SDK enabling developers to integrate a non-fungible token marketplace with their decentralized applications. Solana, now ranked among the top five blockchains by market capitalization, has seen a remarkable surge of 824% over the past year. With Sonic SVM at its core, Mirror World's first gaming roll-up promises to redefine the gaming experience on the blockchain, paving the way for a new era of innovation and engagement in the Web3 gaming ecosystem. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3.0TV or log. Hello and welcome to 3.0TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Since the introduction of spot Bitcoin ETFs in the US, Cathy Wood's ARK21 shares Bitcoin Exchange Traded Fund has had daily outflows of more than $87 million, the largest amount for the fund compared to Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust. On April 2nd, the ARK21 shares fund had an outflow of $87.5 million or almost 1300 BTC according to preliminary data from Farsight Investors. Well, Grayscale, which has posted consistent outflows every trading day since converting to a spot ETF, posted yet another daily outflow of $81.9 million. Notably, GBTC saw a very modest outflow on this particular trading day compared to the previous five trading days when it lost $254 million on average every day. Over the last three months, Grayscale has lost over $15.1 billion in total, with $2.2 billion in assets under management, 
ARKB is still the third largest of the 10 recently launched spot ETFs, excluding Grayscale despite the withdrawals over the last two days. While well, ARKB trails behind BlackRock's and Fidelity's funds, which command respective assets under management of $14.1 billion and $7.6 billion. With almost 329,000 Bitcoin on its books as of 3rd April 2024, GBTC tops the group in terms of total Bitcoin holdings, even though it has lost an astounding 291,000 Bitcoin since becoming an ETF. Well, since the start of the month, the price of Bitcoin has been declining. It dropped almost 9% from its peak of $71,500 last week and momentarily dropped below $65,000 on April 3 due to a rise in ETF outflows. So that's all in this segment. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code for more such updates. Hello and welcome to 3 Auto TV, this is Shikha Singh. In a revolutionary moment for the world of digital communication, the Solana blockchain has successfully sent the first email that underlines the ongoing process of evolution and reverberating the importance of decentralization in effective communication. A new age of safe and decentralized communication on the Solana network has begun with the ability for users to send and receive emails with ease using only their wallet address thanks to the creator's SoulMail protocol. But what exactly is SoulMail? Solana, renowned for its high-performance blockchain infrastructure, is a leading decentralized platform behind innovative applications like SoulMail. SoulMail is a communication protocol built on Solana's robust blockchain architecture, which simplifies email communication by using wallet addresses as a unique identifier. This eliminates intermediaries and ensures direct peer-to-peer -peer communication. It offers unprecedented security and privacy for user communications with every email sent through it protected by encryption, providing end-to-end -end protection against unauthorized access or tampering. The platform's lightning-fast transaction speed and low fees makes it an ideal platform for implementing such applications. SoulMail is designed to protect sensitive information and maintain the integrity of the communication network. Its integration with the Solana blockchain ensures immutability and transparency with every email sent permanently recorded on the blockchain. This not only improves accountability but also provides a decentralized solution for email storage and retrieval. SoulMail's simplicity and efficiency makes it accessible to a wide range of users from individual enthusiasts to companies seeking secure communication solutions. Users can send and receive emails seamlessly with a simple wallet address allowing them to have greater control over the data. The integration with Solana ecosystem opens up possibilities for future decentralization communication developments including multimedia support, decentralized file sharing and integration with other Solana-based applications. The success of the first email launch on Solana via SoulMail is a testament to the blockchain community's collaborative spirit paving the way for a decentralized and democratized communication network. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3 TV or log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Do you find peace and tranquility in the Middle East structure of a historical significance? Here is a one such structure that will definitely make you feel elated. Of course, in the virtual world. Porcelain Tavo of Nanjing, one of the seven wonders of the Middle Age, is a 15th century Asian tiered structure or pagoda in China which was once admired by people all over the world. The tower was destroyed and demolished by the Taipings during the course of the Taiping Rebellion in the 19th century. In the year 2010, it was reconstructed and the modern replica and the surrounding park were opened to the public. 
You can explore this historical site and visualize periphery, how it flourished in those good old days through the metaverse. Hello and welcome to 3 Doro TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. Porcelain Tavo Heritage Park is a cultural symbol and historical landmark in Nanjing, China. In 2023, China's Ministry of Culture and Tourism launched a metaverse initiative to build a digital replica of the Heritage Park. Well, the project selected as one of the first batch of 42 immersive smart tourism experience spaces to be developed will soon be a reality. All the visitors can explore the virtual museum along with the Metaverse Experience Chamber, VR Interaction, Digital Companions and the restoration of the cultural heritage site. All you need to do is step into the installation and create a digital avatar. Yes, it's that simple. All the visitors can scan a QR code on their mobile phones and explore the venue in person. Your avatar will appear on the screen within the virtual world of the Porcelain Tower site. Well, this interactive experience is divided into eight stages, each corresponding to eight key attractions in the Porcelain Tower Heritage Park. Not only that, you can also engage in fun mini games and interactive scenarios in the virtual space and enhance your understanding of these cultural relics. So get ready to explore history in an exciting manner in the metaverse. That's all in this story. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me Vishakha Thakur signing off. Hello and welcome to 3 TV. I'm your host Shubham Joshi. United States, the world's largest economy Tuesday, moved Bitcoin connected to the Silk Road marketplace to a new address. According to data from Blockchain on April 2, a wallet known to be associated with the US Justice Department made a 0.001 Bitcoin transaction to a Coinbase Prime address, possibly as a test transaction. Shortly thereafter, the same wallet transferred 30,174 Bitcoin or roughly $2 billion at the time of publication to a new address. The authority had seized 50,000 bitcoins from James Zong, who in 2022 was convicted of charges connected to unlawfully obtained crypto from Silk Road. But in 2021, US authorities raided his property and discovered hard wallets containing bitcoin, including one on a single board computer that was submerged under blankets in a popcorn tin. And the bulk of the seized crypto was sent to the same address that moved more than 30,000 bitcoins on April 2. Well, the Silk Road marketplace, defunct for more than 10 years, allowed users to buy and sell illicit goods, including weapons, drugs, and stolen credit card information. Well, US authorities arrested its creator, Ross, in 2013. He is serving two life sentences without the possibility of parole. Earlier in March 2023, the US government authorities sold roughly 9,861 bitcoins of the crypto seized from Zong for more than $215 million, leaving roughly 40,000 bitcoins. Well, the latest transaction followed the price of bitcoin, dropping more than 7% to reach $65,475. Meanwhile, Benjamin Skew, an on-chain data expert, took to social media to offer insights into the situation. Skew clarified that although there is chaos surrounding the Silk Road Bitcoin being sent to the Coinbase for sale, a closer examination reveals that the main funds were transferred to a newly created wallet that remains inactive. Currently, Bitcoin price lack of bullish momentum and face resistance in consolidating above the crucial $70,000 threshold. However, there is still hope on the horizon. Given the bloated debt levels of US, the Fed is likely to cut rates rapidly, offering a major bullish tailwind to crypto prices. Well, that's all into a special segment. This is me, Shubham Joshi, signing off. For more such interesting updates and market analysis, keep watching 3.0TV or log on to our website or scan the QR code. Thank you. Hello and welcome to 3.0 TV. I'm your host Shubham Joshi. 
Ethereum, the largest blockchain network by transaction volume, has posted a significant growth in the first quarter of 2024, seeing positive trends across most income statement measures. Coin98 Analytics data shows that Ethereum's earnings in Q1 2024 tripled on a quarter-over-quarter -quarter basis to $369 million, representing a 210% year-over-year growth from $119 million in Q1 2023. Ethereum's Q1 2024 revenue and fees grew by 85% and 79% respectively over the previous quarter. Ethereum also generated $1.2 billion in revenue from transaction fees in Q1 2024, a 155% increase from Q1 2023. Well, in Q1 2024, total Ethereum income reached $1 billion, up 186% from $385 million in the same period the previous year. Well, Ethereum's glory in the first quarter of 2024 coincided with the cryptocurrency's close to all-time high values in the month of March, which caused a sharp increase in network transaction costs. Some users claim to have paid over $100 in transaction fees during peak periods when Ethereum's price spiked over $3,000 in late February. Ethereum demonstrated a notable increase in network utilization in Q1 2024 despite the fact that users of the network were subject to enormous fees. The first quarter of 2024 saw an increase in Ethereum transactions overall with a quarter-over-quarter -quarter surge of 8.4% reaching over 107 million transactions. With a 14% increase in market value from the previous quarter, Tether USDT continued to be the largest Ethereum-based or ERC-20 stablecoin by market capitalization in Q1 2024. Its biggest rival, USDC, increased ERC-20 market value by 23% quarter over quarter. Well, that's all in today's special segment. This is me, Shubham Joshi, signing off. For more such interesting updates and market analysis, keep watching 3.0TV or log on to our website or scan the QR code. Thank you. What's up, gamers? Is it just me or you all feel like CJ from GTA? Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. I was so not prepared for this week after a long weekend. Anyways, let's get to the point. So all my gaming junkies would agree to this that GTA 6 is the most anticipated game set to be released between January and April 2025 for Xbox Series and PlayStation 5. But what if I tell you that Web3 has its own version of GTA? Gamers, fasten your seatbelts, ready yourself because Wilder World is ready to set the stage on fire. Web3 game Wilder World has been given a listing on the Epic Game Store ahead of its as of yet unscheduled launch. The publisher of Wilder World is referring to Wilder World as the ultimate game. The game also offers the free roam a virtual world that begins in Miami, a metaverse city to explore, race, socialize and much more according to a press release. Every object in the world including furniture tools, land and avatars will be traded into digital assets on the wilder world market. The game's team said that in order to address the flaws in classic AAA games like Grand Theft Auto and Cyberpunk, the game will combine leading game genres into a single immersive experience. The team plans to create a single and all-encompassing game called Wilder World that combines the racing, mining and first-person shooter genres. A proprietary blockchain will be used to build the Wilder World. In order to maintain low fees, the team is working with Polygon and Celestia to build a custom, scalable blockchain as well as working with a meta-gravity to power virtual worlds and thousands of players according to the news announcement. It also said by the game's developers that a proprietary cloud gaming system will eventually power the game. The game website states in a blog post that we are actively developing our own cloud gaming service that provides increased reliability and hardware guarantees as well as optimization for metaverse and web3 gaming with the use of nvidia gpus however the post notes that this is an early venture and goes on to say that a launch wilder world will be available on nvidia's streaming gaming service geforce now the team's roadmap indicates that limited functionality will be launched to players over the next 12 to 18 months with the racing portion of the game available during what they're calling act one and the combat portion available as act three 
Well, we will definitely review when the game gets launched. Until then, keep watching Freedoto TV. Do like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, do log on to our website www.3verse.tv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Hello and welcome to Fleet Auto TV. The firm behind the eponymous cryptocurrency exchange Binance Holdings has appointed seven executives and independent members to its board of directors. The website of Binance states that Gabriel Abed, a former Barbados ambassador to the United Arab Emirates, is now the chair of the company's board of directors. Roger Wang, Rocky Zin Wang, CEO of Bayview Acquisition Corporation, at Nord Ventura. Managing partner of Kojo and Company and Binance CEO Richard Teng were among the other members. One of the biggest changes in Binance management since Teng became CEO in November 2023 and left his role as head of regional market is probably the creation of the board. Chang Ping Zhao, the former CEO of Binance, stepped down from his position at about the same time as part of a settlement deal with US authorities. Binance agreed to pay $4.3 billion in penalties as part of the agreement with the U.S. Justice Department, Treasury Department and Commodity Futures Trading Commission. CZ entered a guilty plea to one felony count regarding his fellow to keep the cryptocurrency exchange anti-money laundering program up to date. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission may still take enforcement action against Binance after Zhao is anticipated to be sentenced on April 30th. Under Zhao's leadership, Binance, which was established in China in 2017, became one of the biggest cryptocurrency exchanges globally, with the majority of its staff and operations remaining decentralized. The company operates in France and its European business and the United Arab Emirates for its Middle East and North Africa activity. In accordance with the terms of its agreement with US authorities, Binance had to establish an independent board of directors as well as audit and compliance committees. In December 2023, Teng declared his intention to submit a report to the board. Well, that's all for today. This is me, Roshni Shingre, signing off. For more such updates, watch 3.tv or log on to our website www.3worldtv.io or scan the QR code. Thank you. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchu Sharma. The FTX bankruptcy estate has set a goal to begin repaying customers by the end of 2024, according to notes from a meeting of FTX Digital's joint official liquidators in the Bahamas. Because of the hopelessly commingled nature of FTX's accounting, FTX's bankruptcy is comprised of two distinct processes that are proceeding concurrently. The official liquidation process of FTX Digital, FTX's subsidiary based in the Bahamas and the Chapter 11 bankruptcy being decided in a Delaware court in the United States. Nonetheless, the parties involved in the state have decided to cooperate so that creditors can make claims to either organization and that none of them will be underpaid. In order to do this, the notes from the conference on March 15 said that the joint official liquidators and the Chapter 11 debtors have a shared goal to make the first interim distribution by the end of 2024 to creditors with admitted claims and satisfactory KYC documentation. On March 1st, the claim site for FTX became live, enabling creditors to make claims. The conference stated that the deadline for creditors to select one of the two bankruptcy processes and file a claim is presently set for May 15th, but the date is now expected to be extended to at least June 2024 based on recent developments. The Bahamian claims, like the Chapter 11 claims, will be valued as of November 11th, 2022, the original date of the bankruptcy claim. That's all in the story for now. This is me, Ruchu Sharma, signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. and for more information stories, log on to our website www.3worsting.io or scan the QR code.
Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. OpenSea, a platform for trading non-fungible tokens, has expanded its support for the ERC 721C token standard, which enables creators to establish and enforce royalties. The announcement states that OpenSea developers may now enforce revenues with a single click. ERC 721C, developed in May of last year by the blockchain gaming startup Limit Break, standardizes token transfer requirements, including royalties, across all channels, therefore resolving the issue of NFT wash trading. Prior to its creation, users could transfer NFTs through self-custody wallets or even other NFT marketplaces that disregarded creators' royalties obligations, so avoiding creative royalty commissions on secondary markets like OpenSea and Block. In the long run, this allowed for the incentivization of zero-fee royalty optional trading with airdrops, effectively turning tokens intended to be non-fungible into proxies for fungible tokens, Limit Break explained in a Medium post, adding that traders were incentivized to farm tokens by wash trading NFTs among their own wallets, which is bad for the NFT industry. According to OpenSea developers, the Ethereum network's March 13 Denkun patch was the sole thing that made ERC 721C compatible. Creators can continue to manually offer their digital artwork on other markets following the implementation of their ERC 721C contracts on OpenSea, but OpenSea will also match the lowest royalties that the artist has set for other platforms. Additionally, the compatibility works with OpenSea's C port 1.6, which configures NFTs to sell only in specific scenarios such as modifying metadata based on amount of sales. Usually between 2.5% and 10% per sale, NFT royalties are mostly determined by the product's inventor. Since their launch, the top 10 NFT collections have brought in approximately $345 million in royalties. That's all the story for now. This is Amir Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information and stories, log on to our website www.3hostv.io or scan the QR code. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am your host Vishakha Thakur. In today's Deal Corner special segment, we have brought you to Web3 Space in this week's top-notch hand-picked deals. But before we take a look at this week's special updates, for the Ethereum Layer 2 Scaling Network Optimism Community Distribution, we have released our $3.3 billion Optimism Token release. टोटल सर्कुलेटिंग सप्लाई का 20 प्रतिशत यानी कि 850 मिलियन ओपी टोकन मई से शुरू होकर 2024 तक जारी रहने वाले चार राउंड में डिस्ट्रीब्यूट किए जाएंगे चौथा राउंड ऑन चेन बिल्डर्स पर ध्यान केंद्रित करेगा जबकि राउंड 5 से 7 तक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर गवर्नेंस और डेवलपिंग टूल्स कंट्रीब्यूटर्स को रिवॉर्ड किए जाएंगे OP token उन projects और individuals को allocate किए जाते हैं जिन्हें blockchain ecosystem में important contributor माना जाता है। तो आइए बढ़ते हैं इस हफ्ते की Web3 space की पहली deal की तरफ। Decentralized artificial intelligence applications पर focused modular blockchain के developer Zero Gravity Labs या Zero Tree Labs ने अपने pre-seed funding round में 35 million dollars चुरा लिए हैं। इस फंडिंग राउंड में हैक वीसी, ओकेएक्स वेंचर्स, जीएसआर, एनिमोका ब्रांड्स, आरका, एनसीसी वेंचर्स, डीडब्ल्यूएफ लैब्स, फोरसाइट वेंचर्स, गमी क्रिप्टो कैपिटल और डिस्पोजन कैपिटल ने हिस्सा लिया था। ये टोकन वॉरेंस के साथ फ्यूचर एक्विटी के लिए एक सिंपल अग्रीमेंट के रूप में स्ट्रक्चर्ड 
अब बढ़ते हैं इस हफ्ते की दूसरी डील की तरफ फ्रैंकफर्ट बेस्ड गेमिंग स्टूडियो गांजिला गेम्स ने अपने आगामी वेब थ्री टाइटल ऑफ द ग्रिड के विकास को बढ़ावा देने के लिए कंबाइंड फंडिंग में 30 मिलियन डॉलर्स जुटाए हैं ये साइबर पंक बैटल रॉयल थर्ड पर्सन शूटर स्टूडियो के ब्लॉकचेन बेस्ड प्लेटफॉर्म गन्स के साथ साथ बढ़ते हुए डेवलपमेंट रिसोर्सेज के साथ कैपिटल के इस इन्फ्लक्स से बेनिफिट होने के लिए तैयार है फंडिंग राउंड का नेतृत्व कॉइन फंड और एवेलांच के ब्लेजर्ड फंड ने किया था जिन्होंने रिपब्लिक कैपिटल और मॉर्निंग स्टार वेंचर्स सहित अन्य हिस्सेदारों के साथ टोकन फंडिंग में 10 मिलियन डॉलर्स का योगदान दिया था अब बढ़ते हैं इस हफ्ते की तीसरी डील की तरफ लेयर वन ब्लॉकचेन पीक ने अपने डिसेंट्रलाइज फिजिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर नेटवर्क के इकोसिस्टम का विस्तार करने के लिए 15 मिलियन डॉलर्स की फंडिंग जुटाई है जेनरेटिव वेंचर्स और बॉर्डरलेस कैपिटल ने इस फंडिंग राउंड का नेतृत्व किया था जिसमें कि स्पार्टन ग्रुप सी ग्लोबल और एनिमोका ब्रांड्स ने हिस्सा लिया था ये फंडिंग राउंड ब्लॉकचेन के मेन नेट लॉन्च और पीक टोकन की लिस्टिंग से पहले आता है डीप इन का तात्पर्य फिजिकल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर नेटवर्क्स बनाने के लिए ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी और टोकन इंसेंटिव्स का उपयोग करना है ताकि अन्य प्रोजेक्ट्स को अपने स्वयं के इक्विपमेंट्स खरीदने और चलाने की आवश्यकता न पड़े यू समझिए की डीप इन एमेजोन वेब सर्विसेज या गूगल क्लाउड का एक डिसेंट्रलाइज वर्जन है अब बढ़ते हैं इस हफ्ते की चौथी डील की तरफ एलेक्सर गेम्स ने अपना सीड फंडिंग राउंड सक्सेसफुली कंक्लूड करके 14 मिलियन डॉलर्स जुटा लिए हैं इस फंडिंग राउंड में अन्य प्राइवेट एंटिटीज के अलावा स्क्वायर एनएक्स द सोलाना फाउंडेशन और शीमा कैपिटल ने हिस्सा लिया था रिपोर्ट्स के अनुसार फंडिंग का उपयोग एलेक्स टोकन लॉन्च करने में किया जाएगा जो कि लॉन्च पैड और इंक्यूबेशन प्रोग्राम के साथ साथ एलेक्सर गेम्स के प्रोडक्ट्स को पावर करेगा निवेशक विशेष रूप से एलेक्सा के लॉन्च पैड और इनक्यूबेशन प्रोग्राम की ओर और आकर्षित हुए और जिसने कि वेब थ्री गेमिंग टाइटल्स के अपने पोर्टफोलियो के लिए एक सरल लॉन्च प्रक्रिया की पेशकश की अब बढ़ते हैं इस हफ्ते की आखिरी डील की तरफ वेब थ्री गेमिंग फॉर्म एलुवियम ने अपने सीरीज ए फंडिंग राउंड से 12 मिलियन डॉलर्स जुटा लिए हैं इस फंडिंग राउंड में ऑस्ट्रेलियन वेंचर कैपिटल फॉर्म किंग रिवर कैपिटल आरिंगटन कैपिटल और एनिमोका वेंचर्स ने हिस्सा लिया था फंडिंग का उपयोग एलुवियम इकोसिस्टम के भीतर नए गेम्स विकसित करने के लिए किया जाएगा क्योंकि कंपनी 2024 की दूसरी तिमाही में नए गेम्स रिलीज करने के लिए कमर कस रही है तो आज के एपिसोड में फिलहाल इतना ही अगले हफ्ते हम फिर मिलेंगे वेब थ्री स्पेस में तहलका मचाने वाली एक्साइटिंग न्यू डील्स के साथ तब तक आप थ्री डॉट टीवी को लाइक शेयर और सब्सक्राइब करें और ऐसी ही इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरीज के लिए लॉग ऑन करें हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट थ्री वर्स टीवी डॉट आईओ पर या फिर स्कैन करें क्यू आर कोड TV stay connected with the world of blockchain Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs Come explore and evolve with 3.0 TV in the metaverse So many coins so much volatility 3.0 TV delivers the news that matters नोस्ट्रोडामस बाबा वेंगा और महाभारत के सहदेव में एक बात क्या कॉमन है आप जानते हैं कहते हैं कि इन तीनों लोगों के पास भविष्य को देखने की दिव्य शक्तियां थी अगर फिक्शनल वर्ल्ड की बात करें तो मैट्रिक्स फिल्म में नियो को अपना फ्यूचर बताने वाली ओरिकल और नेक्स्ट फिल्म में जादूगर का किरदार निभाने वाले निकोलस केज के पास भी भविष्य को देखने की शक्ति थी अब अगर क्रिप्टो करेंसी और ब्लॉकचेन की दुनिया की बात करें तो यहां पर भी एक ऐसा गुमनाम शख्स है जिसकी बिटकॉइन को लेकर की गई भविष्यवाणियां सच साबित हो रही हैं। जी हां हम बात कर रहे हैं दुनिया की पहली और सबसे बड़ी क्रिप्टो करेंसी बिटकॉइन के जनक सातोशी नाकामोटो की 
2009 में ईजाद हुए बिटकॉइन का शुरुआती मूल्य मात्र छह पैसे प्रति बिटकॉइन था और अब फेबररी 2024 में वही एक बिटकॉइन तकरीबन 47 लाख रुपीस पर ट्रेड कर रहा है 2009 में बिटकॉइन बनाने के बाद सातोशी नाकामोटो 2011 में अचानक डिजिटल दुनिया से गायब ही हो गए ना चिट्ठी ना कोई संदेश पता नहीं कहां वो चले गए और आज तक सातोशी नाकामोटो कौन है वो एक व्यक्ति है या एक समुदाय है ये बात इक्कीसवीं सदी का एक बहुत बड़ा राज बनकर रह गई है लेकिन 2011 में गायब होने से पहले उन्होंने अपने साथी मार्टी मालवी को कुछ ईमेल्स भेजे थे और उसमें उन्होंने बिटकॉइन को लेकर जो भविष्यवाणियां की थी वो आज 2024 में सच साबित हो गई है जिसे देखकर तो ये लगता है कि जैसे सातोशी नाकामोटो के पास कोई जादुई क्रिस्टल बॉल हो जिसमें उन्होंने भविष्य को देख लिया होगा खैर तो आइए जानते हैं कि आखिर वो तीन क्या भविष्यवाणियां थी जो आज सच साबित हो गई हैं। सातोशी नाकामोटो ने 2010 में कहा था कि अगर बिटकॉइन का उपयोग बढ़ा तो बिटकॉइन को बनाने में खपत होती ऊर्जा और बिटकॉइन माइनिंग से वातावरण पर पड़ता असर एक वैश्विक ज्वलंत मुद्दा बन जाएगा उनकी ये भविष्यवाणी आज सच साबित हो गई है अमेरिका के एनर्जी इंफॉर्मेशन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन के एक एनालिसिस के मुताबिक दुनिया भर के बिटकॉइन माइनर्स में 2023 में ऑस्ट्रेलिया में होते पावर कंसम्पन के बराबर एनर्जी का उपयोग किया है बिटकॉइन माइनिंग में खपत होती ऊर्जा से ज्यादा मात्र में कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड का इमिशन होता है जिससे कि वातावरण पर विषम प्रभाव पड़ता है सातोशी नाकामोटो ने कहा था कि जैसे जैसे बिटकॉइन प्रचलित डिजिटल करेंसी बनती जाएगी वैसे वैसे उस पर दुनिया भर की सरकारों द्वारा बिटकॉइन की गतिविधियों को नियंत्रित करने का प्रयास बढ़ता जाएगा आज ये बात भी सच साबित हो गई है अगर भारत की बात करें तो बिटकॉइन जैसी डिजिटल करेंसी में ट्रेड करने पर भारत सरकार ने 30 प्रतिशत टैक्स और 1 प्रतिशत टी लागू कर दिया है विश्व के कई देशों ने बिटकॉइन जैसी क्रिप्टो करेंसी को लेकर रूल्स और रेगुलेशन लागू कर दिए हैं जिसका प्रमुख उदाहरण है अमेरिका में हाल ही में लॉन्च हुआ स्पॉट बिटकॉइन ईटीएफ जिसको सिक्योरिटी एंड एक्सचेंज कमीशन ने अप्रूवल दे दिया है जिसकी वजह से अब ब्लैक रॉक और फिडेलिटी जैसे बड़े बड़े नामी गिरामी इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स भी बिटकॉइन पर दाव लगाने लगे हैं और फाइनली सातोशी नाका ने ये भी कहा था कि आने वाले समय में लोग अपनी आइडेंटिटी छुपाकर बिटकॉइन द्वारा पैसों की लेन देन कर पाएंगे और कुछ ऐसे लोग भी होंगे जो इसका गलत फायदा उठाएंगे ये बात भी सच साबित हो गई है जिसका चीता चाकता उदाहरण है डार्क वेब मार्केटप्लेस सिल्क रोड जिसको अब रेगुलेटर्स ने बंद कर दिया है पर सिल्क रोड मार्केटप्लेस पर बिटकॉइन द्वारा ड्रग्स खरीदने से लेकर किसी को शान से मारने की सुपारी देने जैसी अवैध गतिविधियां होती हैं पर इसमें बिटकॉइन का कोई दोष नहीं है बिटकॉइन एक टेक्नोलॉजी है और ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी की जननी है जिसके द्वारा आज दुनिया और भी ज्यादा ट्रांसपेरेंट और सुरक्षित बन रही है अंत में इतना ही कहना चाहूंगी कि बिटकॉइन के निर्माता सातोशी नाकामोटो की दीर्घ दृष्टि की दाद देनी पड़ेगी जिन्होंने बिटकॉइन के आविष्कार के साथ दुनिया ही बदल दी लेट्स होप आने वाले समय में आखिर सातोशी नाकामोटो कौन है इस रात से भी पर्दा उठ जाए तब तक के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉटो टीवी हमारे चैनल को लाइक शेयर और सब्सक्राइब जरूर करें और अधिक जानकारी के लिए हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट थ्री वर्स टीवी डॉट आयो पर लॉग ऑन करें या स्कैन करें क्यू आर कोड Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. This is Shikha Singh, Immutable, a leading developer and publisher of Web3 games, and Tab Nation, a leading Web2 game developer, have joined forces to create a diverse and inclusive Web3 gaming environment. Immutable is a top developer platform for creating and growing Web3 games on Ethereum, while Tab Nation is a well-known French mobile game publisher. Through the strategic partnership, Tap Nation and Immutable will enable the French publisher to make use of Immutable's scalability solution for games that provides Ethereum security, low cost, 
vast scale and EVM compatibility, all while bringing TAP Nation's substantial player base into the Web3 era. Head of Web3 at TAP Nation, Philip Lenormand, expressed excitement about the partnership, stating that it will help drive Web2 players into Web3 and take them on a new journey. TAP Nation is aiming to improve user experience by creating intuitive blockchain experiences and a user-friendly onboarding experience. The company will enhance the user experience on two popular mobile games, Giant Rush and Parking Jam. The partnership between TAP Nation and Immutable is currently in the process of developing the game, which is scheduled to release in a few months. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3.2TV or log on to our website www.3versetv.io or scan the QR code to know more. TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3Doto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3Doto TV delivers the news that matters. And welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Vishaka Thakur. Metaverse has become an important factor or key component in global business, be it education, real estate, aviation or healthcare. And the gaming industry is no exception. The Metaverse gaming industry is booming worldwide with countries like the United States leading the way in terms of user adoption and revenue generation. According to a report by Markets and Markets, the global Metaverse and gaming market is expected to be worth $120 billion by the end of 2028. So to understand the intricacies of Metaverse Gaming industry. I am joined by Mr. E. Paul Michael, the CEO of Oneverse Gaming. Welcome to 3 Dotto TV, sir. Thank you so much, Vishaka, for having me here. It's Tell a pleasure me. to have you, sir. So, sir, as I mentioned, Metaverse in the gaming market is expected to be worth $120 billion by the end of 2028. And gaming companies have already started uh, building uh, prototypes for Metaverse. For instance, the widely played Minecraft and Fortnite games as well as popular Roblox game platform have all incorporated many aspects of Metaverse. So, what are your opening remarks on booming Metaverse gaming industry and how is Metaverse going to play a role in shaping the future of the gaming industry? See, Metaverse as a company, uh, we are looking, um, you know, to to build platforms where synergies could happen. Okay. Now, what happens is when you look at the gaming spectrum, it's broadly divided into four categories. Uh, the first category is real money gaming. You have casual gaming. Uh, you have fantasy sports. You have esports. Now, if we could get in, you know, experiences to the players, uh, to the people which is submersive, which is immersive. So when you wear, you know, an equipment where you, know, you can exactly see, uh, you know, what's happening in a particular stadium right in your home, or probably if you want to face a ball of, you know, one of the best uh, bowlers. So all that synergies is possible with the uh, metaverse and immersive synergies where people can play real money games, people can play fantasy sports, e-sports, as well as casual games. So we are looking at building a platform on the metaverse where all these games are accessible to you know all the customers irrespective of age you know you know a, a small kid could play or probably a teenager could play uh, you know anybody could access uh, any kind of content and content is because we're covering all the four spectrums of gaming wow. uh, as i also um, as i just said you know esports real money gaming, casual games, and fantasies. All right, so talking about your strategic vision, with plans to acquire 13 gaming firms, your company Oneverse Gaming is clearly aiming for dominance in Metaverse. However, could you elaborate on uh, the long-term strategic vision behind this move and how does it fit into Oneverse's broader goals and aspirations within the evolving landscape of digital interaction? 
the, uh, to a large extent, when you you know when we look at potentials as an individual company, when we combine companies, uh, the sum of results are much more better, uh, or more ex you know it's more uh, uh, beneficial to companies when we join hands together. So as I always said in uh, a couple of uh, you know a couple of times in the past, uh, united we stand. So when we are going to get all these companies together. A lot of technology could be, you know, best practices could be followed. Uh, efficiencies in, uh, you know, giving customer experience could be followed. Uh, customer care could be more enhanced. User experience could be better. So when we when we when we try to merge all these companies together and get them on one platform, help them to, you know, develop more. So there are two benefits in the long run. One is. Everyone makes uh, the customers more benefited is because he has a wide range of uh, games to play. One. The second thing is it becomes operationally it becomes quite uh, uh, you know the bottom lines increases is because operationally we are well uh, uh, equipped because we are one platform right now. Right. All right. So you spoke about the benefits of merging all the platforms together, but integrating multiple gaming firms into a cohesive platform can present significant challenges. So how does Oneverse plan to navigate these integration challenges while ensuring a seamless user experience across the acquired properties which you are aiming for? Agreed. Yes, integration is going to be a challenge uh, because every company or every platform has a different technology, different mindset, different approach to business. So. What we are doing is in the next 18 month, months, we are going to plan a complete robust uh, technology roadmap where we can see the best practices of companies, uh, get the technology teams together, uh, get in robust uh, technology softwares, database integrations. So all that is you know, in the pipeline. But I, as I said, it's going to take us at least 18 months you know, to exactly look at those synergies in terms of technologies and integration. All right. So uh, if we talk about market differentiation, Metaverse is becoming increasingly competitive and prominent players such as Meta, Apple, Disney have already joined the Metaverse bandwagon. So how does Oneverse plans to differentiate itself from other platforms, especially considering the diverse range of offerings, uh, particularly in immersive gaming experiences? Uh, see, to answer a long question short, I would just go by the simple term called big, bigger, and biggest. So probably because we are uniform, at least in the Indian ecos ecosystem, because we are uniform, uh, getting all these platforms to be on one, uh, uh, all these gaming platforms to be on one particular thing, what we would say is the price pools, okay, okay. is going to be big, bigger, and biggest. So that is going to be one differentiating factor for us in the long run is because we're going to give out a lot of prizes which will really enhance the customer's uh, you know, thrill to play more, to, to get more engaging and stuff like that. And second most important thing that what we are going to drive as a company is to ensure that things are very simple to them. Okay. Usually the, in, in gaming platforms, there's too, much, there's too much of complexity. You play this, you get that, you do this, you do that. There is too many layers, there are too many tires, there are too many levels. But I'm going to ensure that there is simplicity. So two major differentiating factors would be, as I always say, big, bigger, biggest, and you know simplicity. So we're going to give a lot of prizes out there to customers and make it extremely simple for him to have a wonderful gaming experience. So price is going to be a major factor here and it is going to play a big role. Uh, well, building a vibrant and engaged community is often crucial for the success of digital platforms. So amidst the rapid expansion and diversification, what factors apart from the community engagement will drive the growth or adoption of Metaverse? See, there are two things that, again, uh, there are many points that we could talk about it in okay. terms of communities and stuff like that. But I will just highlight two major points. Uh, one is simplicity, as I've always said. Uh, keeping things very simple, keeping things very short and sweet. So whether it is player making a particular deposit or player trying to cash out, player trying to uh, use a particular interface or anything of that kind, I'm just going to make it in one term, simple. Okay. The second factor, though there are many other factors, but I'm just highlighting the two factors for you. The second factor is responsible gaming. Okay, so we're going to build systems where responsible gaming is being 
the utmost priority, age verifications, following the guidelines of every law of the land, uh, ensuring that there is, uh, you know, you have robust data securities, uh, to cite some examples, uh, in, in, to ensure that there is no malpractices. So when you look at community, when you look at that concept, so I would just say two things, simplicity and responsible gain. When I say responsible building, again, I reiterate, I tell you it is following the law of the land, uh, ensuring there is data uh, security in a, to a large extent, age verification, creating support systems, you know, for, you know, to ensure that there is uh, people having with gaming problems. We don't want people to have a lot of gaming problems either. So we're going to build support systems even for that. All right. So a major player should mainly focus on responsible gaming. Apart from that, as you spoke about privacy challenges, there are various roadblocks on the path to metaverse integration in various sectors, such as privacy, of course, and interoperability issues. So how and when will these be resolved? And is there a need for regulations? Uh, see, to a large extent, technology would play a major factor in terms of security, as you said. And, uh, and we have a robust, uh, you know, uh, IT laws in the country, which we will other to to a large extent and to the fullest, no, not to a large extent, but I think, but to the fullest, we will apply, you know, follow the, all the rules and regulations as per the IT rules and regulations as per the land of the law. Uh, but security in terms of data, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, other, other activities, other components will be other to a, to a large extent. All right. Thank you so much for being on 3 Daughter TV, Mr. Michael, and sharing your views and knowledge with our viewers. It was really great having you on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So this was Mr. E. Paul Michael, the CEO of OneVerse Gaming. He shared insights on the Metaverse gaming industry. Keep watching 3 Daughter TV. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. And for updates related to Web3, please log on to our website www.3versetv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and a very warm welcome to all the viewers of 3 Daughter TV. This is Shikha Singh. Artificial intelligence is driving emerging technologies like big data, robotics and IoT with generative AI expanding its possibilities. A 2024 IBM survey revealed that 42% of enterprise scale businesses have integrated AI into their operations and 40% are uh, considering AI for their organizations. These rapid changes in AI can have significant implications for various industries and society. AI has become a teacher, guide, friend, and even more to people worldwide. Holding answers to almost every question and the ability to think, it has astonishingly even passed multiple exams curated to identify the human mindset and thought process. And today, we have a very special guest with us, Mr. Snehal Dhru, to shed some light on how the AI sector is performing. Welcome to 3 Daughter TV, sir. Sure. So uh, the excitement around artificial intelligence is driving the market ahead with NVIDIA at the forefront. Uh, we have seen a remarkable jump in AI-based tokens such as Fetch.ai, Injective and Render. Uh, what are the factors driving the rally in the tokens? Sure. So I would say it all started last year, right? As soon as ChatGPT was launched, uh, it brought in a wave of understanding the potential of AI. 
and now everyone is moving towards AGI which is more like an artificial general intelligence. So as that progression happens, this entire movement, the rate at which the innovation is happening as well. Recently, Sora was launched, uh, the, the model which will be generally available for public at a later point in time. Uh, but all these innovations and the rate at which that is happening, the rate at which the industries are, are adapting these technologies, the uh, infrastructure required to kind of make this happen also has the requirement. And that's why we've seen a big rally in uh, like NVIDIA's value into the ecosystem. But at the same time, anybody in this space and any value that anybody brings in, including like the AI coins and the way uh, things operate, also brings in that value. And that's why we're seeing like a big shift uh, into the space as well is because this space I would say is like, like super hot. Anything that you touch today and any value, true value that you can create uh, into the space is only uh, like a gold rush today that everybody needs to tap into. Alright, so uh, we've also seen how Kerala's KTCT school has uh, recently launched IRIS, India's first AI teacher. Uh, do you think this will become a norm in the near future and what impact do you think this uh, will have on India's education sector? Wonderful question. Uh, I think AI in education or AI in any sector today, I think every industry is exploring and education is definitely like a promising. Uh, I would say like top three advantages of AI in education. One is personalized education, what it can bring to the table. So today everyone has a different level of adapting knowledge and different pace as well. Uh, today with just a single human or few teachers in a classroom setup, uh, limits the way the knowledge is adopted, but the way AI can play a role is personalizing that entire process. The second is accessibility. So let's say me being a Gujarati, I am, maybe I'm better to learn in that language rather than the traditional English, Hindi or whatever the local dialect is. So adapting AI and adding these you know, newer formats of engagement in a more assistive manner uh, you know, provides tremendous value because in the end, education is something that you want to get through and not just, just a check mark. Today we've realized learning is all about, you know, having skills rather than saying I have this certificate and, you know, this is what I've read. But can you actually practice it? Can you practice that skill? That becomes very important. Third is the level of insights. Because it's personalized, because it's accessible, the amount of data that you can gather, gather now uh, from every interaction that a student is doing with that AI teacher provides you that insight uh, to make sure real-time changes can be brought into or more emphasis on certain parts of the uh, education curriculum uh, to make sure the information is uh, passed through and the skill set is truly transformed. Uh, of course, it comes with its own challenges uh, that <laughs> To me, AI is never about uh, replacing something, it's about enabling something, enhancing something. So I would say just having an AI teacher is not a replacement of human beings. Human beings have to be part of it. That emotional, uh, that direct connection is very important uh, while AI helps you with everything else. But it's more an assistive function to a teacher's role and the amount of education that can be imparted at scale truly becomes accessible and available. All right, so the health sector is also the torchbearer of the AI's use cases. Be it uh, developing medicines or carrying out the critical operations, you know, or detecting various kinds of diseases. Healthcare is uh, going to witness a sea change in the way we approach medicine. What are your thoughts on the same? So again, a wonderful question and a pretty inter interesting industry because I think over the years we're realizing that the aging process, though, is, is part of it. There are several diseases to what it they used to be. But the aging process overall, like the average age of a human being, is definitely increasing. Even though st stats, what they say otherwise. Uh, the way AI brings value to this entire thing is a naked eye, you know, has essentially, or a human being essentially, has uh, different permutations and combinations, mood sentiments to the knowledge, uh, to the referential information available to kind of detect something. But what AI can do at multitude and the level and scale uh, truly increases. So again, it's empowerment as an additional tool, as an additional eye uh, that AI brings in into the healthcare space. The, and we, we've seen over the past few years as well, the iteration of uh, you know, testing or validating information or the permutations and combinations, what AI enables us to do. Uh, apart from the traditional mechanisms what we used to do earlier, has phenomenally gotten faster and faster. What that essentially brings is 
uh, when disease is coming, disease come in, uh, the level of which the uh, the testing needs to be done to make sure uh, you know a solution for that is brought into the market as soon as possible. That's what AI also empowers uh, is uh, bringing these things sooner than what we imagined and making the iteration process faster and faster. Uh, and you know, uh, scaling it at just on the level. So healthcare is definitely uh, out there to be disrupted by AI, and I think every everybody in, in this space is thinking about it and adapting it, and it's just going to uh, get at a different scale and new heights. So uh, fraud detection has become an important aspect when it comes to the evolving digital world. Uh, how do you see AI playing a role in controlling or containment of such activities prevalent in the decentralized world? Can you highlight uh, some real life examples? So um, I would say misuse and misinformation leads to eventually the fraud detect fraud frauds that are, that are happening today. Uh, it is very vital to understand that uh, while there is empowerment of uh, these technologies, there is misuse and uh, abuse of the technology as well. So it is very vital to make sure while it can be used for good, uh, we also use it for uh, detecting the misuse of it. And in this case, like frauds that can happen. Uh, we've seen examples where a police officer's image was used to create a video and then eventually used to scam people or scare people. We've also heard about situations where uh, voice artists are being called for auditions. Uh, they are paid peanuts and then they see a book released into a similar voice of theirs. So generative AI essentially has brought in lots of opportunities in the content space, but it also brought in lots of challenges. How do you uh, make it very effective that while it can be used for good, it can also be used for bad and uh, providing the right detection tools and uh, you know, working towards these challenges is what you know, we want to also, to, uh, also look forward to bringing those solutions out in the front. Uh, because whether in any format, whether it's in a visual format, whether it's in the audio scams that we've heard about, that people receive calls calls from their loved ones uh, asking for money and then people end up sending the money as well, making sure that, that fraud detection can occur at that level, that as you receive calls, as you receive this information, things can be validated before somebody actions, rather than, you know, we're only hearing it in the news afterwards. Very well said, sir. Uh, so moving on. Uh, in the digital age where entertainment is but a click away, uh, a silent yet powerful transformation is underway. Uh, how do you think AI is reshaping the entertainment industry? So, impact of AI and entertainment. I think it has multitude level, not only at the content creation, but in the marketing and advertising as well. So I would take one instance over the other. So let's say on content creation, it is making things faster where uh, instead of having a full, um, uh, full big blown studios or you know setups sets being made, uh, now using AI you can simulate a story. You can create uh, a visual uh, storyboard before actually investing too much money on creating a set. So it's simplifying you know creation of production of content at that level that you can actually visualize. You can bring things to life. It gives you multitude again of options. Uh, and combinations which you uh, in the uh, uh, previous avatar would only had to bring multitude of uh, designers, artists to kind of visualize that information. So it simplifies and fastens the entire process of uh, going from a text uh, content to like a visual content and then letting down, uh, le uh, going forward into production. The other applications are, of course, how do you make fan engagement or entertainment uh, accessible to like a lo lot of uh, population. We've seen a beautiful example for Amazon Prime. The way uh, on one of the content pieces uh, recently released, India Police Force, um, they essentially use AI in this case to have characters as you are accessing or ex viewing that content. You actually, depending upon which part of India or which part, region of the world you are accessing from, some of the talent actually gets replaced with that character so you can relate more. So bringing in more relatability into the content makes you feel that no, it's like the content next door. Uh, you know, it, it can happen in your backyard as well. So giving that accessibility, giving that speed of iteration, making um, the very, like a third great example on content is uh, making it multilingual. So eventually, the speech is going to get better the way robotic voices are today, but they are only getting better and better. So imagine that a talent 
let's say even like you know Amitabh Bachchan today, he won't be able to directly have a conversation in Tamil, but using AI, we can actually hear him speak Tamil. Uh, we've already seen at a national level that people are experimenting and testing voice iterations, but that's how you know it brings in value in this entire entertainment segment. That again, bringing in accessibility, the speed at which the content can be created, and the type of content that be, can be created as well, providing that A and B testing formats. Right, artificial intelligence is transforming the world, and uh, it is no secret that it is the future of growth. Thank you for your insightful information, Mr. Dhruv. It was great opportunity having you on Three Dot TV. This is me, Shakha Singh, signing off. Until then, keep watching Three Dot TV. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I'm your host Shubham Joshi. Web3 gaming sector is buzzing with a lot of activities these days. As the technology is continuously evolving, the sector appears more promising than ever. It is important to do a quick check on the latest developments and the future prospects. To give us his view and insight into the gaming sector and help us navigate through this most exciting Web3 vertical, I have been joined by Mr. Arad Malhotra, founder and CEO of Report to Earn and co-founder of Skyless Games. He was also included in Forbes 30 Under 30 Games 2016. On that note, let's invite a special guest. Welcome to Thetoto TV, sir. So my first question to you is, as crypto gaming has turned out to be one of the biggest narrative in this year's bull run, and we have witnessed how Bitcoin's price rise prompted the rise in the major gaming tokens like Ronin, Pixel, Axie Infinity. What, in your opinion, has led to this boom in Web3 gaming and GameFi sector, sir? Uh, it's a very exciting time, especially with the bull run coming back right now. Um, there's a lot of interesting things happening which are combining traditional gaming and the Web3 world. Uh, what's interesting is even at the market crash that happened over the last couple of years, uh, blockchain gaming was one of the few use cases that actually was not affected as badly as some of the other markets. So overall, it's a very, very exciting time. There's some very exciting uh, applications of gaming and gamification that have been integrated into Web3. And uh, from a market perspective, this is probably one of the most exciting times as uh, you know, crypto becomes mainstream. And gaming, of course, has been growing year after year uh, massively, especially after COVID. The amount of growth that we've seen uh, of overall gamers in the world is fantastic. Uh, I do want to take a second just to note that you know the idea of what a gamer is uh, has evolved over the years. There are close to 3 billion, or actually over 3 billion gamers in the world, which includes more gamers over the age of 51 than under the age of 18, and an average age of a gamer is 35. So, you know, sometimes we stereotype and think that gamers are only for those hardcore gamers or kids. That has changed. Continuing on that note, crypto projects, particularly blockchain-based games, have been highlighted in the media for negative reasons like scams, frauds, and cyber attacks. Even so, the industry has re-emphasized security measures to protect users and prevent potential scams. In contrast, we have also seen how Web3 Gaming has a lot of beneficial use cases. So, can you please highlight some of these examples? Absolutely. I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, because, you know, with the bull run, of course, come uh, a lot of negatives too, right? We saw in the last bull run that there was a lot of uh, pump and dumps and uh, 
fake projects essentially, but it's very important to emphasize on very positive use cases of Web3 and gaming in general. Uh, so there is an entire organization called Games for Change as an example that has for many, many years been focused on not using games just as an entertainment medium, but teaching people things, not just math and science, uh, but teaching them how to be better human beings or cultural exchange and stuff like that from a gaming perspective. For Web3 now, there's been a lot of great use cases, especially in the sustainability space, uh, looking at you know tokenizing things such as carbon credits. Um, there are also other use cases in terms of government. In fact, uh, we ourselves as Report to Earn are working on a use case uh, to make the world a better place by um, having people being rewarded for daily uh, reporting daily things. Uh, so there's a lot of very interesting use cases and a lot of positive impact that can be created just by leveraging the technology versus just being games being an entertainment product essentially or Web3 just being, uh, being about crypto. So I think I really want to emphasize that um, again, there's about you know, over maybe 70% of uh, coins out there actually might not survive, might not see the light of day. But some of these really strong use cases uh, beyond just the trading aspects are going to be the ones that survive and thrive. Not very different than the dot-com bubble back in the two early 2000s. All right, sir, you spoke very well about the use cases of Web3 Gaming. And there's a lot of optimism in the sector with new gaming projects being launched in 2024. And we have also witnessed projects designing efficient tokenomics for their games with some 250 million worth of tokens being unlocked in the March itself. So what are your thoughts about this? Uh, yes, so I mean, there's a lot of interesting projects that are happening. Uh, you know, Illuvium is obviously one which is very, very popular and uh, is doing pretty well, essentially. Um, interestingly, there hasn't been a big breakout success other than the first you know, major project, which is Axie Infinity. Um, and I think the reason for that is that right now, again, the use cases for gaming have not been refined very well. Uh, the, re the core reason for that is that people are too, you know, too focused on um, just the crypto side of things versus the fundamental solid game mechanics. So these four or five titles that we talk about, like I mentioned, Illuvium, Axie Infinity, um, you, know, uh, uh, you have Sandbox. These are, are successful because they have very strong game mechanics and they're fun to play. And then they integrate crypto into it. Uh, what I think a lot of developers are doing wrong today is that they're just trying to follow the markets and again, trying to hype up the coins and the tokenomics of the coin versus fundamentally creating fun games and then uh, trying to integrate essentially what the tokenomics should be in order to make it financially successful. Uh, but again, since you specifically asked about tokenomics, um, I think Axie is a very good example again because they actually failed with the initial tokenomics where the cost per coin became so high, which again to the average user meant that the point of entry into the game became extremely high. Uh, and then they modified that to have what we call as a dual token system where they had a more balanced economy. Uh, we can definitely talk more details, but the idea is that you do not want these games to be prohibitive. You actually want them to be welcoming so that there's higher sustainability in terms of user growth as well as user retention. All right, sir. A lot of investors and gamers believe that adding AI to Web3 games will spark an explosion of innovation. What are your thoughts about this and what is the relation between AI and gaming? If you can please highlight, sir. So AI and gaming go hand in hand for many, many years. Uh, I know it's become very popular now after the chat GPT age. And uh, again, for some of the younger generation, they think you know, AI is brand new. But um, AI and gaming, again, go hand in hand way back into you know, even before the 60s or the 70s. Um, and some of the strongest use cases of uh, AI were gaming. So for example, uh, Pac-Man, you know, a traditional game that even non-gamers would have played, uh, you know, the way that the ghosts follow you around is based on AI. Uh, so coming to present day, essentially, uh, AI and the way that it is progressing has multiple different uh, applications and multiple different ways to improve the gaming industry. Of course, the most obvious is having more sophisticated characters within the game, essentially. So your NPCs or non-playing characters and the way that they interact with you is going to be a lot more natural. 
uh, AI tools are also going to be used for the game development process itself. You know, game de development uh, is very, very expensive or has been very, very expensive and tedious essentially ne uh, needing uh, multi-talented teams and very, very high budgets. But thanks to a lot of AI tools from the graphics side to the music production that goes into games to, of course, the development itself, the amount of progress is extremely significant. Uh, and on the flip side, gaming itself has contributed to the success or the breakout of AI uh, because, uh, as we know, uh, the way AI has advanced is primarily because of GPUs, which are your graphical processing units. And these GPUs have been advanced in order to support use cases of gaming. So it's literally, uh, it's a marriage. Uh, AI can't really survive without gaming or cannot thrive without gaming. And on the flip side, uh, gaming has a lot to take from AI, both in terms of the development, the application, uh, as well as, you know, again, future ways of combining the two to create something very powerful. Well, thank you, Mr. Arad Malhotra, for explaining us the dynamics of the Web3 gaming sector. Well, that's all in today's special segment. This is me, Shobham Joshi, signing off. For more such interesting updates and market analysis, keep watching 3 Roto TV or log on to our website or scan the QR code. Thank you. And welcome to 3 Auto TV. I am Vashakha Thakur and you are watching The Coin Monitor. Virtual digital assets are making a habit of moving against broader financial markets, especially equity markets. In the last 24 hours, a similar pattern has emerged. The equities are trading lower, while VDAs are gaining strength, helping Bitcoin to erase most of the week's losses. Bitcoin, the largest crypto by market cap, was trading lower below $67,000. IC15 index of cryptocurrencies was trading down by 0.5% at 84,300 points. Of late, financial markets are witnessing frequent bouts of volatility as macro indicators presented mixed cues. Well, today's US non farm payrolls data would provide clarity on how the interest rate scenarios are shaping up. Well, the broader crypto markets are closely tracking Bitcoin. In other news, Binance has removed support for Bitcoin ordinals, a digital asset inscribed on a Satoshi, the lowest denomination of Bitcoin, as part of its efforts to streamline its NFT marketplace. Well, users will no longer be able to trade Bitcoin ordinals on the Binance NFT marketplace from April 18th. Well, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell reiterated the central bank's position on interest rates. He has underlined that recent readings on job gains and inflation have come in higher than expected. Moving on, trading volume in futures and options tied to cryptocurrencies on centralized exchanges rose 86.5% to a record high of $6.18 trillion, which is equivalent to three times the market cap of all cryptocurrencies. Meanwhile, as per the latest data from Commodity Futures Trading Commission, Hedge funds and trading advisors have ramped up their bearish bets on Bitcoin futures. Simultaneously, the so-called futures funding rate payments to traders based on difference between perpetual contract markets and spot prices is around a record high level. Funding rates represent trader sentiments in the perpetual swaps market. The global crypto market cap was at $2.49 trillion mark, decreasing 0.8% in the last 24 hours. However, the total trading volume increased by 10% to $100 billion. Going forward, Coinbase has become the largest registered cryptocurrency exchange in Canada, having successfully navigated the restricted dealer registration process. In other news, stablecoin supply on the Layer 1 blockchain network Solana has increased steadily since the beginning of the year, crossing the $3 billion mark during the past week. Meanwhile, stablecoin transfer volume on Solana surged by 164% to $1.4 trillion, reflecting the significant amount of activity the network has enjoyed. 
Eigen layer Ethereum second largest DeFi protocol by TVL is currently worth $12.4 billion and allows validators to earn extra rewards by securing actively validated services through restaking their staked ETH. Well, this innovative concept allows validators to secure new Ethereum features and potentially earn additional rewards. U.S. stock futures traded higher as investors focused on key labor data scheduled later in the day. Dow Jones futures increased by 0.15%, S&P 500 futures and Nasdaq 100 futures rose 0.24% and 0.23% respectively. Bitcoin was trading at $66,755, up by 0.8%. Ethereum, the second largest crypto, was up by 1.7% to trade at $3,280. Talking about Binance's BNB token, it was down by 2% to trade at $575. Next on the list, Solana Soul was down 7% and was trading at $172. Next on the list, Cardano's ADA token was down by 2.3% to trade at $0.56. Avalanche AVAX was trading at $44.9, lower by 4.7%. Polygon Matic was trading down by 2% to trade at $0.88. Doge, the popular meme coin, was trading down by 5.3% at $0.17. Next on the list, Shiba Inu was trading down by 1.5%. Ripple's XRP token traded at $0.57, down by 0.1%. And Polkadot was down by 3.5% to trade at $8.2. So that's all in the Coin Monitor. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. For more on such updates and market news, please log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. Three Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with Three Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. Three Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Binance has removed support for Bitcoin ordinals, a digital asset inscribed on Satoshi, the lowest denomination of Bitcoin, as part of its effort to streamline its NFT marketplace. Well, users will no longer be able to trade Bitcoin ordinals on the Binance NFT marketplace from April 18th, and the exchange advised users to withdraw their Bitcoin ordinals before May 18th. Airdrops, benefits or utilities linked to Bitcoin ordinals will no longer be supported from April 10th. Binance also advised Runstone's holders to withdraw their NFTs by this date to ensure they still receive associated tokens, utilities and benefits. The creators of popular Bitcoin ordinals project called Runstone sent the original parent inscription valued at 8 BTC around $525,000 worth to a wallet purported to belong to mythic Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto. Franklin Templeton, digital assets recently featured the rise of ordinal inscriptions in a new prospectus, highlighting the positive momentum in innovations on the Bitcoin blockchain. Singapore's Monetary Authority of Singapore has granted 3SR Markets its full major payment institution license, allowing it to, it to conduct over-the-counter spot and market-making services under the country's central bank. Well, the GSR Markets, founded in 2013 in the US, facilitates OTC crypto trading, derivatives market-making and venture capital investments. Singapore's regulatory efforts have led to many crypto companies seeking to offer their services within the country. With Crypto.com, Coinbase and Ripple receiving formal approval in 2023 and OKX and Bitco receiving in-principle approvals in 2024. Singapore is also cracking down on retail speculation by expanding its Payment Services Act, which includes custodial services for DPTs, token transfers, exchange and cross-border fund transfers. The Shiba Inu magazine article Building the Future K9 Finance's strategic vision for a DeFi revolution on Shibarium outlines K9 Finance's strategic plan to enhance the decentralized finance landscape 
on the Shibarium blockchain. Well, the roadmap consists of three phases, starting with the introduction of Hesper in late quarter two and ending with the launch of Boro on mainnet. The final phase, uh, K9A, aims to re realize K9 Finance's vision for a decentralized liquid staking product on Shibarium. Buzz, the K9 Finance DAO founder, emphasizes aligning the project's trajectory with the community's vision and highlights Shibarium's unique strengths, including its technological capabilities and the vibrant Shibami community as a formidable contender in the blockchain space. Hello and a very warm welcome. I am Ruchi Sharma. Ethereum's layer 2 scaling networks will hit a $1 trillion market capitalization in six years and will be made up of thousands of use case specific chains, according to analysts from investment manager Vanek. Basically, layer 2 refers to a secondary framework or protocol that is built on top of an existing blockchain system. The main goal of this protocol is to solve the transaction speed and scaling difficulties that are being faced by the major cryptocurrency networks like Ethereum. Layer 2 blockchains are poised to benefit from Ethereum's primary challenge, its limited capacity to process, store and compute data according to a report released on April 3rd by Digital Assets Research Head Matthew Sigil and Senior Digital Assets Investment Analyst Patrick Bush of Vanek. By projecting that Ethereum will have 60% of the market share across all public blockchains and then measuring the number of assets within the Ethereum ecosystem, Bush and Sigil were able to obtain their $1 trillion market value projection. According to Bush and Sigil, Ethereum's current work is concentrated on improving its processing of Layer 2 transaction data as seen by the latest Denkin upgrade that reduced L2 transaction costs by implementing the unique data-saving feature known as BLOPS. The analyst said there was future potential for substantially more revenues to be generated on L2s over the base Ethereum network. Let's have a look at the report about the top functioning L2s on the Ethereum network. Activity on Layer 2 solutions has picked up lately, and the optimism is driving its market capitalization higher. Seemingly, the rub-off effect is felt on other protocols as well. Let's discuss a couple of them. Polygon has managed to establish itself as a leader in the Layer 2 bridges space. The recent launch of Polygon ID enables users a more customized and safe blockchain experience. Arbitrum, a company well known for its creative scaling of Ethereum, makes use of a special optimistic roll-up mechanism. Arbitrum has placed itself as a major market player in Layer 2, scaling solution space dominating 46% of the space. Optimism has recently entered this space and is quick to acquire popularity. It stands out due to lower fees mechanism. Its TVL stands at $7.4 billion. Most recently, Optimism deployed fault-proof system from on OP Sepolia. Base introduced in the middle of 2023 facilitates quick transaction processing at a drastically lower costs, less than one cent, after the Ethereum Denkin update. Base's TVL has increased significantly to $3.8 billion. Blast has ascended as a pivotal force in the Layer 2 space, redefining the boundaries of scalability, speed, and cost efficiency. 
Blast TVL of $2.5 billion constitutes 7% of the Layer 2 scaling solution space. What's driving the optimism? Ethereum's Dencon upgrade is the key driver behind the popularity of the Layer 2 narrative and is set to boost adoption among developers in Web3. Valik Alice also pointed out that the valuation of the top seven Ethereum L2 tokens is currently $40 billion when completely diluted and that will rise to $100 billion with the introduction of many strong projects over the next 18 months. Let's understand in detail about the future prospects of the Layer 2s from our esteemed guests. You see there are around 46 uh, Layer 2s in the market right now and all of them solve one problem of scalability and also you know uh, reducing the gas fees as much as possible now the most popular of them is arbitrium which has around 18 billion dollar uh, in valuation in market cap uh, as per today so it's yet to be seen how how uh, you know they reach 1 trillion dollar in the ever evolving landscape of cryptos layer 2 solutions have emerged as a promising avenue offering scalability, enhanced transaction speeds, and reduced fees. Analysts believe that as 2024 progresses, these Layer 2 projects are poised to shape blockchain innovation, offering investors and enthusiasts a dynamic landscape to watch for transformative developments. That's all this special segment. We will meet again. Till then, keep watching 3 TV. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And for more such updates, please log on to our website www.3worldtv.io or scan the QR code. Auto TV stay connected with the world of blockchain. Stay up to date with infinite world of NFTs. Come explore and evolve with 3 Auto TV in the metaverse. So many coins, so much volatility. 3 Auto TV delivers the news that matters. Hello and welcome to 3Dotto TV. Blockchain technology is gaining popularity at a brisk pace. It has mesmerized the world of technology through some path-setting innovation. In a view of growing influence of newest technology features such as immutability and decentralization, many businesses and domains have started adopting blockchain technology in their enterprise suit. As per Statista estimates, by 2024, the spending on blockchain will reach almost $19 billion. That's a mind-boggling number. I'm sure several questions must be popping to your mind. The very basic questions would be, how does this technology help different industries? How can blockchain change the world around us? And what does its future look like? And many more. So to understand the current trends on blockchain technology, I'm joined by Mr. Yashodhan Ramdeke, founder of BlockBuzz Innovate. Welcome to 3 TV, sir. Hi, Roshni. So talking about the tokenization of assets, it is becoming increasingly popular in blockchain space. Uh, what are the examples of assets that can be tokenized? And could you shed some light on how tokenization unlock liquidity, accessibility and fractional ownership opportunities for investors? I think this is a very good question and uh, tokenization of real world assets because we have been seeing blockchain is in vogue for a very long time. One of the first use cases of blockchain where it came, we had NFTs where we had NFTs of CryptoPunk and a lot of things which were not very tangible. So we had uh, those NFTs, uh, so it was more of a hype kind of a thing. But recently, since past one or two years, we are seeing uh, the blockchain world is moving from hype towards value. And we are tokenizing rather than intangible assets, we are directly tokenizing tangible assets, which directly has inbuilt value in them. The earlier NFTs did not have any inbuilt value in them. But with the tokenization of real world assets, here lies the actual uh, value and the beauty of blockchain. So I'll just give you one, two examples where we ourselves are work working in uh, this space. And I have a direct uh, first hand uh, experience in this. So one, 
thing which is very interesting is we are tokenizing the carbon offsets. Uh, so carbon credits is a very uh, unique market and we had uh, a lot of carbon credits which were being traded. One of the things which is happening currently is those carbon credits are being tokenized. Uh, around, apart from carbon credits, the other things which we see being tokenized are your real estates. So now real estate again is a very interesting market and because usually people were not able to buy uh, properties uh, which are very high value and currently recently the Indian government also the regulators have also allowed uh, tokenization of real, uh, real estate assets. So you can uh, fractionalize the real estate and tokenize it and then you can buy the, buy the fractions of the uh, tokenized real estate assets which gives you access which increases the liquidity in the market as well. One very interesting use case which we are working with two or three state governments is tokenization of TDRs that is a transferable development rights. Now again if you tokenize the TDRs transferable token, uh, transferable development rights you can again bring liquidity to a completely illiquid market. The TDRs were a very illiquid markets. So they are trying to tokenize TDRs where uh, you can completely build a layer of fintech on, uh, once the TDRs are tokenized. You can have debt raised on that. You can have a trading of uh, TDRs, which are very uh, much possible. So I see a lot of interesting things where real world uh, assets are being tokenized. I've heard about gold being tokenized in some of the geographies. So very interesting things happening in this space. So following our discussion on tokenization, let's pivot to another crucial application of blockchain technology that is supply chain transparency and it's evident that blockchain has vast potential in this area. So how do you see its impact on improving transparency and traceability and what benefits does it offer to businesses and consumers? Again, a very nice question of how blockchain, basically the concept of blockchain was to eliminate trust and build a public ledger where different parties can interact and transact with each other without the need for a third party trust. We had banks, we had another uh, agencies which were required in a traditional system where blockchain was not used to build that trust between two parties. Now blockchain gives you the solution and typically supply chains are where a lot of parties interchange their uh, material, their value, their data to create a complete product. And this product uh, goes through different supply lines and reaches the consumer. Now with blockchain, once we identify each partner who is coming in the supply chain, make every supply partner a node and they, there is a digital identity for each supply partner. You can see whatever is going inside the uh, supply chain in a very transparent, traceable and immutable manner. Hmm. And the end customer is also very happy what he is getting. I will just give you two examples where we have seen blockchain and supply chain being used very beautifully. There is a farmer uh, organization in Nasik called as Sayadri Farms. So they are one of the largest exporters of grapes from India. And the consumers usually do not know where the source of grapes is coming from, what is the harvest, how much money actually goes to the uh, uh, farmer who is actually doing this thing, are there a third party is get, getting the benefit of this? So Sayadri Farms has put the complete uh, supply, their complete supply chain right from the harvesting of the grape, where it is being harvested, which farmer is there, where the packaging happens, where the export happens, till the last consumer. And they have put a QR code, printed QR code and they are on their packaging. Once you uh, scan the QR code, the whole supply chain of the grape fruit comes to them with a complete year of where it was packaged, where which farmer actually grew it. Also, the beauty is that you don't even know you you know where the farmer with, uh, it was produced, where the, it was harvested. You also get to know how much of the money which you are paying to the to get the grapes is going to the farmer as well. So, supply chain, uh, blockchain, and supply chain makes this transparency very useful for the elements in the block in the supply chain as well as to the consumers. One more example I will give you where again we have seen very amazing uh, use of blockchain in uh, the supply chain side is where uh, Hyundai and Kia, the, the car manufacturers have put their 
CO2 emissions on uh, the car on the blockchain. So Hyundai and Kia are putting their own emissions in the blockchain, and along with that, they have implemented SCMS, where their supply side, the whole supply upstream and downstream supply of their value chain supply chain, their emissions are also being monitored, measured, and being put on the uh, uh, on the blockchain, so that the last consumer or anybody who wants to check. The scope one, scope two, scope three emissions, they can come and directly check it on uh, the blockchain. So these are two, three very exciting examples of how blockchain is being used in the supply chain for the benefit of the whole uh, supply chain players as well as the consumers. Continuing our exploration of blockchain's diverse applications, let's discuss the concept of tokenizing carbon credits. This ties into the previous discussion on transparency and accountability. How do you envision blockchain's role in revolutionizing carbon markets? Thank you, uh, Roshni. This is a question which is very close to my heart, uh, sustainability. And I think this is a question which should be close to everybody's heart. We have been seeing a lot of climate change uh, things happening uh, currently, uh, we I stay in Mumbai. I think you are also there in Mumbai. So we have seen yeah. the AQI getting affected very badly. The weather patterns have changed very drastically. All these Kyoto protocols, all these carbon credits, they were just very fancy terms some two three years back. But currently, every uh, body in the world and uh, is getting affected by it. And there is a real need to tackle this problem. One of the basic uh, problems with the carbon market, the traditional carbon market was there was no traceability of the whole carbons. There was no, uh, oh, there was a lot of vague and uh, that was very vague and very opaque. What blockchain brings is the trust and traceability in this uh, market. And what was happening, a lot of companies were saying that we are, bring, we are so buying the carbon credits from the carbon projects. But there was a, no traceability and transparency of what is happening behind the scene. So we have seen a lot of greenwashing happening in the traditional carbon markets, a lot of double counting happening in the traditional markets. Double counting is, uh, say, suppose the same project is generating, say, uh, X number of carbon credits and the final buyer has to only buy those X numbers. But what we have seen is this X numbers of credit are getting generated with are two buyers buying the same carbon credit. Because the traditional market does, did not have any transparency uh, in the process. So this double counting was happening. There was a lot of greenwashing happening. Suppose somebody has to offset 10,000 credits and they are only generating 1,000 credits uh, and just showing that we have done the uh, other activity. So this uh, gap was, is, was something which is called as greenwashing. So this was very prevalent before the blockchain era. And uh, this is not something which is going because all these companies, the countries and companies have pledged their net zero. Uh, some companies are going to be net zero by 2013, some by 2040. India has also pledged their, to, uh, their net zero goal somewhere in 2070s. But to achieve this net zero goal, uh, you have to offset your carbon and it has to be in a very traceable and transparent manner. This is where the blockchain world has come in, which has completely brought traceability and uh, transparency to the market. So this is how I see blockchain helping the carbon industry in terms of traceability and uh, uh, transparency. The other problem, now this is a solution, but what we are seeing is you can again tokenize carbon credits and the traditional market was working in a very OTC kind of a manner. Uh, uh, one time settlement kind of a manner. Uh, now with tokenizing carbons, you can bring it on a marketplace and tokenized carbons can be traded. So again, this is bringing liquidity to the much needed market. We are seeing, we have created carbons uh, on a UNCDM methodology and we have put it on a head on Hedera's blockchain. And surprisingly, these are coming from Indian market and they are being bought by people in US retail people uh, like retail individuals who want to just uh, offset their individual carbon footprints so this is a very amazing example of how carbon credits on blockchain are being used and the liquidity is being bought in the market okay so one more last question is from the realm of law enforcement the recent collaboration between dubai police and cardano highlights the evolving landscape of blockchain integration how do you foresee this technology shaping the future of criminal investigation worldwide 
I think this is a very novel and innovative uh, thing which the Dubai government has done with the Dubai police uh, putting law enforcement things on blockchain. Right. Uh, I have seen uh, this being used in India as well. As you know, the, uh, India it was very uh, not very transparent of how the police cases are being registered, uh, what happens when, when the police case is registered and the transparency was completely lacking. I have recently seen UP police using blockchain uh, technology, Polygon. Uh, so they have put the whole port, uh, port uh, they have come with a portal where the whole portal is blockchain enabled. So that anybody who wants to come and register his complaint can come to the portal and register his complaint. Hmm. And once it is uh, there, it becomes completely trackable. And you know the beauty of uh, blockchain, it is immutable. So somebody tries to put pressure and change the report or change any finding, it cannot happen because it is in a completely public ledger, completely immutable. So that kind of trust and uh, transparency is maintained. So I find it very, very uh, unique and very novel uh, for the law enforcement agencies to have blockchain kind of a thing. And I'm very happy that Dubai has done it uh, in India. UP police is doing it on Polygon. And I see that a lot of places uh, in other uh, countries also where this will be used. I recently heard that Goa police was also uh, planning uh, this. Uh, Mumbai police is also planning this. So this is a very uh, interesting uh, thing. Again, I think they they were using uh, Metaverse. Dubai police was also using Metaverse uh, centers where people can come and register their complaints in a blockchain and a Metaverse Web3 kind of an environment. Because a lot of time you will not may not feel very comfortable going to a police station. So this Metaverse kind of environment gives you that kind of comfort that you can go there, interact to the first level of interaction. So all these technologies will definitely help the citizens a lot and governments taking this initiative of making it accessible transfer uh, transparent to the citizens is very welcome all right thank you so much sir for being on 3 daughter tv and sharing your insights with us today thank you thank you roshni so this was mr yashodan ramteke founder of blogbus innovate so that's all for today. This is me, Roshni Shingre, signing off. For more such interesting updates, watch 3 Dotto TV or log on to our website www.3verstv.io or scan the QR code. Thank you. अरे आपने ये न्यूज देखी रशियन आर्टिस्ट एंड्रे मुलाटकिन पिकासो रिमब्रांड और वॉहोल जैसे आर्टिस्ट के 16 मास्टर पीसेस को जलाने की धमकी दे रहे हैं हम्म बहुत ज़्यादा शॉकिंग है ये और इस पूरे आर्टवर्क की कीमत 45 मिलियन डॉलर से ज़्यादा है। सो बेसिकली एंड्रे जो है वो जूलियन असांज के सपोर्टर हैं और उन्हें क्लियरली ये कह दिया है कि अगर प्रिज़न में जूलियन की मौत हो जाती है या फिर एंड्रे को हर रोज़ जूलियन की वेलबीइंग की खबर नहीं मिलती तो वो सारे आर्टवर्क को जला देंगे और इसकी पूरी तैयारी भी उन्होंने कर ली है। हाँ, ये 29 टन के बड़े से वॉल्ट में दो बैरल क्रॉसर सब्सटेंस में डिप्ड है ये आर्टवर्क। और अगर जूलियन सांच की डेथ हो जाती है जेल में, तो एंड्रे मलॉट के इस वॉल्ट में आग लगा देंगे और सारा आर्टवर्क खाक हो जाएगा। वैसे ये जूलियन सांच है कौन? और इनका एनएफटी से क्या so basically Julian Assange Wikileaks के founder है और उन पर computer intrusion करके conspiracy के तहत defence department की बहुत ही confidential खबरें और documents leak करने का उनपे आरोप है और इसलिए वो हिरासत में है और ज़्यादा की बात है कि Julian का NFT से क्या नाता है तो basically Julian ने एक NFT artist है Park उनके साथ मिलकर एक NFT बनाई थी clock तो basically अब तक Julian ने कितना जेल में वक्त बिताया है उस time को clock कर रहे हैं यानी में है वो इस क्लॉक पर डिस्प्ले हो रहा है ये डिजिटल क्लॉक है और ये एनएफटी वन ऑफ द मोस्ट एक्सपेंसिव एनएफटी है ये 52.7 मिलियन डॉलर्स में बिकी है और ये जो कीमत मिली है जूलियन को इसकी सेल से उससे वो अपने लीगल डिफेंस के सारे एक्सपेंसेस पे आउट कर रहे हैं वाओ ऐसे इंटरेस्टिंग अपडेट्स के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉटो टीवी और ज्यादा इन्फॉर्मेशन के लिए लॉग ऑन करें www.3worldtv.io या फिर स्कैन करें हमारा क्यूआर कोड
Hello and welcome to Three Dot TV. This is Shikha Singh. It seems the rush is among leading banks in the United States to corner as many clients as possible. They are not letting go any opportunity. It doesn't matter whether the product they offer is based on virtual digital asset. Two Wall Street giants, Bank of America's Merrill Lynch and Wells Fargo, are adding spot Bitcoin ETFs to their brokerage platforms. Bloomberg reported, citing people familiar with the matter. Ever since the launch of 10 ETFs in January, industry participants have been wondering when major US brokerages would start offering their funds to their clients, which could potentially bring much more buying power to the market for Bitcoin ETFs. The Bloomberg story follows a Coindesk scoop Wednesday that Morgan Stanley, another titan in the space, is in the midst of deciding whether to give clients the option to invest in the funds. In January, Coindesk reported first that UBS and Citigroup were letting some customers buy Bitcoin ETFs. Merrill Lynch and Wells Fargo have been offering the Bitcoin ETFs to clients who specifically asked to get exposure to it, Bloomberg reported. Spot Bitcoin ETFs are experiencing neck break trading activity. The segment witnessed tremendous demand since they began trading on January 11th. On Wednesday alone, a record $7.7 billion worth of all the funds traded. Moreover, the volume growth achieved without the participation of high-caliber players. Nonetheless, the entry of Merrill Lynch and Wells Fargo, perhaps Morgan Stanley, could bring a new wave of demand. Bitwise Chief Investment Officer Matt Hogan said earlier on Thursday. Well, that's all in today's special segment. For more such updates, follow 3 TV or log on to our website www.3verstv.io or scan the QR code to know more. Hello and a very warm welcome, I am Ruchi Sharma. According to Riot Platform's most recent annual report, the Bitcoin miner may see financial difficulties as a result of a persistent chip scarcity, the continued need to increase hash rate and the growing pro-climate movement in the US. Riot is one of the many Bitcoin mining companies getting ready for the impending halving event. In its annual 10K filing, which was filed on February 23rd, the company expressly identified over 13 major risks to its future profitability in Bitcoin mining. The filing also included a section on risk factor disclosures. Wright cited the continuing global chip crisis as one of the risk factors as only a small number of manufacturers are able to produce the highly specialized ASIC chips that Riot needs. Riot agreed to pay $291 million to purchase 66,560 miners from manufacturer MicroBT in December. According to Jason Lair, CEO of the business, it was the largest order of hash rate in its history. Riot stated in its most recent annual report that until the chip scarcity issue is remedied, it anticipates continuing to pay higher than usual prices to acquire and deploy the mining equipment. Riot pointed out that even if they had access to ASIC miners, they may still run into design flaws. The company said that in attempting to modify its miners to run into immersion cooled conditions, it has previously encountered software and firmware problems and that it may run into similar problems going forward. Riot adds that a risk associated with a more competitive industry exists, meaning that in order to preserve its market share, the company must keep raising its hash rate in tandem with the worldwide hash rate. Meanwhile, Wright also noted that Bitcoin faces significant scaling obstacles that could hinder its ability to become a widely accepted means of payment. An increasingly pro-climate change agenda in the Texas and United States governments could present challenges for the firm too, it said. Riot said it may lose a competitive advantage should it be subject to stricter regulations than its peers in other regions. Meanwhile, Riot boosted its Bitcoin production by 19% in 2023, mining a total of 6,626 BTC worth $341.4 million at current prices. The firm's average cost to mine Bitcoin for 2023 also decreased 33% to $7,539 in 2023. 
that's all the story for now this is me Ruchi Sharma signing off do like share and subscribe to 3 Dotto TV and for more information and stories log on to our website www.3wordtv.io or scan the QR code आज की इस फास्ट पेस ग्लोबली इंटरकनेक्टेड दुनिया में हर कोई दिन रात पैसे कमाने के लिए भाग रहा है ताकि वो अपने सपने साकार कर सके लेकिन अक्सर हम पैसे कमाने के चक्कर में अपना स्वास्थ्य खो देते हैं और फिर स्वास्थ्य को ठीक करने के लिए पैसे गवाते हैं दुनिया के ज्यादातर लोग इसी चक्रव्यूह में फंसे हुए है लेकिन अब इस चक्रव्यूह को तोड़ने में मददगार होगी ब्लॉक टेक्नोलॉजी नमस्कार स्वागत है आप सभी का थ्री डॉटो टीवी में और आज के ब्लॉक ऑन द रॉक्स के खास एपिसोड में हम देखेंगे कि कैसे ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी के उपयोग से स्वास्थ्य और पर्यावरण से जुड़ी रियल लाइफ प्रॉब्लम्स को सॉल्व किया जा सके स्वास्थ्य का गणित बिल्कुल सरल है अच्छा खाना खाने से और पॉल्यूशन फ्री वातावरण में रहने से आपका स्वास्थ्य तंदुरुस्त रहेगा लेकिन फिर भी हम इतनी सरल बात को रोजिंदा जिंदगी में फॉलो नहीं करते हैं ज्यादातर लोग इस गलतफहमी में जीते हैं कि वो फ्रेश वेजिटेबल फ्रूट्स और उच्च गुणवत्ता वाले गेहूं और चावल का उपयोग करके पौष्टिक खुराक लेते हैं जिससे उनका स्वास्थ्य तंदुरुस्त बनेगा लेकिन वो भूल जाते हैं कि सब्जी फल गेहूं, चावल जीरा और मसालों की फसल को उगाने में खतरनाक जंतु रसायन यानी पेस्टिसाइड और रसायन खाद का उपयोग करके जिनके रेगुलर सेवन से हमें कैंसर जैसी खतरनाक बीमारी की झपेट में आ सकते हैं अब ब्लॉकचेन टेक्नोलॉजी द्वारा ऑर्गेनिक फार्मर्स का एक डेटाबेस तैयार किया गया है जो फार्म से लेकर फोक तक आपके खाने को ट्रैक करेगी फॉर एग्जांपल आपकी प्लेट में आए टमाटर किस ऑर्गेनिक फार्म में पैदा हुए फिर उसे किस मंडी में बेचा गया कहां उसे स्टोर किया गया और फाइनली किस रिटेलर द्वारा आपके पास पहुँचा इसका पूरा रिकॉर्ड या कहे की टमाटर की पूरी जन्म कुंडली ब्लॉक चेन स्टोर की जाएगी ताकि आप निश्चिंत होकर ऑर्गेनिक फार्म के फ्रेश प्रोड्यूस ऐसी बनी डिश ऐसी स्वास्थ्य और स्वाद दोनों का आनंद ले सके इसका जीता जागता एग्जाम्पल है यूके का मल्टी पार्टनर रिसर्च और डेवलपमेंट प्रोजेक्ट सेक्वल जिसका फुल फॉर्म है सिक्योर क्वालिटी अशोर लॉजिस्टिक फॉर डिजिटल फूड इकोसिस्टम जिसके जरिए आपकी प्लेट में आए हुए हर एक निवाला कहाँ उपज हुआ कहाँ स्टोर हुआ और कहाँ खरीदा गया सब कुछ एक पैकिंग सिस्टम के साथ ब्लॉक चेन पर स्टोर होगा जिससे भेल सेल यानी की अडल्ट्रेशन का कोई खतरा नहीं रहेगा स्वच्छ और पौष्टिक खाने के बाद अब आगे बढ़ते हुए हम बात करेंगे पर्यावरण पर ब्लॉकचेन ने कैसे अपना इम्पैक्ट छोड़ा है बियॉन्ड इमेजिनेशन टेक्नोलॉजीज ने ब्लॉकचेन बेस्ड बिट भूमि को डिजाइन किया है ताकि पर्यावरण की सस्टेनेबिलिटी पर ध्यान रखा जा सके बिट भूमि एक ब्लॉक चेन पावर प्लेटफॉर्म है जो हर एक इनिशियटिव को डिजिटल मॉनिटरिंग रिपोर्टिंग और वेरिफिकेशन के लिए बनाया गया है विशेष रूप से शहरी और ग्रामीण क्षेत्रों में खुले जगहों को फॉरेस्ट्रेशन यानी वनीकरण करने पर ध्यान दिया गया है आने वाले हफ्तों में ये प्लेटफॉर्म अपने एक्सक्लूसिव क्रिप्टो करेंसी भूमि डॉलर्स के लॉन्च का प्लान बना रही है एक प्रेस रिलीज के अनुसार ये डिजिटल एसेट सिर्फ क्राउड फंडिंग का साधन नहीं होगा बल्कि एक ब्लॉक कम्युनिटी को भी बढ़ावा देगा जो तकनीकी हालों के माध्यम से असली दुनिया के समस्याओं का सामना करती है बिट भूमि ब्लॉक चेन और एनएफटी टेक्नोलॉजी की शक्ति का इस्तेमाल डोनेशन कैंपेन्स की ट्रांसपेरेंसी और ट्रेसिबिलिटी को बढ़ाने के लिए काम करती है विशेष रूप से इंसानी गतिविधियों के पर्यावरण पर दुष्प्रभाव को कम करने पर ध्यान दिया गया है आशा करते हैं कि आने वाले समय में अनाज का हर एक दाना और पृथ्वी का हर एक पेड़ पौधा ब्लॉक टेक्नोलॉजी की निगरानी में आ जाएगा तब न सिर्फ हमारी पृथ्वी ज्यादा ग्रीन भी होगी बल्कि हमारी जीवन शैली ज्यादा सेहतमंद भी बनेगी आज के खास सेगमेंट में बस इतना ही अगले हफ्ते हम ब्लॉकचेन से जुड़ी नई अपडेट्स के साथ फिर मिलेंगे तब तक के लिए देखते रहिए थ्री डॉटो टीवी हमारे चैनल को लाइक शेयर और सब्सक्राइब करना ना भूलें। अधिक जानकारी के लिए हमारी वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट थ्री वर्स टीवी डॉट आई पर लॉग ऑन करें या फिर स्कैन करें क्यू आर कोड थैंक यू
iconic music and the scene instantly teleports us right into the middle of galactic saga of George Lucas Star Wars series filled with larger than life characters like Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, R2D2, Jedi, and of course the villain of the story and apparently Luke's father Darth Vader and his band of deadly stormtroopers. Now it seems Darth Vader's laser gun wielding lethal stormtroopers are entering the Vetri galaxy. Apparently, the Stormtrooper character from Star Wars A New Hope will be added to Mixed Mob's card-based strategy and racing game Racer 1 as an NFT collection and playable character the Solana-based gaming company announced on Thursday. However, this license agreement has a few intriguing details. The famous Stormtrooper from the original 1977 blockbuster science fiction movie is the licensed character, although no one from Disney, Lucasfilms or their representatives mediated this agreement. Rather, the agreement is with Andrew Ainsworth, the original Star Wars prop manufacturer and Shepperton Design Studios. The well-known white-armoured soldier from the first movie was created by Ainsworth. When he began manufacturing and marketing imitation helmets based on his own design decades later, Lucasfilm brought out its lawyers and began a protracted legal battle. All in all, Ainsworth managed to obtain restricted rights for the design's commercialization. A mixed mob representative confirmed that the game studio cannot use Star Wars branding and that the deal in this case is limited to armor design from A New Hope. Nevertheless, it is a noteworthy addition to a well-known pop culture franchise that will be featured in an NFT game that seeks to offer a taste of remix culture. The game's developer Mixmob has announced that it intends to incorporate additional licensed characters and content and a mobile version of the game will launch in quarter 2 of 2024. This year, Mixmob plans to reveal three more license integrations. Sale details for the Stormtroopers NFTs have not been revealed. According to the team, owners of Micmob's Gen O Mask and Gen O Mixbots NFTs will be given priority access to the mint. Micmob's Solana based governance token, MXM, is up nearly 15% on March 1, 2024, to a price of above $0.1 per data from CoinGecko. The token, which debuted on February 1st with an airdrop to reward early players and NFT owners, set an all time high price of $0.1136 last week. That's all the story for now. This is Miruchi Sharma signing off. Do like, share and subscribe to 3 TV. And for more information and stories, log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. Hello and welcome to 3 Dotto TV. I am Vishakha Thakur. On Friday, a US federal court judge signed off on crypto exchange Binance's $4.3 billion plea deal with the US Department of Justice. Well, this is one of the biggest penalty in the history of financial market. A company has paid to free itself from the regulatory clutches. The move shows a growing regulatory oversight of virtual digital assets or VDAs and sets a precedence to be followed. During his intense hearing Friday, Judge Richard Jones of the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Washington approved the top-line fine itself, though he did not yet sign off on any monitor for the exchange. Earlier last November, the Department of Justice announced a settlement alleging Binance of violating sanctions and anti-money laundering laws over a year's long period. Under the terms of the settlement, the exchange would pay $4.3 billion, appoint an independent compliance monitor and have its CEO at the time, founder Changping Zhao, step down. Well, CZ pleaded guilty to separate charges and is currently scheduled to be sentenced in late April. In a statement, a Binance spokesperson said the exchange was accepting responsibility through the plea deal, adding that the exchange had improved its Know Your Customer and Anti-Money Laundering Compliance in recent years. We are gratified by the recognition we have received from regulators regarding our corporation and 
significantly enhanced compliance, the statement said. We look forward in the coming months to continuing to build on our efforts to set the industry standard for compliance, security and transparency. In a sentencing memo ahead of the hearing, prosecutors wrote that the agreement reflects the nature and circumstances of Binance's alleged conduct. Critically, the agreed-upon sentence will promote specific and general deterrence. As part of its plea agreement, Binance has agreed to take substantial measures to ensure its ongoing compliance with US law. And the significant sentence agreed to here demonstrates to other financial institutions that may seek to break the law under the guise of innovation that uh, there will be serious consequences for their criminal actions, the memo said. That's all in the story. Keep watching 3 TV for more such updates and do log on to our website www.3worstv.io or scan the QR code. This is me, Vishakha Thakur, signing off. मैजिक ईडन पर बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स ने की जबरदस्त कमाई पजी पेंगुइंस की लेटेस्ट पार्टनरशिप बढ़ाएगी पॉपुलैरिटी एनएफटी स्पेस में वैन की एंट्री हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स में आए सर्च से लेकर एनएफटी स्पेस में वैन की एंट्री तक कई मजेदार एनएफटी अपडेट्स मैं रुचि शर्मा आपके लिए लेकर आई हूँ तो हो जाइए एनएफटी वर्स के इस खास एपिसोड के लिए तैयार इसमें आपकी फेवरेट एनएफटी प्रोजेक्ट्स की डिटेल्स तो होंगी ही साथ ही हम एक स्पेशल गेस्ट से भी करेंगे मुलाकात लेकिन सबसे पहले जानते हैं पिछले हफ्ते कैसा रहा एनएफटी मार्केट का हाल एनएफटी सेल्स पिछले हफ्ते 35 परसेंट ऊपर रही दो महीने के इंतजार के बाद बिटकॉइन ऑर्डर ने फिर ऐसी बाजी मारते हुए पहली पोजिशन हासिल की पिछले हफ्ते की कुल 412 मिलियन डॉलर्स की एनएफटी सेल्स में से बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स ने 154 मिलियन डॉलर्स की सेल्स बटोरी जो कि पिछले हफ्ते के मुकाबले 103 परसेंट का जबरदस्त उछाल है तो वहीं बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स के आंकड़े के बेहद करीब थी इथेरियम एनएफटी जिसने 10 परसेंट की बढ़त के साथ 153 मिलियन डॉलर की एन सेल्स दर्ज की तो वही तीसरे चौथे और पांचवे पायदान पर रही सोलाना बी और माइथोस चेन ने पिछले हफ्ते के मुकाबले ग्रोथ दर्ज की बिटकॉइन की प्राइस में जबरदस्त उछाल देखा जा रहा है जो अपने ऑल टाइम हाई के बेहद करीब है तो इसका फायदा बिटकॉइन एनएफटी को भी मिल रहा है बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल दमदार वापसी के संकेत दे रही है क्योंकि फरवरी की शुरुआत में 5 टू 6 मिलियन डॉलर्स ट्रेडिंग वॉल्यूम दर्ज कर रही बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स अब अक्रॉस मेजर मार्केट प्लेसेस 15 मिलियन डॉलर्स से 19.7 मिलियन डॉलर्स से ज्यादा ट्रेडिंग वॉल्यूम दर्ज कर रही है जून डेटा के मुताबिक क्रॉस ट्रेन मार्केट प्लेस मैजिक ईडन पर एक बार फिर बिटकॉइन ऑर्डिनल्स ने टॉप स्पॉट हासिल किया है मैजिक ईडन पर बिटकॉइन एनिफ्टीज ने फरवरी के महीने हंड्रेड मिलियन डॉलर ऐसी ज्यादा की ट्रेडिंग वॉल्यूम दर्ज की इसके साथ ही मैजिक ईडन पर बिटकॉइन एनएफटीज की बाइंग एंड सेलिंग पर खर्च की गई टू मिलियन डॉलर्स की फीस ने भी मैजिक ईडन पर रिकॉर्ड सेट किया एनएफटी ट्रांजैक्शन में 45,000 बायर्स और 91,000 से ज्यादा सेलर्स शामिल थे इस पर और ज्यादा जानकारी के लिए रुक करते हैं हमारे स्पेशल गेस्ट मिस्टर जॉन इग्लेस्टन का वेलकम टू थ्री डॉट टीवी बिटकॉइन के प्राइस सर्च का कितना इम्पैक्ट होगा बिटकॉइन ऑर्डर्स पर और ये इम्पैक्ट कब तक रहेगा While NFTs on other blockchains such as Ethereum are also seeing an increase in price and activity, it's less pronounced compared to Bitcoin ordinals. It makes sense that ordinals are performing well because Bitcoin is leading the way in the market. But there's there's a little.